Oh, I think you mean the, the goat. goat. The good old man Waldrig. He's the he's he's the <laughs> VIP. Old oh, man Waldrig is like the he's the he's the one like when like the magic card you open, you're like, oh yes, the meta card, yeah. The sleeper hit. Yeah, you yeah. Need, he's like one of the best of the low level cards that is actually super important in the early yeah, game. Yeah, he's he's an uncommon, but like <laughs> they totally didn't realize how he'd synergize with welcoming people to Mordor. I love that that was his job. Oh, he, and he, he loved, loved it. He loves it. He loved it. He's oh, loving he, it. He All loves it. He's he living his, his worst job. life. He's it's great. Well, and he was <laughs> evidently so life. good at he was evidently so good at telling everyone that it was Mordor that word reached uh, the High King of the Elves on the other side of Middle Earth because he's <laughs> he calling it Mordor. Waldrag is unironically the most competent character in the entire show. He makes Mordor. He is. He makes Mordor. He's so good at being a fucking greeter that the elves on the other side of the continent <laughs> Mordor have learned greeter. of his exploits. Yeah. <laughs> they speak They speak of a greeter to the east. Well, so was... we are going to be getting, well, like the funeral episode, right? For him. For, for the whoa, whole spoiler! World. Whoa. No, I just mean when he inevitably dies. He's old, man. No, he's not. Mm. Old man Waldrag isn't old. <laughs> he's gonna get one That's of those rings of name, power, right? Damn it! <laughs> he's currently going for his midlife <laughs> crisis. Okay, you leave him alone. Power. Yeah, he's, he's gonna get a ring of power. Like, like Sauron, old, you know. Waldrag gets a ring of power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the twist is that he's the evil alter ego of Tom Bombadil. He's oh, been there yes, since yes. before the stars were born. It, there's <laughs> always been a Waldrag. There's always, there's always been, been a Waldrag. There's <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> I would love that, man. <laughs> yeah, Sauron became Halbrand, and Waldrag became Tom Bombadil. <laughs> he, turned oh, into, yeah. he turned into I, goo, and he ate a bunch of squirrels outside the Shire, and he became Tom Bombadil. That all checks out in my books. Well, that could be um, a place to start. Just uh, general right. thoughts about what you've seen so far. Uh, you know, like, well, how, how's everyone feeling? Are we... Are we have they done it? Have they have they realized what was cringe and are they uncringing? Are they better getting yes. better? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Have, it's they, re have they reforged what has been broken? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Like the we'll Elden Ring? The, with, right? the Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one, Maybe. the Elden Ring under the sky. Maybe the most suitable question is how long did it take for any of you guys to be like, oh, we're so back with the cringe? That's oh, uh, pretty... about ten seconds. No, <laughs> it, no. The upside down crown. Longer. I won't say what happens yet, but the upside down crown is yeah. when I was like, "Yeah, okay." That's yeah, we're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was some, some stuff before that. That was, you know, they could have justified it though, but they they just didn't. It was when I saw Waldrag. I saw Waldrag, and I'm like, "Oh, we are so fucking back. We are back, baby." The boy. I would, I would say Sauron's speech is also, um, you know. That's also really fucking cringe. Yeah, stuff. I was. Um, I walked into the second season thinking about what I was hoping to see, um, what I was wanting to have happen, and any realistic um, sort of desires for characters that I liked or wanted to actually see more of. Um, but I was just like thinking, what what will they do? What 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 realistically? might they actually do with the people that I enjoy? All two, three of them. So, well, four, Waldrick. But, um, I, uh, I would say that going into this, I wanted to see, um, Durin, Disa, King Durin, and, of course, Waldrick. Those were the, <laughs> those were the characters that I had any level of actual investment in, because there were, uh, there were points in season one where Durin and King Durin were actually I really, really quite like them. I enjoyed yeah, the acting, I'm... and they had they actually had good conversations with one another. And uh, generally, in isolation, they had some legitimately good scenes. Uh, Disa is just the best character in the show after season one. Uh, so, and she's uh, probably who I'm most interested in seeing uh, for this season. Uh, all of the Southlanders, all of the Numenorians, all of the elves, all of everyone else couldn't give a shit. Uh, just could not care. All of my interest is almost like super hyper compartmentalized to uh, to Casa Doom and those three in particular. Uh, they are the only three who feel like they're actual people who have mm -hmm. actual relationships with uh, with other people and um, 
and the and the acting is generally quite good for the three of them. Yeah, it's the same for me. Like I always and pretty much always enjoy at least the conversations they have because they the they have conversations with each other and react to each other to what they say and not talk some fucking bumbling nonsense. I like that they kind of talk like normal people compared yes. to the elves, where all they do is talk in shitty purple prose. <laughs> oh god, like, this yeah, yeah painful. it's painful. It's, it's so bad. Every time the elves sing, the people... they always have these. Really like, well, can you imagine Gil Galad going, and that Galadriel <laughs> is a recipe for strong gravy. <laughs> strong <laughs> gravy. Yeah, the people write it, in it, the it, the lines for the elves. They don't know what to do. They've heard it before. So they don't know how to do it. There are terrible analogies. So many <laughs> it, bad analogies and yeah. stupid sayings mm. that are so well, clunky and dumb. So when we get to episode two, we'll see like because the dwarves generally seem like they have genuinely been written by other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you still have these really really dumb pseudo profound Pieces, analogies yeah. popping out. Like some mm -hmm. of them are better. There's a couple that are like okay, fine, but then there's also a couple of ones that come out of the dwarves that are just really mm. dumb. <laughs> My favorite's the, the strong gravy one. That gets a pass. That's strong like gravy it. is good. Strong it's nice and quick. We... It's not yeah. Oh, that's it's not trying to sound clever. Gravy. It's like oh boy, we don't want that, do we? We'll see. By the way, way around um, some gravy. All right. Random is hard to recognize you at all with that brand new avatar. You look completely different. Nice, uh, you look yeah, reborn, I know, I reforged. Yeah. It's crazy. I should have I should have maybe done something to change my voice or you know anything to nah. maybe convince. <laughs> Just roll oh. your R's every time you speak. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I actually I, I really can't roll my R's. I don't want to try it. But <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, I guess I, I told them before we started. Uh, but as for my voice, I am a little bit under the weather, but we should be a okay. So we're all under the weather, Rex. Haha, we're all oh. under the volcano no. cloud. No. <laughs> All uh, right, so well for anyone, me, uh, any, I the closest yeah. I had to a sense of joy was genuinely Waldrick. I, I, I uh, Waldrick, I was very excited <laughs> to see him. I thought the outfit. Well, we'll get to it. It just you know, it that was the character that I was sort of in this for. So obviously, um, we'll 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 talk about all of the events of the season. But uh, I've been on a roller coaster ride of emotion to say the least. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, we are so back was easily the first scene for me, but. Um, the scene to follow, the sequence to follow, that I'm sure you're all aware yeah. of, that uh, that yeah. surprised me. And I was so mm -hmm. thankful to be surprised within just two scenes. I was like, thank you, show, for giving me this, because I never thought you would do this. This this is such an awful decision, <laughs> but you know what? You did it. Um, on that note, I shall be taking care of visuals, hopefully appropriate, uh, where we're, we're, we're we will not be going quickly. Is to so be do had. Not you worry. Yes, I, I have. It's funny. Uh, you will sweep away the confusion of this podcast like salt from a table. Yes. <laughs> Come up with as many of those yeah. as I can. Oh my God. I, uh, this is the oh. Salty Floor Podcast. There are eight episodes in this wonderful season. We shall be doing uh. two per episode of EFAP. If That's we're lucky. right. And no spoilers. No, we treat this okay. as though you've never seen it before in chat. You don't know what's going to happen, but with us guiding you by hand, we shall take you through a journey, a storybook that they paid bazillions of dollars to produce for some reason. <laughs> so, so <laughs> no, I wonder what that money could have been used for instead of making this fucking pile of garbage. Like, yes. holy fuck. Um, <laughs> Somebody in chat asked, no insane. But, but does this podcast gaze up at the stars and float? <laughs> Sometimes. Good question. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for a scene where, like, I just, feel more you know, like a stone, to be honest. They needed a bit of insight. One of the characters just on. It was like, "Why does a whale not fly?" <laughs> <laughs> You're like, "I don't. Why, what the? There's so many reasons. And, uh, it, it can't <laughs> produce <laughs> enough lift. It's because they don't listen to Gojira. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just the funniest shit when they started off. And you sit there like, "Oh God, here we go. <laughs> like, what, what are they gonna say now?" <laughs> Uh, but what I was going to say was, <laughs> your 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 helmsman for this one, your guide, your pilot for these wonderful episodes of Rings of Power shall indeed actually not be myself. It shall be Ragathan. For I'm, I'm House... not the pilot. I'm your beautiful stewardess. I'll be bringing you, you your biscottis both. and your four ice cubes, and mm. we'll just go through this one bit at a time, chronolam chronomagically, <laughs> and <laughs> we'll, <laughs> see, we'll see what happens in the land What's your of. Profanity? The land of Middle <laughs> Earth and beyond? Question mark. Who knows? Yes. 
Uh, so right. just to be clear, everyone here has at least seen season one and season two, episodes one and two. Yes. In yeah. video. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Some people we here have seen episodes three fun. and four. <laughs> They're yeah, the lucky so ones. Fun. I haven't seen four one yet. No. I'm, I'm part way one, through four, four and one. it's pain. Like four yeah. is breaking me now more than one, two, and three have. I will oh, say that. I lost one focus on like so many... watching. Somebody actually punches a half at Info, which is really nice to see. I said no spoilers! <laughs> oh, sorry. Shit. About... Think of it as a trailer. Yeah, right? Listen, listen, as much joy as it brings me to hear that Harfoot gets decked, <laughs> you don't need to... You have to let me experience these things naturally. I have to see it happen like it would in real life. I'm okay. sold on episode four. Episode four's right. popularity Now that we've spikes. established episode four is the best episode. <laughs> the goated episode. <laughs> it's already yeah. my favorite. Yeah. We will begin yeah, our recap episodes. of uh, episodes one and two, which, at least up to this point, are, I would say, the worst and the best episode, Ooh. interestingly, of which the, are, uh, the entire which? show. Which is which? Bom, we won't bom, know. Bom. We'll have to discuss it, and we'll see if so I So how many right true around. fans we got here actually rewatched season one? Because I did. I, I, did. I rewatched sort of, it. I, I sort of did. That was, that was so fucking painful. <laughs> My god, this show is so boring. Like <laughs> it, it really is. is. Can I just say it's like so weird is... to get like yeah. a because uh, we did this what two years ago? Brings the past yeah. season one. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. God, get a get a reminded of it all. It's like wow, yeah, I remember all these awful decisions. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when oh, she jumped in the yeah. sea? Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, the, oh, amount, yeah. the amount of things that line up in the story, uh, the, I, let's say sto story loosely, the, the, oh. the things that, that all line up is like, oh, wow, if this small thing didn't happen, this all just did not happen, like, ever at all. Remember how the Numenorians all set sail to go to a war that hadn't actually started yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's great. Remember and how they like, go out of fight? And, you and they fit like a hundred fucking that. horses in the yeah, uh, stab <laughs> twist cut. Uh, yes, God, that's right. And it's so, it's so great that. because they, they they go go there with their two or three ships or what it was, and then yeah. you have this random scene on the ship where uh, Miria goes like, "Tell the troops to go at full haste," and I'm just like, "Why? <laughs> you're just going to check it out. Why are you why are you why are you so in a hurry?" And then they obviously they make it just in time to help uh, Aaron Deer and all the other people the just in time. That is fun if you Just actually look time, at the I maps very... the show uses. Because like, if you look at the maps, that they say when they have to take the ships up the Andu and into the mountains. Because ships can go into mountains really easily. <laughs> and they say, we can do that yeah. in a day. And if you look at the map, as the crow flies, it's 450 miles. So those ships oh, yeah. are moving at like 50 miles an hour <laughs> upriver into mountains with sails. The it's great. Right. The sea is always right. The sea is always right. They, fucking they compress their... The fjord compress... is always yard. Yeah, they're they not even on the sea, they're the... in the river. <laughs> They compress their distances so hard, like the whole show. Yes, they like, do. The so one there's... time they're like, "Oh, there's we have Sauron slash Halbrand at this time, uh, completely sliced open. Oh, we're gonna go and ride for six days without rest uh, all the way to uh, Eregion. <laughs> it's like Listen, what? Just, who... Should probably clue you into that. It's not you a can normal cross... human after that. You can cross fantasy Europe in six days. That's... So you can do that. Um... I'm episode worried. three, I'm not going to skip ahead, but episode three actually gives us a number for a distance between two locations. And Ooh. when I heard that, I was like, oh, goody. Oh, my so God. I, I, I may have gone into a little bit of a deep dive and tried to work that... out if the timelines line up. Yeah. And that's just they a huge absolutely mistake. do not. Yeah, I was going to say, they <laughs> yeah. never, ever. I mean, it was obvious they didn't, but, you know, that's yeah, funny. Yeah, season one, their yeah. distance and I time might... is all... I wow. might go into that later because it affects what happens at the end of episode two, but we'll, I'll wait until mm. we get there if it comes up. Mm. Yeah, they they... they... They, they they like to do the thing where it's like, oh, these people are here now. It's like, whoa, 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 hang on, wait, what do you mean they're here? Yeah, <laughs> How much time has passed? Time. All the fucking time. <laughs> it's pertinently, in terms of things not adding up, obviously the reason they all go to Numenor at the end of, or toward the end of season one, is that Galadriel finds a symbol off screen in a library in Numenor. And mm -hmm. she says, this can only possibly mean that Halbrand is the king of the Southlands. And he credit. says... No, 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 I'm not the king of the Southlands. I just took it from an old guy. And she says, nope, you are definitely king of the Southlands. <laughs> and then they take him to the Southlands. And everybody in the Southlands looks at the symbol and says, yep, that definitely that's, means you're our him. king. Which I'm setting up all here now because <laughs> it, it's about to go very badly wrong. You forgot oh, that the, all that information wrong. in the Hall of Lore was because some random spy, some indeterminate amount of time ago, 
was yep. scouting and then got captured oh, yeah. and overheard a bunch mm-hmm. overheard a bunch of stuff and then he wrote it down and then somehow <laughs> that information made it to Numenor. Mm-hmm. And then Gedalder hadn't looked at a map for like two thousand years and just saw the symbol matched Mordor's landscape. Well, and the reason the reason why that happens off screen, I'm convinced, is because obviously Halbrand is not the king of the Southlands, and Galadriel learns at the end of the season by doing the smallest amount of further research that he isn't the queen of, that he isn't the yeah. king of the Southlands. So, had we actually seen her learn it, we would have been like, "Well, hold on, there's a hole there," because you, how can you, if we see her learn it, then it would not make sense. So they mm-hmm. keep it vague so that they can then jump in at the end and say, oh, actually, she was misled or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just Wait. that she didn't care at the time. She just jumped to conclusions and didn't actually check. And then she checked later and Someone... quickly fucking realized she was mistaken. Yeah. Someone just said, well, I guess we're never getting the hot D finale. It's done. It's out. Go watch if you want. Yeah, <laughs> it's go watch done. it. Go Seven and eight it. on Moolah. Go look at your Easter eyeballs. <laughs> we did it. It was like six after hours. After this stream, of course. Yes, after the stream. <laughs> they, they, they released it off screen, guys. You just didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> the scene that's it's currently a... playing out just behind the thing cannot actually coexist with the first scene of season one. Am I right in thinking this? Like season one opens, Galadriel's saying, I've hunted Sauron for a thousand years. You get the nice little pretty trailer shot where Sauron is standing at the head of his uh, head of his orcs and the army. He's wearing his full mm-hmm. armor. Mm-hmm. And then like the, the symbol has been carved in her brother's flesh. It's been left in the fortress where dark magic has been carried out because Sauron has been in charge and experimenting on all of his orcs to try and create this power over flesh but now we know that that none of that could happen because yeah, the first scene of this show he's not in power he looks like an elf for no fucking reason oh and look my second bullet point do anything right <laughs> so i do have kind of a i've tried to work out if that makes any sense based on what the show has told us but i did actually want to ask you platoon the the first age of middle earth ended when morgoth died is that correct pretty much i think I hope yeah. I get to be so cool that when I die, like a new age begins. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That's basically where it ends. I die. It's the age yeah. of the short. Uh, it was the sink- sinking of the the landmass to the west, right? That's under under the sea now. Lemuria. That's basically mm-hmm. the. Because what what I think happened. I mean, do we want to go into this now? Like the yeah, how yeah. the timeline does or doesn't line up with the fr- prologue from the first season. Oh, and it should probably be mentioned death of Morgoth is, is more complicated than that. Obviously, we're just saying it as a sort yeah, of like colloquially. Not, he's not dead. He's actually he's actually imprisoned. Kind of. He's not. Yeah. Dead, it, think of it as an air quotes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. Go on. Well, I I guess we can we can sort of start there because that's sort of where the episode starts. Um, mm. See, uh, season two, episode one, Elven Kings under the sky. Oh my goodness, Elven Kings! Wow. I love Elven Kings; they're great. Um, mm. We get a recap of the first season, which is kind of what we've been doing, you know, stab, twist, gut, you know, the, <laughs> all the, the highlights, yeah, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> the hates rats. There's so wall many things wall drag, wall drag, all men, wall drag. Yeah. It's so so many wonderful things happen in the first season, um, but it reminds you of a, a number of those things, but certainly not all of them. And then we begin um, at a, a bit of a, a bit of a flashback uh, to the dawn of the Second Age at Foradwaith, which many of you might recall is the uh, the spooky castle, the spooky frozen castle in episode one of season one, where mm-hmm. the place mm-hmm. is so so evil. It's so evil. How evil is it? It's so evil that torches give off no warmth. Boy, mm. that makes that sense. Chad, that's crazy. Oh, Chad, Chad, that's crazy. Ford, Ford Wave is like a massive fucking landmass, and it was always fucking frozen. You know, something happens later, and that you know that's not accurate. But... No, uh, that's, oh, that's right. one question. Uh, you, might, you might be asking, why exactly is this place really far up north so cold? Mm-hmm. And your <laughs> natural response to that question is because it's really far up north. But actually, yeah. that's not how that's not how the climate works in Middle Earth. Bad people have to explode to make things cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, um, here we have, uh, so I get Morgoth is dead, imprisoned, out of the picture, whatever they want to do for um, the Amazon lore. Um, and the elves have won the, elves had won, uh, have won the, the big battles, and uh, we see Sauron, before he's all floompy and, and, mm. and spooky, uh, Sauron is here at Ford Wave talking to a bunch of orcs. But Rags, uh, he, he doesn't look anything like the Zauron I know. What is happening here? Well, this is before you met him. Oh, okay. I see. He was, you know... Yeah. He looks <laughs> the same, but different. 
Yeah, well, it's yeah. the same, but he's different. It should this be stated, he... this was not a wise decision from the creators, necessarily, <laughs> because we've already yeah. got the only other character we're supposed to recognize in this scene for eagle-eyed yeah. viewers would be Adar, who has been recast yeah. IRL. And then we've got a yeah. different look for the main character deliberately in universe. So what I'm saying is a lot of people who aren't going to be as uh, as as big a fan as us might be very confused by this scene. They might be like, what the fuck's going on? Who even are these people? I'd just be like, well, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Off you go. Yeah. Also, it's a, obviously, the, the whole thing with uh, Sauron at this point is like, he can, oh, I can transform and take like all these different forms. Uh, yeah. Just, just keep that in mind. I'm I'm sure they're going to use this uh, to their advantage to create really good stories and stuff. Of course, of course. And he so, keeps almost um, like um, this carbon copy speech. Uh, so like Adar in season one, I, uh, it's the first speech when they, they're about to set off to attack the villagers. He says, you know, we will create ourselves a homeland. We will be free. Some of you will die, but that is a sacrifice I am prepared to make. And the orcs <laughs> are absolutely fine with that. Well, Sauron like, he here says, basically says, he we'll says do the they... same thing, and then they decide no, that they're not fine with this. No, it's a it, little it, bit different. Yeah, but, well, yeah, because yeah. uh, in season one, Adar says, uh, yeah, you have to do fighting and stuff, and some of us will die, but for the first time, we'll be dying for, like, for dying for our homeland and dying in the pursuit of freedom. And this, is... Is, in, in this one, Sauron is just like, <laughs> yeah, some of y'all are just going to, a lot of orcs are going to die, mm. and we're going to be powerful. We will the enslave free, all of Middle Earth and, and, and yeah, unite the it. To, to enslave and torture all of Middle Earth, yeah. Awesome. Which we know they like. I'm on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. But they just misunderstood, though. You know, they're, uh... Oh yeah, Sauron no, says he has a plan. Play. <laughs> Sauron has a plan to create a, a new power um, over flesh. And he's out here on his little... On his little... Uh, on his steps. Uh, and he's appealing to the orcs for their support. He, he wants the orcs to, like, go with him and support him. Uh, yes, and he... once again for their support. Yes. <laughs> but some orcs in the crowd say, oh, he's lying. <laughs> oh. Yeah, in black speech. He's got detractors in the audience who are heckling his yep. fucking stand-up routine. <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> so, you suck. <laughs> already, Boo. already we've got, I guess, Sauron doesn't just automatically, do, the orcs just don't do what Sauron says. He's not mm -hmm. already like their their mega leader dictator guy, and they just do what he says because he's having to get them to you know follow him. But also, apparently, a lot of the orcs just really don't like him, mm -hmm. yeah. and I don't We're... know why yet. So this Which is... is complete bullshit in terms of lore. But uh, this yeah, is because, kind because of they're... Hmm? this is kind of where my theory as to how this lines up. I'm probably giving the writers too much credit here, but what I think is what happened is that Morgoth is defeated. Then Sauron is in charge for a bit, because like we learn in season one that Waldreg knew that he was a Dark Lord, which he wouldn't know if if this was happening, you know, immediately after the defeat of Sauron, then he wouldn't be, uh, sorry, after the defeat of Morgoth, then Waldreg wouldn't be worshipping Sauron, because he was never anything, really. <laughs> but then um, this scene doesn't work, because this is like, you know, th this is supposed to be like right after Morgoth well, that's... dies. That's yeah. why that yeah that's why I don't think it works because it, yeah. in order for this to line up he has to have killed Finrod prior to this scene he has to have mm -hmm. glued all the orcs to the wall prior to this scene <laughs> um, yes, and then do. and then what I was thinking is like you know that pissed off the orcs and it will have pissed off Adar here which is what then led into this scene and yeah. that's why they don't like him the problem is that the title card at the beginning of this scene said uh, dawn of the second age. Which is, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, which is why I just wanted to check and make sure that the second age started when Morgoth was defeated, because pretty much this scene is is staging itself as if this is what a couple of months after Morgoth is is gone, which cannot be the case. Mm -hmm. Well, Sauron must have built is, like Sauron must have built a profile somewhere with power? Morgoth's lieutenant, right? Yeah, so yes. like, like his, yeah, yeah. His, uh, his second, like you know, his second man, basically. You know, Would that explain uh, Waldrig's worship or not? I don't think so, because he would surely worship Morgoth, and the fact that he was specifically like, uh, acolyte's the wrong word, but an acolyte of Sauron, yeah. mm. um, would suggest that, yeah, he was like all for Sauron, while Sauron was running things for maybe a few hundred years or whatever, uh, which evidently did not happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess he could just assume that Sauron took over, but he seems fairly fucking sure. But, uh, but you know, see, this this well, is uh, the the events because, of you know Waldrig is two thousand years later, 
So Waldrick says in season one, he says to Theo, uh, he describes Sauron as he who was lost but shall return, which means that he knows that Sauron is lost and hasn't been around for a while. But the fact that he is worshipping him and wants him to return means that he knows about Sauron. Like, what which if, he wouldn't know if this was happening immediately. What if there was one it orc in the crowd who went, yeah, Sauron, woo! And then once all this craziness <laughs> happens, he's like, no, I, I always, hate, always hate him, always hate him. And then as the years go by, he's like the one orc who spreads rumors about how awesome Sauron is. And Waldrick was yeah. his son, 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 son. There you go. <laughs> no, yeah, no. The, the bit Fixed more it. down the line than that, like 2,000 years later, like I said. But Yeah, <laughs> yeah so... <laughs> How, because in the first season, uh, Adar says that he essentially rebelled against Sauron because he was doing all the spooky evil black magic stuff and getting a whole bunch of orcs killed. But this is him, like, pitching that plan. Yes. So, very yeah. confusing as to Ooh. what the timeline is. How does Adar and Waldreg knowing about it? And how long is Sauron actually in command of these orcs? It, yeah. Well, as we'll find, not very long. Not so very long. I, I have <laughs> not I at have all. You could say <laughs> no clue. Well, everyone always has a timeline. first day on the job that's difficult. You know, this this hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is called an orc hazing. It's totally normal. Also, this scene like suggests that Sauron and Adar have been working together, like doing evil for a period of time, mm -hmm. um, because well, because. Yeah, he ends up here. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get this straight in my head because that still doesn't fit, fit with the time. Uh, no. Adar says that he has worked with Sauron like during the Age of Morgoth, basically. So that does kind of add yeah. up, but there's a bunch of other problems. Yeah, Adar later, Adar yeah. later I, mentions Morgoth and the Chosen Thirteen yeah. in the mountain for you know whatever. He, he, says. he does, but then Adar's whole uh, thing is that he doesn't want the orcs to be uh, killed in order to create a power over flesh. Yeah. He's very sympathetic to the orcs and he wants mm -hmm. them to have a home. And you would think that if he was working with Sauron for a period of time, that would come up in conversation, which means that Sauron should know surely. Even if not for the fact that you've got a whole bunch of orcs in this room saying, ah, Sauron's lying, etc. Oh, he, he should know that everyone in this room does not agree with him. Yeah. But he doesn't seem to. There I mean, I know he's a master manipulator, them, yeah. you know. Yeah. There's a lot of info that we just don't get access to. It is, no. what is Sauron and Adar's relationship? What is their view on what their goals are and what are they willing to do to get them? Are the mm -hmm. orcs able to pick and choose what kind of thing they want to fight for? Um, I guess they're they're not just like mindless servants of evil of the of the biggest evil in the room. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we just are not sort of um, enlightened on, and it makes us ask many questions. But these are many important questions, many and a lot of them, questions. especially as far as uh, Adar and Sauron are concerned, uh, very like character related questions. They should have been talking a lot, uh, Ooh, yes. but I have no idea what the extent of their relationship is. Even though Adar seems to be the number two. Uh, after Sauron here. So. I mean, they could have they could have opened the series with a scene prior to this, leading directly into this, where Sauron is having a chat with Adar and he's trying to convince him, like, you don't... If something bad is going to go horribly wrong if you try and convince your loyal children, the orcs, to, um, you know, die in service of your insane power over flesh fantasies thing. And then we could actually get something... Um, for a relationship, some hint of a prior relationship between these two characters, because what we get in the scene is basically nothing. You're talking about adding scenes, but like, I don't even know if this whole sequence <laughs> needs to be in this show. Oh, yeah. It absolutely doesn't, but <laughs> I'm saying if you wanted to start it, then it could have had a little bit more context, because in season one, the only context that we have for this is the scene in the barn in episode six, where Adar explains that, you know, what happens in this scene. Well, that's what yeah, it, I yeah. guess that's the thing, though, right? Is like I don't need to see why it's all covered in ice. I don't need to see how Sauron got the uh, the little um, <laughs> like amulet thing. I think it only it only adds questions. It, it doesn't help well, anything. Yeah. Apparently, this it, land in the very far north wasn't covered it, in ice for a period of time for some fucking reason. It was spring. It was finally, I finally it know why the ice is there. Winter for all it draws a tremendous <laughs> amount of attention to how little sense the timing makes for all of it. It's like all, all it does is make you go, "Holy shit!" Running into Galadriel was insane. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, like worry. it was, it was already we'll insane in that. season the, one. And, yes, but speaking of the running only, into the explanation is that Sauron has fucking you know plot reading powers, basically. Uh, so Sauron's given a speech, and all the orcs are like, "Ah, oh, he's lying. I don't like this mm. at all. This is, this is really bad yeah, stuff." Bad material. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, one of the orcs, the one of the orcs, like takes out a knife and tries to tries to stab him in the back mm -hmm. in front of all the other orcs. And Sauron's like, "Nope," and he kills that orc very uh, stylishly in front of all the other orcs. He keeps he stabbing him in the face, face too. Yeah, has, like Jesus, you missed, you missed the flipping of the crown, though. No, uh, no, that's afterwards. That's no, afterwards. that's after. Oh, it is. Yeah. No, no, it, never, it, you got you got the Sauron unhinged stab. That's very much an yeah. Unhinged yeah. Stab to be honest right with there. you, considering what happens, right. I would have thought that would have been enough to prompt a bunch of other orcs to be like, "No, fuck you, stab, 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 stab." You know, like that alone. <laughs> if they they know what the plan is, seemingly, or if they don't and it's all spontaneous, well, you'd think they would have done it from that point. That's the, yeah. I think that it has to be spontaneous because that orc that you, know, you see him a few times, he's just, he's reaching for his knife behind his back as Sauron's giving his speech, and then he jumps on Sauron and starts stabbing him. The fact that none of the orcs do anything, um, and the fact that like Adar doesn't do anything, suggests that everything that Adar does up from this point onwards was not part of some master plan. <laughs> maybe it was the guy just um, uh, fucked up the cue. He's like, "Oh, now!" It's like, "Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, maybe." <laughs> <laughs> as he's being be stabbed, he's like, "Fellas, guys." Are we? Are we not? <laughs> okay. Team. That the team? were like, "Here's how we convey that the orcs kind of don't like him." Is this one random orc uh, like tries to get him and then gets killed? But then, oh, wouldn't it be really dramatic if Adar grabs the crown, flips it upside down, and mm. then stabs him? Ooh, like I think oh, it's that God. simple. Well, Even um, my Adar. Well, after that, that orc gets killed. All the all the orcs are like, "Yeah, yeah, Sauron, you're great. Oh boy, you're awesome." And then they present a very spooky evil crown. It is a very evil, very evil crown. It looks very evil. It's all spiky, and it, it, it's it's all pointy. It's very bad stuff. And uh, Adar gets it, and uh, Sauron kneels, and he's gonna get crowned. He's gonna be king of the Fordway, king of the orcs, Yay, king of whatever. He's gonna finally. be the leader. We, you Ooh. know, we love our pomp and circumstance. The hero completing his so, journey. That's right. Yay. Wait. So. Uh, Adar kills Sauron with the crown oh. and flips it upside down because the top part is extra pointy. And when he stabs Sauron, Sauron's like, ow, why'd you do this? Not really, Sauron, you can see it in his eyes. Sauron, would Sauron also just kind of... hear him doing that as well. He shows him the back of his neck and he's like, hey, don't stab me even though you guys all clearly don't like me right now. And he kneels down <laughs> in front of him to get a I, sharp well, crown put on his head. Well, he think, I think he thinks Adar's on his side. I don't know why he would think that because of the, the master manipulator the didn't know this was going to happen. Well, we didn't know that Adar was. He didn't necessarily know. Listen, we don't have we don't have any, we don't have any idea what his relationship with. <laughs> Rags trying to say we, we have, have no, no information to work with. <laughs> yeah, if we have, if <laughs> we have no, idea. no information to work with, and then we have to just infer something that makes sense, and then it's like, well, no, because that means that the show doesn't make sense. So that you're just you're just constantly Sauron, battling against your own assumptions. I think Sauron and Adar, I guess they're on the surface okay with each other. At least Sauron seems to trust Adar. I guess he certainly does here. But, um, like, why would this? It's absolutely yeah. a mad way to introduce a villain as important as Sauron, who, by the way, is like he's a, basically an evil mm -hmm. demigod, and mm -hmm. Adar is like the regional manager of a Wendy's. It's not like a comparable power relationship. Sauron should be able to see all of this coming. Should be in command. Should yeah. be in charge. If you have him killed by his own hat. How are we supposed to take that seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was killed by, by like one week several of the lower level workers, all right? Several, like maybe even eight <laughs> stabbed him. But what I was going to say is they found odd about this moment is he looks up at the crowd and I, I just get the impression that the way that he looks, he's like, oh good, the stabby part is facing up, not down. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it was an incident before. Yeah. He's like, maybe, maybe he's going to stab himself kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Then it makes a really fucking loud noise when he flips it and he doesn't react whatsoever. Well, you know, there's an old saying in Fordway, if, if it's stabby crown down, get out of town. Mm -hmm. so, of course. I don't think there are any did. towns up there. I think that was actually on the Ring of Power later. In Black Speech, it, it's something yeah, written down. Uh, yeah. yeah, Gandalf says that when he takes it out of the fire. <laughs> um, anyway, so boy, you know, you know what they say about stabbing, you can't just do it once. And uh, we have our little Julius Caesar moment, and all of the orcs <laughs> they just get to stabbing, it's a stab fest. Oh my goodness, they stab, boy, do they stab. Yeah. Playing, uh, it's like Rebel Moon all over again. <laughs> yeah. a song I, I will say. I know they tried, but they couldn't outdo Zach's portrayal. Like the, the, uh, Zach still wins this one for the the cringeometer. <laughs> he he blew it open. Oh yeah, this isn't. Oh yeah, this isn't cringe. It's just orcs. They stab Sauron a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it goes I was actually about... surprised by the by the bloodiness of the scene. I was like, oh geez, yeah. okay, that's surprising. Well, yeah, but it's yeah, black. A lot, get away with it. a lot yeah. of blood comes out. That's true. They can a just be like, no, it's mud, bro. <laughs> mud. <laughs> it's, it's muddy. It's all the. It's mud. 
all the orcs, they stab and good. stab, and Sauron tries to fight back, and he flings some off into the wall, uh, as he loves to do. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but, but it's just too much. There's too many orcs, too many stabs, and then Sauron... Uh, Sauron dies. He's still... Adar gives him a couple little tap-taps to make sure that someone's dead. <laughs> you and okay, bro? And then he... <laughs> Yeah, he's like, you all right there? You all right? Just, uh, we're just kidding. It just, a, just a prank. Just a prank. But it was not just a prank. They meant it for realsies. But the thing they is, killed yeah. Sauron. Because they left it so open. Maybe Adon knows what happens when you kill Sauron, that he explodes with ice, and so he's kicking him like, do the, do the ice thing, go on. <laughs> Something's supposed to happen, come on. Come on. Well, it, uh, it's a little bit so, amusing the way that it's actually shot, because it goes really silent, and while his kick is like, right, so there's going to be some big loud sound yeah. that's about to happen. I've seen yeah. TV shows and movies before. <laughs> yeah. So from the first season, all that we really know from Adar is that he killed Sauron, or he believed that he killed Sauron. So mm-hmm. it's pretty easy for us to imagine in our minds some... Uh, we have a lot of room of interpretation for how, uh, how Adar thinks he killed Sauron but didn't actually do it, especially because we don't know really anything about sort of the nature of Sauron's resilience <laughs> in this show, or how does he come back from the dead, or what do you have to do to truly kill a being like Sauron? So it, it was it wasn't really an issue in season one, at least that one little bit. But now they've they've elected to show that to us visually. Yeah. This you is just have to stab him a bit. The TV show. Well, it's it's a lot to be fair. You have to stab yeah. him a shit ton, which yeah, you need fair like fifty enough, orcs. I guess. You need a lot yeah. of orcs and a lot of stabbing. Or one Galadriel. Yeah. The pointy crown. A pointy crown. <laughs> yeah, the pointy problem crown. is that they, they were just stabbing. They weren't twisting and gutting, so that's yeah. why he oh, comes back. Yeah. But, but he wasn't an <laughs> orc, though. He's not an orc, Those so fools. they don't have to. Those yeah. True, true. Um, so uh, he explodes in ice. He, he makes a little... The, the body of Sauron, he screams, he goes, blah! And then Blarg. ice shoots out from everywhere. He explodes in ice. And we see ice fill the room, all the orcs and everyone gets knocked down, and the entire landscape around Ford Wave gets icified, mm. and now everything's mm. frozen, and it's winter time, baby. Yeah. So, well, everything is frozen except everything right around him where it exploded, because yes. all the orcs just stand up. It's like, no, oh, that's annoying. Fine. Anyway. Well, so yeah, what... they all get knocked down, but... What's, what are, what, why did this happen? Oh, because that's what happens um, when Sauron dies. He explodes in ice. Because Ford Wave is cold, and we need an explanation for that. You know, like but the you know, mortal was created, and we need cold. that for. <laughs> no, no. Well, <laughs> it can't. Be it a thing. can't well, Ooh, no, it no. can't. Hold it on, can't just because... be cold. It has to be yeah. so cold and evil cold. Mm. Yeah, it has to be evil yep. cold. Evil cold. <laughs> most most cold places are just cold. Completely morally neutral. Cold. <laughs> But we need some evil cold. Evil. Why? Why are they in Forward Wave? Because that, that's not explained, not that I think it should have been, but just out of curiosity, does Forward Wave exist in the lore or did they make it up? Yeah, Forward Wave exists in the lore. Yeah. This specific fortress, I think Rings of Power calls it Dornos, does not. But there was yeah. one of Morgoth's old fortresses. Um, yeah, uh, but... Olmo? Olmo? No, that's the, that's the Valor. Or, or Tomno, that's the one. Like yes, that used yes. to be up there, but it was destroyed in the first age. And I guess they just thought, well, Morgoth used to be up there. It, it, it'll be a cool place we haven't been before, so we'll we'll do yeah. that, and then we'll make it really cold, and we'll show how it, it became cold. It, it, in the it, space it, of like his old uh, his old fortress is under the sea to the west now. Yes, under, I guess it's... like basically half a season. If you go from like season one, episode six to now, they've turned the bottom half of Middle Earth into hell, and they've turned the top <laughs> half of it into like the cold version of hell. They're doing a tremendous <laughs> amount of environmental damage in quite a short space hell of time. Those are the cold version of hell. Those, those are the, no, the You get the hot hells and the cold hells. Those are the main ones. You don't get you don't get any mild much. hells and stuff really. I don't know. Maybe maybe mild hells for people who are really like non-committal or it's something. Like apathetic isn't, isn't that purgatory. Mild hell is purgatory. Maybe. No, I don't know. <laughs> um. Well, so yeah. Uh, he 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 explodes in ice and then boom. So now you all know why. Because I know you've been asking since season one, why is it so cold here and why is it evil cold? Well, now you know. So they've answered that this was pretty question cool. that's been like, sitting on everyone's mind. Uh, I think uh, this had a, a, a trillion viewers live that we were all going crazy. The whole world went nuts. Everyone queuing around the corners to find out about this and we finally got the answers. So. I remember where I was when Sauron exploded. Yes. Made it to every news <laughs> but, uh, station. It's just a big deal. 
strange as it is, I guess that's just what happened when it happens when Sauron dies. He explodes in ice. Things get super evil cold. <laughs> and I think that based off of this, uh, Adar can reasonably assume that Sauron is uh, proper dead. His body is gone. Only the armor and the clothes are left. He's 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 poofed into you know, ice and transformed. He, he does an Obi Wan Kenobi, and you're saying it's reasonable to assume he he's dead. Listen, his body, he fucking ex his body explodes after he explodes into ice. Uh, I think it's does, not unre I don't, mean... I don't think it's unreasonable it's... for Adar to think Sauron's dead. I'm not sure I agree with that. All you know, right, in fair. a world filled with magic, especially by the way, considering like. Of all of film and, and storytelling, also on the audience's end of things before I do ADARs, like, I, I think someone being gone and their clothes being left behind is oftentimes a thing of, like, they will return. It, it, you know? Yeah. For but ADAR specifically, that. well, that's what I'm saying. For ADAR, it, it's, it's just a matter of he knows how powerful these creatures are. That, like, does he, do they often, when dying, have no body to see? Is that a thing? I don't know. I, I wouldn't would think... To... Anything for sure I with think that? We'd, we'd probably have to lean pretty hard on the these beings being so because we don't know he's a Maya, right? That's what he is in the law. Yes. Yeah. So so that's never stated in the show. Like a um, swan. My my Maya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Um. Yeah, that's never stated in the show. But like, uh, given how presumably rare those creatures are and how powerful they are, their deaths are not going to be something yeah. that people are going to really know about. So that. They're basically minor gods, like the they're very high up. And if, yes, in this yeah. story, Morgoth can be killed. Then, well, well he wasn't killed. Sort of inverted commas. He's supposed to come back in Judgment Day. The, 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 is it the yeah. Dagor Dagger? I think it is. But like, none of that's in this show. So we, the, the show just says he's dead. So yeah, I guess so that's they, what we have to assume. So if they that think, he is. Yeah. So if they believe Morgoth can be killed, then especially, I guess, if you can well, just it, stab Sauron and he just. The blood pulls out and he dies and explodes in ice and there's nothing left. That is, like, yeah, that is more, definitely what happens them. when they die. Just trust me. We don't need to check. <laughs> That's just what they do. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like I, I don't know what we could draw from this. Uh, the main way you just be like, well, we did something to him. Um, yeah, I assumed he escaped, but when I saw this, but yeah. mm. there is another potential anyway, problem there's... as well, which is that like, if we compare again this to the opening of season one during this time. Galadriel is searching for Sauron, and it's like yes. she searches for him for a yes, thousand right. years. Did she not think maybe the North suddenly becoming really cold makes that <laughs> a very, cool. very good place to check? That's a good point, actually. That's, she yeah. got That's there where eventually. she went after a thousand years. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> should we check out an ice there. explosion over there? It's like, nah, it's mm -hmm. been fine. It's all the time she took to get there is being counterbalanced by all of the super fast time travel in, in season one and two. That's how they've managed to uh, sort of balance it out, yeah. Mm. As far as... Um... I, as far as the believability or not goes, it's it's interesting because there's a lot of stuff here that I've written down that uh, the, a lot of my notes end in question marks. I have noticed as I was <laughs> watching the show with uh, <laughs> Random and I, we were going I'm blame you. It. And uh, I have questions like, why would Sauron need orcs for these black magic experiments? If the orcs hate the idea of being used for these experiments, why not use captured people? Why not use animals? Why not use the blood of other beasts? Why? Why does he specifically need orcs, especially if he's pissing off the orcs um, and he knows he can be stabbed to death? It makes me, makes yeah. me wonder. Yeah, he's, he's particularly um, vulnerable where he is, uh, in, in a sense, now knowing how the mechanics must work. So uh, you'd think yeah, he'd be a little more careful. He's just a uh, massive retard. Like that, that's, what, that's a way to put it. <laughs> well, he's a, well he, we won't say he's inconsistently written in that regard. We all saw season one. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Um, I have notes about how uh, why when, when Sauron is talking to the orcs when he says the Valar will never forgive the orcs. What does he mean by that? Did they fight on the wrong side? Did they choose uh, the incorrect side and they're being punished for it? Or what about orcs that were born after that? Or uh, it, do, do we have just mass racial punishment? What is what is the what's going on here in terms of all of that? We don't know. It's that is it's, uh, the nature of what the orcs are, their agency, and what the show wants me to think about them, it it makes me do a little peepo sus. That's part like, of the hmm. uh, the shittiness of the speech, where his main appeal is everyone else hates you, so it's like. But dude. I'll kill you for <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah like, kill, I'll kill less of you than if you follow than if you don't follow me is pretty much what he was doing. It's, I like uh, how he says everyone hates you, and then he kills that one arc kind of stage. <laughs> but me, I killed you with love. <laughs> 
Yeah, in in the actual lore, like the orcs are just uh, they created by Morgoth, and so they're also like bound to him, and by extension, they're also bound to Sauron. So they just you know, uh, they're not really you know, they're not really free. They kind of enslaved to his will, in in the actual lore. But uh, you know, fuck so, that. So, um, a lot of good stuff so far. Pretty strong episode. <laughs> uh, so after everyone's <laughs> after everyone stands up and everything's icy, and they're like, "Wow, that was weird." I guess Adar. Uh, he gets up in front of everyone and he says, yeah, freedom, we're going to get you freedom. He's gone, and I'm going to lead you to we're going to get a home and stuff, and you'll, things will be great. And they so and they say, yay, all hail Adar. All hail Adar. So Adar's in charge of him now. Woo! Yay, all right, go. yeah. Okay. You know you Boy, can trust Adar because door with the management he, here. he elevated Waldreg to lieutenant, so I'd say that that's, that's yeah. evidence of Adar's Adar intelligence. Adar is way better than Sauron, absolutely. Yes. <clears throat> I just thought of another goddamn question. Surely, <laughs> Foradwaith can be their home. They're already there. No, there's nothing to eat. No, no, it's frozen and icky now. <laughs> they, they run outside, run back in. Like, Sir, all of our fucking farms have been frozen. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, that man. That means they'll last forever. That's good. Oh, well, I tried to in, like, sir, my cow is now bleeding like evil goo. Like, yeah, and it's like I tried to melt it all with my torch, but the flame is there's no heat. <laughs> like, <No. it's> like... <laughs> You get out of here, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we plugged that hole. I guess that makes a bit of sense. All right. Of course. Yes. Yeah, very much so. Now that that hole's been plugged expertly. Um, so, Sauron's blood has remained. Yes, His body may yes, have disappeared, exploded, done magic, whatever. Um, there's a lot of its magic. I ain't got to explain shit in this show. Um, so, it's magic. Except the blood. Mm. The blood doesn't explode. The blood you see, that is a leftover from Sauron's uh, demise, uh, it starts to uh, drip, drip, and pool, and run down in between the cracks of the stone floor, and it drip, drips down into a cave beneath Foradwaith. Um, and, and then it, and there it remains for an amount of time that I could not tell you, but I think we're implied to yeah. believe that it is quite a long time that it is down it just, there. Yeah, like a whole hour. Yes, it, it just... He just exists for a puddle for a couple of hundreds or just, thousands of years. I always Sauron want, is a blood yeah. puddle. I always want the goofy payoffs of just the blood slipping down and then fucking some orc goes, Hey! And starts stamping on it. Stop it! He's, he's getting away! <laughs> <laughs> he's getting away! Get him! <laughs> I to they get a straw and they're like, oh. <laughs> get him, pick him up. The orcs have a little outpost out there, like for eternity, you're stabbing him every hundred yeah, years. Yeah, stab the, the blood. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole this whole section that we're go that we're seeing now that takes a couple of minutes on screen we're meant to believe I think that this is centuries possibly as much as as long as a millennia. God, That's yeah. the only way it makes some amount of sense. Yes. Well, because Galadriel is always is, is, sorry Galadriel yeah. is already hunting him at this point, and yeah. she says in season one that like century gave way to centuries, so it was like hundreds of years. The only I mean, other option theory... if someone fucks around for like a thousand years, just wandering as Holbrand doing fuck all. But, so yeah. I guess they removed his armor from that spot where he died, um, or else Galadriel would have found it, probably. Yeah, it's so, good armor. Um, no, but you know, some but, of uh, and, and even, Maybe in the timeline, she was here in season one, episode one, while he was just a little blood puddle uh, in, in the little cave, and she was so close, <laughs> so close, and yet, and yet. Um, so we see one of my least favorite uh scenes a little rat is just trying to do his best he's in the cave his home has been icified um this used to be a nice neighborhood and mm. then the orcs moved in <laughs> and he's trying to scrounge some food and he thinks he finds something interesting and then uh sauron turns into the uh he, he turns into the goo from little nemo adventures in slumberland and he grabs the rat and kills the rat and eats it. Ooh, and evil. Get a evil boo. Evil. That was right in his own fuck. business. That rat didn't deserve this. No, um, he didn't. So, black goo, not good. It kills a centipede. It just uh, it gets slowly but surely bigger and bigger. It's implied that it is eating uh, little, little critters in the cave and getting larger and mm -hmm. larger. Uh, taking on a uh, admittedly somewhat vague uh shape now uh, it actually it's a little bit creepy i i, I think it's kind of got these little floompy arms and it kind of like pulls itself out of the cave and then it slips out of the cave once it gets sufficiently large and slides down into the snow 
You're making so. it sound so much better than it is. I was going to say, what the fuck? <laughs> so, <laughs> first of all, it's good that they got work for the same actor who did so much to make Resident Evil 5 so strong. And uh, I, I think that, that, you know, seeing all of this evolve this way yeah. is, is kind of... Yeah, I mean, there's something to work with, but uh, I could not not laugh at certain points. <laughs> I thought it was too fucking funny. The, um, uh, I got your at. Oh, I got your centipede. It's when the, the funniest shot, flops, I think, is when he, yeah, when he flops out of the mountain. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. Like, yeah. yeah sir, bro. Bro, really Slides really down stupid. the mountainside. Yeah. There Send it is. Size. <laughs> <Wee. laughs> um, it's, uh, so, it's a bad choice uh, compared to the many choices they had. I don't know how many people here have seen the first Hellraiser, but one of the things that's so impressive and shocking about it is uh, near the beginning a character is like just droplets of blood until it pools and then gradually like with reverse photography and a hell of a lot of different kinds of uh, amazing work they sort of create like a horrifying it's like reverse melting essentially until he, he's gradually able to get parts of his body and bone back and I was thinking like it would have been really cool if we had something like that this is uh, silly. It was more, to say the more least. recognizable mm. body parts, maybe I, forming or it's just slowly. Like, it's like a big floopy clump of seaweed, like falling down a Pretty mountain. Much. It looks really stupid, and or like a bundle of worms or something like that. It looks fucking. Ugh. And I don't know. I think it would have been way creepier to have had like an approximation of a of a fucked up like bone hand sort of squirm out and actually grab the rat instead of the. The tentacles, which feels a yeah, little more generic. Yeah, the tentacles are meh. Um, and, and yeah, for like, because I can buy that it maybe requires that sort of thing to regenerate, but like some of this stuff I just wouldn't show, especially sliding down the mountain. It looked like you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, I think this is where this he decided villain, to not guys. be evil anymore. I think this is where he decides, like, you know what, this, this is, is fun. Maybe I'm just going to go around and have some fun. It's about uh, time I fucking did something that was for me. <laughs> Wee! I wish it's I could so, have, uh, a, have a shot of him climbing back up to the top to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hey, I got time to kill. So, uh, good thing, uh, good thing that Sauron got killed right above a place where there were where, where there were cracks in the floor, and there was yep. a cavern full of bugs and rats to eat, so that he could uh, regenerate. That's uh, that's really really fortunate for him. Imagine if he was in a cave that was like actually just completely closed what if, off. Yeah. And, and yeah. Like <laughs> what if his cave, cave. death yeah. spell that he cast was the reason there were cracks? He he, that was why he did it. He went rah. Ah, and he went, so ice. Yeah, yeah, it made it so that a thousand years later there'd be a little gap that he could it's get sure. out of and slide down the mountain. <laughs> it does make you um, think, though, like if he had died by like drowning, because presumably he needs to breathe. So you, if he gets sent to the bottom of the ocean with concrete tied to his shoes, then he's going I to die down there. The end. Yeah. That'd be good, um, though. And so if he can... gets, um, you know, set on fire, like burned to a crisp, and there's nothing left, because I was thinking maybe Adar like did that to his armor, probably, because you probably would, right? Yeah, might as well. Mm, yeah. Mm. One of the orcs is like, can I sell it? It'd be worth so much. He's like, no, I gotta burn it. Like, to who? <laughs> it, it, I was like, to who? To, to, who, to oh, literally to who? who? Oh, who God, has you... the money? Who here has the money to buy that sort of thing? You know what we make. You just made me think the fact that they didn't show us the armor getting destroyed means it's probably gonna fucking show up in like the Hall of Lore in Numenor in season Ooh. three or some shit. <laughs> we found this in the cellar somewhere. <laughs> Look oh, at this. Was, <laughs> a thousand years ago, we had a spy who got captured at Forawaif and then he found it and he, he brought, brought it back to I guess. Or at least maybe he shipped it. I don't know. He's gone now. He hid the arm wrap his ass to carry wanna... it back. Boy, this is gonna this is gonna be a long fucking episode. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know uh, you know him do it as a little <laughs> slither. Like a giant fat slug. I just want someone to watch the whole thing, you know, to be like, what? Yeah. Get close what enough this? to him, he can't attack you, but he, he like, you know, he like, one of his tentacles sway, you sort of out, avoid yeah. it. Yeah, and you're like, what yeah. are you? He's yeah, like, blah, blah, they should have just had him, fuck, like, fuck crawling up, and then they stop when he gets to the, like, the little hole for the surface. And they don't even show, they'll show him flooping out, having a good time. This is this is that a Lord yeah. of Midnight. And then we get one of the most, you know, that feel when Mondays sort of moments. Yeah, it's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sigh. <laughs> this this um, particularly was the moment where I was like, are you serious? Are you seriously <laughs> showing yeah. me this? <laughs> what? Like, what do you the want funny me? Part is that, the funny part is that means he climbed up on the rock first for yeah. some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and then flopped back down. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm just gonna have a little sit down. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> Man, being <laughs> being pure evil is fucking hard. Like, <laughs> I wish I had legs. Well, they want to show oh. us his struggles so that we see, uh, feel we, we so that we feel more sympathy with him later on. <laughs> But like, if yeah, you show this is, several is. times to a person and then say, this is Sauron, you be like, <laughs> what do you mean it's yeah. Sauron? Wait, wait, remember the Sauron. first time you watched Lord of the Rings and saw the, the battle in the opening prologue and fucking Sauron beating everyone up? Like, you imagine he would be in this situation? We said he was a shapeshifter, okay? <laughs> yeah. You've even got the Hobbit, like in the Hobbit when he has no body, he flies around as a meteor, and it's like, okay, I've seen you've been well, reducing like your power, but at least it looks yep. cool. Like, he's and a shadow yeah, in the a trippy hallway. shadow and thing, yeah. that's also pretty yeah. cool. He can do stuff, and like, he's about to go and glomp some old woman and turn into a <laughs> no. man somehow. But like, Interesting. if you what can do, do that, this? why wouldn't you just glomp <laughs> the rat and turn into a rat? The rat would have an easier job yeah. of running across this place than the flop monster Maybe he does. Can't so turn into a. All we have to work with rat. is whatever we see is what he could only do. <laughs> that was I guess, yeah. yeah, really fucking. Like he's trying his best. He doesn't even have a brain. Okay. <laughs> you can totally imagine a little platoon just walking with him, be like, "Why don't you turn into a rat?" He's like, "Fuck off! <laughs> well, I'm trying." You're about to fly. <laughs> yeah. It's beneath me. Sort of this a... is way more. <laughs> what about? a bat <laughs> turn what? into a middle and get eaten by a bird and then turn into the bird and then the bird Ooh, can yeah. fly and then turn you can go somewhere else yeah. like he has to be sat in the cave at some point just thinking I now have but one choice I'm going to go and flop across it's due to man no steps in between oh fucking hell well, look at I him mean yeah you tell him like hey why don't you turn into a rat or why don't you turn into a bird and his response is just gonna be no 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 no. I need to go and look like Charlie Vickers so that Galadriel wants to slam me the audience would, I'm saving all my, my power for that yeah he has clobbering powers he just knows it would be interesting oh. if, like, out here he turns into a deer and specifically, like, positions himself so that he will get hunted by humans, mm -hmm. shot with an arrow, and then they consume his flesh mm. like he's a fucking parasite. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh, they, they, like, imagine the horror Bleh. scene. <laughs> Weird bursts yeah, out of several then, of them and it all connects back up into a person. Yeah, it, it like, comes from the inside out and it envelops them because they've eaten his the, the Sauron deer flesh. I don't, and then, I don't uh, think the makers of this show yeah. do that, you know, like... Right or interesting think. things? No, I don't think that. Yeah. Is, no. oh. If only but, they know. would have thought about it casually. Then they yeah, throw it on the throw it on the maybe pile for when we get two hundred yeah. million dollars to burn. <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll do it. Like, oh, uh, we have this character that can transform into stuff. What should we do? Keep him the same character for the most part. It's like, oh, okay. just, like Rag That's suggested smart. that the right room. They're like, but I really want him to glop on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Look how funny it would be. Glop though. on the floor before he does the thing. <laughs> we'll have him do it. <laughs> yeah. the They're like, no, I just want the glob. Your, your thing takes away from the glob thing. <laughs> the glob thing I want him to be a little goober glob. I need to read this from chat quickly. Uh, if you can't handle Sauron at his most flaccid, you don't deserve him at his most direct. <laughs> Rude. What the fuck? <laughs> well, you know that direct. when he is lying down after that little flu, you can tell he was like, I was almost the king of the world, man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does a sigh. He does an audible sigh when he lays there. <laughs> I bet you're asking, how did I end up here? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how I ended up here. So, um, he slides down the mountain, and there's a... We, we don't know how much time passes throughout all of this, but he makes his way sort of to the to this valley here, and he is able to kind of flump himself onto a road, and... Oh, Steve's... Oh boy, here it comes. Oh, no, God. boss alarm. Run. So he's on the road in the cart, <laughs> and there's a cart that comes by. There's a lady on a cart, and the cart goes across the road, and he sticks to the wheel and rides up the wheel, hops in the cart, and then he, oh, he eats the woman. Oh, no. Mm. He I mean, I mean, the woman. I mean, just... But it just, I, I, I was, I was already having so much trouble with what I'd seen. When I saw this, I was like, "What? She ran over Sauron." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got run over by a car. Maybe the unluckiest oh, lady in Middle Earth. Oh, did, oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, here, here's why. Here's why it doesn't make sense that this is, you know, a thousand years later or whatever. Because what the fuck is this random woman doing in the frozen hellscape north? <laughs> well, what are you doing well, up we, here? Well. You, you, we have no idea how long he's been here. Uh, he's on a yeah. road. But uh, if, if she's come here, by it has to be like within the same week. Because who, well, why the fuck would you be up here? Be, it doesn't have to be the same week. It could be. This could be a hundred years. It could be two hundred years. <laughs> Someone yeah, come by eventually. Be it could be we don't know. <laughs> like, I think, I think it literally means like wasteland. Like there's nothing up here, basically. 
There's a woman in a cart in a road. There's a road here. There shouldn't you be can see one. The tracks. Why should there not be a road up here? Uh, well, okay, hold on. Because it's been I, I don't a thousand think... years, no one should fucking be here anymore. We have no idea why people would or wouldn't be up here. We don't know. It's a frozen hellscape. If the time period is longer, oh. though, and there's there's a long period of time since it became a frozen hellscape, then there's maybe more of a justification for people going up there to see what is there, maybe. Or maybe yeah. she's gone to find something. I, I don't know. Or maybe she's know. coming to she kill herself. <laughs> And we, maybe, we say, maybe. Just, we, we say frozen hellscape. It's just it's just frozen. It's just like a winter place. It's like someplace really up north. That's why we didn't assume it was evil at first. It was just well, it looked like a really cold place. The way so they do the fading why. and the camera work, they the the writer could be here right now, being like, no, 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 this is way away from where he was. Okay, I thought we yeah, we don't. Uh, we got yeah, he's been traveling for like 50 yeah, like years. he's on the he's on the we border now know. of like normal places, non frozen. Right, places. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That, that could be the. Case. They could they could argue that. Uh, what I was struck by is was this completely lucky? Because Sauron seems to get hit by the first wheel and be like, ah, "Hey," and then grabs the <laughs> second one. <laughs> like, he was just there sleeping and he just grabbed on. Yeah, the he's like, one. "Oh shit, let's he go." Wasn't, yeah, he oh, wasn't yeah. going. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah. Wait for it. There goes first wheel. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> I just love it shows... if they put the sound effects in of. <laughs> oh, <whoa! laughs> if it was if it was a cart that only had two wheels, he would have been out of luck, and he would have had to wait another year or month or whatever until some random traveler came through here. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We know. But uh, he <laughs> he climbs up the wagon wheel. Uh, he eats the lady, and then we hear the. <laughs> yeah, they. They actually cut a deleted scene where he comes up, sits next to her, and he's like, I have had a doozy of a day. And, talks to her. and she's like, oh, my God, talking goo. And then he says, all goo can talk. And she's like, oh, yeah, I guess I never considered that. Yeah. I just assume goo can. Yeah, they get into a discussion about race, and that's where it goes wrong and he eats her. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, you know. You know what? I believe it. Sauron is like, wait, you're just as racist as I am. And then they kiss. You can be my queen. <laughs> You will be my my dark queen. Hey, can I interest you in being a queen? <laughs> Just the first woman he finds. Oh, I've never been a queen of anything before. He's like, I, I was almost yeah. king of the world, you know. And she's like, yeah, old Goo says that. Yeah, <laughs> You're okay, not the yeah. first fucking yeah. one. <laughs> all the frogs say kiss me, I'm a prince. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we've been here. Well, romantic oh. music starts playing. It's been a long time since I've seen a woman. And then... <laughs> It's, great it's been stuff. a long time since I've seen a um, woman, but oh, this, is, even, this is what I meant. Time, this whole sequence, I was just like, "Oh, we are so back." Rings of Power season two, baby. <laughs> it's gonna be so stupid constantly. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right. So what yeah, start, she, uh, what a, what a Sauron Goo eats the woman, and then Halbrand steps out of the back of the cart. It is Halbrand. Man. Here he is. Unlucky for him. Also, the horse ran off. The horse he escaped. <laughs> the horse ran. Horses. It could have Which been a half, half Halbrand. Because Sauron might have become a horse. We have no clue, but he didn't. Yeah. And uh, well, he might have gone faster and never met Galadriel. Oh, you don't oh. have to worry about him having trouble <laughs> traveling across the continent. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's 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 Halbrand. Here he is. Oh my goodness. So during all of this point, I suppose Galadriel has been looking for him. All the elves think that he's basically gone or dead, except her. There's been no sign of Sauron in a long time. And there is no reason for uh, Galadriel to think that Sauron is alive or around. No. Uh, he's been up here in the snowy mountains as a pile of goo, and he has just now obtained a, a human form, and it looks nothing at all uh, like what it used to. He just looks like a guy. Mm -hmm. How big do you so, think the trench is by now that they've been dug? You think how big oh that boy, is? Oh boy, we'll now? get there. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that because we're almost <laughs> at the point where we have to start asking pesky questions. So um, <laughs> another nondescript amount of time passes and he walks a uh, nondescript amount of steps. Uh, and uh, it is implied that he has walked uh, from Fordwaith to the Southlands, I believe. Yep. Uh, because he uh, he's out here. Look, what a wonderful change of scenery. What yeah. a lovely countryside. Uh, he meets a bunch of people. Well, luckily, that's right around the corner, so it couldn't take that long, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Interesting so, uh, enough, says it takes us like 1,150 mile journey as the crow flies, so that's not going around the mountains that he would have to go around, which actually adds like another third to that journey, so it's a long way. Yeah, he has gone so, an insanely yeah. well, you guys don't long know. Distance. He could have shapeshifted into having wings and then lost them. <laughs> True. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Yeah. Eat a, eat a few. Eat a few ducks, and you. you know. 
The distance uh, that he travels is around about double right. the distance that Bilbo travels to get from the Shire to the Lonely Mountain, just for context. Oh boy. Pretty much. <clears throat> so, um, um, yeah, a lot of questions. Why is he going to the Southlands? Why specifically here? Because, I mean, we don't know. It's, I mean, I, I don't know. Why would he know to go there? Uh, is it the plan, our, the thing, the, the symbol he carves in? Well, the symbol he I'm can't have here carved is, into yeah, anybody's body because, because he wasn't Mordor doing yet. that. It isn't Mortar yet, so he doesn't know. I I don't think we are supposed to know that he knows how much time has passed. Just a long time, I would assume. Uh, is there already a plan to turn the Southlands into Mordor at this mm. point? I I so, guess there is. Except the volcano, because it was there must be. Yeah. There must be because all that yeah. stuff. Because after this, he meets Galadriel. <laughs> so so I point, assume that all that stuff is set into motion. Yeah, so at this point in the uh, in season one, Adar has started, uh, you know, sneakily taking over and burning down villages and then enslaving the populace because um, he's digging his trench and he's also looking <laughs> for the evil sword that Sauron made. I because I, oh, that that sad. is that is referenced in season one by Waldreg as being uh, passed down by Sauron. So I don't know how Waldreg knows that it was made by Sauron, but we're supposed to infer that it was made by Sauron. Wald, Specifically uh, to activate Adar Mordor. Yes, yeah. Adar doesn't it's know where it is. Lever. It's even worse it's... to activate yeah. a lever in an elven yeah. garrison that will open yeah. a dam to activate Mordor. Yeah, yeah, it opens a little door for the water. It's a it's a glorified lever. That's all it is. <laughs> well, which means fucking, that had had Sauron and Adar not not had a falling out, then he would have known where the evil sword is or... and been able to create Mordor well, a thousand years ago. I don't know why the sword dam. is lost. Why is the sword lost? Sauron should have that on him. Like all the time, or it should be like that's that's a that's an instrumental key to think, this entire plan. It's it's, it's Waldrig, yes. the eternal Waldrig, kept it for the abortion. <laughs> and it's, the yeah, old Waldrig. man, old man Waldrig has it in his arm. The Waldregs are quite beloved in the history of the you know okay. the, um, the like it's the like bad guys. Like they, 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 yeah, there's loads. They go way back. I think this. He's got a lot of no Morgoth blood in him. Actually, you can trace it. It is where it turns up as well, like, the, the evil the sword league. thing is in his basement for, like, the entirety of the lead-up to when it becomes relevant in Season 1, so he's had it the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Protecting um, it, he knew. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> so... You could just swap it for a pickaxe. They should have just collected mind. enough orcs to all spit at the same time into Mordor, and that would have done it, right? Mount Doom. Yeah. I mean, they could have just destroyed the that's dam. That's all they, all no. they had to do. No, they that didn't doesn't even make any sense, dying. Mel. What you just yeah, said was crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. I just checked something. So this is based. This is what Waldreg says, which could be false, but he says that the evil sword was fashioned for our ancestors by his maker's own hand. So Waldreg mm -hmm. thinks that Sauron made the evil sword for Waldreg's own ancestors, which means that at some point there was a plan to do what we get in season one with Mount Doom. Yeah, yeah, which is why they have the 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 symbol being etched into the skin of the elves they kill, but. If that was the case, then why are they even still up in Faradwaith at the beginning of this season when the plan must already be in motion? So they really should already be there, which canonically they I mean, are already there. there. Be, Someone goes there to could be a huge amount of time between then and the plan happening. This could have all been started while <clears throat> Sauron was reforming. It's just strange to try and like no. lay it out. Uh, I don't think it could have started too long before the start of season one because the longer it takes, the more insane it is that no one realized what was happening, because there are elves... Oh yeah, but we're already there I in mean, insane territory. It makes no, they, yeah. they cleared, like, Gal massive Galadriel didn't look at a map everything. for 2,000 years, like, you know. <laughs> like, they're, they're trying to dig a secret trench, and they decide to level the forest for, like, a so, hundred yards on either side. To be clear, did the elves build... It's... They must have built... The, the, the elves part of that facility, that, that structure, was that Lost before Earth. or after the plan mm -hmm. was made by So. Based on what we get in season one, Osterith is the the fortress, the, the tower that is a symbol <clears> of our strength that they then blow up. That is an elven uh, stronghold. It is yeah. it's referred to as elven, which suggests that the elves built it. How Sauron put a mechanism in there to put an evil sword hole to open a dam, who knows? Um, the dam was already there, but nobody thought to look into it. And the elves didn't know. Well, they noticed the evil, yeah. like the, the actual place where you stick the evil sword, because Don Lemon says, oh, I've seen this before. And then lo and behold, in his own tower is the evil sword hill key. And so they <laughs> built the tower around it, and nobody thought to ask any questions about why this very obviously evil thing is... should be built into this very obviously yeah, suspicious like a, dam. Like but the orcs seem face. to be building a massive it's trench leading away from that we didn't spot. There's so much shit that <laughs> happens, but like at any point, any... 
kind of like stealthy orc could have just activated Mordor, really. I guess they have to they have to build the why so they expected people to have to build the trench as part of this plan as well. That, that was like a big thing. Yeah, they, yeah. for yeah. some reason. They yes. have to know about the volcano being dormant, and that's then so they have insane. to say, "All right, so we need a big uh, water source that's high up." There mm -hmm. it is. We will Ooh. dig a channel that leads all the way. And they didn't get spotted the entire all know time. I know it's season one ship is still. What do your elf I see? Oh, yeah, it's nothing. crazy. Nothing at all. Nothing. They put tarps on it so and they can see. And remember as well, they didn't it. trust yeah. any of the humans in that area. They thought of them all as, like, you know, evil because they're the offspring of the offspring of the offspring of the people who t t uh, signed up with Mor uh, Morgoth. I guess different elves have different mm. perspectives on it, but they're definitely not really trustworthy people. That's why they're <clears> still here. Well, I guess yeah. all I'm saying is that you'd think they'd be a little more like interested in stuff? checking out, making yeah. sure they're not doing evil things. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially <laughs> if news of villages being burned and everything, because Hal Halbrand here, he runs into a bunch of uh, refugees from <laughs> the Southlands. Uh, <laughs> isn't that convenient <laughs> Also, him? apparently there's been no sighting of orcs for like, you know, 2,000 years, but... He runs but all these villages just, just keeps or getting burned for some reason. No one knows why. No one yeah. knows what they're running from. The guy he speaks to and feels the... like he's the guy who writes for the elves. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking spamming like life advice. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, and he's just, I... he's just trusting whole brand immediately. Like you know, this is just random guy next to a village that's just burned down. I'm I'm gonna go bring <laughs> this guy with me. Regs, I, I so Yo. when we watched when we watched through this the other day, um, I wish that we had actually recorded your reaction to this dialogue. <laughs> Because it was, so, <laughs> it was so funny <laughs> when Rags is just slow realization that oh my god they're actually doing this. So um, yeah, so he meets uh, he meets this guy. His name's Diarmid, right? Um, big D in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, a little, sure. little big D over here. He's got a, he's got something around his neck. He's got this. Uh, my he's god, got this little insignia, this little pouch. The hmm. thing. Oh boy, it's a oh, thing. Oh wow. Look well, at that. that means she's the king of the Southlands. Ouch. You know that. He's yeah. the king of the Southlands. Big D's king of the Southlands. Big Daramid, the diadem having dude. He actually uh, says he's yeah. not, but uh, yeah. No, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's just humble. He's just humble. He's just humble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I think there'd be a lot of stuff that they could have done that obviously they didn't. Halbrand should be asking, uh, like Robin Williams and Jubanji, what year is it? Uh, yeah. things of that nature. Uh, maybe he hears it's a different age, or he maybe he hears it da da da. Um, but now we don't get anything really interesting like that. Uh, because if there is a plan to terraform the Southlands, he needs to find out if it has happened yet. Um, if people or if people are actively working towards it, if that plan is underway. Um, and we have no idea why the orcs waited this long to start the plan doing this Southland terraforming into uh, Mordor. Uh, and again, we have no answers on how the spooky blood sword got into the old man Waldrick's barn. Uh, nope. We don't know why Sauron didn't keep it on him. Uh, we don't know why Sauron should be looking for the sword now. We don't know. Is he going to where it should be? We we don't know anything about it. I think they've said 100% uh, doing a side, like another show for Waldrick, I think. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Right. a spin-off spin right. show for Waldrick. A Rings of Power story, right? <laughs> yes. The Lord of the Rings, Waldrick. Yes. Waldrick. The Waldrick Lord of Waldrick. No, wait. No. No, do we do a spin-off game like Lord of Ring Gollum, just Lord of Ring Waldrick? Can you crawl <laughs> around as <laughs> <does> Waldrick? <laughs> you crawl on walls and do stealth missions. You get Mordred, to count it's potatoes, your time. Three oh. people in Mordor. And the final uh, mission. You is, leader. The final mission is getting that key. It's a DLC mission yep. to show you how he did it. He killed a thousand uh, enemies getting there. You you just didn't see it, it was off screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a badass, so, dude. Hell yeah. So on his way from from Ford Waith, he goes, uh, Halbrand goes all the way from Ford Waith to here, and then right at the doorstep of where he wants to go for some reason, uh, he meets a guy who basically says, Diarmid says, uh, he gives him a bunch of, uh, a, li a bunch of life advice. Uh, he tells him to be good. Uh, he says, fates <laughs> are never certain <laughs> that fortunes can turn for even the most powerful. A sure I... path may crumble, but there's always another. Often it can lead us someplace better someplace good they say there's uh, places across the sea a man can escape himself and find another life or walk on and keep chasing death whoa i found this so confusing because this is sauron 
what yep. the hell is <laughs> what am I meant to conclude from this? That he was seriously <laughs> entertaining, turning good. He hadn't considered being good, Fringy. I don't I just that's, Yeah. Just yeah. Be I mean, good. That's so, what um, this one convey conveyed in a bit, you know, with the him him just wanting to smith in Numenor, you know, he doesn't doesn't want to part in the big world anymore. In What's a very a very short conversation, Sauron bumps into a guy who says, No, don't go over there and seek revenge or death or whatever. Uh do you know be good, do something do something else and change yeah, your life for the better. And yeah, come yeah. with us. Yeah. We're yeah. we're and going on a boat, yeah. so oh, you should come with us instead. And um Sauron does. Yeah, I was like, all right. And not only that, but it's the first guy that he speaks to. Yeah. yeah. Really the, first yeah. 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 the implication would be if he had just bumped into some guy who said, hey, go just climb up a tree and just sit in a tree. He'd be like, hmm. He bumped... <laughs> well, or if he yeah. found a guy, if he found a guy who was just like, oh, man, my fucking bitch of a wife just like cheated on me. I'm going to go and like, you know, stab her or something. Then Sarah would be like, oh, I can help you out with that. Oh, yeah. I can either. He, bumps... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he bumps into Kristen Cole. And he... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's all shit, fuck it. Maybe we'll die, mm. I don't know, whatever. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, that's kind of just sort of what happens. Yeah, uh, he, he thinks about he it for like mm. three seconds, and it's like, alright, off to the boat we go. Yeah. <laughs> True. He does break break the other scene in season one as well because he is wearing that that one brooch with the one symbol that Sauron will need, but at this present moment does not know that he needs, yeah. but yet will take mm -hmm. anyway. Um, if this is the kind of thing that Southland people might just randomly be wearing, then yes, it's very dumb that Galadriel should ever believe that this definitely means that Halbrand is king. But the people who are most stupid is Bronwyn, she who will not be appearing in this season, no. and like, all the people around her. Because like, she looks at that symbol when he turns up and says, you must be the king that was promised. But, it's like, but if old <laughs> random dudes wear this symbol, how can you possibly have made she that conclusion? She says this to a lot of people. Everyone thinks it's annoying, but she every does single it. Every single person. Like, the the person. Are you the king that was promised? Are that you old guy got stopped like promised? thousands of times. Yeah. We were just walking Put it on a couch. Are you, all, ask. are you all kings? Like, no, 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 I just found that. It's just a reminder. And he starts doing the same speech he does to Sauron to every single one of them. And then, all the other people like just shut up, go away. So yeah, this guy has uh, successfully, very quickly turned Sauron not good, but he has turned him away from seeking his revenge on Thank Adar, goodness. which is I assume why he's heading is, uh, to the yeah. Southlands. A, a way to conclude that he was that easily convinced, basically by just literally like, yes, because that's yeah. what the show does. Yeah, so it I does. Think, not I really, say, uh, the uh, the characterization of Sauron has been very dire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so dire. That's one it does, it does get a little bit more complicated and it start, starts making a little bit less sense as a result of becoming more complicated in the next couple of scenes. But yeah. for the for the moment, yeah. if it's not enough to convince him to just be good flatly, it's enough <laughs> to convince him to not hunt down Adar, right? Yeah. That, that's and what this as, scene tells us. And as we can probably gain from that, not just hunt down Adar, but get these, whoever the orcs are now, get them back in line, start his plan for powers over flesh, uh, and, and begin his whole reign of ruling over Middle-earth, get all that started. So, uh, he's gonna put that on hold, maybe indefinitely, because, uh, no. you know, uh, I got a boat, and it's going slow. So, uh, yeah, just imagine all the ways that they could have uh, shown scenes where Sauron uh, slowly but surely learns to leave behind his old life, he meets new people, he he encounters people he's never seen before, people who maybe are kind to him or take him in. Maybe he meets uh, someone that he falls in love with. Maybe um, he's... All the millions of things you could have done because you have hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, <laughs> you love him. Look, look, at, look at this shot, Rags. Is this not love? Look at, look at that old man. <laughs> <laughs> Draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, Halbrand, uh, they're on the boat. They're crossing the sea. I do not know where it left from, and I do not know where it is going. Um, it I don't think it's going harbor. Um, right. It's the Bay of Balfalus, which is sort of like on the map that was in the Discord. It's like the one just to the slight southeast of Mordor. It opens up into the bay. Yeah. It's the one the Numenorians sail in through that's 450 miles away from where they left. Mm. Uh, is so that where this boat comes out of? Yeah, if uh, this the only around, river around going, unless area. it would, yeah, it's, they can't get onto the sea the other way, so it has to be. Are we meant to yeah, believe? We walked across Europe, so are we meant True. to believe that this boat is going to Numenor? Yes, I have no clue. I'd, I'd seem so. I That's have what no I idea. thought. 
because Numenor you would has think... never mentioned taking. Yeah, oh, yeah I think past that would have been Numenor mentioned. in order for Galadriel to get there, right? Well, yeah, I have because no idea if back well, does, but I just if the boat that's is the going, game. if the boat is going to Numenor, then it kind of slightly plugs the hole a little bit as to how they could have crossed paths in the ocean, because at least it's the same massive well, part right, of ocean. If, if <laughs> no, no, no. The, the problem, the problem right. is that Galadriel is way further west than Numenor, so no, it doesn't wait, make sense. But but if if they're wait if they're sailing to Numenor and they're like, hey, we, yeah, we're fleeing from orcs. Doesn't that like? Wouldn't that mean that if they got there, that that could like change a lot, actually? Yeah, yeah. Also that, yeah. That, like, and I guess like, this was the only boat crazy because crazy. if others had arrived before yeah. them, the Numenorans yeah. would have mentioned, yeah, a bunch of human Southlanders like, yeah. refugees came here. Apparently, apparently, apparently so season orcs only attacked this one village and nothing else. In season Otherwise, one, we didn't have any <laughs> mention in Numenor of them having refugees, taking in refugees, or refusing refugees, whatever they might decide to do. That's not mentioned once. The closest um, you get is the elves thing, the anti-immigration thing about the elves. They don't want the yeah. elven workers so coming in. And the the one elf on yeah. the island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they, they specifically <laughs> relate that to elves because of the what ends up happening with Galadriel tricking the queen. Well, I say tricking, accidentally tricking the queen and then going to war and then pissing everyone off. But okay. just in a general sense, like what honestly, what might have been effective is because obviously what happen, what ends up happening is that the the little raft that they end up on with the other survivors no one else ends up surviving. They get killed, they get eaten by the sea monster and Halbrand and Galadriel are the only ones alive. If all of them had made it to Numenor, then we could have seen maybe what Numenor does with those other uh, Southlanders. But mm -hmm. then, the, as you say, the problem there would be that, that that would mean that Numenor would learn about the orcs too early. Yeah. And Numenor or apparently has uh, fucking settlements in well, Middle-earth already for some reason. I, I got, logistically, where would this boat have had to have... Like, how far are we meant to assume that Galadriel swam? 4,000 you know I mean? miles. Well, it's about 4,000 miles. It was at the edge of, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the promised land. So, uh, so it's, uh, it's I, fucking insane. I'll, I'll get a map. Hold on. Was the yeah. idea of either this boat was really, really, really in an odd place, or Galadriel swam really, really far? Well, I don't know. Well, she swam very, very far indeed, yeah. So I can't remember exactly how I ended up on the number of 4,000, but I did sort of research it when I did my season one videos, and if we're yeah. assuming that she was going to swim from Valinor to Middle Earth, that's about the same as swimming from the Caribbean to England, which is obviously insane. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, if, done that. If, her, yeah. if her plan was to swim from Valinor to Numenor, then I have no idea, because I couldn't find anything, you know, even remotely close. Damn it. A long way. A long mm -hmm. way to swim. <clears throat> And she's wearing um, a fucking dress as well, which is just insane. Like, that's, like, the worst thing that you could possibly be wearing <laughs> while swimming. I feel no. that makes you faster. Mm. It, I can tell you from experience that it does not. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> wearing a dress when you go swim, then. <laughs> Do tell. That's why, no. yeah, I don't wear anything when I swim. I just jump in. Mm -hmm. No, I've, I've, I've swam a lot, like, while swam. wearing... God damn it! This is why it's confusing <laughs> me. I'm... Okay, I, ha I have swimmed. I have swimmed. I'm now speaking like I'm an elf. <laughs> it's, 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 I it's have swamped. swimmed. <laughs> I, I've I, swam while with... wearing clothes, while wearing baggy clothes before, and it is a lot harder. True, yeah, I had to do it for uh, Boy Scouts and Search and Rescue and stuff. You had to... Jump in the water while fully clothed, and then you yep. had to like take off your pants, and you had to. Oh God! <laughs> Listen, <laughs> uh -oh. no one molested me, and there you had to like kind of inflate them a little bit, and it was. Uh... So yeah, so is the uh, is the the placement of Numenor on that map is is uh, canonical in terms of the di the distance between it and Valinor versus Middle Earth? There are a bunch of different versions. I think it's somewhat accurate. Um, but this, this is from the distance that Galadriel swam compared to Frodo's journey, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. Which yeah. is still <laughs> insane. Like, you, you, can't, yeah. you are not doing that. I don't care Even if you're a fucking Even on this graph, she that. avoids the D. That's what he... Yeah. All right, or, well... Or rather, it's the, it's the boat trip Galadriel took, and she jumped off where the red arrow ends, somewhere around that area. Um... And then the ship would have to, like, have sailed past Numenor until the Undying Lands, which is fucking forbidden. But, um... Yeah, was that what yeah, they were It makes no go? fucking sense for them to go there. That they weren't well, actually I... going to Numenor? I don't know no, why they, they were going to Numenor. Been... No, I hadn't well... even considered they were going to Numenor, because surely there are a whole bunch of other places in Middle-Earth that you can just go to, yes. right? But, but, you know, they end up where Galadriel is, so they have to go in that direction. So they have to be going to Valinor. <laughs> Which they can't. Yeah, <laughs> Men are not allowed to go there. They were like, oh, I might as well try. Let's see what happens. Maybe so that's why the sea monster appeared. 
Did the Valar <laughs> send the sea monster to make sure that they couldn't Protect get into the Valar? Pretty much, that's my interpretation. <laughs> what did the Numenorians say, though, when they found out about the ship being destroyed? Like, oh, well, the sea is always right. Fuck you guys. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, get eaten. My wife drowned, but the sea is always right. Then. The sea is always right. <laughs> what a fucking moron. God, they, make it, just, they make it even worse in episode three. I'm not going to get into that now. Uh, but, uh, yeah. You want that awkward scene where it's like, the sea is right, but the creatures in it are wrong. And if they eat you, the fuck them. Okie dokie. So, um, yeah, they're on a boat and it's going slow they're and they boat. have a conversation and uh, it's really, really great. Uh, so, that, 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 Diarmid is, uh, he asks, uh, Halbrand about his nightmares, like, oh, I have fucking nightmares. Uh, and Halbrand says that, yes, he's done bad things, which mm. he has because he's fucking Sauron. Yep. Um, he's fucking Sauron? But he is, he is, <laughs> right, right. He's fucking the, himself. Right, right in the, the book. Wow. Right in the, well, hmm. Halbrand. I mean, he's a shapeshifter, uh, so he probably can do that. Hmm. Uh, but uh, Diarmid tells uh, Halbrand that he's alive because he chose good. <laughs> well, that's not true. He's alive because he, he ate people. Like... He's alive because he's a magical <laughs> demigod creature. True. He did not he choose good. good. He's he alive not because he ate a woman. You know what he's like, he you know, I got, I've got these, like, regrets of this life I've lived. The guy is like, you know, we've all done that. He's like, dude, I was like a, a trash bag of mm -hmm. jelly absorbing rats. I <laughs> you should have seen me 50 years ago. You wouldn't believe it. The, the old dude is like, you know, I've stolen, I've punched people or whatever. It's like, I, we're not the same. Yeah, I've, I've <laughs> tortured <laughs> entire populations to death, you know. <laughs> the old dude says that. Like, to make sure this yeah, never we all do out. that, you know. All the it's time. Like, like, season one had the same thing happen. It's when um, they, they're in the uh, scene when she's, they're, they're in Numenor, and Gladriel's talking to him about how, you know, she's had a bit of a dark past, and he turns mm. to her and he's like, as evil as possible, like, you have no idea what darkness is. I've yeah. done things that the most yeah. evil person in your life has never even dreamed of. And she says, it's fine. I don't need to ask yeah. any questions about <laughs> this. Just look um, for the future. Put it don't worry about you. it. Choose well, good. Choose life. So oh. I was figuring that, like, from the old man's perspective, he's talking to someone who clearly has been traumatized by something that he has done in his past. And like, if you, the worst thing that he could imagine that this guy is, is probably like a serial child murderer, right? And his response to him isn't to maybe work out like why he did what he did and maybe get him to deal with it in, in some other way. I don't even know how you would approach that, but he approaches it and says, you just got to be good. Like that's mm -hmm. it. That's the end of the conversation. Like yeah, that's a good point. Well, no, it isn't. It isn't the end of the conversation. We have a few more words left um, <laughs> and, and then it's done forever. Um, so uh, <laughs> Diarma tells, uh, like he says Hal to Halbrand, you're, uh, you're alive because uh, he chose good. And Halbrand asks, well, what about tomorrow? And Diarmid says, you have to choose it again. And the next day and the next until <laughs> it becomes a part of your nature. The uh, conversation uh, ends and that's, that, that's it. That's it. That's all of it. We're finished. <laughs> it's, it's just, Those two characters are now basically done. It's here to let us know that Sauron really did think it through. He even got like a wise sage mm -hmm. to help him along the way, but he chose evil. Yeah. Needed the, someone the purpose, to believe in him. Remember, the purpose of these two short exchanges is to set up the idea that maybe Sauron is teetering on this, uh, this idea of maybe I don't have to be Sauron, the evil orc gluer, flesh magic maker... <laughs> Maybe I can just maybe I can just go and live my own life or do whatever. It's supposed to set up that being a thing he considers, and they are yep. two very very short conversations, and that's all that there is. There's no more after this. Remember when and the in season one where he said, "I'm the connection to power, and you can be the connection to being nice or whatever to Galadriel." See, he was even thinking about it then. He was like, "I might be a good man." It all makes sense. Yeah. He was thinking about this old man when he had that conversation with her. <laughs> If you I have could someone, make him a queen. <laughs> if you want to do what they're trying to set out, these are not the words that I would choose. Um, there's stuff in here that I would just, you don't, you, you don't say like, oh, you just che keep choosing to be good. You would have to say stuff about how being good isn't something you do just once. It's a, it's a repetitive thing that you have to, you know, do every day and, and you have to stick to it. And maybe he says something about how being good isn't easy. It's a difficult thing to be good, but it takes great strength of character and da, da, da. And maybe this could be in tandem with people being good to him. And so he sees that, oh, maybe good is pretty good because I've always been surrounded by like orcs and shit. So, you know, I, I'm not from this kind of life. 
but they they like super speed through this entire uh what's very very important for his character section and it's uh it's really bad and well, you, it's uh super convenient you suggested that like they could have completely changed instead of having the the old lady in the cart roll past and then he eats her and then becomes halbrand like what if he comes out of the mountain as you know looking like halbrand but not in a good way like he's his legs falling off you know really bad he, he looks like he's really badly injured and he's not moving and then this nice old lady like rolls past in her car. It's like, holy shit, this guy's nearly dead. What the hell are you doing here? And then nurses him back to health um, and doesn't expect anything in return. Then that would potentially give him a reason to yeah. actually feel some kind of empathy for someone that prior to that, he would have just felt, just, you know, just in a cave for. for a thousand years. And the, you know, the first thing that happens is this random person that finds him, helps him out. Um, and it begins, it's the, it's the first of many little steps on trying to turn him into a good person. At this point, though, we're writing a different show. But that yes. will probably happen a lot, because what they do is uh, pathetically shallow. Um, anyway, the reason their conversation is cut short is because a sea monster attacks ah. the boat. Holy fuck! Um, and it bumps into the ship. Diarmid gets pinned under a beam. Um, and Halbrand yanks off his insignia without um, really saying anything to him or helping him. Yep. And then he and then he leaves. And just before this happens he yells to to him to grab onto something as well. So it's really fucking strange that he just he yells that out and then doesn't help him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Diarmid's alive, as far as I can tell. He's yeah. he's alive. He does not Yeah, Sauron is still he, he doesn't help Diarmid, he just takes his insignia and runs. Because he, he like, knew I, he would need it. What they could have done here, which I don't think this is what we're meant to read, is maybe he tries desperately to save him. Because even if he gets him out from under that thing, he's probably fucking dead. He's an old man in the water in the middle of the ocean, so he's going to die anyway. So maybe he fights to actually try and save him, realizes mm. that, quote-unquote, being good doesn't actually accomplish anything, and then that affects his uh, actions going forward. What we end up getting here is that he clearly cares about him because he tells him to grab hold of something, and then he's like, oh, well, I guess yeah. you're dead, and then he leaves. Or, or the old man gives the the emblem to him as he's. Or that, yeah. He tells him, yeah, "Don't, don't bother sense. trying to get me out. I'm done." Yeah. This yeah. is, oh yeah, take this insignia. It's the past of our people, yeah. or something like that. It's our. Da, da, da. Yeah, perhaps you can, the, you know, the true king. The true king is out together. there somewhere. Oh yeah, he said, yeah, out there is the true king somewhere. You have to find him, yeah. or actually, you're going to Numenor, so don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so hey, maybe he, you know what would be better yeah, at so. this point, Rags. We just said, "Look, shiny, take it." <laughs> yeah, but he just grabs. He just he just grabs it for a reason. I don't actually know why Mine, he takes. Well, the you read the script, so him yeah, grabbing exactly. it. Read the script. <laughs> unironically, that seems to be the reason why he takes it is because I don't know that's, what that's the, reason the reason is. For a lot of things, he does. There's no reason for Halbrand to just be like mine and take that insignia because mm -hmm. it's not valuable. It's just a little little symbol on a bag. Um, the only but, thing I can think of is that he would want it to establish some kind of cover story to suggest that he is actually from the Southlands because he's been inside a mountain as a goo monster for a thousand years. He doesn't maybe. really know the way of the world. On them. Like sure, how, but how it actually tries to If anything, it makes it worse. I was about to say, wouldn't because it Because then... now he has to explain the information of the insignia and what it means. And, and if anyone around him survives, they could all be like, no, we picked this guy True. up. From yeah, fucking whatever. Told you to take that thing. He could just say he's from the Southlands anyway. You're right. So. Yeah, that, that insignia yeah. does not help. It makes things worse because he has to invent stories that can be verifiably proven yeah. wrong. So, yeah. but he I does just sort thought, of tell the truth got... though. When Galadriel asks him about the symbol, he does say, "I took it from an old yeah. guy," yeah. which he he's, just he's, has he's done. Just dead guy, so he's technically like dead guy. Even well, <laughs> I suppose it's it's semantics. You know, a dying man. <laughs> So it just made me think of something else, though, is because we see in a minute, like, my read of what happens in a minute is that he mind controls the sea monster to not eat him. Right. But, but yeah, but if that is what happens, then that what? implies that in season one, when the sea monster comes back and kills everyone else, that he wanted that to happen because he could have prevented yeah. it and he didn't. Yeah, that's really that, weird. It. Yeah, so that would then suggest that maybe he wants to get rid of all of the other Southlanders who would then be able to poke holes in his backstory. He can then go to Numenor because he knows that he's going to bump into Elendil at some point. He can go to Numenor without the Southlanders revealing who he actually is, and without them revealing that there are orcs in the Southlands too early. That's I don't really think nice that makes you. any I just, sense. But I just thought they Galadriel fucked it up. Around the person Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just thought, yes. it's like, oh, the fish realized that his power level, basically, and I was like, oh, then why the fuck did it attack again in season one? Like, 
just yeah. shouldn't do that at all. It resets um, after a while, it's like an aura. Oh, um, yeah. it was still a cooldown. So it's um <laughs> yeah, we we end our our little prologue sequence here for season two with Galadriel swimming up to the raft. And man, were they proud of themselves yeah. at this point. The soundtrack was like, ah, uh, 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 yeah. I'm like, yeah. I feel so bad for Bamak. Yeah, we, we know. <laughs> so, like, I just want to ask you guys, like, at this point, given the extra backstory that we just got, do you guys think that Sauron is in, like, full full speed ahead, let's be evil, or do you think he's still conflicted? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> it's really hard to tell. If you were asking the writers in season one, they would have said conflicted. If you're asking the writers in season two, they would have said he's doing everything deliberately. Because the, yes. toward the end of season one, they actually have the exchange and he yeah. tells Galadriel, you created Sauron, which implies that up until the point at which she created Sauron, i.e. after the moment we're seeing on screen right now, nothing he was doing was deliberate. But I think season two has sort of looked at that and thought, well, that was a bit controversial and seemingly quite unpopular. So maybe we need to give the impression that actually our main protagonist, Galadriel, is not the most evil person in the world. <laughs> so now we have to retroactively give Sauron cause from the beginning. It just it doesn't work because they haven't actually lined it up. Yeah. At all. And, and it also went with him seemingly wanting to stay on Numenor and just be a smith. Like, well, and him, does, him wanting to work. be the king of the Southlands. It it's like he's just going to be in charge of all the filthy peasants in the Southlands. Yeah. How does that help him? None of I that mean, makes any sense. Yeah, what would have happened if um, Waldrig, if if like they didn't manage mm -hmm. to switch out the sword, right? And they got it. It's like, oh, well, then Mordor, would, like that would have just been the end. And he would have just been chilling out in the Southlands, I, mean, I guess. You, you could just fucking slam a pickaxe to that fucking stone wall and make the wall well, go out. You know, you don't do yeah. the question sword of, whatsoever. Would he just lap as the king of men until he's like, you know, this is boring. <laughs> I kind of want to do something but, else. Well, that, that was that was yes. what I figured based on season one. I literally figured that. Well, he's this elf has just said that I'm the king of the Southlands, so I might try and wear that hat for a little bit and just see. Well, what well that's that's the good. That would have been a good thing to set up as a parallel for him, where yeah. he starts off as being king of orcs, and that's that sucks. Orcs are shit, and he gets stabbed and no one likes him, and he's evil himself, and it's a very, very lot of negative energy in this relationship. Yeah, yeah, negative. And then he eventually learns, oh, I can still like lead people, but like in a cooperative sort of way, I can, you know, be in charge of of men, and men are not orcs, which is a vast improvement. And I could live in a nice place, and it's like an almost like like the same but different. But he learns to be a good king to take care of people, and he chooses that instead. But at this point, we're just uh, writing a different show. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there we go. The Rings of Power season two has begun. You know, if you had said uh, end of episode one, I think some people in chat would have been like, oh. Oh my okay. god, you guys have no idea. We've been, here, was a for, short episode. We've been here for a hundred or so minutes, and we have so... Oh yeah, how far in are we in the episode? This is the longest episode. I think yeah. also, this is the longest episode actually, of the entire yeah. Caesars. It's a good point as well. It is 22 minutes into the episode, which, I mean, I was just personally struck by how much uh, we could have just started here. We didn't need any of that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, they just created so many more... They, they created so many more problems of them meeting. Like, he could have taken longer to eat some rodents, he could have left through a different <laughs> hole, he could have taken longer to find a human victim, he could, couldn't have met the, fu the fucking random old man, he couldn't have, could have wandered somewhere else. Uh, what else? They, could, they, they couldn't have attacked by the sea creature, uh, the blown could have gone a different way, so Galadriel never met this. The odds were already super low in season one, and then they just added all of this on top. It's like, oh, that should just not have happened. <laughs> it's just... Insane. Yep. We cut to present day. Yay! To see Finally, two of my favorite characters, Elrond and Galadriel, mm. yeah. two <laughs> incredibly well-written, high-quality characters that I love. Current, so currently much. on a multiple-day chase through the yeah, high-speed chase. <laughs> they're on a high-speed horse chase. Um, so I did not understand. What so here's what's happened. On? Here's what's happened. What's happening right now is that Elrond has somehow grabbed the rings of power, mm -hmm. put them in a little bag, and he is on a horse going fast, riding to Linden to deliver these rings <laughs> to heal <laughs> Galad. <laughs> I'm just no. drinking something. Please. Can we just? I, just, I, I want to say there's a pin in the in the, in the board. Not necessarily why I'm saying this will be clear now. I just want it known. The foundation of this season, the first scene that's not like prologue and everything, is 
two characters very quickly moving from uh, Linden to Oregion, or rather the reverse. Um, mm -hmm. I just want I, the 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 process of moving from one of those places to the other is the first scene of this retarded show this season. Mm -hmm. you know, and I know exactly. Way. I know exactly what you're getting at, Mola, and that is the uh, distance that they clarified the exactly of how far it is, which means that we know how long it should take, which is why nothing makes any sense. You could, maybe well, you could argue they're very passionately invested in moving from one of those places to the other right now, and that's why they're doing it, and they're doing it pretty fast and efficiently. Whoa. Well, consider, hmm. I don't think that, uh, well, okay, think about this. So at the end of season one, when the rings of power are created, we are left with the three rings sitting together on a table. There is Celebrimbor there. There's Galadriel there. And there's Elrond there. I know him. So we can only assume that in between then and now, Elrond grabbed those rings and put them in a bag and then went down to the bottom of the forge tower hopped on a horse, left the city, and has been running at a breakneck speed towards Linden. No one has stopped him. Galadriel hasn't uh, somehow found a way to stop him yet. None of the guards stopped him. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. could have called to someone. Is that He was somehow, we'll just have to grant that he was able to do all of those things. This politician was able to get uh, uh, the better of her and he's riding his horse better than her because she can't catch up, but she's so close. Oh my goodness, but she just can't do it's it. It's also just funny that the the first scene of Galadriel is her just like, give me those rings! Like, give me yeah. <laughs> good yeah, rings. fucking rings! Give me them rings! Yeah, her first line in season two is, Elrond, give it to us! Give it to us! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You just have to imagine the scene that happened that we didn't see. They were just putting the rings in the back, and I was like, "Oh, can I can I see those real quick?" It's like, "Oh yeah, sure." And it just runs off. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they 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 gallop, gallop, gallop. Man, oh they, no, Galadriel. They sees have her like a half meter they... away from him for ages. It's just like yeah. perpetually yeah. stuck right behind him. It's supposed it's to be they do this all the way from Regan, by the way. You'd think she'd be saying stuff like. Dude, <laughs> like, Come on. What does are your you horse not have to like sleep or eat? Yeah, like it would take. Do we not they, have no, to they sleep don't or do eat? this? Yeah, apparently not. Given, um, given, this is the thing. Given uh, that she jumped into the ocean, you have to assume that she doesn't need to sleep or eat. Um, yes. <laughs> and given the fact that at the end of season one, she carried Halbrand on a horse to uh, a six-day ride, and it heavily implied that they did not stop at any point. Ugh. Which well, means no, they say it. It's not implied. They say it. Yeah, it would have been right. longer. Oh, they, they say it. Yeah, said, okay. Yeah. So it, yeah. If they if they say it, then that's even more concrete. So that means essentially that the dis the travel between Eregion and Linden, right now that we're seeing, they're doing this without stopping. Which yeah. time frame wise, given the distance and given approximately how fast horses go, means they're making mm -hmm. this journey in approximately twenty two hours. Which huh. no, but that doesn't. Which does not there. does not work <laughs> at all. Uh, These are Valinor we, that's horses. like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> we we know the distance from Edoras to Minas Tirith, and that's three Because, days. I'll also so, point uh, this out, yeah. because this doesn't matter until later, but I'll point this out. So, at the end of season one, um, Sauron reveals his identity to Galadriel for no reason. Then, the next time we see him, he's in Mordor. Um, which, and it oh, takes yeah. about six days for him to get to Mordor, right? If he's riding full yeah. tilt and he, get, he goes to Mordor. Which means he's not there yet. Yeah. Which means Th that by is... the time... By the time we see him doing things in in this season, that is taking place probably at least at the very least a few days after this chase that we're seeing right now. Yeah. And the, um, yeah, by by the time he ends up getting back to Eregion, we're talking at a minimum a month has passed, which does not line up at all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this this is longer than the distance that um, Gandalf and Pippin travels from Edoras to Minas Tirith by about uh, an extra fifty percent. So, like you know, add Three like days, one and a half right. days. And we're talking about yeah. the Lord of Horses here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's, on, yeah. that's on Shadowfax, the best horse in the fucking world. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's, that was all talk. <laughs> it was yeah, just a title. <laughs> I just want to say as well about some of this struck it out to me. She's she keeps fucking going to grab the rings, yeah. and it's like mm -hmm. Elrod, maybe maybe put them in your hand while you're you know yeah. just put them somewhere they can't easily be grabbed <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know put them in like his pants like fucking gremlin just trying to grab at it all the time <laughs> look how close <laughs> he gets we will, we will have to uh... oh this this looks like the the scene uh, from um fellowship where the ringwraiths are reaching ugh, for frodo when he's riding yeah. on the a little bit yeah 
<laughs> Why did they put Galadriel in that position? What 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 did it mean by this? this? Is, that, dude, there's so many of those in this season and in the last season, and it's such a like we have yeah. Lord of Rings at home sort of shit. Mm -hmm. You think so you, know what the, you know what the funny thing is? I would is? never I, have this at my house. I I rewatched Lord of the Rings like this year. At no time I was thinking about the original trilogy while I was watching any of these. I never. Like, I, I don't know. It's easy for me to. Oh, to no. Got you an avocado. <laughs> <now. laughs> I got the faces up back. That's an amazing face. Oh no. <laughs> okay. It is, so it, we it is, we have uh, guys. We have got to make some fucking progress. No, we don't. <laughs> this is the whole reason we, we said two episodes at a time. Rags, do you remember what happened? Season one, episode we one and two. We have barely begun to scratch. I mean, we're the like one a minute into. We yeah. are a third of the way through episode one, so time six. We're on schedule. We are on schedule. We're not the third way through at all, man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so they ride, 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 ride like the wind, and eventually. Mm -hmm. Elrond, because of a very inconvenient bush. Um, <laughs> that's I, that's I, a rude thing to say about Galadriel. Wow. Oh, no. Worse than inconvenient. Um, oh, but, there's the face. <laughs> uh, Elrond arrives at Linden first, and then she arrives shortly afterwards. Gently. When she arrives, the guards at Linden tell Galadriel that she has to come with them because Harold Elrond um, has essentially commanded it of them. I was it's trying to imagine because... how that would play out. Like he just rockets past, he's like, "Arrest me!" <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know why uh, Elrond has enough authority to tell the guards what to do. Period. Let alone to take Galadriel, who we will later learn still is the commander of the Northern Armies. Mm -hmm. But he's a politician, Rex. Oh, so, true. Yeah. <laughs> well, so can we just, only... uh, just to roll it back a little bit? I don't know how the fuck he teleported ahead of her. Like he just disappeared. Well, the bush. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. You you blink, yeah, yeah. and then he's like, he's gone. It's like, wait, what? It's like, yeah, oh, she yeah, was he's reaching, the, but then there was a glitch. It's like, because oh. uh, they it's do. Like it's, it's a one when Halbrand teleports like way further away from uh, from. Uh, Personally, Adderall. I would have edited it such that you show her um her reaction where she's like, man, she's like, oh, well, look out! But they show this shot. He's got about what is that, like <laughs> three meters of cover before he's back out again. What did he do in there? Mm -hmm. No, there's oh. a bush. No, um, the, so so on the left-hand path where he goes, that is the entrance to Linden. No, but you can see that. Like sh this bush is only really short. <laughs> like he can only hide <laughs> temporarily. What I'm saying is, like she, I don't know what happens to her. She like it's like she goes on a drug trip and then cuts back into real life. <laughs> no, whoa! It, like just just the to be clear, okay? Up, like, really one of those quick, kinds really of bushes. Shortly, it's like, oh. you get in there, and then she's like, oh, he's gone. See, like. That doesn't make any sense. He, she would see him going up that route. <laughs> yeah, she, he just disappears. Yeah, yeah. He does just actually disappear, Whoop. yeah. Yeah. Because I, I understand so, what the filmmakers, oh, I guess, wanted, but I guess when the editor got this, he was like, I can't, we, I can't make this work. We can see we can see you through the bush as well. There's just a rock on the other side. There's, like, nothing there. Yeah. Oh, hold on. He's wearing an elven cloak. Does that give us some leeway? No. no, no, no. Is the horse, horse wearing a fucking cloak? <laughs> why? If you, why would he have pulled that out ages ago? If that was, if he could just go invisible, whatever he wants. Oh, uh, that would have been so good if they, if they ever add in that the elves can just sometimes turn invisible. I will love that if they do that in Rings of Power. It would be hilarious mm -hmm. because then they could have Galadriel looking around for him. He's like, oh, where's Elrond? Oh, is it? No, no, that's just a brown horse with no body on him. That can't be. Elrond. <laughs> Elrond. I'm looking for Elrond on a fucking... horse. Where is he? Where is he? Yeah. Where is he? <laughs> Oh, he, he must have gone straight that, just that I horse with the Once horse. they get all this sorted, she needs to sit down and be like, what did you do with the horse? Like, how did you do that? Yeah. What was that? And he's like, I'm never he, telling you. He either, went, <laughs> he either went into the rock or over the fucking mountain. You know? <laughs> I thought he doubled back was supposed to be the reveal, but then it can't be that because he got to the guards ahead of her, so... I think the uh, idea is that he's gone up a hill on the top left of the screen that we can't just, see. I think that's what meant Skyrim to horse. You, you, would... can't, you can't go up there with a fucking horse. Yeah, a fucking just... Skyrim horse. Like, what the <laughs> He just disappears. I mean, it's just the, the editor didn't know how to make it work. I don't even blame him. So he's like, well, okay, he just fucking disappears. This is what you wanted. The thing is, what they could have done is, uh, I don't, I have no idea if this is accurate to the law, not that that matters at all for Rings of Power, but um, in the, the Hobbit. In the Hobbit movies, there are multiple ways to get into Rivendell, and one of them is essentially a secret passage. So it could have been that maybe Elrond knows of a way in that Galadriel doesn't somehow, or maybe she realizes too late, and, like, oh shit, he's gone that way kind of thing, and then yo, has to rework where she's going. Chat figured it I out. Mean, the eagles. <gasps> oh, <laughs> the eagles. Yeah, we got it. brilliant. Now it the all eagles. makes sense. Okay. Oh, and grabs him. 
Perfect. Mm. All right, now that we've solved that, yet another <laughs> plot issue solved. Is, is everyone now king? Pause. Um, uh, yeah. let's see. Oh, the guard armor looks uh, terrible, and I hate it. Um... Just oh yeah, the, the fucking helmets look looks. Yeah, really I I don't like the armor. It's like uh, it's this terrible mix of like painted thin, cheap looking metal and stuff that doesn't fit. It's just it's. Well, metal's just cheap looking disaster. as it is. So. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> some of it, some of the <laughs> armor in season two, some of the armor in season two, I think does look like substantially better than what we got in season one. But this armor is not that. Yeah, it looks just... there. There are some that looks like vaguely really better, but we do get. I think we do get even shittier armor in um, in a region later on. Like it's the, the same design, but it looks even worse. I think. Disagree. <gasps> but we'll get there. Yeah. Gil ah, Galad. Uh, they they lead her to Gil Galad up to the the tree, the Valinor yellow, the goo tree. They're up at the goo tree. No, Elrond no. is already there talking with Linden. They've had apparently the beginning of a whole conversation, and Linden's or, and Elrond's already up here. I don't know what the fuck the time is. I don't know. Where did she go? How did she so far behind? She was right behind him. Who knows? Uh, yeah, there it is. What a what ter what shitty armor. Yeah, it looks really fucking cheap. So uh da, 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 the oh, sorry, I lost my place here. Is he Gilgalad incredibly when... bored, do you think, just standing there the entire time? He's like a, like a <laughs> he old like... Bethesda like, NPC. He can't move from that position unless it's a cutscene when he's in a different place. He's otherwise just standing there the entire time. Yeah. He feels very <laughs> podge to me. He's very much a podge type of character, and it just doesn't feel right <laughs> at all. It hasn't felt right the whole of season one, and it's so good that they've got him 100% just like in season one and season two, because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. getting that feeling once I'm again. I feel like he's even more like himself, I guess, in, 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 in this episode in particular. Mm -hmm. He has some very strange mannerisms that we see. The scolding um, finger. So yeah, yeah when, she, uh, when she arrives <laughs> here, Gil-Galad Gil -Galad asks her if what Elrond says is true. And I don't takes know. A lot of, takes a lot of <laughs> dancing around. Takes a lot of like actual pressing. Gil Glad's like answer the fucking question. So bitch. Yeah. To to clarify, what Elrond would have said is we don't know who Halbrand is. And True. he helped make the race. That's what right, he would have said. Remember, at this point, Elrond has been told that Halbrand is not who he's seen who he claims to be. He doesn't know that he's Sauron. Galadriel knows that, but she has not told anybody yet. Because Galadriel weird. is a terrible person. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I was a bit confused actually because I th I thought <clears throat> that Elrond made a connection that he is Sauron, but I guess nope. he just he no. just thought someone he's someone nope. who tempered with the rings. Because I don't know no, why so he would. Because if he yeah. doesn't think he's Sauron, why would he run away with the rings? Like it's the craziest thing ever. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be funny ever. if it's like yeah? It turns out he's he's called Derek Winters. He's just <laughs> uh, you know he's from the local shop. He he, he was a butcher. He became a blacksmith. <laughs> mm -hmm. He, he, he was really ambitious. He tried to be king. It's like, so okay. I feel like yeah. what, what Elrond does here, I think, lines up regardless of whether or not he actually knows that he's Sauron, because um, essentially what they've just created is, I mean, some, a, a weapon of war. Like, uh, you know, imagine if like you would just develop the first nuclear weapon and it turns out that one of the four guys who was most involved, it's like he lied about who he was. Well, so uh, yeah. mm -hmm. to be clear, I think the reason that's more interesting is the fact that she's hiding everything. I, if I were yes. him, I'd be oh, like, yeah. that's real fucking she sus. She knew before the, they created the rings. Like yes. She knew, yeah. she knew Elrond, they, I think it has to be sort of yeah. restated to everyone that of Galadriel has many crimes against humanity. <laughs> yeah, uh, and she keeps getting rewarded for them. Probably the worst <laughs> yeah. that she has done at this point of relevance is that after discovering Halbrand is Sauron, she doesn't tell anybody and allows for the rings of power to be made knowing that he had a very direct and key part in their creation for many weeks. It goes worse yep. than that, because by doing that, she has ensured that season two happens, which <laughs> goes on a yeah, level. Worse. It's the worst yeah. crime imaginable. But like, yeah. no, she doesn't. All she tells Keller Brimbor is, you must never work with the Halbrand guy again, because he's not who he says he is. And Keller yeah. Brimbor's like, okay, then that sounds fine to me. But yeah, all right. entire thing up until that very mm -hmm. scene, jumps off a ship and tries to spoon 4,000 miles back to Middle-earth because she is obsessed with fighting Sauron. And then she gets to the point where she realizes the most important things that have ever been made by anybody in Middle-earth, the fate of the entire world is on these things. And she knows Sauron is involved in making them, but she thinks mm -hmm. she might look a bit bad if she tells people, so she keeps it to herself. Like, she's uh, yep. just the worst person yeah. ever. 
Imagine yeah, that's also um, part of why she uh, is chasing Elrond uh, at the beginning, is she's reaching for the rings because she wants to be the one to be like, "Hey, Gilgalad, look at what we made. Don't listen to Elrond. Saruman wasn't involved. <laughs> put put, put yeah. this on." Like, tr because the reason why she had the rings made is because she says later she doesn't believe that Sauron has corrupted them. Uh, how the and why? You know? Yeah, exactly. How and why we'll get to later. But she, for some reason, doesn't believe that, which means she just immediately, "Hey, King, put this on. I made it. Happy birthday." I made By the way, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, hilariously awful to like to try and capture how stupid everything is here. Because if you said one of the four people that like invented the nuke, and you go, yeah, who was the actual guy? And you go, it's Hitler. You'd be such a like, <laughs> what? But it's even worse than that. It's actually dead Hitler from a thousand years ago. It's like super, <laughs> super duper evil. And how do you even react to it? I'd just be like, I don't even know where to begin. Like, in terms of what the fuck like, is wait, this? Who got us to the moon? What? That's basically what all of the debate back and forth in this episode <laughs> is. Is they, they learned that Sauron had a key part in making these rings. And they're like, well, should we use them? Should we not? Eh? You know, it's why is that even a debate? Tom came back from the dead and created the rings. <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah, Gilgalad asks if what Elrond said is true, and she dances around. He has to hold her to actually answering the question, but eventually she does spill it that Halbrand is Sauron. <laughs> that poor screen. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, just thinking about Sauron. <laughs> Are you okay? You haven't been like horrifically corrupted, right? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is Elrond learning uh, that Halbrand is Sauron. It's Gilgalad learning it. And also the two random guards that are just standing uh, <laughs> like 10 feet away yeah. from uh, these guys uh, who I assume have elf hearing, which, as we know, is very inconsistent from season one. But... Did you guys say Sauron? What? How, who is Sauron? He's back. So, well, just when, <laughs> when they, when they announce the and dead. celebrate these rings eventually, <laughs> and just that one guy was like, they were made by Sauron, by the way. You know that? <laughs> it's like, what do you, what do you mean they made myself? It's like, well, that's what they said, man. I was, I was standing there, and they just, yeah, they go I was with there. it. <laughs> no, nah, he's lying. It's like I'm not lying. <laughs> I swear. So, uh, yeah, oh, this shit. means that uh, indeed Gilgalad was right in season one. He wanted to send Galadriel to Valinor so that she wouldn't end up fucking uh, everything up, being the yep. reason why Sauron <laughs> got brought back. Uh, Gilgalad and was she, right she all along. did. Yeah, Gilgalad was yeah. Uh, was right all along. Uh, I, I will say though, it's pretty it's pretty nice to actually hear someone talk back to Gilgalad and actually oh my god, yeah, him it's, some shit. Yeah, for once, honestly, yes. it's very brief. She's That's... just taking it because she she doesn't have anything to say in return. Like she can't actually say anything. Uh, it's, no. it feels really good. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not enough uh, though. Because the worst thing yeah. that she did was not tell anyone that Sauron and uh, tell anyone about Sauron's return and his involvement in the rings to be created. And uh, River Sauron's, I think his original intention was for there to be two rings, uh, which was originally going to yeah. be a single crown for Gil Galad. Yeah, so um, with freedom. Then... Mm, that, that was Celebrimbor's original intention, wasn't it? Not Sauron's. Yes, that was Celebrimbor's okay. intention was to make one crown. And then when Sauron got involved, he was like, we need to make two. And they're going to have to be smaller because you're going to. And then you had that retarded fucking oh, right. speech about balance. Three is balance. And then two you had that. Yeah, yeah, three makes balance. Yeah. Well, of whose who's suggestion was for there to have balance? It was Galadriel. And yeah, balance so. was three. That's so, three is balance. So we've got two. There's Just. two rings. And then Galadriel's like, no, you should make a third because that's me. way better. <laughs> and I mean, it, it so makes maybe you I think. can have one. It the makes logic, you think. though, was so good. It's like, oh, one corrupts, two divides, three, there's balance. It's like, why wouldn't three just divide it into three? <laughs> like, <laughs> why, why would you say that it's balance? But that's Where's more division. Balance? Because. God, and the fact that it goes like with no question, like everyone's like, yeah, everyone knows that. Everyone knows three is balanced. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, really yeah. now because it's like, well, now you know that Sauron made them. So, like, mm -hmm. so I don't know, the, guys. Just something I want to highlight is that there's two things that Galadriel has done like catastrophically wrong that are essentially, well, one of them's evil, one of them's just really fucking dumb. Um, so G Sauron deceived her is is what they are talking about in this scene. They do not touch at all upon the fact that after knowing that he had deceived her, she then allowed the rings to be created. Um, mm -hmm. So they ba they basically, they do touch on it later in this episode, and the response is really dumb. But for mm -hmm. now, they are only addressing the fact that she was tricked by Sauron, not that she allowed the rings to be made. Uh, Elrond says that she was blind, not tricked. But uh, yeah. Uh... Yeah. 
So, so um, I guess that's yeah, more satisfying uh, to be like it's your pride and your dumb. Ass. Like I wish they'd given him more than it, like it you've been in a fucking oh, idiot yeah, monster. Yeah, it's not enough. Yeah. We have a good thing, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Elrond, uh, Elrond chastises oh. Galadriel. <laughs> we had a good thing. We Valinor. had you go into Valinor, but you fucked it all up. <laughs> you and you your pride. pride. You go. <laughs> Everyone should watch Breaking uh, Bad. Now, when, when Elrond chastises Galadriel and says that she was blinded by her own pride and ego and all that sort of thing, um, and he doesn't address that she had the information let the rings be made, haven't got there yet uh, she tries to reverse Uno card on Ooh, Elrond I fucking hate this Galadriel tries to pin this on Elrond's failure on gaining Mithril Gosh. from the dwarves yeah. even, like though, yeah. bitch. even though he obviously got enough Mithril for three rings yep. mm -hmm. and and also, how was that this? his fault? the king said no what yeah, was yeah. He, yeah. He, went, yeah. he went down to negotiate and the negotiation they failed offered, in yeah. that regard they they offered well, everything. Some. even if you're going to be as like as charitable as you possibly can be technically speaking Elrond did fail to negotiate for the Mithril because the reason why he ended up with the little Mithril nugget he didn't try to do that, that just kind of happened yeah um, mm -hmm. That's which means true. that, which means that what Galadriel is saying here is, is she resurrected Satan or Hitler or whatever analogy we're going to use, and she's like, "Yeah, well, you suck because you didn't negotiate for a thing." Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is from the store. <laughs> it's pa it's Patty. Um, it's Patty and pathetic, and it makes you wonder if you almost want to see the writers, and you'd be like, "Yeah, you're like, yeah, that that is the character from season one, yeah." And then they're like, "Yeah," and you're like, "What?" Why do you? Why? <laughs> What's awful? Why do you want also, her to be did, awful? Did Elrond actually tell her about this, or did it happen off screen, like during the fucking horse race? I think did it's reasonable like... to say that it happened off screen because in episode eight of season one, Galadriel has that whole discussion, and ex I say a whole discussion, it's off screen, but um, mm -hmm. she explains to him everything that happened with Numenor and the Southlands and all the rest of it. I think it's probably reasonable to assume that he told her what uh, he did. Yeah. Yeah, because because as the show tells us about sixteen fucking times in this episode, they are the best of friends. They are friends, <laughs> mm. of course. Yes. Um. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Galadriel is still a fucking bitch. <laughs> uh, Consistent. Gilgalad. Yeah, she is very consistently written. Uh, Gilgalad <laughs> asks Elrond to give him the rings. Um. Now. I don't think Gilgalad has decided that they're going to use them or anything yet, but it's like, these are insanely powerful. Sauron had a hand in them. You should probably give them to me. I need to, I need, uh, I need to have them. I'm the king. We need to figure out what we're going to do here. But he asks Sauron <laughs> for those Does rings. he not actually say, you know, we, we have to use them? Yeah, because otherwise, I, think, yeah, yeah, I, thought, I thought that was basically. the point of the scene. Yeah, because oh, okay. he's yeah, talking so. about the idea that, like, oh, so, we're, we're screwed, so... Yeah, no, we have no rings. choice. So it's, it's, it's actually an issue I take it, with this scene, to be honest with you. Like, okay, yeah, he's, it's he like he's not even. We don't use them. We, if you don't use them, we leave Middle Earth to its fate, basically, and we yeah, have it, to use them. Which feels yeah. like he's not even listening to Elrond. It's like this was mm -hmm. made by the super evil dark wizards for obvious purposes of corruption. And he's like, yeah, but we got to use them to yeah, save the power. world. It's like, bro, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I just yeah. okay. You, you, you can be a corrupt, or, you know, you don't, so you don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, uh, I don't think that I don't think that Gilgalad has necessarily accepted that that is true. I think that at this point he is trying to convince Elrond to just put to just give him the rings. In that case, because he wants to get rid of the variables yeah. of Elrond and Galadriel. In that case, he, uh, he Elrond should make the case yeah. like more in this scene. He, he seems oh, yeah. to give Absolutely. up pretty quickly, even though he believes that putting those rings on is like the end of all of living kind. <laughs> For lack of a better word. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah let's see. Um, Elrond says, "Yeah, we can't use them because Sauron had a hand in making them," and Galadriel. Says she doesn't think the rings are corrupted because she says that Sauron did not touch them, which I think she's referring to literally physically touching them, like with his finger. There's so many yeah. problems with this. It's like first of all, he touched the mithril, so whatever. And second, yeah. and they all know that. Secondly, you don't have to touch a thing to corrupt it if you're a super powerful wizard. Like that's not true. But, Who no, the fuck I, made that I think up? That, uh, he, I he's think a god. The like, show's <laughs> perspective is actually that Rags is right on that. Like that the show thinks well. Nah, he's got a... How much... We can't jump ahead, I suppose. Well, yeah, even though... Because Elrond I, well, directly says that Sauron worked for Celebrimbor for weeks. Uh, yeah, like... That's I a good counter. He had access, he had access yeah. to that forge. For, yeah, yeah he basically could, that yeah. entire Maybe he time. corrupted and Celebrimbor, who can now corrupt the rings. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, yeah. Celebrimbor or the forge itself, you know. Well, the, also, this is something actual... that is not... Melter. This is something... 
this is something that isn't mentioned ever in this episode or in the next one is in the final episode of season one you get that shot of Celebrimbor talking about power over flesh and Galadriel starts becoming sus um mm -hmm. yeah which means that Galadriel should know that Sauron is already fucking around with Celebrimbor's brain mm -hmm. and you know what yeah and that's you know what fucking annoys mentioned. me is how much like they <laughs> you, like this wasn't too difficult you didn't need much mithril to do this maybe to be you safe give it another shot. yeah we'll just just yeah. make so some now, new ones. Two new yeah. ones. But we know how exactly. to do it now. Right. You, you know about alloys. Can, yeah. <laughs> you can do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, dark knowledge. It's from Sauron. Dark knowledge. Secrets only the Sith knew. <laughs> <Pure metals laughs> only. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So I think yeah, the, she did. The problem in terms of the the read on like Gil Galad just being like, no, nah, I'm I'm just being chill and I'm trying to. I'm trying to sort everything out and, and make sure that there's no variables. It's like, he kind of starts being a little bit more, like, unhinged, you know, and a bit more angry. And it's like, yeah. hmm, well, it's like you get a little boring, because the writers don't let him have a brain. He has to just get aggressive and be like, hey, yeah. obey me. I yeah. don't even like this yeah. shot, this obviously yeah. deliberate shot where they're like, isn't it cool? Because in this point in the conversation, it's, oh, yeah, uh, you know, they I, switch sides. I, I, Galadriel I, I, and uh, yeah, Gilgalad are on Elrond. I'm just like, that's not... It's not even. We haven't addressed so many problems. We haven't even gone over all the things yeah. she should be fucking probably jailed for the amount of mistakes she's mm -hmm. made. Yeah, she's so not then... even replaced as commander, even though she was exiled. Like what the? Fuck? Um, I just I wanted to slide this in somewhere, but Gilgalad in this scene really reminded me of that guy you covered on EFAP a little while ago who pointed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, point man, yeah, point man, point. So, um, yeah, uh, Gilgalad says, yeah, give me those rings. Uh, the longer you wait, the, the more endangered we are. Uh, I need to have them. Uh, you don't have the, uh, you know, you basically you don't have the authority to do this sort of thing. And uh, Elrond uh, refuses the order to hand over the rings. And he jumps off the cliff into the bay, <laughs> taking the rings with him. Because he believes that the rings are very likely the the way to uh for sauron to get his uh full power mm -hmm. yeah, so elrond's Will willing... kind of a bit of a chad a little well bit. So yeah based elrond on is a chad yeah i do i do <laughs> mostly agree with that it's just that if he's willing to do this you'd think he'd have been willing to make more of an argument Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, like, 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 later on. Like if he'd said to Gilgalad, like sorry. the reason I am disobeying you is because I believe this will cause the end of the world if I hand these to you. Do you understand? Can we talk about this for a little bit longer? You have to understand. Like why? Why won't you give me the respect to at least let me make my case? But why you? You know, like something like that. But instead, he's like, we. I mean, my body <laughs> talking. Yeah. yeah. The, the like, scene is still shit, but there's some nuggets of corn in there, you know, you know that's well, somewhat apart, <laughs> apart from the jumping off the waterfall thing, which is really uh, fucking dumb, like he could have just thrown the rings off, or he could have done any number of other <laughs> things, but yeah. Um, apart from that, Elrond is quite amazingly, probably, the, well, sorry, easily the best character in episode one. Yeah, I because liked they this act, move. The writers, yeah, 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 yeah the writers actually allow him to challenge Galadriel and challenge Gilgalad. And it's it's really weird because of all the characters in season one, Elrond is is probably the least consistent. He, he, yeah. he just forgets I, I what happened in the previous one. scene. Yeah. yeah, but in this in in episodes one and for the most of episode two, he actually has a spine. He has clear convictions, and he actually yeah. challenges. Justify, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, he he's able to exercise judgment on these other characters, which is he not what he did. Stands up to Galadriel. Stands up to his king, and he yeah. Uh, yeah he he leaps off a cliff. Uh, mm -hmm. The guy. Yeah, he puts his money where his mouth is. And they're like, hey, so, wow. you can let's, let's go be yeah. evil. And then he's like, nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the answer. Yeah, he's shown more than anyone else that he's willing to uh, potentially sacrifice his life to save Middle Earth. I don't know. You know what they could have done? Uh, is to throw a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the fact that he broke his oath like 16 times in season one is yeah. when he's standing there next to the waterfall. Uh, Gilgalad sort of could, should have said that, like, when I made you a politician, you swore an oath to a baby, and he and then he just kind of like looks at the camera, winks, and jumps off the waterfall. Or something. I lied. So I lied. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, this the scene basically ends. Gilgalad says, "Go look for those rings. Look, for, go try and get, get him in those rings." rings. To me. Yep. But we don't know what uh what what's up with Galadriel. What what is the punishment for her? What what's going on here? We, we still punishment. Don't know yet. Why would you say that? Punish, punish what? Oh, Why would you be yeah. punished? For what? So, we go to Mordor. 
Is this not yeah, a funny yeah, image? Yes, we can clearly see on screen. Isn't this a funny image? It's like, <laughs> we're in Lord of the Rings world, Mordor. you show us a big fucking volcano, and then it's like, by the way, this is Mordor. You're like, This is Mordor. <laughs> we're here. You remember Mordor. You wouldn't, we wouldn't oh. want you to mix up this volcano with the other famous huge volcano. <laughs> yes. Okie dokie. <laughs> So for uh, oh. for timeline purposes, we we have to be three, four, five days ahead of the scene that we just had at this point because Halbrand has got to Mordor in the time it took them to get to Linden. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. He teleported. You know, some people uh, yeah, who would defend fucked. a show that does something like that would probably say it about this, and I would be like, "Do you actually think the average person could possibly contemplate that when there's just no map information whatsoever?" No. No. Oh, yeah, that, we don't There's something that bugs me about that. the generosity a lot of viewers have to give in terms of trying to puzzle piece where scenes would take place to try and match things up, when the fucking makers just don't care. They're like, eh, yeah. you'll figure it out. It's even, <laughs> it's even worse than that later, because he goes to Mordor and all the way back in the same time. <laughs> yeah, and, and he stays in Mordor for what I think reasonably, we have to assume it's at least a week, possibly more. It's a while, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. It's definitely not in and out in a day. Well, I mean, to mm -hmm. be reasonable, like, you know, they'd have to do some pressures on him, right? Not just torture, but also just yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. waiting on him, waiting him out. Unless Adar gives yeah. up in like an hour, you know. <laughs> well, we, yeah, which, why would he do that? There's a line yeah. a little bit later as well, because like, the elves need to know roughly what's happening over in Mordor in order for their actions to make sense. So there is a line from mm -hmm. some random nameless elf who says, Our spies last saw him entering Mordor. I said, mm -hmm. but you've only just found out who this guy is, so why have you got you spies even... on the edge of Mordor looking <laughs> for him when you didn't you know even... that was happening? Uh... And then the same spies who spy him going into Mordor do not spy him making the entire journey to Eregion where they fucking live. <laughs> so, yep. no. Yeah. And how do you even know it's Mordor? Hey, he maybe he shapeshifted into a... Land still? He could have been a trash bag of jelly for that whole journey, so they couldn't mm. recognize him. You don't know. Oh, no. oh yeah. Of course. They should That's be kind of smart, good. but they don't know do that. <laughs> yeah. He can transform into, you know, wolves and bats and shit. But well, I mean, if this show were really um... clever, it would be interesting to have several influential characters here and there that pop up so every so often, and then, you know, like, gradually over the course of the show, we revealed they were each of them Sauron, just at different times, yeah. mm -hmm. doing different yeah. puppet string pulls and stuff. But no. That's what I, me that's what I meant with the using the transformation stuff in a clever way. There's like, there's basically en there's, there's pretty much endless option, uh, yeah. options as what you can do with that. Have them infiltrate. Yeah. Have him infiltrate an army. Have him go through the ranks of something that he needs to. I don't know. Convince someone to do a thing. But they just have mm -hmm. him, just the the, the 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 one guy, and he just goes around. It's like I'm the king, Lamel. It's like no, you're not. <laughs> um. All right. So we're back in Mordor. We have a hun uh, bunch of Southlanders here that have been, you know, captured, and they're being led to Adar. There's some orcs eating Morgoth. a horse. Uh, no, wait, no, not Morgoth. Uh, Morgoth. <laughs> he might as well be. He might as well be. <laughs> but um, yes, uh, posing as Halbrand still, uh, Siren sort of like turned himself in, posing as the king of the Southlanders to talk to Adar. Mm -hmm. And here we see him. It's the Waldrig. Chad, yeah, the goat. The leader yeah. from Mordor. Waldrig. The well, major well, Mordor. Mordor. He literally... He's moving up in the world. His job is to just make sure that everyone knows it's Mordor. He literally, his first words are welcome to Mordor, and then afterwards he says it is the Southlands no longer, just to make sure that everyone knows. Yeah. And in case you, in, in case you didn't realize how, how evil uh, Adar is, uh, he, he, has, he has all the Southlanders that come here, form a big line, and every single one of them has to kneel in front of them, or they get mm -hmm. stabbed. Or they get yeah, stabbed if they don't do it in two seconds, yeah. you get stabbed. Yeah. 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 No, don't seconds. think about it. You can't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Southlanders are lined up one by one and asked to swear allegiance to Adar. Uh, if they uh, take too long, or I guess they know, they just get stabbed with a bone. And yeah. uh, if they do swear allegiance, they get a brand on the back of their neck. So, ouchie. Yeah. Um, now, he's so happy with himself. Yes. Dude, he loves his job, he man. He made he's this place. Really, this is, yeah. oh, if anything, yeah, Mordor is more his than anyone else's. He's, uh, <laughs> he's integrated his shadow. Now he has <laughs> <laughs> achieved the height of his life. We need Jordan Peterson to tell us about Waldrick. <laughs> he gets up every morning and he sort of has his coffee and he stands there and he takes a nice deep breath in the air and he looks around and he says, Yes, I made I've this. Made it. But it's just, it's like, exactly what I wanted. Like, oh. wasteland where you can't grow anything. 
<laughs> there, there, there is well, actually I mean, a line in this scene, isn't it, where one of them says, "If you, I think it might be Waldrick who says, if you yeah, work, work land land well, well, you'll, you'll be, be rewarded. Well. Yes. How yeah. the fuck are you growing <laughs> things here? Gonna, what are you doing? I'm going to work this land. What? I hope <laughs> you like potatoes. I mean, I suppose that uh, and I suppose volcanic ash can. Uh, isn't volcanic ash? It's it's actually like quite good as a. Uh, I could it be totally be. wrong. On it that. is, but it's like it, it takes two good. turns in Civilization Six for that to happen. So <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it, it takes a while. It, it eventually makes the soil more fertile. But yeah, and, and also this is a weird kind of volcanic ash, the kind that like causes yep. no damage or like respiratory <laughs> illnesses or anything. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's really yep. evil. People yeah, aren't going. <laughs> It, it does and... blind. It does blind queens, though. Apparently, you know. But uh, yeah, I don't, that, I don't even. Fine. I'm not even sure if that was the the. Oh, she got blinded by the uh, the, like the embers or something, right? Yeah, that was yeah after, after the so pyroclastic yeah. flow. I mean, it's a pyroclastic flow. They should all be fucking dead. But yeah. oh no, what do you mean? They all have uh, fire. <laughs> no, they got randomly yeah. scattered into smaller groups and. Well, also, and... it's it's I'm even fire. In... Yeah, evil fire is not hot. That's how it works. Yeah. True. Unless right. you're an extra, then you get set on fire and lose legs and everything. <laughs> yeah. So you better um, be a main character when that happens. So yeah, Halbrand tells Adar to let his people go, or Adar's people will be destroyed. And then Narcos uh, and then stabs him because he's not respectful, right? That was ha that's what happens, right? No, right? this is Halbrand. Adar knows who Halbrand uh. is, sort of, sort of, <laughs> um, because they met in the bar and they talked a bit. Um, so uh, I'm not sure where all of the orcs here are from or where they came from. They're just um, a lot of orcs now. All the ones we saw earlier got destroyed. That's true. So I, I don't, don't know. I don't know. I, I guess it's just full of orcs now. I guess there's a whole bunch of. <laughs> they orcs multiply here and they really. Maybe quickly. maybe I they guess. made all. Maybe they made the trench uh, living quarters and they were just living there until it was their maybe. time to rise. Yeah. From the they drown them. Um. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah. Adar says that um they defeated the men of these lands, which isn't really true. The men kicked your ass. Uh, and then, yeah, you had and, a fucking volcano ex machina, you know. It's uh, yeah, 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 but Adar, uh, Adar <laughs> was playing the objective, and the <laughs> volcano went off, and they just sort of won in the end. I find so, it really um, amusing how he says he defeated the elves, even though they there were two even, elves there, there was, and they're both still there alive. Was two <laughs> well, the thing is, th was they like, lost. They they six? hit for some for some reason. They didn't find their big fuck off trench. Didn't go look for him, and then they left. And that's, I guess, technically that's a win for him, I guess, but he didn't really fight I, them. <laughs> calling that defeating the elves, uh, uh, that, mm. that's not defeating the elves. No. <laughs> you can't achieve, dude. But... Yeah, you captured like six of them, like, calm down. Um, so Halbrand tells Adar uh, that uh, Galadriel is seeking out Sauron to teach the elves how to forge a new weapon that has power over flesh. And it will use, uh, to, and, and, and they'll use Adar's children in order to do that. Which is absolutely mad. Like, it's how the bonkers. fuck could anyone believe that story? Like, how could, they, <laughs> how could it almost have come true? Because the writers believed it temporarily, this is another question. But, like, how can Adar think, oh, yes, Sauron will absolutely side with the Queen of the Elves, basically. You know, the two people have been fighting him. for thousands of years <laughs> against whom there was a massive war that flooded half of the world. They are definitely on each other's side now. Believable. Um, second order question is, when Halbrand does turn up here and say, like, I'm the King of the Southlands, basically, why does Waldrig just accept that? Wouldn't Waldrig know he isn't? Because Waldrig's lived here his entire life and he keeps hold of a sword for uh, decades and decades and decades. Like, surely he wouldn't notice that they hadn't been well, a king around for a long the time. The Southlanders yeah, yeah, just sort of accept the idea that he's the king. Yeah. yeah. And he's, so, so did he, the other Southlanders as well in the episode earlier. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it's probably fair to say, because Bronwyn, for some strange reason, mm. believed that there was a lost king that was promised, so it's probably reasonable to say that Waldreg also thought that there was one, and he's probably like, oh, I guess it's him. Uh, yeah. yeah. So let me see. He's, um, he's introduced that way with uh, Adar, right? When when they met in season one. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah, but Waldreg has never met him prior to this scene. I think. Well, is the point. I, I guess I'm saying like Waldreg might actually just be like, is he okay? You know, the, or, like, the orcs also it, call him king. In the, like, it doesn't really matter to Waldreg at this point. I, I do. I do appreciate moving take himself in. I do appreciate the interest in making sure Waldrig is well characterized, though, because he was the one I was mainly concerned about, like I told you. And, you know, on the subject of, oh, yeah, we won, we killed him, it's like, mm, I think Waldrig should stand up and be like, or maybe nudge Adar, be like, come on, man, just, you know, put a win in. I, I did kind of win it for us. 
you know, so entirely. Wonder, I was actually sitting here watching this entire thing, thinking there's a really obvious and quite good way I think you could weave Waldrick even more deeply into the narrative, which is unquestionably, of course, what we want to do. Um, which is that, you know, Sauron here is going to be imprisoned. We know from season one that Waldrick was expecting Sauron, not Adda. And Sauron is the one he was holding the sword waiting for. Um, and we know that Sauron is a master manipulator. So I was sitting there thinking, I wonder if what they'll do is they'll have Sauron in prison doing his clever manipulating thing on Waldrig to get Waldrig to turn against Adar just for the satisfaction of seeing Waldrig kill Adar. That would be great. But no, instead Sauron just sort of manipulates a wolf to eat his face off. Spoilers. So yeah. rip. So uh, the stream uh, is apparently down. More it's well. all right again. Everyone said refresh. It's good. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. yeah, mine seems to be. I tried right. to type it, but I'm on my main account. Is I don't you, have a blue color. Up, yes. <laughs> Hopefully, um, it's working again. Yeah, it is all right. Just minor, minor. Tip. So uh, I don't know if you, know, you want to get into this now, but because Rags, you know what I'm referring to here. But why does Sauron want the Southlanders mm -hmm. to be free? Do we want to do that yet? Um. Yeah, we can do that now because that's what he. Uh, that's what he asked for. He he is asking. Uh, to uh, to have the Southlanders be set free, and in exchange, um, Halbrand will basically say that he will go and find he'll go and find Sauron. Yeah, and if we like skipping ahead Halbrand, to the next yeah. the next scene that we get in the Southlands, that is what ends up happening. Adar does release the Southlanders, and he agrees to to Halbrand's terms. We can get we can we can wait till we get there, or we can do it. Yeah, we can let's, wait. We can wait let's, to get let's, first. Yeah, let's do it. Do it then, because that's when it actually happens. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Adar, um, yeah. I think there should be a scene, at least around here, maybe cut between, where the celebratory to show a humanity to the orcs and the uh, Waldrig when they're all appreciating. Let's be honest, the wonderful colors from from uh, Mount Doom at night. It's going to be looking. Mm -hmm. It probably looks amazing. Be like that was yeah. me. I did that, and then they can tell stories, and then because this is the one thing they definitely <laughs> fuck up on. Um, Waldrick should be legendary in Lord of the Rings films. He should be in he books. Is legendary. Oh, yeah. He is legendary. The be... man made Mordor. Oh, yeah. It's just annoying that... statues just all over Mordor. I mean, while they're having their walks, like, there should have been a scene in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings where Gandalf talked about Waldrick. And he could be like, he was misunderstood. People thought he was like a bad guy. <laughs> but really... Have you heard the tale of Waldrick the Wise? <laughs> <laughs> Not all men but, um... are understood in their time. <laughs> Waldrick was a hero. <laughs> oh... Waldrig, I'm now I'm Waldrig the White. Just come back to <laughs> yeah. Saruman sitting in uh, sitting in Isengard, and he's reading one of his books, and it's about Waldrig. It's the tale of Waldrig. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wish I could hire him. <laughs> he's he seems oh. great. Um. Anyway, Adar listens to the offer from Halbrand, and he declines, and instead just double captures Halbrand to, <laughs> I assume, torture him and stuff to find out what he knows about <laughs> Sauron. Woohoo! Oh. All right. Uh, now, um, as uh, Halbrand is led away, uh, a random orc asks Adar if Sauron could return, and Adar says it isn't. It, it isn't possible. Bullshit. Um, so, nah. is it, are you sure? <laughs> no, you sure. Yeah, this orc's like, yeah, Sauron can't return, right? Because he was they... he was a big meanie. I don't know if I was alive at that point, but I, I hear stories. You should <laughs> like, hey, yeah. hey, Gribbles, you went down into the cabins to make sure he didn't congeal into a pile of blood and become a slug monster, right? And he's like, oh, that was me that was oh, supposed yeah. to do that. Oh, I oh, wasn't I you said, <laughs> Oh, you said Gubbles. Gubble, oh, I thought Gubbles did The like Gubbles is like oh, eating, and he's like, don't bring me into this again. <laughs> you always do this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I like how the names that you've come up with are almost what his actual name is. So the subtitles tell us that this orc's name is Glug. No hey, way. Yeah, Glug. Glug. Not sure. <laughs> his name is Glug. Glug. Gibbles, Gobbles, and Glug. <laughs> okay, Gibbles, uh, Gobbles, and Glug. Glug was the scene. Oh, was going to win. <laughs> it's okay. We, we ain't getting any lurtses anymore, right? We're done with that. No. No. Yeah, uh, so I just got things um, like, why would Adar ever believe that Galadriel would team up with uh, Sauron, or Sauron team up with Galadriel? But maybe, since she came across as a bit of a psycho the last time that uh, she spoke with Adar, maybe that's... that's uh, that is true, she did threaten to torture his children in front of him, and then yeah. kill him yeah. last, which is a villainous <laughs> yeah. thing, like, it's the kind of thing you would expect Sauron to say, actually. That was really the only thing that was making me think that Adar could believe it, is because from his perspective, Galadriel is a psychopathic bitch, 
<laughs> and um, so saying, hey, so that elf, because because what Adar, sorry, what Halbrand says in this scene is not that the elves are working with Sauron, it's that Galadriel has decided to seek out Sauron to make a power over flesh. I think it's plausible. I just think that it's plausible for the wrong reasons. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. The showrunner does the reasons, but yeah. It's funny okay. to have any kind of moral indignance about any of this when he's just doing what he's doing here with people. You know, I do wonder <laughs> mm -hmm. about yeah. Adar. Like, what what is... I was about to say, what is his character? As though I've already admitted to myself, I'll never know. <laughs> never yeah. Really tell me. He, he just that. wants. If, if you want he just more wants of a him, home for his uh, children when they can enslave yeah. and torture and kill people. Yeah. <laughs> if you want actually just something on him, you would, you probably need to look at the the lore, the Tolkien lore. Hmm? Right. It does made up. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, he, he does not exist. Like, he, he wants Alfred, was it in the Silmarillion? One. He doesn't make more. Sadly, no, he, he's <laughs> one person of this show I think really should have been in the Silmarillion, but Tolkien never yeah. found a way to include him. That, but no, I, 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 thought himself, he was like a whole, um, I thought Adar was like a whole thing, actually. Nope. No, 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 no. Nope. He calls himself a Moriondor, which is like the show's terminology for the first of the orcs, because the show is running with the theory that the orcs were originally corrupted elves, but like the Moriondor concept doesn't exist in in canon, and Adar as a oh. character doesn't exist in canon either, which is for a good I reason. See. Because like if you have lieutenants of orcs who are still basically elves, who have complete free will and agency, and can politically appeal to all of your orcs more than your actual lieutenants can, to a degree where the orcs will betray the succession plan in order to go for the person who's nicer to them, then your entire evil scheme is broken. You can't possibly hope yeah. to control your armies anymore. The orcs will so have elections a in sub districts. Mm -hmm. And so, they'll choose their representatives and they'll vote for the evil Dark Lord. We are pretty much <laughs> expected to accept that uh, Adar is an elf then in the context of the show because it, it hasn't been told to us, but he looks kind of like one, right? No, he does. So in season one, Which when he's, he's having time. the conversation with Galadriel in the barn when she threatens to torture his kids, he refers to himself like in succession as an orc, an uruk, which is what he prefers to be called, and then he also calls himself an elf. So it's like, it's whichever like, the writers prefer at any given moment is what he is. But he is kind of basically still an elf, but also the first of the orcs. I'm right. A, a dog, uh, a canine, a quadruped. I'm all these things. Whatever's mm -hmm. most handy in a conversation. Spaghetti monster, you know. True. True. No, Spaghetti. Okay. No. Spaghetti is That's the lowest tier of pasta. We've been over this. That doesn't mean uh, it's not so... to be counted at all. Um, hmm. I suppose so. <clears throat> I suppose even the, even the least of uh pastas are still you know among their number uh now i hope you guys uh can uh, forgive me for a moment but we have to step away from waldrig's realm oh, no uh, oh, because oh boy. we have to go the first of the gandalf by... scenes oh. yeah. no. <laughs> this is the fun part no. this is the uh a lot of you might be thinking that the entire harfoot plot from season one was basically one massive waste of time that had nothing to do with anything yes and i won't i won't say you're uh, you're you're right or wrong on that. I'll just leave that in the air. <laughs> but we're back, baby. We oh, are no. so back. Oh no, Mala's doing a thing. <laughs> but it'll be better now because Gandalf can talk. I think. So yeah, sure. We uh, yeah, <laughs> we have not we have not Gandalf wandering around in the night. Uh, <laughs> apparently, it's some kind of a dream. He touches a stick and gets a weird vision. <laughs> Next bullet point. <laughs> 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 Dude, these these, these fucking Harford and Gandalf scenes. Like every time I watch them, it's like, what? What's the what's the point? What what it's are we so doing? Bathroom Lord, break time. time, baby. Well, <laughs> it's worth remembering the entire point of season one was to be like, he's not Sauron. He's very yeah. likely Gandalf. You're like, okay. Mm -hmm. and did we need? Cool. He's looking fucking, for a Gandalf, guys. Did we, did we need four hours for that? <laughs> like, why did you? <laughs> To me, it just demonstrates that the showrunners have absolutely zero faith in their audience because they were demonstrably unwilling to make a Lord of the Rings adjacent show without having a brave young hobbit who goes on an adventure. And yeah. a wizard. And wizard, yes. Okay. Um, so they're the walking around, the two of them, not Gandalf and Nori, they're walking around in the desert, and he will not tell her mm. about the dream. She asks about the dream, and he says, no, I won't tell you about the dream. Because he's a fucking asshole who brings it up, and then when she actually engages with him and asks him more about it, he's like, "No, nah, she can't tell you. Uh, no. Don't do this. Don't do this to people. It's mm -hmm. fucking annoying. Don't mention shit." And then when they ask about it, say, "No, nah, I can't say." 
Um, I guess I, they're still on their way to Rune. Or maybe they're like in Rune. Rune's a big area, I guess. They are not but in Rune yet. They're, not in they're Rune on, yet. They're on their way. But they are being followed by what we can assume is a man in a spooky ah. skeleton copper mask. Which I will call yeah. Skeletor, because, I mean, look at him. Yeah. He looks yeah. Skeletor. Oh, God. <laughs> so, apparently, they have been walking in circles. Fuck and you, not God Gandalf God. says the land is bewitched to, to keep making him walk around in circles. Wow. Uh, yeah. they, dis they, discuss, mm -hmm. uh, they, they discuss that they don't have any food, even though Nori is literally wearing food for her hair decor. That's all right, <laughs> whatever. Maybe they're old or whatever. Um, and oh, why so, this? Here it comes. I've, I've not oh, really God. tried this for any extended period, but if if your entire sense of direction is coming from looking at the stars, which his is, and if he knows that Rune is in the east, which he does, how can you possibly get lost? You it's just magic. go in the direction magic, the yeah. sun rises. But it's not magic because look, fucking what's the name? Podge, no, it's not. Podge turns up with a map and says it's this way. Well, no, you can get there. <laughs> no, you can get there. You just I'm have to know the words to, yeah. to the song. You, through, through purely secular means, you can arrive in the enchanted <laughs> circle walk land. But oh. once you're there, you're bewitched. They got you. It doesn't make any now. sense what at bugs all. Me but... is, look at these landmarks. It's so easy to not go in a circle. <laughs> <It's>... Yeah. <laughs> if it was like hey, a let's super go towards crowded, mountain or back dark there. forest, I could kind of believe well, it. But out here, so... this, you can see for so long. Mm -hmm. so, so I, I guess think, it's bewitched. Like... It's magic. Yeah, based on how the how this episode goes, they end up at this location three times, which means that which means that they are actually going in circles. Which means, I, I mean, either they're just unbelievably stupid, or it is actually you know it is indeed black yeah, magic. If if no, it's magic, it's they're stupid. Like, because if it were magic, it would be like, oh, it is. Like we we went forward, would... we hit the thing, and then we went forward again, and now we've hit the thing again. It's like this is fucking magic. We're screwed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would be funny that she says we've been walking in circles. And not Gandalf is like, the, the land m must be bewitched. Yeah, the land <laughs> yeah, must be bewitched. It. So we're walking in circles. It couldn't be that we don't have a fucking map, that we didn't then check to someone, get a map before we left. Yeah, Give and then map. someone shows up with a map later and it's like, oh, you've, you've, you've broken the spell. The map breaks the spell. <laughs> and now we're not lost anymore. Interesting. You think the guy magic in the, map. I think the guy in the spooky mess was just watching them the whole time, just going in circles. Like, what are they? What are they doing? <laughs> He's like, no, this, is, this is a why magical. Does Rasputin want this, this is a plan. The they're, they're casting a huge spell. They're going circles to. <laughs> they're doing this. You have to bit. go and find that wizard. He's that Istar. He's so powerful. And he watches them walk in circles for yeah. days. Also, I think the rune is described as a big open plain. Like in the. Oh, yeah. The Lord, but, yeah. Funny you should say that because we get that happens in episode two. <laughs> Um, all right, so they're hungry, and Nori tells him to cast a magic on a tree, like he did in season one. He cast a magic spell on a tree, um, a branch almost fell and hit a girl, but otherwise it was an incredible success. It basically made yeah. the entire forest bloom with food, um, an incredible success. Yeah, uh, it really wasn't Gandalf... his fault that happened. Everyone was really close to that stupid tree, and then this stupid little girl's like, "Oh, let me go under this tree," and then almost gets killed. <laughs> <laughs> and in this scene, he says, "Have you forgotten what happened?" And it's like, "You, it worked." Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. worked. What it happened? Incredibly well. Yeah. Yes. There's not really um, taught a child to go under the branch this time. Yeah, yeah he says, "No, it's dangerous. <laughs> I, it's, uh, I, I can't do it." Because you should probably more, more be blah, like, blah, blah. "Oh yeah, let me try again. I can actually talk now. I should probably do this better than last time, and it shouldn't take an, uh, a whole day to uh, happen." Yeah. But, so, um, uh, so anyway, he decides that he will. He relents, and he decides he will cast magic on the tree. He puts his hand in the dirt, and then he runs it up the tree, and then the tree fucking explodes. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> And then yeah. uh, a bunch of beetles and bugs and stuff come out yeah. from the bottom, and she's like, "Yay, we've got food to eat!" Yay, I love bugs yeah, because I'm a disgusting does. fucking like food. Can yeah. you just get a bunch of filet mignons with like little legs that pop? No out bugs. And then, like, pop off. Or just it's the bugs. Know, just just like anything no, else. Bugs. No oh, bugs oh, are good. Yeah. Bugs taste good. Yeah. They like bugs. Bugs are yummy. I, I, I think I, bugs I, is I, good I, for the I, environment I, thing. Yeah, it's got a lot of protein. So I wasn't um, sure just from well, watching this scene if... There's just a bunch of Happy Meals that come out of legs. <laughs> yeah, just Big Macs with legs. Pop out. No! Big Macs oh. with legs. Are we, 
are we meant to read from this scene that he made there be bugs or are we, are we meant to read that he accidentally blew up the tree and there were I bugs thought, inside the tree just i think it was an accident there. Yeah. there was just bugs living there he'd blow up the home i don't know it's uh, if, if that's the case then it's blind luck that they managed to find food yes yeah he would have just blown up the tree and nothing happened made a whole like shit ton of apples but couldn't i, I would have yeah, sounds like five fun. you know I, <laughs> instead of bugs I guess this tree is like so desiccated and Whatever. dead that he can't rejuvenate it. And the other <laughs> one that we all was just by, like, a meteor. Mold. Listen, it's different. Yeah, right. It it just got. It's not. It didn't kill the meteor. The flaming meteor didn't kill the tree. It just it just. <laughs> Maybe there will be food there in like two days, but you know, just flame who cares? We have bugs. Yeah, they yeah, they have they have food. I don't know how, don't... but they do have food now. It's magic. Whatever. Well, next time they get they go around in circles. The next time they get here, there'll be some food. Yeah, yeah, it's great. True. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, later on, they're they're eating their bugs. Uh, yum. And yeah. uh, oh, Nori uh, loves Gandalf that says, Not Gandalf says, I lost control. And she says, you need to learn not to lose control. Mm, oh, thank thanks. you. Thanks yeah. for the great report. advice. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, and then uh, he tells Nori about the dream, about the stick. You know, the dream where he, he sees a stick mm -hmm. and he touches it, but he doesn't tell her about the weird vision. Yeah, no spooky stuff. He says the thing because uh, uh, she she misses home, she misses home, she misses her her family and her friends and all that stuff. <laughs> loser, and uh, she's kind of she's a little bit sad. Yeah, she's a big uh, big loser. I wonder how all of the the half foots that got abandoned felt. Oh, they're they're <laughs> they're dead. They're dead. When they were withering. Well, I'm just saying before when they were withering away, you know. Maybe even like bugs and stuff were starting to eat them while they were still alive, you know. Holy fuck! So with the way, yeah, I know. Terrifying. How did they feel? Uh, in pain. Do any of them have any remorse for that? I don't think no. they're capable of feeling remorse. Yeah, they'll, they'll laugh they're... about it. They'll laugh yeah, about remember. it. They remember. They'll the be like, they, got lost. Uh, yeah. they made a joke about it in season one's last episode. Yeah. But oh yeah. The um. Remember no, that one idiot no, 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 no. died of bees? No, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> Uh, they oh, made okay. a joke about uh, path, the pathfinding, whatever. They needed to pass it over to someone who wasn't a sadder because he's dead now. And that the lady right. was going to take over for a moment is like particularly shit at it. She was going to drive them into like a, you know, backwards or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the Chungus, not Sam girl, was supposed <laughs> to be the one to take over, like to, to, to help him. <laughs> and she just fucks <laughs> off, yeah. Like, <laughs> season, to be clear, season one finished Poppy's story. It was like she's going to become the new, you know, most important person of this village, and that's going to be wonderful. I'm just saying that. I'm just putting a pin in the board, but yep. I'm also saying mm -hmm. that, uh, the, 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 it's just funny the idea that they may all have died by now. It is possible. Probably. <laughs> it's, it's probably, been, I, it's probably been like 30 minutes. minutes. Yeah, I love the idea of them all just walking into Mordor telling each other that no one goes off trail. <laughs> yeah. No one goes off trail. Just walk right into the wrong mountain. Reading the fucking map upside down. They That's climb Mountain Doom yeah, and walk into the reserve. Like several thousand yeah. years in the future when Frodo is going through the dead marshes and they look down and yes. it's just... Nothing but perfect. It's just like, a bunch oh of cards in an area of the, uh, the swamp. You know? um, so anyway, uh, Nori is very sad about, you know, being away from home and all the people she loves. Just and, a minor, uh, minor note. It's not really a spoiler, but and also worth putting a pin in the fact that she's crying here about leaving home. So if in some hypothetical future episode she cries and says, we have no home, <laughs> that might be a slight contradiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. So well, I was... my, yeah. my I, have, I can't remember the scene that you're referring to, Platoon. It's possible I haven't seen that happening yet. But I was figuring that the specific reason why uh, not Gandalf says, oh, it's normal for a half to miss home, because what she's missing is her family rather than her home. Yeah, and her home is her, that's what she considers her home, is wherever her family and the caravan is, that's home. Yeah, and I, w I was thinking that they were, you know, deliberately using the word home, because that is how it goes in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, so they're trying to make another reference there. I could be wrong, but given that she misses her family rather than literally the location. I assume that's what she means, because they are they they move around, they're migratory. Yeah. She misses her cart. Uh, she misses her cart in her... <laughs> in her they got burned. Stuff. Nailed. No. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, not Gandalf says the things you leave behind can be the heaviest burden to carry. Moving on, he says he misses <laughs> home. Even he, he says he misses his home, even though he can't quite remember it. No, so, yeah. Okay. Well, that's that. 
Next scene, please. Well, we, <laughs> oh. can, uh, we end that, yeah? Yeah, worth mentioning at this point, so in season one at the end, the mystics who turned out to be wrong about everything, they were right <laughs> about him needing to go to Rune, and they were also right about him having a veil on his mind that is slowly lifting. Because his final scene in season one, uh, he says, like, more, more has come because the veil is lifting, uh, and I know that I need to go to Rune. So that is probably the explanation for why right now he kind of feels like he can remember his home, he's but he can't bits really. And pieces. Yeah. yeah, he's getting bits and pieces. And also, I'm guessing the vision of the staff probably relates to that, but so far, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's all very, uh, very exciting and interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we're, we're, we, we will have to depart from oh, not no. Gandalf and Nori. I know that's sad, but mm -hmm. good news we're going back to Mordor. Yes. Oh, Yay. Because, Jack, well, Drew, oh yes, are we, we are. are. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, we are. Sorry, yeah. I, had, uh, I had my order wrong. Yeah. Back to uh, <laughs> back to Halbrand in Mordor. He's in a prison. A warg is growling at him. Wow. Um. So I yeah, have. He's not like Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little, he's a a little different. Than, uh, a warg Luigi. Oh, the warg uh, no. here. He's he's a bit different than the warg in uh, season one. That goofy goober. Um, yeah, looks, this one's a little this bit. One this better. one's a bit different. One looks different. You think this one looks better? I think the, this one looks better, yeah. Mm. I think the design looks better. I th yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like I, them both. I mean, but it's, this one I looks think the very... both kind of looks like shit, but I think this one looks better. <laughs> I well, this... like the warg in season one. That goofy goober. Yeah, I, the one I in season like... one was crossbred. I like the, the I like the bug. Not... I like the kind of the nah, bulgy sort of eyes, I and like I it. like the. <laughs> Oh, no, I liked I it. I, did not I like liked it. it. I'm a big fan it, of that. that it looks, guy. It looks too cartoony. <clears throat> it no, a bit cringe. Precious, my precious baby. It's All right, so fucking downsword. Um, amazing, <laughs> incredible, beautiful creature. So, um, Waldreg, um, well, Waldreg's here, and he's coming to give. Yes. Uh, he's coming to give Halbrand some food because Waldreg's just a great guy. He tells people this Hell is yeah. Mordor. So yeah, uh, <laughs> Waldreg. Now, should Waldreg? be concerned about his original fealty to Sauron. Because originally, he was pledged to Sauron. So should Waldreg wonder about Sauron being alive, as is claimed by Halbrand here? How, how should that conflict with um, Waldreg's fealty that he made to Adar, who he originally thought was Sauron in Season 1? This was my pitch earlier for rewriting him in a way that allowed Sauron to actually manipulate him to get out of prison as opposed to what he's going to go on to do because he yes. was waiting for Sauron. That's he a was. known fact of Waldrig's character. He's a good character and we should make the most of his established beats. Yeah. yeah, I think that we are missing mm -hmm. a really good opportunity to explore Waldrig's allegiances and what his deeper motivations are. Um, unironically, I think that it's it would be weird... It, it's, Waldrig's he I'm um, a place to Sauron. Oh, this guy showed up. He's Sauron. Oh no, he's Adar. Well, I'll I'll, I'll worship you anyway. Um, he said that Sauron's dead, and this guy says, "Oh no, Sauron is alive." So like, what do I do? Like, oh man, what 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 about my allegiances, my fealties? What what's going on here? But Waldrig and you could have is, a cool uh, scene wait, yeah, where like no. Waldrig comes in being like, "Prove it." You know, how did you know? What 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 gave it away? How did because like he's so interested in Sauron, and then. You'd be like, close the door, and then he does, and he does a little show of magical shit, and he'd be like, I am Sauron, and then... Holy mm -hmm. fuck. Yeah, Waldrick would be like, holy fuck, we, we gotta get you out of here, buddy. But Adar <laughs> said he killed you, and then he would say, no, I only exploded into ice and became goo. Trust yeah. me. Trust it me, it weird. all, it all works. He says all end. that, and you just have a cut of Waldrick just nodding, like, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, as for the whole narrative, you can build all the way through with Waldrick sticking by Sauron's side for so long that by the time of Return of the King, he is the mouth of Sauron. That's Wolverine. Oh my god, that would yes. be so fucking great. Oh, yes. <laughs> you get to uh, Eregion and, and they're like, who's the guy with you? And he's like, oh, he's just a helpful little smith who, who helps me with different things. And Waldrick starts to like hunch Welcome over a bit. Welcome to Mordor. Like, yes, <laughs> throughout, throughout the worked, series, I've his mouth just gets like... Years. His mouth gets bigger <laughs> and bigger throughout the season. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, let's see. So, um... Yeah, so Waldreg lies about Adar knowing that Halbrand, uh, or not knowing Halbrand's here, like he's forgotten, uh, like he's forgotten about him. I think uh, obviously Adar wouldn't forget about him. He's trying to figure out what's going on with Sauron and if it's true or not. Um, but yeah, uh, when he leaves, Halbrand enthralls the Warg with a bone, a bone, mm -hmm. and so. uh, yeah, 
it just sort of, uh, yeah, sort of puts some a little a, a little enchantment on him, and the warg is like, "All right, we're the chill." Dark speech. We're chill. So this and is so, yeah. something that uh, it, Rings of Power seems to be trying to establish that Sauron needs to physically touch things or to have some kind of physical connection with an entity in order to corrupt it. Because uh, Galadriel, for some reason, was under the belief that he hadn't corrupted the rings because he didn't physically touch them. This scene is showing us that in order to enchant... Because if, if he didn't need the bone, he wouldn't use the bone. He'd just, you know, mind control it from the other room, right? Um, yeah, from a distance. With the fucking big fish, though. Precisely. <laughs> well, the water, Gil, Gil, the water connected those just... two, you see. Yeah, he oh, touches yeah, the water, yeah. the water touches yeah. him. <laughs> we can't Gil, 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 air, air molecules <laughs> are too thin. It can't transmit yeah. the magic. Magic is like sound waves. It doesn't work in a vacuum. So, uh, yeah, he uses the bone. The bone goes to... And, and also, this would confirm the idea of how, obviously, if he is involved in the creation of the Rings of Power, he's been touching the tools, touching the forge, touching probably you know, other people. So, and they're all involved into it, like, obviously, mm. you know, it's, it's the Rings of Power. Gilgalad has a line later, though, when uh, he's talking to Galadriel. And because the, the show does a very bad job of actually displaying its characters do the things that they're most known for, like, Sauron doesn't do much manipulating, Farazan does not do much politics. It has to have characters just explain what they're doing after the fact to make it seem like they were always doing it. Gilgalad <laughs> has a line later when he says, it is said that once the Dark Lord has got into your mind, he can corrupt it at will which kind of suggests he can do it psychically as well as physically, so... He, he, he uh, says yeah. he needs to gain your trust, right? That's the one. Yeah, yeah, once he gains your trust, then he can sculpt your very thoughts, I think is the line. Something, yeah, something like that. So what he's doing here is gaining the warg's trust, presumably, with a bone, because it's a dog, and dogs are really easy. I, boy, I fucking Ooh. love bones. They are, they are really good. They're really good. It's really good stuff. It's really good stuff. Um, let's see. Now, um, we'll, uh, we'll just leave him here in his little, little pit. His little, his little pit here. And we'll go to Linden. Um, we have... We have a new uh, set. Yeah, we do. And they're gonna Yay. milk that set. Yes. <laughs> naturally. So, of course. we are here, and we meet our new character. Here's Cyrodan. Yeah. <clears throat> the Grey Havens is fucking small, by the way, but uh, never mind. <laughs> Well, this is just a part of it. This is one little piece of the Grey Havens. This is just yeah, a little the rest bit. of it is just over there. Yeah, the rest of oh, it yeah, in yeah, the yeah. background. Okay. It's this is just where he lives in this little peninsula. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, in the lore, I understand he's the oldest being in Middle Earth. He's the oldest that... elf. <clears throat> is that the correct? Elf. Say, he's that not going to be older than Tom Bombadil, right? Yeah, Tom yeah, Bombadil is the oldest. Uh, yeah, but the, he is the oldest elf in Middle Earth. Oldest okay. way he has a beard. Well, he's the one. He's the oldest in Middle Earth. By the time everybody leaves Middle Earth, I don't think he is at, at this point. There will be a few like him, oh, but like he, he arrives. Maybe he, not. He's yeah. one of the people who never goes to Valinor originally, because like they, they all yeah. sort of spawn in Middle Earth. Loads of them end up being called to Valinor for protection. Some of them don't make it. He actually gives up the chance to go because he's looking for his brother, and he repeatedly gives up the chance to go, even though it's the one thing in his life he really wants to do. And then he turns out to be like the last person who leaves in the Fourth Age. By that point, he is the oldest elf in Middle Earth. But that's why I think in this show, all he does is sort of stare mystically off at the sunset is because they want to convey <laughs> that sort of thing. And that's the only thing they can think to do with. Otherwise, well, he just sort of does that. I'm wise, so I'm going to look really smug the entire time. And I'm going to tell people how it's really, really difficult to be humble, but I'm good at it, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> I am the most humble of them all. I'm yeah. so humble. You wouldn't believe you, how I'm humble I am. Extraordinarily humble. Yeah. Most so I just find it of all the elves. I find it very amusing how the writers are so bad at characterizing their characters that they immediately they have Elrond tell Círdan that he's old and wise. Yeah, and then that uh -huh. becomes a yeah, and then that becomes a plot point later on because because Círdan being the old and wise person is how Galadriel knows how to find Elrond later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so here in the Grey Havens, in this is uh Círdan's workshop. Uh, he walks in at night. And apparently he can, like, detect people or whatever he knows. But Elrond is here. <laughs> Elrond has survived the plummet, and he has Why? swum here. Uh, he came to visit him in his boat shop. Uh, Elrond I also like that he, he hid, like, in a corner the entire fucking day for some reason. <laughs> under the, br <laughs> under under the, the bridge. bridge, hanging out. Yeah, he's hiding under the bridge, yeah. Uh, but he, like uh, Elrond, says to, <laughs> Elrond says to him that you are the oldest and wisest of our kind. Oh, thanks, Elrond. Didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and Cyrodiil asks uh, what Elrond has brought with him, and then 
Oh my gosh, we can't stay at this conversation. We got to do other things. He says, I, I, I perceive you carry something in your charge, something louder than the sea. Uh, and then Elrond yeah, says, I, what the fuck does that mean? The sea mean? is always loud. They, dude, they, <laughs> they, have to, they have to stop. It is unbelievable. <laughs> how to, <laughs> if were, these oh, stupid oh, quotes. Well, yeah, if, I so said, cringe, so. if I said the ocean, all right, tell me 10 things about the ocean. I don't know if loud would be like on like the list. Really loud. Maybe. Maybe. Number one is what? big. Big that would make it big. Wet. Always right would be number two. Salty, yeah. always big right. And wet. Blue uh, the problem is I don't even feel like you could describe a temperament to the ocean because the Ish ocean sure? it could be calm, but it could also be violent and turbulent. Yeah. It depends. On it's what always correct. Right? Yeah. Oh my god! It's like the characters in Rings of Power. I just it, <laughs> it's crazy because like I I can't imagine them sitting in the right. Well. I guess I have to because they did, but it's difficult to imagine people sitting in a writer's room coming up with these <laughs> phrases, looking to each other and agreeing that they're good. They're like, hell I, yeah. I don't understand. Like, they can't do it. They think that they're like, oh, look at us. Brilliant wordsmiths. Yeah, we're giving Tolkien a run for his money. It's actually <laughs> unfathomable to me. That so they loud for these like an ocean. Um, I, oh, I, I would never describe an ocean that's loud. Like, <laughs> Platoon, yeah, I wanted well, to ask: um, Is does Kirdan have a, a, like a some kind of psychic relationship with the ocean in the books? Is there anything mm. like that? He yes, does sort the of. ring of water. <laughs> yeah, he gets the ring of water later, but he sort of has a pre-established one because uh, he lives always sort of on the sea, having not made it to Valinor with the rest of them. He lives on the sea and develops quite a close relationship with the valor of the sea, or is it the valor of the inland waters? One of the two. He, he, Olmo, his I think title is the the shipwright. Yeah, he becomes a kid and is actually mean ship, right? I think in in oh, Kenya okay. yeah. or Cinderin, one of the two. Um, so yeah, he he has a special relationship with the sea, basically. Yes, but it's is it it's magical in nature. It's not just that he's been on lots of boats, kind of thing. Um, semi magical. Um, in that he also has a relationship with the god of the sea, and the god of the sea gives him visions, right? So why wasn't, like, a question: okay. Why wasn't he in season one? Why wasn't hey, he in season that one? That was a question that many people yeah, asked. He wasn't born yeah. yet. He should have been. <laughs> probably should have been, yeah. Given how massively important he is, it yeah. would have been nice to have him established earlier on, rather than just yeah. chucking him into a scene now and saying, even... oh, you're old and wise. Does he even get a name <laughs> mention? <laughs> Does he get a name mention? You're old, no, wise, no. and famous. No, no. Yeah. His name, I, he is no, never, I don't... He has never name dropped in season one, because I did not even hear the name carried down the ship right until after I did my videos. Yeah. What's funny to me is... is I knew it because I've heard Gary say it like a thousand times. He's been complaining all of season one. Where the fuck is Kier to the ship, right? And I'd be like, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whoever that is. Yeah, where is he? At the end of this episode, it does make you wonder. Yeah. Well, yes. uh, we, we've met him now. And I'm sure great things will, because when they Woo. say that he's the oldest and wisest, I have a lot of confidence in the showrunners and writers of Rings of Power to be able to write not just a wise character, but essentially <laughs> the wisest of all uh, of elf kind. Oh, and yeah. they just they can, uh, sure they can do They that. just they just come out of the gate and tell us straight away this dude is wise. So that, that way they don't have to do any yeah. effort later on. They can just use what do whatever mean? he does, it's the wise thing they to do. It he's already times. said something wise. <laughs> he he is, said that he's what we call wise loud. prescriptively. Yeah, the, the ocean is loud, yeah. It's a very wise wise thing. God, they've I taken a stick well. they've taken a stick man and written the word wise on his forehead so that, that way whatever he does, the audience <laughs> yeah. can just accept. Whatever he yeah. he is wise, so whatever oh, yes. he does mm. is wise. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. I yeah. yeah. Um so uh elsewhere in London, uh we have Gilgalad who is giving a message to uh messengers as you do. It's what they it's what they earn the big bucks <laughs> for. And uh, while he does this, he tells the messenger exactly what the <laughs> message is. <laughs> um in front of all these other people, by the way. Yeah. The yep. message being that Halbrand is fucking Sauron. <laughs> Yeah. Now, yeah. It's, this, this is, is like insanely call... important for, yeah, this, for these first two episodes. This is what we episodes. call very bad news, my dude. Yeah, man, uh, you, you might think you want to send two guys. Some... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not only you want to send like a hundred soldiers to make sure it fucking gets just an entire battalion, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. Said a full fucking anything yeah. there. It's insane. Appa apparently, they have multiple armies because yeah, that really is the, the commander of the northern armies. So they have yeah. multiples of them. So you send like a couple hundred guys over there. I know. I know they're elves, right? So that they can be quite stoic and everything. It, but it's just the idea of, uh, yeah, do you mind popping over to, uh, you know, Frank's house? He's like, yeah, what's going on over there? It's like, oh, Satan might be there. Um, anyway. <laughs> 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 what? <Yeah. laughs> 
make oh, sure yeah, that Frank gets the message. Oh, yeah. Oh, his wife. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, to make it funnier, it's like the message is Satan is there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's the message. Like, Remember this guy you were working with before? Yeah, he's Satan, by the way. I just love the idea. He's like, is there any... What if he is there? What if everyone is dead? Should I shoot him with a gun? Or like what? He's like, oh, oh, just just come back. Let him know. Yeah. Just go there, let him know, come back. He's actually asked exactly what would happen in that situation, and his response is, oh, it'll be fine, because he has a couple of rivers. <laughs> yeah, there's a rivers and walls. Rivers and walls, he's fine. Yeah. Manipulator. <laughs> well, uh, can't they, get in. Once again, we have, like, uh, everyone in this room has now heard Gilgalad say that, yeah, Sauron is back. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, I don't know, may, may something you want to keep close to your chest, or maybe you want to sound the alarm on it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what your strategy here is, because we don't discuss it. So <laughs> yeah, he doesn't say like uh, you yeah, don't mean Sauron the guy from. And he's like, no, different one. Like I think the guy like, oh, okay. from before who yeah, different know. different guy. Same, Did you say Sauron name. or Wuldrig? <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, 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 not that Hitler. <laughs> you oh, always mix them up. Um, I just wanted I to sure. highlight. The, so I missed this the first time I watched this, but uh, Moller, if you can rewind it, like a couple of uh, shots. The, so when he's actually writing the letter and he like oh, stamps yeah. his seal on it. Um, the point of that is that it goes on the outside of the letter because it's like a seal of authenticity that no one else has read it. He stamps it on the piece of paper and then wraps well, it up. Right. Um, Chris, I, you, you're going to know more I about this than I. that on the inside. Would, but I've, it uh, depends. Okay, so literally my knowledge I'm pulling on here is I'm pretty sure I found parchments like that in games where they have the stamp on the bottom right or left or whatever. I think there's, there's precedent for this. Yes, it does. It's just like a seal to show where it's from, basically. Uh, so it, the, both versions do exist. No, okay, it's, so it's got, it, it's got nothing it's to do with the fact the that no one else has seen it, it then. No, you might uh, put can, one on the you outside. You can do it that way sure to make that. sure, like, so you can see if the seal is broken or not. But um, okay, yeah, you, like you don't have to do it that way. It's uh, the seal is to show like where, like who sent it basically. To, okay, it's a, fair enough. To show like yeah, this is this is authentic. So it says gay there on the bottom right. <laughs> it says Geiko. 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 Geiko Brimbor. Sauron is here. You little gay crumb. You little gay crumb. So he stopped. How, how could you be such a gay crumb? <laughs> how could you be such... um, so um, um, yeah. So Galadriel is. Uh, so we learned that apparently Galadriel is not being punished uh, no. because Gil Glad is considering her being punished. <sighs> No, he's, that not. Is, he's right, fucking yeah. lying. That is he says he is. Yes, that's the reason. Yes, the reason when she asks, how come he says, I could have you clapped in irons for this, and she says, why not? And he says, I'm considering it. I was like, what, what is there to consider? She jumped <laughs> off the boat and helped Sauron, like, return create to the rings Earth to, to, like, create, create magic the rings nukes. that are going to yeah. control the entire fate of all of, all of the world. It's no, so no emotion. Like it smells Christ. like a lot of treason to me. I don't, I don't know. She goes on to say, like, um, I swear to you that I will destroy him. I'll like totally annihilate him from the face of Middle Earth. And then he, his response is, you wouldn't be here if I thought otherwise. So mm. his reason for not punishing her is because he believes that, yeah, she will actually set this right, even though he really doesn't like her. Yeah. But... Well, this just shows us that she's learned fucking nothing because the whole nope. reason why all of this started is because of, she like swore a blood oath of like murder spanning a century against Sauron. And now she's just done it again. Like, I'll just fucking go and, you know, purge all of Eregion and kill him. Well, that's thinking the thing, that writers, like, wrong. The nature of a character arc is it shouldn't be like, oh, well, no, I was wrong this time because he's Sauron. But it's like, no, the, the way that you go about things is really, really destructive and reckless. And you have to, you have to like learn to be less destructive and reckless. Not like, well, now, nah, now that I know that he's Sauron, I'll get it right this time. Like, what kind of arc is that? It's not even yeah. one. It's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for for con the consideration of our panel and for all of those watching, we need to keep in mind as we go forward, constantly, that the nature of Sauron is that he can shape shift, he can get inside your mind, he can manipulate you, he can corrupt mm -hmm. objects. Uh, that he can exert his influence through. Mm -hmm. Everyone should know this, especially Galadriel, especially Gilgalad in uh, oh, yeah. in this uh, in this scenario. Uh, going forward, you have to always be aware of that and wary that that could be an element of what Sauron is doing. Um, if you are Gilgalad, um, Galadriel is doing everything 
that somebody would do if they were completely enthralled by Sauron and were working yep. towards his yeah. rise to Man. power. There is no real difference between Galadriel as she is, really, for all we know, and for what you have to believe she could be. Um, she has facilitated so much for Sauron, and she wants the rings, and she says to use the rings. She's saying everything that Sauron would say. So, something to consider. Yeah, uh, uh, probably even further. It's like, oh, you three were like in contact with them, uh, with, with, with Sauron for like weeks. Uh, you're going to all stay at home and not do anything where I can see you because I can't trust any of you three. Yes, it never mm -hmm. seems to be that uh, Gil-Galad never considered that Galadriel could literally be Sauron in disguise right now and he doesn't even mm -hmm. consider it. Isn't even, it's like the whole scroll thing over again. No one gives a shit. Yep. That the shapeshifters yep. could be anyone. They just don't care. They just don't take any precautions for it. They don't do any yep. tests, double checking, none of it. And that will continue to be an issue through this yeah. uh, through this show as well. And it's for all he knows, three, we learned actually that went, For all he knows, Galadriel actually went to Valinor and this is Sauron this whole time. Mm. But in season three, mm. we learned that there's actually one million Saurons in Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> now, um. The, the scene after this, uh, it's implied that they just walk from one location to another nearby in Linden. Uh, it is nighttime. And even here, uh, when he's writing this letter, he's even got his lamp on and everything. Why mm -hmm. has Gil Galad waited until night to send an urgent message back to Celebrimbor and Eregion that Halbrand is Sauron. Sauron had a hand in making these rings. Holy <laughs> shit. Be careful. Urgency is implied. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he, he, made, he made a lot of typos when he wrote the letter, so he just yeah, it's gotta it look like nice. 50 times. True. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta look also, nice. Here's another question. There's something I just don't know. Shouldn't, don't they have like better means of transporting messengers, like birds or something? Like messaging birds or whatever? Shouldn't they have, well, have pigeons or ravens, right? So, yeah, something like that. I, I'm so not sure, do, but I don't know they why. They do pay wouldn't. lip service to this in episode two because Galadriel says. I believe the line is we've sent, uh, uh, we haven't had a response from any of our messages to uh, Eregion, implying that there was more than one. But yeah. without without spoiling anything, uh, there was only one. If there was more than one, then the, everything they becomes the even more insane. Well, either that or the more there is, things get even the more insane. Yeah. Make, yeah, but yeah. the worse the plot becomes. It, yes, exactly. The plot. Uh, we'll get there. The, we'll get there. The plot relies on there only being one message. Yep. So yeah, Gil Galad uh, from last season, not doing great. Uh, no. Elrond stocks have sharply risen, oh, oddly yeah. as that is to say, but Gil Galad <laughs> is still just kind of <laughs> clumping along in terrible, you know, it's just a yeah. pretty bad clumping. character. So I uh, just want to mention here as well, just to keep uh, track of the timelines. So it yep, yep. uh, took, took about a day, about 24 hours thereabouts to get to uh, Linden because horses don't have to stop. And he's now sending a letter that evening, which means we're on about two days since leaving Eregion. Uh, whereas the Sauron plot line is it took him about a week to get to the Southlands and he's being tortured for an unspecified amount of time. I think saying that that's any less than a week would be unreasonable. So sure. we're, about, we're about, what, 10 days ahead in Sauron land. Um, sure. The film, or sorry, the, the show makes absolutely no attempt to even like begin to try and explain the timelines here New. or i mean god forbid the distances but the timelines no <laughs> it's uh you got to do a lot of sleuthing to try and figure this sort of thing out well and when you do the sleuthing which is what i spent a couple of hours on earlier today it just falls apart it doesn't work at all worse. yeah uh so um they go to a uh, they go to some sort of a meeting room galadriel and Gilgalad, and uh a bunch of soldiers are there i say bunch just three um what <laughs> the the soldiers say that they have searched yeah, the, everywhere across the coast and they can't yeah, they they find Elrond. They scoured the coast and they've looked for the rings and for Elrond, but they haven't found him. Which, well, they did. which is weird day. because I thought this was like the day, the same day. So the when Elrond jumped off the cliff, Gilgalad said, "Go look for him." And then here we have the scene where he's sending a message to the other elves at Eregion saying, "Yeah, Sauron's back." which you'd think he'd be doing it with the utmost urgency. And right after he sends the message, some guards say, yeah, we looked everywhere along the coast and we couldn't find him. Like, it's been an oh. afternoon. Yeah. It's, it's been like, it's been less than a day. You couldn't have possibly done it. 
To be fair, I think the world building is sound here because they couldn't find the Vic Trench, so they, obviously yeah. they can't find one guy with a ring, so and you know what? I, th I think that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, but uh, da, 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 da. Galadriel, Galadriel says that Elrond's plan is not escaping, it's destroying the rings. And these two things are not mutually exclusive. Hmm. You can destroy the rings and escape. Mm -hmm. You could yeah. escape so that you could destroy the ring safely. She says it like he couldn't possibly do both. He couldn't escape to destroy the rings. Um, she says that Elrond would seek out somebody that he can trust. Somebody who is old and wise. <laughs> oh, I know a guy. A I know a guy. There's only one of those. We can, we can, can also read the plot. Wouldn't it be funny if she, uh, well, Elrond was hiding with some guy. And the guy's like, why did you choose me, Elrond? And he's like, well, because she would have assumed I'd go to someone old and wise, so I went to someone young and stupid. <laughs> and the guy's like, okay. <laughs> then back at Linden, she says, Elrond will suspect that we'll, we'll look for with someone old and wise. We should seek out the youngest and the stupidest of the elves. They're like, oh, I know just the guy. Old Florpin. And they, they turn yeah, up he's with all that. Down there and, yeah. They turn up with that reasoning, and that Florpy guy is like, "Okay, this is uh, this is mean, guys. Like you're all saying, you know, like, when did this become a thing? Like, you don't all you don't all agree. Like like it, it hurts coming from the king, but you guys don't think that, right? And they're like, oh, I mean, uh, he's got some friends. Uh, like you guys, listen, you're the you're the only elf on welfare, is what, <laughs> is what we're saying in here. My, my, um, my arm don't work so good. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh. So, yeah, back, uh, back with Elrond and Sirden. They're talking yeah. in the Grey Havens. Um, and I don't know how Sirden could think that, based on the conversation and what Elrond has said, I don't know how Sirden could think that Sauron didn't touch the rings based on Elrond's accounting. Because Elrond has explained the rings, what they are, it's Sauron. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we have this element of, oh, he didn't touch him, right? As if that's the only way to corrupt something. I don't have to touch mm -hmm. something to corrupt it. I can, I could mess around with the pieces before they're put together. I can tamper with, uh, you know, the mechanism of the creation. I can. There's a lot of different ways to do stuff, especially once you start throwing magic into the mix. But Sirden is wise, so he must be right. I guess. I don't know. Doesn't yeah. seem wise so what far. What they're vaguely going for, based on the characterization, and I use that word very loosely, we've had for him, is that you know, his, one of his opening lines is, there is uh, only perfection in Valinor. And so like his concerns yeah. are supposed to be kind of otherworldly. He's not particularly interested in what is actually going on in this world. His mind is always on perfection. His mind is changed when he sees these things because he believes that they match the beauty of Valinor. And, but that's like his entire mind is based on that. I don't think he's necessarily supposed to be thinking about things he really should be thinking about, like have they been created by Satan? I was going to highlight it, but uh, that exchange she has with the with the lady there is really fucking retarded. Like the the lady does the little thing with the wood, and she says like perfection. Yeah, the lady. Kierdan yeah. re responds like perfection only insists in Valinor, and she says thank you, master. Like what? what? I mean, no. So, <laughs> so I fucked up. What? What's wrong? Tell what? me. I wanna. I wanna mean, strive to, to improve. What, what's wrong with it? Yeah. <laughs> It looks so good, though. Yeah. It looks really good. Nah, it's not perfect. Like, no, kind of it's shit, not actually. perfect. Listen, <laughs> yeah, you, really you were kind of hampered from the beginning. It was never going to work out. It, don't worry about it. No. Like, oh. Yeah, it's like, it, it'll, I mean, you're doing your best. You're doing your best. At least you're not Floor Pendel. He's, he's, he's beyond yeah, yeah. helping. But you, you might make something of yourself one day. Um, oh, but yeah, once again, apparently the people seem to think that the touch element by Sauron is literal. Like, literally yeah. he has to touch the rings after they're created. Which is dumb to, as fuck. You know, very dumb. Uh, da, 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 da. And it seems like no one's even considered that he also... snuck into the forge at night or did, did anything when no one was looking. He's been there surely, for weeks. He could surely have done the all most kinds of important singular thing he could touch wouldn't even necessarily be the forge, which he's touched. Wouldn't even necessarily be the tools, which he's touched. Would be the mithril, <laughs> which he has touched. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's already over. the most important element of the rings. It's yeah. actually the first thing he touches when he gets in the forge, like the yep. very first thing. Yeah. Like, oh, what's this? The gems they're going to put know, into like, it. Yeah. It, it is the is the conclusion that the, these ones are corrupted. Like these ones, <laughs> they have. Been, you know what I mean? Like what? What are we supposed to conclude that they have or haven't actually been uh, corrupted? It's something I've been. 
That's something I've been wondering myself. Like, wait, so are they corrupted still? Did they corrupt well, anything? Whether or not, I guess. At the... My impression is whether or not they are corrupted in the sense that you put them on, you do Sauron's bidding or whatever. But they're set up on the network, right? So once the one ring gets installed, yes. they'll be uh, they ready. They got the Wi-Fi signal set in them, and that's the problem. But we are no. supposed to be wondering ah. at the moment exactly this question. I have a nasty feeling that the show has actually replicated two of the most irritating beats of season one already. You've got Gandalf's stick, which will be the MacGuffin of the, this entire season. And you've got the will they won't lay sort of corruption angle of the rings, which kind of mirrors the Sauron question of season one. So we're going to probably have to spend six, seven episodes of saying, oh, I wonder if Círdan's been corrupted uh, by the ring. Uh, and I wonder if mm -hmm. Gil-Galad's been corrupted by the ring. Yeah. And then the end result right. will be the, the least satisfying answer, which is no. It's no, yeah. <laughs> well, it, the thing is, if, if the answer is no, which I absolutely would not put it past them, then that means that, it, well, yeah, it's skipping ahead very slightly, but uh, they start seeing things after they put the rings on. And if that isn't Sauron doing that, then it just means that the writers injected those ideas into their heads to make them do things. Mm -hmm. Or I mm. guess that's just that's uh, just some of the rings universe, do. Or? That's just the, some of the rings do. I guess. No, that's the powers. That... No, that's the we thing. We've already had power. them. Because ring, we don't know what they do. Yeah, they they haven't told really. the audience just this. Of power. This show we don't know have a perspective yet, yeah. on what the rings fucking do outside of clean leaves. <laughs> 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 yeah. At least from so, this part of the story, of course. It's like now. Círdan is the wisest, and the oldest, but he's the wisest of all the elves. Círdan, being told all of this stuff by Elrond, should consider whether or not uh, this is something that Elrond, uh, or something that Sauron would want him to be told. Should he consider that Elrond is Sauron in disguise, and that Sauron's machinations are such that he wants Círdan to have these rings? Especially since Elrond even says in this conversation that Sauron is, you know, very cunning. Um, there's no sense of like, there's, there's no like, oh, the, the, this, this, this enemy that we have, who's a big trickster and he's really sneaky and he's clever and he's going to try and subvert all sorts of stuff. Like there's no, the, the wisest elf should have a lot of questions and concerns about this and maybe second guessing things to be on the safe side. But yeah. there doesn't seem to be any of this element to Sirden that we see in the show. There should be a whole conversation here on this table where they talk about back and forth, but it's pretty much yeah. over in like a minute. Elrond, <laughs> yeah. how do you know that this wasn't the plan, that Sauron's plan from the beginning, that you should give them to me, or that you should get them away from Gil-Galad, and that they mm -hmm. should be in your charge? How do you know that this isn't all da 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 da, -da? Mm -hmm. um, yep. But in this conversation, we find that Elrond is 100% on board with the idea that the worst fate for elves is that they fall prey to the enemy's designs. That this is worse than leaving all of Middle-earth to its fate, which Gil-Galad implies is very, very bad as well. It's better that Middle-earth falls when the elves aren't there, I guess, to get corrupted as well. Um, this is Elrond's perspective. He makes kind of lines it out very clear. That's mm -hmm. the worst thing that can happen, is for elves to be corrupted by these, uh, the, these evil rings and Sauron's influence. I figured it was a similar idea to what we got in The Lord of the Rings, where Gandalf's like, um, this ring is really powerful, but through me it could wreak, uh, you know, yeah. I forget exactly what the line is. But um, yeah, so he would rather just not, or sorry, the, the elves would rather just do nothing and leave. And I guess the Middle Earth has to suffer the consequences of Galadriel's actions rather than inadvertently yeah. get involved and make things worse. Yes. Which and makes they, sense. Like, really... And Elrond's very clear about it, which is good. Yeah. Basically, yeah. he feels that they would become enslaved to Sauron's will if they, you know, took which the is rings. pretty fucking reasonable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially <laughs> given what's happened, yeah, that's it's also likely. It's pr also worth mentioning, probably, that like Elrond at this point doesn't know that the rings are evil. His objection is that he is not willing to take that risk. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. it's a very, very real risk of that happening. Uh, and of course, there's everything. there's no. It's been mentioned before, but you can just destroy these ones and then go to Celebrimbor and say, yeah, let's make new ones, but not while uh, Sauron's yeah. around. Yeah, well, bring them back and be like, let's just crush though. these Remember, down and... The initial deal with the dwarves was for like a really huge supply of mithril. They could probably yeah. be like, Access okay, let's, the mines. let's go and see if we can just get a fucking bar of it. All right, let's see about that. And then yeah. they go like there, a nugget. And, and what would happen <laughs> is they would realize, oh shit, you guys actually need our help. So we can, yeah, oh, great, we can make a full on deal now. You know, like the, it, it would all, it's almost like consequence forces the story to go in a particular direction because of the way they've written it. They can't get away with being like, 
these rings are their only chance. Like they're not, and we know this. We've we've figured out you how to fucking how to forge this more. bitch now. Like yeah, we, we can didn't... make unlimited of them. To be I honest guess, with I you, think what... they need to like put reasoning in for why they would stop at three rings. Why wouldn't they want to do more than that? Maybe they've got to go sort yeah. themselves out. I think mm -hmm. what we're having to lean on here is the fact that the rings can only be crafted by Celebrimbor, and Celebrimbor is compromised at this point. The problem is that the show doesn't acknowledge I was going to say, the show's not well, doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't know this yet. Yeah. Like, Galadriel fucking does. At least it's yeah, yeah. 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 Well, no, I, I, mean, I mean based on the end of season one. Yeah, yeah, but she doesn't like tell people or anything, which that, like compounds the issue and makes it difficult sure. for people to. Well, yes, but imagine yeah. if she had told Keller Brimbor, yeah, he's Sauron, so I exactly. uh, never talk to Halbrand yep. again. That so she would, didn't uh, tell Elrond that she didn't, she didn't tell Keller Brimbor. If, she, All she, if told... she had said that, then it would seem that that would have actually be there. Would the Lord of the Rings doesn't happen? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> she just said she, that. All she told Keller Brimbor was, "Don't talk to him again. He's not who he claims he is. Don't talk to him again." Okay, bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty simple instructions. So I gotta go yeah. chase Elrond, because he took the rings, I guess, when I wasn't looking. <laughs> oh. um, all right, so. Oh, God. Uh, uh, Elrond, is, he's got his line, he's sticking to it, and he has brought the rings to, uh, to Círdan, because he thinks that Círdan, being the oldest and wisest of the elves, uh, might know how to destroy them. <laughs> it would be so, so funny if there was a shot where he, he pushes it onto the table, and then the other end, you see Círdan push a hammer. <laughs> He's like, have you tried this? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Did you, you try punching Elrond's it? like, oh shit, no, like, no, actually, I actually I haven't. Like, yeah. I haven't. Um, so I mean, did you look really fucking sheep? So they probably. <laughs> Kieran says that there's a a deep trench where the the bones of the something some I don't know if it's supposed to be a real thing that actually happened or just a mythological story, but there's a, there's a super mega crazy deep trench nearby in the ocean very nearby in the ocean um and he could drop them in there <laughs> don't and let while... the fucking children play there <laughs> yeah Jesus and 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 while i don't think it would destroy them technically it would take them out of play forever they couldn't be used by anyone uh it just it would never be possible to retrieve them that's where they would remain forever um so uh Kyrdin seems to think that it's an appropriate method of getting rid of him uh, which seems like it would be the case. There's no way you're getting down there to get them. And as long as they just sit there and no one uses them, they can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So, I, just, I think like, that would work. Like, yeah, Elrond is such a, a muppet, though, for that to have to... Cause it, it's not exactly something only an old, wise person could come up with as a plan. <laughs> oh, by the way, the have you considered <laughs> just throwing them, them down a really deep <laughs> hole? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if oh man, that's so wise, Kira. If Elrond, Thank you very much. Yeah. If Elrond so jumped wise. off the cliff, accidentally dropped hmm. them when he hit the water, they might be just comp irretrievable. They'd be at the yeah. bottom of the bay. No, because because Gil Gallen would have a fucking scuba team. <laughs> like the elves. <laughs> well, it, it, it builds a dive, dive. <laughs> So uh, also, the fact that this trench exists means that by the time we get to season five or whenever this goddamn show is going to end, the One Ring will exist. Yes, Which... I don't know how, how does this trench come into play when the third age rolls around? I guess we'll never know. Mm. Mm. Because well, we I mean, will never know. It's really a matter the of the argument against Gollum dropping the one there. ring. The, the, yeah, the yeah. argument against just dropping the one ring anywhere is that because it would never actually be destroyed, Sauron would eventually. A, you couldn't kill Sauron, and B, he would probably find a way of getting it back eventually. The only place it can be destroyed is in the place it was made, which isn't true of the rest of the rings. In fact, you probably could just hit these really hard with a hammer, and it probably would work, but it doesn't apply to the one ring, which is why they, well, they had never... specifically to take it back. Well, yeah, here with these three, they never consider, like, no. Have you tried hitting them oh. with the hammer? Yeah, hold on, because I'm I'm just subconsciously drawing from information from the Peter Jackson films here, which I need to not do. So, <laughs> um, Mithril is as light as a feather and as hard as dragon scale, which mm -hmm. would suggest that when you smack it with a hammer, nothing's going to happen. Rings of Power has not told us that, unless I'm mistaken. It's they just say it's a very good metal. Basically, they say yeah, it's real good. Do they say that it's? Do they say it's really hard to like? I don't think they, bend? they give us like a reference yeah. for how hard, other no. than like it's stronger than. Well, still as thin as it they, is. They also yeah. say it's unstable, right? And... So it it kind of if, you can, if you've um, got a forge that you can like shape it and work it, you have a forge that can yeah. undo yeah. it. Mm -hmm. He's, he says nothing can diminish its light, but that doesn't. Yeah. What about a blanket? Well, he says I've tested it under <laughs> FDGRS. 
and nothing could diminish it. So like by implication, he's tested it under a huge amount of different trains. He says every duress, which is obviously not true because he hasn't, you know, presumably he hasn't, like, rubbed, he hasn't rubbed duress. cheese on it or something. Wouldn't he hasn't dropped it in the volcano. You, you, you guys right. You, you wouldn't count as duress. Know. He really wouldn't need anyone who is wise, would he? He would need to just get to the forge. You need to go back to the forge and drop them in, melt them, and I don't know, fuck with the materials in a way that's just like build them into like a little block or stick. Sabotage the forge. Yeah, yeah. and then you have sabot to assume that would work. Yeah, like, yeah. like that should have been Elrond's whole operation, probably. Like, go. The problem with going to the wisest elf is you have no idea if he's gonna fucking side with you, bud. You don't. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe the wisest elf is like, yo, we should totally use them. These are great. Not that he would, because he's wise. Calibrimo would probably not be fine with him smashing the rings he just made. But, uh... Well, that would be cool character stuff that we'll never have. No. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. so, uh, Kyrdan's going to drop him in the water. Do you ever think of that? No, because you're not wise like me. And they're having this chat, <laughs> and the conversation is cut short. There's a horse arriving. Oh, no. Oh, oh my no. God. It's Whoa. Gil Gallen Nay. and Galadriel and some... Dread. They Extras. tracked down the one it's fucking wise man. Gil Galadriel. <laughs> the How did they know? Yeah. Uh, so, Gilgalad came uh, here personally, probably because he wants to make sure he can get a hand on the, uh, the rings well, himself, for right, safekeeping uh, or for use. I'm a little bit disappointed you didn't describe it as a rare Gilgalad action scene, because he... Oh he yeah, this is a very rare Gilgalad action scene. <laughs> He's, He's away from his three. I'm, he left oh, the sound stage. We, uh, when, uh, Random, when you and I were watching this episode, when Elrond jumped off the cliff, I said, Oh, a rare Elrond action scene. <laughs> um, oh, God, yeah. There's, I, I'm not going to mention it in case anyone in chat hasn't seen it, but there is there are things that are going to happen based on the trailer that I am really looking forward to involving Elrond, because I don't know how they're going to justify it. Mm. Well, um, so Gil Gallad is here in an action scene. He wants to take the rings, you know, personally and see to them. But when they arrive, Galadriel... She uh she asked Gil Gallad if she can go in uh go inside and talk to Elrond himself personally, um and Gil Gallad um who should not be trusting her at all ever yeah not what, what one he should say is bit. fuck no everyone surround the building go in at the same time yes uh, but sir he's wise uh, and old you <laughs> like they walk in the room and he does uh, the Professor X motion and then they go ah and fall over oh, he's so wise and old. <laughs> That would actually be quite a good payoff, is if, if one of them says, but sir, he's wise, and then Keller Rim, uh, Gilgalad goes, and old, and then they go. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them does the thing from fucking uh, Last Crusade, he says, and old, and he goes, ah, and turns to a skeleton or something, he's just like, I don't understand these powers, <laughs> like, why do you make people <laughs> die from old? Like, what? <laughs> so, um... Uh, Gil Galad actually allows Galadriel to go inside and talk with Elrond, because Gil Galad's a retard. And now we get to have an incredibly wonderful conversation between two very good friends and Galadriel, where we can see just how far she's come since season one. She walks in and she says, I've uh, basically, I've come to coax you willingly or else we'll arrest you. <laughs> so, <laughs> it would just be, Damn, I fell at the first hurdle. It would just be so funny because I, I want Elrond to cut to like, do you understand my argument? G give me my mm -hmm. argument because I need to know that you have any idea what I'm trying to say. But then if she managed to do it, he'd be like, so you understand, I think that you're essentially corrupted. So everything you say, you know, I think is you trying to corrupt me, you dumb fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I listen to you? <laughs> you don't understand what's happening. <laughs> None of the characters do. But to be fair, Elrond hasn't made much of an effort to make them understand, so whatever. No. Um, let's see. Uh, she says, I should have trusted you as I asked you to trust me. I do not know what this is referencing. Yeah, uh... so um, the promise that Elrond made to Galadriel, or I should say, Galadriel asked Elrond to, Elrond to trust her, um, which happened at the beginning and at the end of season one. That is something that happened. But the fact that she says, I should have trusted you as I asked you to trust me. Why should, when should Galadriel have trusted Elrond? Because as far as I can tell, the only thing that they have actually disagreed on, on is what to do with the rings. Which, if that's mm -hmm. what they're appealing to, if that's what she's appealing to, then she's saying, I should have trusted you that we shouldn't use these rings whilst trying to convince him that they should use these rings. It, I, I don't know what the writers mean. I legitimately don't mm. know what they mean. These two characters have actually not talked that much in season one. No, they're great, um, great friends. I, I mm. don't know what the... I don't, I don't know. I have no idea what this is referencing. I, I don't know. May, I, I don't know. 
So this, this might be a stupid question, but is, is this possibly a reference to the law? Don't think uh, so. No, I don't think the so. Only the only thing I can think of is not going after Sauron, but that really doesn't make sense either. Um, she tries to assure that uh, assure him that with three there's balance, and that this is a path that we chose together. And then Elrond says, "No, you chose it for me." Yes, which is that, good. yes. Well, Basically. good boy, Elrond. Elrond <laughs> I mean, is actually. I like that he's pushing back, but it's it's like this path we chose. It's like, well, it changed. No, you did some wacky shit, and then nobody it's agreed crazy. with whatever the fuck we'll is going on we now. We can get Mauler, all right. <laughs> there was no one else to agree with. You just decided this is gonna be what was gonna happen, and boom. Sorry, I got, I got an she's doing a gaslighting. We gotta stop her. Yeah, yeah, she's incredibly manipulative. I, 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 I hate Galadriel. She is so one of the dumb. shittiest characters I've ever seen, and she does not nope. get punished for it. She should nope. not be allowed to have this conversation. I just love the idea that Elrond's summary of Galadriel's actions in season one is, you did some wacky shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so essentially the reason that Galadriel allowed the rings to be made, even knowing Sauron's identity and why she wants the elves to use the rings, is because she says, in my heart, I know the three rings are free of his influence. Oh, so well, all your incredible, all my incredible arguments are going to be you, countered right? with your feelings. Okay, it's fucking it's... amazing, isn't it? Because you'd be like, Glad yeah, you know, that's yeah. exactly what a corrupted fucking idiot would say. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what. Yeah. yeah, it's also the second time she's done it because in episode one of season one, she said, it, "It's uh, what is it? The evil is gone. Why is it not gone from in here? Oh, well, you just kind of feel like he's still out there. Is that it? <laughs> it's the no, same she's just thing saying again. that she's evil." Yeah, Sauron would, by design, have the rings be such that they didn't feel evil, because that would, mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 the, the jig would be up. So. Uh, yeah, if you put them anyway. on and felt, a, felt an urge to, like, stab puppies or something, then it would be pretty obvious that you, you just, just take that ring off. You just want that moment where she's like, I'm not corrupted. He's like, that's what a corrupted person would say. She's like, yes, but I'm not corrupted. He's like, that's what a corrupted yeah, person would say. Not she's like, no, but I know it. I can feel it. He's like, oh my God, glad. I, I know it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, God. You, are, you are so not the oldest and wisest. No. Sauron can absolutely um, be fucking with you right now and you have no fucking... Like, True. Yeah. And then, then Gilgalad comes in and he's like, Sauron. no, I'm pretty sure she's not corrupted. He's like, you're corrupted too! And he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would I know if I was arrested. corrupted. And there's oh. three Spider-Men pointing at each other. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, she's in my heart. I know the three rings were free of his influence. And Alron asks, but are you? You turned your back on Valinor. <gasps> Maybe that was Sauron's influence. <gasps> uh, Alron is telling her that she could totally be corrupted. And he's right. And everyone needs to fucking recognize this, but only Elrond does, which is yep. insane. Oh, it's boring, too. Like, yeah. there's so much conflict left on the table. To make a show interesting, they don't even know they have it there. It's right there. Pick it up. Use it. So there's also, nah. this is the first of two references from episodes one and two that suggests that the writers are trying to suggest that some, all, question mark, of Galadriel's actions in season one, from the moment she met Sauron, because, it, I mean, he, he touched her as soon as they got on the boat. He, like, you know, pulled her onto the boat. Touch. Everything that she did was to some degree corrupted by Sauron, and therefore she is not as responsible as she was presented as in season one, which to me seems like a very hasty re uh, retcon to yeah. make her more likable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So some of you might be wondering, you might be screaming, <laughs> wait, where is Kierden? He was right here. They were just having a conversation <laughs> in the workshop. <laughs> Where's He's wise. He was, he was the right here. They, they, their, their conversation ended because they heard the, the little horse feet pitter pattering coming in to get him. And then there were guards and a king and everything. Where's where where did Kierden go? It, he's just he's not what, present. He's wise, Rags. He's wise. Would it be great yeah. if they did a Scooby Doo cut where Kierden's doing the little Scooby Doo sneaky run? <laughs> <laughs> or oh I thought you were gonna say he was like up on the rafters. Like or above the door or something, and he's like standing in between two beams or whatever, like sideways or something, like and a it, ninja pose. And revealed between that little <laughs> argument, which is like, I'm not corrupted. You are. I'm not. You are. And then uh, it camera pads up and he goes, "You are kind of corrupted, though." You are. You are. <laughs> you, you, you probably <laughs> are. You were with. You were with Sauron just, a lot. You've helped him just out love, a lot. I would just love to see him like sneaking, sneaking away in the background, like you know. <laughs> yeah, while they're talking. He's out of focus <laughs> in the background. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we find out that Kiridin is uh, he's not hiding or, you know, he's not behind a barrel or anything like that. He didn't he jump out the window. He, um, he is apparently, he, he, he took a boat 
from that little building they were in, and he left <laughs> with the rings to go dump no them one's in the home. trench. You sure yeah, did. No one saw him leave. The workshop was no. surrounded with elves, and no one was like, with is all of their elf over eyes, there? All it's these like, elves yeah, just... just didn't see him leaving in a boat out this little building. It's one of those things the where just didn't see it. you can picture the scene, right, where he slowly closes the door, and he's listening, you can hear Galadriel, and he's like, she didn't notice. And then he closes it, and he's like, ah. The girl Galad goes, hey, man. And he's like, ah. <laughs> he's like, yeah. hey, oh, oh your highness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just uh, sounded like they needed a moment in there, so I was just getting some air. I, he didn't, he, I you know anything about the rings, do you? And he's like, no. Yes. No, no, no. Ray, what are those? Uh, that must be true, because you are very wise. The wisest and oldest of us all. It it really um, is a oh hold on I just noticed actually so if you go back um the the other boats that were like moored they all had little lanterns on his doesn't which therefore means it's invisible ah oh, it is yeah. 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 yes yes <clears throat> he should well, learn to smart. attack Osgiliath he's, yeah, he's a wise man yeah. if you also notice in that earlier shot Galadriel's hair is not moving in the wind <laughs> and ah. that boat is moving at quite a rate of knots well it's actually the, um it's a, it's a it's sort of a reference to because she's corrupted uh, wind doesn't work <laughs> when you're evil. <laughs> Yeah. It, it's evil wind, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't know these it's things, man. Come on, I thought you watched this hair. show. <laughs> yeah. But yes, is is Kieran's just a, he's got on his little boat. He's gonna go dump off those rings. What a cliffhanger! <laughs> I just want to see <laughs> Gil Galad paddle a little boat going stop. Oh, <laughs> don't do it. Where, where are you going? Back here. <laughs> don't don't you throw those rings in. I know you're going to. I know you're going to do it. I see them. Stop. Don't do it. Stop. He's like, I don't I have any rings. He's like, you do have rings. You do. I can uh, see them. You do. Oh, no, no, I'm wise. You're both like leaving the harbor. Like, I'm, I'm sure that would be fine. Mm. He's paddling so wiser than me. Ah, I can't catch him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I, I wish I was as old as he was so I could catch up. <laughs> Oh, fucking roll wisdom to paddle. All right. Well, that was that was that was a lot of fun. Okay, back to Nori and not Gandalf. Oh, no. Now, no. Oh God, why? We don't have to spend someone's... long on this, do we? No, you know we don't. So I just they... love that that image right there. I love it. Okay, yep, that's yep. their trap. That's, that's, yeah. that's dude, their trap. amazing trap, bro. That's their trap because that's they know someone's too... following them. It's been that's implied to be Skeletor. <laughs> That's oh. two fucking rocks. It, also, if anyone just steps on it, it's just yeah, off the ground. It's, it's, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually not, hard a shot to, just... yeah. <laughs> to get your foot there's, under there's that rocks. would be annoying. There's rocks there's a shot just before this when they're looking straight at her and they can't tell it's her. Like uh, Gandalf is looking like straight at her from not yep. that far away. Uh, yeah, I, can't, Nori... I, can't decide, I can't decide what's more embarrassing that the, the trap itself or that whoever is here is actually going to fall over it. It's before this as well. So well, also, Nori is on top of that rock, which means she absolutely would know who this is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but like I said, Gandalf, Gandalf is looking straight at her just before this and happens. That, yeah, they, they should know. <laughs> we don't, because the camera is, you know, they're, they're mm. hiding it from us with blurry shots and yeah. careful framing. Yeah, the, best, but... the, the best moment here, he picks up a fucking rock. Imagine if he fucking <laughs> smashed her face <laughs> in. Brain the yeah, yeah, the the fucking... Fucking it's like, wow, the person, the person following us is like Harfoot size. That's interesting. Um... <laughs> But like, why wouldn't she be calling yeah. their name? Does she think this this is a dangerous place or something? Well, my other question is, how She's long blind. has she been following them? Because they've been walking for ages, and she must have been fairly close behind them. How has she not already caught up to them if they've been going for months at this point? They're walking in circles for months. They're walking in circles. <laughs> they do throw in a line in a minute where they say, well, you hadn't exactly gotten very far, so yeah. finding you was not difficult. Which, I like, fuck that. That's bullshit. Because they're, they're in the middle <laughs> of a desert. We haven't seen anything like this. If this is actually a couple of hours' walk from the Grove at the end of Season 1, then the writers are lying to us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, this shot, how is he not, you know, noticed this is a fucking tiny person? Tiny person. Because they stole the um the thing from Return of the King with the shadow on the wall when Sam goes into Kirith Ungol. That's what they did, and so it makes him think it's a bigger person <laughs> because the shadow was big. Dude, he looks mm -hmm. like he was he was barely paid attention. No offense to the actor, I think, but like I think they I don't, did they tell him they were shooting here because he just sort of you see his face. He's like, nah, 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 nah. and then he goes, oh, like she's actually fallen. Like, how are you yeah. not? I thought you were staring right at her. What the yeah. fuck? Uh, his mind's bailed, you know. He, he, he's a bit slow. I hope Nori's up there to throw that blanket on them from that'll get him. fifty feet in the air. <laughs> yeah, but that that that'll is the shot him. from uh, that is the shot from before, and then it pans down to see Gandalf is like right there beneath the beneath the shot. So, so... he's looking straight at her, like he, <laughs> they can't tell it's uh, it's a half, halfling. 
So anyway, uh, they, they, they trap the person, and it's Poppy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the day. only thing that happens in the Harfoot plotline in episode one is, oh, it was Poppy. So they totally why... retconned. They did not intend to have her for season two. So I don't know what changed, but they decided, fuck it, we're bringing her in. I was feeling that maybe they they knew that they were going to do this, and they knew that nothing of import was going to happen in episode one. So they were like, "Well, they, let's blue ball the audience at the end of season one." They needed fuel for a fake out. Exactly, they needed fuel for the fake out. So then they made her arrive because otherwise they would have the map, and they would have Poppy, which means nothing happens in episode one. Mm -hmm. So they contrived and, drama to fill time in their TV show. So I suppose it's at this point that you kind of wonder, like, what's the point in this show? Like, why does it even exist? Why are you doing <laughs> That's this? That's a good question. That I, point I arrived know, I, a long time ago. It, I suppose it did. I suppose it really did. But, like, I'm just struck by why they'd even feel compelled to make this show and tell these yeah. stories, you know? Uh, you know, in yeah. a world that makes made sense, that w this wouldn't exist. Also, There's... this this, sh this show cost a billion dollars. Up just throwing that out like, there again. Yeah. That's why knowledge. it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. You can tell. Yeah, we've, uh, we've got that fucking, got that framing quality. with the actor who doesn't know what he's doing. We've got the fact that they should have already seen Poppy. We've got the booby trap that is like the <laughs> lamest booby trap that I could have made in five seconds. And it's a billion dollar show. Like people, you know, shit on things like the Acolyte, rightfully so, because it looks cheap and it cost $180 million. This cost a billion fucking dollars. It's unbelievable. Oh Jesus! So yeah, I have I have many questions. I don't know how <laughs> she was able to follow them this far, this long. I don't know where she got food and water because the other two they were like starving and dying of thirst, and I don't know how she had pr enough provisions when they didn't. Um, I, she I, remembers I, I she put it all in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I guess I I feel like the show just wasted my time by not having Poppy not join them. Uh, yep. When they departed at the end of season one, uh, makes me feel like the writers changed their minds or something. I don't oh, know. There, there's a lot of that in the, in the, this series. I feel like the, the rewrites occurred. That, that's the case with fucking Holbrand going to Mordor as well and then just walking back later on. <laughs> that that one's really funny. funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that because I, I have a little theory as to why that happened. Ooh. Oh, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so. Poppy uh, has hey, she has a way for them not to be lost, mm. which is boy, that's really that's great, that's really good, that's fortunate, is what that is. Um, mm -hmm. She has this little map, and the key to getting unlost is singing this song that they made up for this season. Yeah, because uh, that fucking thing apparently was a trail a very long time ago, and now the song was that's the directions, and now we can go to Rune. This is the song from cool. the travel montage in, in season one, episode, yeah. is it four, I think it is? Yeah. No, um, so I, I checked, it's not the same song. <gasps> yeah, it's... they changed it. Oh, changed that's... It? Yeah, this is a new... Was... I think this is because... a song. <laughs> this, is just, gonna... this is just Harfoot lore. Gonna I'm gonna double check it, I'm gonna double check it right I'm now. I'm pretty sure it's the same, because they reference trees made of stone, black sand, uh, tower, light that was no longer my home. Because I remember thinking when I listened to it in season one, thinking that makes no fucking sense, because none of you lived in a tower ever. So why would you have a song that mentioned it? Mm. And now it's become relevant. I think it's the same song and they've just managed to turn it into something. They forgot to include the line in the song which said this will be relevant later. And that's the <laughs> thing that's throwing people off. Um, Mola, can you get the... Because um, uh, Not Gandalf says one of the lines to the song. Can you just get this that This Wandering for me? Day, I think it's called. That, well, that, that's from the one in episode five. I'm talking about the one here because I think it's different, but I'm just going to double check. You know when he it says it. Well. Uh, it's... After Poppy shows him the map. Yeah. Uh, no, before this, before this. Before this. Wait. <laughs> Where am I going? Actually, fuck it. Uh, you keep oh, going. This, right, 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 right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't know the show gonna... as well as some people. Okay. I've got the show so I can I can find it myself if I, I need to. I just realized my copyright code wasn't on there, though. Ugh. Risking some shit. Mm -hmm. Yup. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, I think I've got it, because he does a line here. Yeah. Song? What song? Yeah, here Give we go. What song? The Wandering Song. Sing to me, sing to me, land far away. Which is the song from season one. Oh, that was it? 
Uh, it's the later things that I didn't think was in the actual song. I can, that was yep, I, I concede I am wrong. Those are lyrics from the song oh, in, okay. in episode five, so it's the same song. I mean, the fact that uh, uh, Nori says, the Walken song, I think that's supposed to be a signal to the audience, like, you remember the song from season one, don't you, audience? It was very fun and lovely, and you loved it. That was what I assumed, and then I I guess I double-checked, but got it wrong. So, But yeah, it is the same song. Hmm. Well, it's a it's a really good thing that they sung it that time because um, it's going to get them unlost. You have to sing. You have to follow like the instructions of the song lyrics with the map, and then you can get through the magical get lost place. Mm -hmm. And Poppy has those, so now they can get not lost. So Isn't that satisfying and cool? Yeah. So Poppy showed up, and all's well. Mm-hmm. So that's great. So anyway. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I guess now that that problem's uh, fucking solved. Uh, yeah, they they look around for rock formations that fit the words to the song, and they find it, and then they do the thing, and blah, blah, blah. They're not mm -hmm. lost anymore. I guess they would have just died here if Poppy didn't show up to break their loop of being <laughs> lost. And maybe the tracker uh. would have tracked them forever. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, the Skeletor people are still following. Uh, ta ta ta. All right, back to back to Kieran. Whoa! Yay! Yay. Kieran is in the water on his boat. He's at the trench now. It's very close to land. It's very very nearby. He's already there. <laughs> um, now, oh God, the scene. He has the bag yep. with the rings in him, and he holds it overboard, just like Pirates of the Caribbean. And then, then. He's about to drop him, but oh, any oh no, second a now. random a random wave knocks the boat around and it, it, it knocks not... the bag back into the boat. I wouldn't it's not even a wave, it's like a bubble like a... from yeah. the ocean. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> ocean fart. Yeah, the ocean, yeah, the like ocean, the ocean <laughs> farted at him, yeah. And the sea is always right, of course. <laughs> This is so uh, yeah. shit. Uh, what what did this? Why? What this is unbelievable. Is I think I'm this is just we'll never know. unbelievable that we'll they did this. Know. It's like, oh, we need him to change his mind. How we do? How are we going to? How are we? How are we going to do this? Oh, know, how about he's on the fucking boat and then the sea farts at him and then he drops the thing, <laughs> looks at him, and it's like, oh, those look powerful. Let me go back and uh, yeah. shit on the uh, Elrond. I, there are two the theories world. as to what the, this could possibly be because we do see him later using one of the rings to control water. So one of the theories is simply that the water is reacting to that ring like, and that ring me. does not want to be destroyed. So that's no. why the sea burped to him. The other one is that it's actually the god of the sea, but I don't think that is the case because yeah. this show tends to avoid those questions they completely. They don't rule out that it could be Sauron. But he, oh, answers too. Could be. he gets some he long distance shenanigans in this season. So. Can do yeah. <laughs> Damn, anyway, Sauron can do sea farts now too? That's insane. Yeah, this uh, this, this, uh, this just to be clear, this random sea fart leads to the elves putting on the rings of power. <laughs> this sea fart Dude, leads to the entire the story happening. <laughs> yeah, it changed the, the could, history. Could be that the rings have run on their own and have like magnetisms, you know. And also again, when he's looking at it like, oh, look at that ring, it's like, mm -hmm. so... So they're evil then, are they? Like, what's going yeah. on? Everything he's said before, the ocean he wants them. He heard Elrond's explanation for why why he should destroy them, and he mm. he didn't say I agree, but the fact that he's here means that he agrees, right? He was convinced. Absolutely, yes. Um, oh, yeah. And then he well, changes. Fuck that. He, he reconsiders a little bit and takes pause and looks at them because the sea splashed him. And then the next time we see him, he's wearing one of the rings, which means that he mm -hmm. actually the, the process of him changing his mind happened entirely off screen and i don't know what we're supposed to make of that well he, he, so apart he from he's just wise he looks at them he does come back and he says there are there is perfection outside of valinor after he sees the rings so <laughs> i think the, the idea is supposed to be this is a person who is so obsessed with the beauty of valinor and of course the show has retconned the origin of mithril to make it silmarils and silmarils are the light of the valor so when he sees okay. them, he sees the light of the Valar, which is the only thing he really gives a shit about. So as soon as yeah. he sees them, his mind is changed purely by how beautiful they are, um, which is calling, kind of requires call, a lot more to substantiate it than we get. But I think that's what they're going for. So yeah, he call, calling those fucking dollar store rings perfection though is the funniest thing in the show. <laughs> they look so fucking ass, especially Galadriel's well, ring. It's, he's entranced so by them now, and they're still in the bag. So I guess he gets a uh, really curious. Um... <laughs> Like so, yeah. 
you just want that to be acknowledged. Like, so, so you agreed with me until you saw the rigs that and I told you corrupts them. the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> yeah, Hello? and they just skip that completely <laughs> in episode two. They skip it completely. It's like, oh, you wouldn't throw away a poem because the person who wrote oh. it was drunk. It's like, as though that <laughs> comparable in any way. It's like, we're not talking about a drunk poet. We're talking, we're talking about, about Satan's nukes yeah. here. Like if, like Saron, if Saron different. was just writing poems, then we could have this conversation, but that's not what he's doing. Did you talk? Maybe we could uh, name it because maybe the poems got evil flames in them. Maybe the, the paper is evil. Did you say we've oh. got Satan's nudes? What? That's what I thought I heard someone say. <laughs> 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 Hell yeah. These That's are saints. But nudes would be just as bad. Nudes, yeah. boys. <laughs> Damn. You're not to look upon <laughs> them. They are corrupting in the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, that was fun. Back to Halbrand. Oh. Yay. No. So, we go back to Halbrand, who's laying down in his little prison. And Adar is there, and Adar tells him his backstory. Um, <laughs> Stop it, Zach. Uh, he says Morgoth chose 13 to be his chosen, and he was led up to a dark and nameless peak and chained there, and he was really hungry, and eventually he saw his servant's face, Sauron's face, and it was beautiful. Sauron offered him wine, Adar drank it. Um, you just want Hullbrad to uh, be like, yeah, I know I was there. Uh, go on. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I'm just kidding. No, there you no, go. In, in, instead, he fucking cries. Ugh. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not sure why Adar is explaining his backstory to Halbrand. I'm not even sure why Halbrand knows, or, or Waldrick knows, or anyone knows. No one knows. Not even the oldest, oldest and wisest could know. Maybe um, that's part of the torture. I don't know. Ah. However, <laughs> what is a relevant piece of information is that Adar claims to have set the Southlanders free. Hmm. Um, them. Why? Would, yeah, I... it would be kind of stupid if he did, considering he's not certain uh, that Halbrand can actually come through with this deal, or if, uh, or, or if he's, he's lying. Or yeah, that would be a great plan, wouldn't it? Let's just tell Halbrand he set them free to get the information. How about that? Yeah. Unless yeah, Halbrand, so... of course, is smart enough to say prove it. I want proof it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. What he should have said is like, "Give me this information, and or, and then I will set them free." But also, we see after the scene that he has not set them free. But then, by the next episode, it seems like he has. So it looks like he <laughs> is in the process of setting them free. He's like, "Yeah, there's loads of paperwork. Yeah. You wouldn't believe." <laughs> so, so did Halvan? Yeah. So did Sauron actually care about the Southlanders? Like, well, well that, I don't know. That's what. I, that was kind of where my theory comes in well, here because let me do this. Let me do this one go, part, go and then you do the theory, and then that'll kind of because that'll sort of tie up that bit. Um, mm -hmm. So Halbrand says that he has the trust of the elves, and he wants Adar to release him so he can go and find Sauron, even though Halbrand said he doesn't know what form Sauron has taken. Earlier, he claimed to Adar that he knew the location of Sauron. But I wouldn't know how he would know the location of Sauron without knowing who Sauron even what who he even looks like, which should be really big sussers to Adar well, here. He knows he's in Middle Earth. Fair <laughs> enough. That does. I mean, that narrows, narrows it down, down a lot. <laughs> Cosmically speaking, that narrows it down a fuck ton. Yeah. So it's knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Ninety-nine point nine percent of the universe. So. Like, the location well, yeah. is all and the way... already needs to learn, though, right? All he needs to learn is that Sauron is in Eregion, and then he can just go there and kill everyone in Eregion. He's won. Yeah. All he needs. No, it's a location, surely. But, um, yeah, anyway, uh, so that had me asking, why would Halbrand come here first? Uh, and is that, uh, and is it that he really wants the Southlanders free? So, oh, uh, any takers on discuss. explaining this? Yeah. I got nothing. Just I, I, can I, say I got something, but I'll, <laughs> I'll wait and see if anyone else has anything. Can you, can you say I that mean, again? I think quite cash that. I don't why know would, why else he would be here. Yeah. We're basically we're basically asking why would I mean so what happens like, why would yeah is it that does Halbrand Sauron really want the Southlanders free? Because what what he does kind of requires that he that he wants them to be free because he's in Eregion and then he goes mm -hmm. to the Southlands to speak to Adar and say I can find Sauron set my people free and then he goes back to Eregion. So what is the point of going to Mordor and back? Other maybe, than if he maybe, wants his, his Southlanders to be free. Maybe he needs the Southlanders at some point for his own army. 
Oh, it's Maybe just it's, some, it's to make very effective, as we've learned. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's some big four dishes move. You know? So like he he needs someone with forces to go and attack a region. He can't do it himself, and he's posing as king of the Southlands. It would look very suspicious if he didn't seem to care about the fate of the Southlanders. Yeah, so but is he just trying to do a convincing lie? Is that the whole point? That, that would be my guess. But why would he want that if he wants possible. to make more rings, though? Well, so I think that's possible, but if his plan was to quote-unquote locate Sauron, which is, of course, himself, no. then he would, do, he would do that and then go to Adar and be like, I found Sauron, I'll tell you where he is, kind of thing. Rather, Because what he does, he goes to the Southlands or Mordor and then says, um, I think that I might be able to find Sauron for you, as implying that this is something that he can come back to him with later. So why would he go to Mordor now, is kind of my question. Yeah. I and um yeah so the only theory that i came up with which i it just popped into my head while doing episode three is by releasing all of the southlanders which adar has done by the time we hit episode three it means you've got a whole load of people running around with the mark of sauron branded on their flesh so i think that sauron is going to do magical bullshit to activate the mark of sauron and all of the southlanders are going to be sleeper agents that are going to be switched on and then going to fight on, you know, for Sauron. That is all I've got. That's really retarded, but it could be the actual case. It's, it's really, really, really dumb, but it also is the only reason I can think they, of as to why he would go there. Oh, this show. And so, why yeah. they, they did specifically show us, like, the people being branded if they uh, chose allegiance. So we know that Sauron likes his weird marks in places. So and also, who knows? And and in episode three, we see a character conceal the fact that they have the mark on their skin and then like put another brand over it to hide it. And that would, if I'm correct, mean that they are not actually under Sauron's sway. Because like everyone in the series kind of seems to be treating, oh, well, you've got, if you've got the mark of Sauron on you, then that means that you are evil, even though that's obviously not, obviously not how that would work. Because like you, could, you could have been yeah. like captured and, and people... enslaved and then you escaped. But yeah. Yeah. People are asking, why would Adar use Sauron's mark anyway to put on people? So, um, the ex I don't know if this is actually backed up in Season 1 because I haven't checked, but it could be that what we are calling the mark of Sauron is not actually the mark Just of the Sauron. the Southland The map. mark it's of the Mordor. Southland. W. Yeah, sideways W. Evil Melkor's mark. I think we should explain the... this as like, it was a map reference to get all of the orcs to Mordor, so they all knew yes. where to go. So it wasn't the mark of Sauron specifically, it was yeah. to tell the yeah. forces to gather in this Maybe place. Maybe he's adopting it. That, he's that was it what it own. was in season one, but they kind of retconned that, didn't they? He's reclaiming it. Uh, the fact that it is a map or, or a symbol for orcs to follow, that is, they say that at the start of the season, but that doesn't, that's not what ends up happening. Uh, yeah. Because also, why would, he put, why would he put that on Finrod's flesh? Because yeah, the and them in something. fucking cold wave when they are going to mortar, like what? what? I like. It's well. the call to action for the mystery box. It's like it's mystery box writing. I don't think there is an in-universe explanation. I think the the explanation is just the writers needed something to get the mystery hook there that Galadriel can discover as the big oh no moment in the library. I think that's the only reason I, that mark exists. I mean, I could see them doing an order sixty six with a magic mark. It does sound dumb enough for them to do. <laughs> But at the same time, I think every time I think there's something that's dumb enough for them to do, I'm probably overestimating them. There must be something else which is even more dumb. They could do. Quite, quite, more quite possibly. They... Yeah. More door 66. More door 66. Yeah. Uh, 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 but yeah, I, I think the only reason he is actually in Mordor right now is because they left him there at the end of season one <laughs> and they had to think of some way to get him out of there again because they rewrote a bunch of shit. So they had had him do some shit there. Oh, I, mean, I guess he wants the Southlanders to Why be did free. They even okay. Why there in the first place? Well, like, exactly. Just, Why would he leave? Uh, because so, because uh, they had a different plan Mordor. for the show. He was probably going to go there, be an incel lord, and like take over Mordor and shit. But how does that? But like, I thought. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Well, <laughs> yeah. Another potential idea is that like, this is a way of getting rid of Adar because he knows that if Adar thinks Sauron is alive, Adar will lead the army personally and will probably die in the attempt. And so it's a way to get him sort of death by ward, basically. Yeah. Sure, but I mean, so that makes sense. But at the same time, Sauron could have waited for a month, done you know bullshit to Celebrimbor's brain, and then gone to Mordor and said, "Sauron's in Eregion, go." Yeah. He but, doesn't. But need the to reason come is now. because the reason is because they left him there at season one, so they had to do it now. I yeah. 
<laughs> that that's my theory. Well, anyway. It's so weird, isn't it? Because when he he suddenly leaves in uh, season one, if you were him, you'd be like, "So Galadriel's going to tell everybody I'm Sauron, and she's going to say like to stay away from me, and I'm kind of fucked now." And to think yeah. he arrives there so much later, and he's like, "You uh, yeah, you still think sure, I'm right? you still think I'm whole bread, right?" And Kelbrin Bull's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Wow, yeah, we're, we're friends, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're friends." <laughs> <laughs> well, what? <laughs> But like what what he should have done honestly is is leave Eregion or honestly just like go to the toilet and lock the door for a couple of days and then and then walk back out and be like are they gone? Okay cool. Kelebrimbor come here. I have we have work to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The whole going that to he I just think assumes he... that that he just assumes that Kelebrimbor is still shield with him is fucking insane. It's just you need like oh, a yeah, little um, yeah. a goblin He just companion. fucking knows. Oh, it should have been Waldrick. You could have that companion with yeah, Sauron, who's like, uh, he suggests the plan. Like, Go back to uh, Eregion, try to make the rings with Kelbrimbor. And he's like, that's insane. They would have told uh, him I'm Sauron by now. And he's like, no, maybe they didn't. And he's like, why would, why would that happen? And he's like, oh, maybe they were too scared. Like, she, she sounded, you, she didn't want to tell anyone because she, she was, like, self-conscious about people thinking she failed or something. It might not have happened. He's like, nah, they would, they would have sent letters. Someone would have figured They're it out. They're not that retarded. Yeah, and then they get there. And <laughs> Waldrick's like, ah, I told you, told you. <laughs> hey, bro, yeah. Does his little Waldrick <laughs> dance that he's famous for. I might, I, I might have worked it out. <laughs> If Galadriel was being controlled by Sauron at the end of season one, then that would be how he knows that he that she didn't reveal his identity. Yeah, which is unbelievably cheap writing, but I think that might—that's the only thing that makes sense, right? Because otherwise, he he just shows up like, "Hey, do you remember me?" I mean, no, okay, good. A lot of other things don't make sense, though. <laughs> this is fucking clown show, you know? Yeah. <laughs> True. And here's another one: once you've established that Sauron is a shapeshifter, why does he even go back there as Halbrand? When he knows that Celebrimbor is waiting for word from Lindon, why, why doesn't he just pose as an elvish messenger and get in that way? And then he's like, oh, it's he fine. He can literally turn up and be like, I'm whole... Anatar, hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just turn up, no, yeah, turn up as still. God or whatever. <laughs> no, it's so fucking retarded. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it is funny, the whole, like, suggestion of an idea and then be like, well, that's retarded. It's like, ah, so. Very likely yeah, then. Mm -hmm. the, yes. Yeah, the problem is that we have. If this was just, if this was season one, then we wouldn't have the precedent of season one to know the kind of bullshit that they are, you know, frequently prone to pulling. Yeah, and um, it only gets worse the more you go on, right? Like every time with shows like this, you don't. You, every, all the people who are trying to enjoy it, right? And that's why I use the word very carefully. Like they're trying their best to take this as a story. They're like, you see, it's going <laughs> to make sense later, and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry, it won't. It's going to be much worse yeah. by the time we get to later. Yeah. They're never going to mention I, that spy from the Hall of Law ever again. Nope. I I also wanted to point out, by the way, it's it's really funny how the the torture of Holbrand is uh, consists of two beatings from fucking Baldrick with a stick. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, they could have honestly well, max his ass for a little bit. Again, without skipping ahead, like given what ends up happening in episode two, they could have like sliced up his face or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't it doesn't matter. Nope. <laughs> you know, you just mentioned the Hall of Law. It just makes me think if you said that to a writer, like, oh, yeah, the, the, are you going to do anything about the spy from the Hall of Law? I could just picture being like, is that a, is, is that like a Silmarillion thing? And you're like, no, from, <laughs> from your show. <laughs> no. And they're like, oh, in, oh, yeah. In, yeah. Like, where, where, where was this? Valinor? And you're like, oh, my God. See, that, Lindon, that's, right? yeah. that's the character that needs his own Lord of Ring Gollum spin off game because he, he knows how to speak the black speech. Yeah, but and he knows. Uh, they got to you know, the, he... do the Waldrick one first. That's the important one. I suppose. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's how you actually can be the Malfoy Sauron because it's a secret Numenorian. <sighs> so what's up with Waldrick? <laughs> what isn't best? up with Waldrick? Um... <laughs> Is he the... uh, I like the part where he beats people up with his stick and stuff. I think that's cool. Oh, have we <laughs> talked about the the sadness? Well, not, not yet. yet, not yet. No. Oh, okay, good. Okay, I did. <laughs> the sadness. <laughs> um. All right. Well, this is got a little bit of problems. boot kissing or whatever, right? First. Uh yeah, yeah. we have a Waldrig yeah. asks uh Halbrand to swear his allegiance to Adar. Neil. No. Halbrand says uh basically says yes, and then swears to serve the Lord of Mordor. 
to the ah, end of see? his days. Um, he's and then he sneaky. smiles to the audience. He's, he's, he's he smiles. smiles to the audience. Oh, yeah. He's actually swearing allegiance to himself. I just yeah. have the camera tightening up in his face, and I just want Adar to come in like a fucking ODNG level cartoon and just be like, swear allegiance to me, actually. Specifically. <laughs> are, are specifically to me. <laughs> Oh, why, no, are you why are you smiling? Why are you smiling? I thought you were happy. <laughs> it's, you, it's an evil <laughs> machine. My prisoner. You smile too. I don't want my prisoner smiling. Yeah, I told you to you like for two weeks. What are you? Why are you smiling? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, pretty. Uh, you know, fair enough. Sauron ha fucking hates Adar. I guess he uses a little wordplay there. Fair enough. Probably about the <sighs> most clever thing we'll see in a bit. Mm. Um. So, Halbrand. Leaves on his horse, the one horse in Wardor that orcs haven't eaten. Uh, <laughs> oddly enough, still Southlanders all over the place. So, yeah, pretty uh, worth mentioning uh... as well that uh, <laughs> as Halbrand leaves, uh, Adar says, uh, "Follow him." He, he says one of the orcs needs to follow him. Mm -hmm. That is not mentioned again in episodes two, three, or four. I have no idea if that's going to come up again later or if Halbrand killed him off screen. But supposedly, oh, he's I, being I, I think that, oh, that did actually. Tell Glug? I it's not Glug. It's not Glug. No! It's definitely not Glug. I think this. I think them following. I think them following them is going to be is, is the whole point why they don't get the message. It also mm, looks very wait, wait, fairly wait, wait, wait. light outside. Yeah, that, I don't think that. Sunlight. Mel, it's that's for later. Works. How many episodes have you seen? Two. Oh. Uh, three. Okay. Sorry. Ah, you get the answer to why two. there's no message in four, and it's not that. Ah. Uh, yeah. okay. Wait, what? What they they show you the dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they give you a different. You get another answer. You get a Honestly, you get more more answers. I'm I'm amazed that they actually give us an answer. Because is it an even I, more I stupid to. thing that I thought it was? It, it is. It is very retarded. Yes. Oh, okay. I can't wait to get there because I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> they will get there. Oh, I'll get there. Oh, next I... week is actually the plan to get there. So yeah. 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 <laughs> Yay! Yeah. But like All like right. in, in in this motor scene, it is fairly light outside. And remember what happens to the orcs in season one when eh, there's sunlight on them. It's fine. Season one doesn't remember what happens to orcs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's evil light. It doesn't do any. This evil, is evil light. light. Yeah. No warmth. This light gives off no light. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, though. It is funny because look how bright that is on Waldrig's uh, hair. Yeah, yeah, it's clearly but... sunlight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, there are bright days in Mordor, I guess. They Hold shouldn't on, no. be. I was reliably informed that Mordor is now their Shadowland, so checkmate. You have to have well, light you, to have shadows. You Double could... checkmate, reverse Uno, get fucked. You could easily have light days of Mordor, if not for establishing that all of your orcs are apparently like unable, like through yeah, the point allergic, of being allergic to, death. to sunlight. For... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah well, I mean, uh, Rangs is time, I think. No. Yeah. No. Could you no. Out of no. Please, please. Possibly the He's worst scene. Died on screen. He's not dead. We worst, didn't see him die. The worst scene in the entire two seasons, the whole series. Yeah. So um, horrible decision. This, yeah, this is. I was enjoying the episode. So Waldreg goes to check on the, um, I guess wherever it was that Halbrand was sitting around, and okay. there's a sack, and the sack has a has a like the like a collar on it, a big old spiky dog collar on it, and then the warg, the warg attacks. Waldrig. What exactly is Waldrig doing in this scene? Does he not know that Halbrand is gone? I have no clue. Yeah, I guess he was he, cleaning himself, maybe. <laughs> he's, I think he's, also, he's just, mad he's just and tidying he up. He, he wants Mordor to look nice. Yeah, maybe Wait, it, it, yeah. for the next person good, that enters the cell, cell, he's got to spruce it up, right, ready for the next person. And then he's like, wait, 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 the way that this is set up suggests that when Sauron mm. left, he like sneakily unlocked the um the the Warg's collar and then put it under this thing to trap Waljack. Like that's the point. He obviously wanted that to happen because he told the Warg to do that. Um, mm. but how the, how did he get released? Because Adar was in the room. There were a bunch of orcs in the room. They will have unlocked him and taken him to a horse and said, "Okay, off you go." I just left something in my cage. Uh, let me. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could he have done it unless he unless he loosened the because even. Even if he loosened the collar previously off screen, then it wouldn't be where it currently is, which means yeah, someone it put it there. Yeah. He made the do uh, the, the work smart, so the, the, the work did all of this itself. There you I go. have no clue. <laughs> but all we know is that Waldreg will probably never see him again. I don't know. I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, Sauron could come back, take over Mordor, and then raise him like the Night King in Game of Ooh, Thrones. Yeah. I, yeah. I would unironically love it if they capture fucking, I guess, he's called himself, whatever he's called himself at the time, if it was Halbrand, 
capture him and they're like, someone wants a word with you. And then Waldrick comes out and he's got mm -hmm. cyborg parts and he's like, you thought you <laughs> killed me. Yeah, he looks like he looks like Cable. <laughs> oh. I have died before. Me. We didn't I welcomed you to Mordor and this is what you did. By the way, Sauron <laughs> can hear the scream from this far yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, no, not happening. <laughs> Got some good ears. Because it's also it really only, loud, the true, only the true greeter of Mordor would have a voice that could carry so strong. <laughs> Hell yeah! I guess. Ooh, I guess maybe if he still has some kind of psychic connection to the Wog, then he it's would not even, maybe he's not even hearing that's... it. He's just feeling it, feeling the success of killing yeah. Mordor. Yeah. Which to me, it secures him as villain. That's that's it. There's no coming back Absolutely. from that. The yeah. other actions I can forgive. Mm. This is too far. Yeah, that's... irredeemable. The point is, it isn't the warrior's fault. Evilous. He was enchanted. He didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his fault. Yeah, no, I no. hate, hate Holbrand for this. He's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I the hate Sauron for killing Wall. <laughs> Waldrick was just doing his job, and he was really good at it. Yeah, and man. That's what so now... the best. I'm, like I said, I I'd implied it earlier, but I do hope they commit at least an episode, maybe a season to the funeral. I, I obviously like you know. <laughs> a season. To... It would yeah. It'll be a, it'll be a, a season of mourning. Yeah, like whenever a pharaoh dies, it's like a hundred well, days of mourning. Well, it's yeah. like the death of Ned Stark being so significant, or Logan Roy. It's a character that when they die, everything <laughs> changes. The whole world changes, yeah. right? Can we have the orc lady this... singing like Eowyn in uh, two hours? <laughs> Just to be clear, this should have been. <laughs> Dawn of the Second Age. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> With the death of Waldrick. Yeah, Are you the dawn Waldrick of the third is, age. Is, Waldrick is the anchor being for Middle Earth. Yes, oh my god. Year 200 after Oh no. <laughs> no. Waldrick is the anchor being. <laughs> this is not a canon event. This is not supposed yeah, to happen. Yeah, Waldrick is like Uncle Ben. It's a canon event. He no. has to fucking die. Encouraged is about to start. Something's gone horribly wrong if he dies. It's the worst. Every universe needs King Waldrick. You were the chosen God one. Emperor Waldrig. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was so blood. funny to see him back because he's such a goofy fucking idiot in the first season that gets yeah. given this great <laughs> privilege of like becoming so important. To see him here as a lieutenant, nonetheless, it's just like that's 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 fucking. <laughs> you that's were wild. old man Waldrig. It's fitting. You were I in the little fitting. tavern, and oh my god! And he gets a, a bunch of speaking lines. He's kind of he's with the big dudes, yeah. you know, decided things, and then he just gets killed by a wall. <laughs> he's it's moving like, up Aww. in the world. Aww. It would be so funny yeah. to keep him around. Yeah, yeah. he's... Uh, they just, they don't miss. do fun in this fucking show. They never want to. Well, duh, hey, well, good. don't worry, don't worry, we still have Glug. Yes, Glug. <laughs> Glug. Glug and his wife. Glug I just, the well, Grand just Inquisitor that... in the Obi-Wan show who seemingly dies and then he does come back anyway, like, there could be a, a big setback moment for Sauron when he does return and it's Waldrick with like a massive scar but much vengeance. And then he can just, you know. Would it be even funnier for the the next scene? Waldrick's just back, and there's no explanation. He's just there, just walking around <laughs> doing stuff. I would love that. Maybe they <laughs> put like a little. In this show. <laughs> yeah, put a tiny scar on his face. Something really small. No. Nothing. Don't acknowledge like, it. Oh, yeah, or they I'm... have like, wait, I thought Waldrick died. He's like, I'm Waldrick. <laughs> I'm his brother. <laughs> <laughs> The, the same actor? Yeah. Walter, same you were dead. I was. I was? I was! <laughs> Waldrig oh, renewed okay. for three seasons. Hopefully. No. <laughs> I, wa I want Waldrig fucking Warg Slayer. Lord Hashtag of the bring back Waldrig. Waldrig. Slayer. Yeah. Waldrig of the Rings. He has to collect every ring from all of mad elves and dwarves to create like a super... <laughs> They get the, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. rig off Sauron. It would be a great story. Running out of fingers. They're just not. They're not courageous to do it. So you know, maybe we'll do it one day. He will. He will return as Waldrig the White. Yeah. Do you think the last thing that Sauron saw before he exploded was Waldrig sitting in a field, <laughs> smiling? <laughs> you know, <laughs> smiling and looking mm. at him, just like ha ha. <laughs> You have that like moment the in the uh, in Infinity War like of... as Sauron <laughs> oh is dying God. and he and he talks to Waldrick in the dreamscape and Waldrick says, "Was it worth it? Or what did it cost?" <laughs> and Sauron's like, <laughs> "Everything." Oh, he, cost you. Everything. he had the death note. He's just standing over him as he's withering away. <laughs> uh, in the end, Waldrick gets the last laugh. Is in, in my heart. That's what I believe. He gets the last laugh. 
I just had an amazing thought. So if they ever make, uh, if Games Workshop ever make licensed Rings of Power miniatures, I am buying the shit out of the Waldrig miniature. <laughs> Waldrig one and six statue, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he has infinite might. Comes with the well, walk. Uh, <laughs> we have to <laughs> we have to steal our nerves and carry on with the story without. Well, it feels like isn't the story it's over what, now? It's I mean, what, there's no characters no, left. I, I mean, we PG. could we could quit. <laughs> we can, we can, that was always no. an option. We, we only we co we only covered the parts of the season we actually gave a damn about. So, but uh, we owe it we owe it to the dwarves to keep, yeah to, okay. to go. That's we, true. We do. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's I fair. think that's well, why they put what... Waldrig in episode one is to keep you going until the dwarves come back in and it's like <clears> they knew this is what Waldrig would have wanted. He yeah. would have wanted us to soldier forth like he did. Um. All right. Mm. Only it was only that kind of a deception that could kill Waldrig. So. <laughs> so back at Linden, the elves are basically preparing to leave Middle Earth. It's sad. Yeah. They Big believe that the rings have been Aww. chucked in the ocean. Um, they think that they they gotta go. It's a it's a dark day. It's a sad, dreary day. Elrond mm. is standing here well, like he hasn't just wait. ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Same with Galadriel. Let's just think about this piece by piece. So they're, they're, they're there, and then Galadriel's like, what the fuck did you do? And then he's like, kirdan has gone out there, and he's going to toss it into the big ocean trench, lol, get fucked. And then she, mm -hmm. Galadriel's like, ah, Jesus, get on a boat, quick, uh, Gilgalad, mm -hmm. apparently yeah. Kirdan's going to do the thing, oh my god, and they all paddle out there, and then they meet up with Kirdan, and he's like, no, I didn't. Oh, he's too old and wise. Well, but well, how does see, this scene happen? Well, they just left. So, just well, it happened, on, it happened off screen. They did a dramatic end to the scene, and then we just, it doesn't matter what happened next because now we're in the next <laughs> yeah. scene. Yeah, That's they, how it works. <laughs> it doesn't, they doesn't make sense. They returned back to this place. It doesn't make well, sense. no, they, they went back. It never does. Oh, Elrond says, to, basically, Elrond says, <laughs> I sent Kieran out to dump the rings. And then Elantra was like, oh, all right, I'll go tell Gil Galad. And so she yeah, does, I and get... Gil Glad's like, oh, all right, well, I guess we're going to go sing our a bye bye song. <laughs> well, I guess we'll so leave. Yeah. leave. <laughs> what, El Elon, you want to wanna, wanna come with us? You know? Dude, that, I was just thinking how funny it would be if, if the one ring did end up in that trench, because it's like this reported to Sarah. It's like, we found it. It would be like a really great comedic beat. If we found it, everyone's like, yeah, they're all celebrating. It's like, I know exactly where it is. And the music swelling, and then it hard cuts to the all staring at the trench at the side of the, the, the river or whatever it is, the lake. And he's like, so it's. It's in there. He's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we like, know it's there. He's like, like I said, I knew where it was. He's like, yeah, you did say that. You said you knew where Narrowed it was. Narrowed it down to this trench. <laughs> He's like, do you want to, do you want to jump down that? He's like, no. No, <laughs> no, no. Okay. Not I mean, at all. You're the immortal <laughs> being. You'll go down there, dude. I don't know well, if I'm that kind of immortal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are those rings like magnetic, maybe? Could we do like a big string Looking, along the string? What, what are the, magnet? Can we what, get a big magnet on a string? Yeah, one of the orcs runs yeah. in with a big fishing rod like this? Do you, this kind of... No? Okay, I'll try something else. Uh, more. <laughs> more. I mean, we can try it until you find something better, I guess. I was, I was just standing so, there. So, what if we drain the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! We'll, big we'll, dig, we'll dig a trench. We'll, we'll, we'll dig a trench. Pops up like it's funny you should say that. Yes, I've got, I've got this key. I've got we'll this key. This We'll dig a trench across Middle Earth. We'll dump all the water from this ocean into that ocean. Whoa. They stop bringing in buckets. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this. Yeah, yeah. The beach all is all he very wet, do, sir. He just needs one of his orcs to stab him with his own hat again. Then he'd freeze the ocean and then they could just mine their way down Ooh. to the ring. Oh, he freezes the entire oh, yeah. ocean. Dude, they do that. Galactic. <laughs> Bye. And then it like oh halfway down God. it starts melting again. They're like, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Kill him again, kill him again. Kill him, kill him again. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw him down. Oh fuck. Uh, <laughs> but then also no. you've got to send a load of like creepy crawlies and rats and shit down there as well, so that when he turns into spaghetti man, then he has something to eat. <laughs> you send... and bring in the rats. Bring in the rats, bring in the creepy crawlies, and bring in the old ladies <laughs> to in their cars. So they they have to bring in an old lady <laughs> every time. <laughs> yes! She's like, oh, I'm so <laughs> glad to have all these new friends. Ooh! <laughs> Just fill her cart up with bricks and send her into the ocean. <laughs> I'm imagining they have like a little bucket that has all the goo in it. They're just yeah. throwing rats. Yeah, yeah. They're just Make throwing sure up the rats <laughs> I've thought of a way to drain the ocean. We put a straw oh. into space and we oh. put it into oh. the ocean. Sauron has grown too big for his bucket. We need a big one. We need more rats. Throw more rats into the goo.
<laughs> Where's the old lady? She's on her way. She's old. <laughs> She's real slow. <laughs> Do we keep, like, don't we keep old ladies here waistband. ready for this? They're like, yeah, she died. <laughs> <laughs> she was old. <laughs> she died because she was old. We should have killed Sauron faster. <laughs> oh, my face. Oh, eventually, after so long, they're like, "Do we need the ring?" And Sauron's like, "Do I need the ring?" Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> How dare stabbed you. in the face like seventeen times already. He's like, "I don't really want this anymore. This sucks." <laughs> Oh, really inconvenient that the next again. oldest person is only like 40 years old. So, oh shit, we're gonna have to age her up for the next 30 years if we can send it. <laughs> Sorry, does it have to be old? To be to to a zoomer. Zoomer. <laughs> I've already ever done it with old people. <laughs> Do uh, you want to test it? <laughs> okay. That was so, fun. Let's get back to Rings yeah, of Power. Yeah, that's fun. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, Enough fun, fun. Fun time's over. The elves are about to leave Middle Earth. They're singing a very sad bye bye song. Elrond's yeah. here. Um, like he hasn't just ruined everything. From he should be in prison, no? Everything's in jail. He should be. You would think, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's fine. fine. You know, for the record, what's funny? You, you have this frame. You have this frame on right now. I was like, oh, he is actually at least he's like guarded by people. But a little bit later, he just leaves. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they, they're um, just there, uh, but not for him. For the record, I agree with everything he did. But from their perspective, he's destroyed he yeah. the elven yeah. presence yeah. in Middle Earth. So like, he should totally be and in jail. Possibly. And possibly all other free free peoples as well. Yeah. Yeah. He is he is doomed Middle Earth to its fate. Yeah. It, they don't even treat it that way. Uh, they don't give him like a bollocking or anything. They're just like, no, they, mm. they don't care no. at all. They they are chill. Well, you know, as we know, he doesn't lose it, yeah. his rank either, or even his standing, no his status, anything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, Gil Gallat says the light of the Valar is diminished, and it's fucking over, boys. It's over. It's so totally over. Game it's over, a very man. sad day. It's very dull and gray. It's never been more over. <laughs> but then... Throw that simile in there as well. It's like coals too long removed from the hearth, do you think it is, for this one? Which isn't the oh, worst simile I've heard, but... It's not terrible. It's okay. I yeah, think yeah. it's just that they're out of stock, so whenever they say it's like, you go, no, 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 just say what it is. It's like when Boogie talks about his health problems, I just tune out. Exactly. And then he admits <laughs> yeah. he doesn't have cancer analogy. and nobody catches it. <laughs> it's like, oh, mm. shit. So I guess the oh. effects of the tree dying are, are that elves are mortal now? Or that they'll just die? It's I not don't clear. Exactly know. It's not, I'm still not sure no, if they just poof, poof out of existence as soon as the last leaf goes away. away. They all explode into ice. I would, maybe. Oh, I would, all, I would, all of them? Oh no. All of the I would very much like <laughs> someone to just be like, Have we? do we know this is anything other than just the tree's yeah. got some rot? Like, do have it's, you ever seen a yeah, tree where yeah. it tree. happens? It yeah. just has some bugs. It looks fine in Oregon. You know, we could probably move there. I know that this would have been like a complete desecration of the law, but at this point, it's, that's gone. So we're there, baby. <laughs> yeah, if they had maybe said that, like this tree contains fragments of a Silmaril or something like that, that just means nothing. Well, they tried it... that, but that's how Mithril was created because like a Balrog <laughs> fought an elf, and then some lightning struck it, and then hey, that's a lot of moving parts. Sure. Okay. Well, wait. But but at the very <laughs> least, it would mean that this tree is more than just a tree because for now, it's a tree of symbolism that symbolizes the health of the elves across Middle Earth. Tree of but we symbolism. Have... Well, that's right. yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, 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 yeah it yeah, is. It doesn't it doesn't it do anything else. But that, that's what it's supposed to be because the, the the Rings of Power season one does have the elves tell us that they are dying alongside the world around them, but they can only find a way to visualize that through things like the trees. So they have to go back to Valinor, because if they don't, not only will their world die, but they will as well, which is very confused and completely the opposite of what's supposed to be the case, and it's not supposed to be their motive for creating the rings. Um, so it, it tells us that, you're right, they only prove it insofar as they have the, um, the, the trees sort of dying, but they have found a way of disproving it, which I, I always struck me as weird they didn't do with the dwarves, because they, when um, Elrond takes the Mithril Shard back to Moria, and then he gives it back to Durin, and Durin swipes it across the table, and it sits next to mm. the leaf of the tree, and the leaf of the tree heals itself, and it's like, well, that proves it, kind of, as good as proof you're gonna, as you're going to get anyway. So why not show that to the King of the Dwarves? That would prove your point. Then you would probably be more likely to get the Mithril you're after, and then maybe you'll save yourselves. But they shouldn't be dying anyway. That's a complete perversion of basically everything about the elves. So on well, that note, because uh, I wanted to get at this, that's something I really don't understand. I, I'm going to go ahead and assume there's no answers to this. What was stopping anyone from, and just imagine it, take that piece of mithril, get some twine, or maybe some a weaker metal, perhaps an aluminium if you have it, 
and wrap it around that mithril and then make a little ring thing of it and then put that on someone's hand would that have the same effect or no how does this magic work how does it how does making the ring out of that make it so that that work? Could it, could we not just because they they show it with the leaf? Could you not just take that little nugget and put it, just rub it all over the tree to save the tree? Could we do that? <laughs> rub it. Yeah. Well, the, rub the way it. that they could have tested that, which because they could have plugged this hole, is they could have you know you put the um you put the corrupted leaf next to the mithril and then you take the mithril away and then it becomes corrupted again. Because then that would mean like oh okay well that's not going to work we need a more permanent solution but from what we get in the show. There is no reason why what you just said couldn't work. Uh, well, yeah. But uh, also, uh, the idea of uh, Elrond taking the little nugget of Mithril back to Linden to show Gilgalad, that is definitely something that he should have done. But because it's, it's not clear yet, but essentially Elrond, for the timelines to at all line up, which I know doesn't happen, so I need to stop appealing to that, <laughs> he must have spent quite a lot of time in Eregion after being booted from um, Khazad Doom, which means he absolutely would have had time to go to Linden and show the High King, look, I've got this, it works. Yeah. And this has not, at this moment, been in any way near or touched by Sauron, actually, at that point. Mm hmm Yep. But oh well. We got the rings well, now. Uh, yeah. yeah it's kind of funny. They're all like, God, oh, you're so depressing. And then kid is like, rejoice, good people. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> I put I'm one on. Wait, you did what? <laughs> I am old and wise, and I already have one of those rings. And they're really epic. Uh, it is kind cube. of like presumptive. Like, oh, oh you're, you're wearing one. Okay. Uh, you know, oh. who said you could do that, buddy? <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. They all and he's like, well, I mean, ring. there's three Fine. of them, you know, so whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. There's two more if you want to wear one, I guess. I think this next scene is, re scene is really funny. It's hilarious. Um... And frustrating at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so Kyrdan shows up. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Like, yeah, How did he get... up, I, guess he, I guess he came here and showed up and is no big deal. He, here he is. He says that perfection now does exists not only in Valinor and holy shit fuck he's wearing a ring of power oh god oh god he's got one on he put it on <clears throat> on his middle finger for some reason yeah it's a big fuck you to Elrond yeah, yeah. <laughs> not only did I not drop them in the evil fucking deep trench I put it on my finger and I boy, just rode past you while wearing it not even acknowledging your existence yeah there, there is a sense that Elrond <laughs> is just like bro what the fuck Hello? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like mouthing this as this is going on. I thought we, yeah, okay, jeez. Are you corrupted? Yeah, You're corrupted too, huh? Out of the way. <laughs> Oldest and wisest here. Everyone out of the way. I put on the ring. Also, did you wait for me to finish the song? Did you wait for that? Like, was, was, was that planned? It would be really <laughs> funny want to interrupt me? if Elrod was like, can I have one last look at all three rings? They're like, okay, Elrod, I trust you. And he jumps into the waterfall again. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> is, it, um, is it weird that the elves have a song prepared for them leaving Middle-earth? Like, so sadly? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. You know, you know yeah, they've been there for like thousands of years. <laughs> it someone like someone probably wrote that, the that elves one night. Do. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, anyways, look out by playing that mutually. You're right. Uh, Sorry, he I was gives the other, he gives the other two rings to Gil Galad, and then Elrond says no, and so Gil Galad drops them, and one, uh, one clanky <laughs> clanks over to Galadriel, <sighs> and she is allowed to, take it, hold on to it for a while, look at it, and then, Galadriel puts on a ring of power. Yeah, she just she puts it on. on. This fucking and puts later, it on. I think Unbelievable. She later, uh, rationalizes it as the ring chose her, which is. Bad. <laughs> Which is bad. Yes, very bad. That is so fucking crazy. I love, how, I love how after everything that she's done and all the fucking mistakes she's made, she gets to so have many a mistakes. Ring. All the blackmailing, all the ant antagonizing all the of all the people she's talked to, and then also, the ring, the ring falls in front. It's like, oh well, I guess it's here now. There's no reason at all why Gilgalad would ever willingly give her the ring, which is why the writers were like, well, we need, you know, she's got to have the ring because she just kind of does. Um, I, I don't know how it happens in the in the books, but here they were just like, well, he drops it and it goes, she's got it now. And then That's they just it. accept it. It's like, it's like there's that yeah. scene in, uh, is it, it Monty Python's Holy Grail? Is it like, so, like, 
watery tarts throwing swords at you is no basis for a system of government. It's that kind of thing. Like, <laughs> like you should probably have a discussion about who gets to do this. I mean, fuck it. Kierden came back because the sea burped at him. I don't think he's of sound mind. And then the ring sort of flopped toward Galadriel. That doesn't seem like a very sound basis for giving her that sort of power either. Have some kind of conversation as to who should get these. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. don't have a conversation in this episode, which, uh, given how it's framed, I can maybe understand, given that Gilgalad seems to be okay with the idea of her, of her at least putting it on to see if the tree is going to work, uh, to see if the rings are going to work to fix the tree. But as soon as we hit episode two, he should have definitely had a conversation like, I, you are obviously not keeping that. Yeah, that's not Why happening. would I let you keep that? Yeah. But that, is, Why, like, that, is, that isn't not, even a conversation that happens. I hate it. I hate it. He, she just gets allowed to have it. Gilgalad just yeah, allows right. her to put it on. Her, of all people, who might as well be and Sauron himself. Not just Gilgalad, Elrond as well. So Elrond and, Gil and hey, Gilgalad from no this point on. under his breath once. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. he did. He did, and then she was like, "Yeah, but how about yes?" And then she's wearing it. <laughs> and like, then Elrond, she's, I hear she's you. Got it, forever. but counter argument. <laughs> yes, counter argument. No, <laughs> but you just compare that fucking piece of trash to the actual Lord of the Rings rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Galadriel Jesus now is uh, Galadriel now has a ring of power. Yeah. Um, Gil Galad, when when she puts on the ring, Gil Galad decides he's going to put the other ring on himself. Probably wishes he could have chosen because he's the king and everything, but all well. Um, the sky then lightens up, the music <laughs> swells, everyone smiles, and the tree um... grows its new leaves, and the gl it glows like a fucking I don't even know a sun like glowstone. Mm -hmm. I find Minecraft. the way that this scene plays out really weird because it's like you're playing triumphant music, but like. But but shouldn't should you be? Should you? Yeah. yeah. There's no there's nothing know. clever about Maybe the music. Maybe from their perspective. Well, no, no, no. So that's the thing, right? The music's job here, I think, is to play what should sound like maybe a combination of celebratory but also tragedy, something weaved in to give yeah, you a sense of uneasy. what this means for the future. Because yeah. well, we know, know. Uh... and the the music knows yeah. we know, but it's, it's I mean, weird. if there were any. If there were any solid, like, memorable musical themes like we get in, like, Howard Shaw's score for The Lord of the Rings, then you could absolutely mm -hmm. start combining them and having them play off of each other. That is... I, mean, I, guess, I guess what's awkward is there are, like, motifs that I definitely recognize. I'm not, like, a huge fan of any of them, yeah. particularly, but there are definitely motifs. Mm. Like, started, there is a, I would actually say it's a like bit a, of a flaw on McCreary's part that he seems to have the sense of I'll just play the theme again and again and yes, again. Pretty and much. again. Yeah. Anytime yeah. there's a scene with Galadriel that is is apparently important, they play the same theme again. Do, 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 do. It's that one. Yeah. They do it over <laughs> and over and over again. And it's the same with uh the same Numenor. with um Numenor. Numenor's got yeah. their yeah. Blam, blam, yeah. Blam, blam, yeah. Blam, blam. Like the individual I, songs. I think it was I think it was worse in season one as well. We had a Casa Doom theme, like the exact same rendition of it that every single time there was there was dwarves on screen, like fucking. And they have, uh, and they yeah. have the same Gandalf's theme, theme as well. For, uh, yeah, and, 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 the, and the one for uh, what uh, I keep forgetting his name, the the ranger elf guy. Aaron Aaron Dear. Uh Lemonless. Yeah, Aaron 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 Deer, yeah. Yeah, he's got a theme. Well, he had the theme with the lady who didn't come back for our season two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had a theme. But, but yeah, it's exactly that, right? It's just like, it's very um repetitive. It, do it doesn't feel like the... Basically, the, the main difference between any time that the music comes back is, is it louder or is it quieter? I, Not yeah, like it's it recontextual. I, I, it's, it's funny that it's coming to my mind, but... I always really liked how um, Mysterio's theme in, uh, in in Far From Home. It's like it has the heroic version, but then it's 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 just like you change the uh, you change the key signature, and then it becomes evil. And it's like, yeah, it's uh, it's cool, right? It's well, a little his, detail. His and vultures are like the best yeah. work they've done in a long time for just a villain's well, yeah, theme in the MCU. Yeah, version of the Avengers theme, and and it's the same here, right? It's like what. Surely there was a way to essentially have a theme that could oscillate between seemingly triumphant with sinister undertones. But, um, yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just so weird that it's playing this really triumphant music when, like, we all know that it feels it's not. In. Like, everybody who's watching this show knows. Yeah! I, th yeah, I feel but, like... Uh, how could it be it's a $500 million production? It's Lord of the Rings! Well, that's the you thing, right? Uh, out on Paynham? Or... You, I, no, like, no, no, no. I, I, or... I don't, no, I, I I just, don't it... think he needs to work any harder than this for it to be passable. As in, like, he's they accept it and it goes, so whatever. 
I think it's that uh, he had passion for God of War. Like the story was was mm -hmm. some of the tracks in God of War, him. Ragnarok and twenty eighteen are, are amazingly good. Yeah, like it's they are so oh, yeah. good. Yeah. So uh, all we can imagine is that he had help, not help in the sense of actually composing, but input from the people who write the story, input from people who are designing the scenes, and then. He's talked about this in blog well, posts or whatever. Where he, well, they, stuff, right? yeah, he, like he's in the, uh, poured over the music, and, and he said whenever he gets a point where he's not sure what to do with the music, he'll return to the script and look like the actual dialogue, the the events oh. of the story, and get inspired from it. Oh, what God. the fuck is he going to do with this? this well, yeah. this might have been they went to him and said, "Here's a checklist of different songs that we need. Let us know when you got them." And then he yeah. said, "All right, here you, I, I made well, yeah, some of these tunes for you." Based and they on use them as they want to. It, yeah, it yeah, might even be them. that he submits them, and then they're like, "This is great," and he's like, "Oh, the, all of that's it? Okay, I guess <laughs> all of it." <laughs> Like, right, like, like it's, you know, this is my stand in things. I don't know exactly what to do. And then they're like, no, this works great. Because, yeah, doing it such that it's like, I've got my, my dwarven theme, but I guess because something sad is happening, I'll just have a different instrument that's, you know, strings or something. And that's, there, there we go. I don't know. I mean, it feels like uh, the same thing. Because Howard Shaw did the, uh, the theme, and it's like the theme is not very interesting either. And I don't no. know what that means other than nobody was interested. <laughs> no, but there was no passion by these projects. Yeah. I don't know. That was a very big one. Like he's, you know, you can look at all the making of behind the soundtracks for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and you're know, very much keen on going back to the source material and actually reads alongside composing. So like he'll be notating yeah. as he's going through page by page to understand what's happening in the story, what the theme is, what the world is thinking about its characters. Um, and so having that huge amount of wealth to draw on is a huge difference when it comes to something like this, because the, there isn't a huge amount being conveyed anyway. Yes, there's more than is being conveyed in the music. There should be a, a sad undertone or a sinister undertone to this. The Emma did do a little bit of it toward the end of season one, I think, when some of the characters had become a little bit more firmly fleshed out in his own mind. There were a couple of scenes when he blends the Mordor theme and the Gandalf theme, for example. It's still very simplistic because it is just two character themes being interwoven. But in this case, yeah. I don't think there is a Lyndon theme. I don't remember there being one. Um, and so, like, I don't even know if you'd have the starting point for actually turning right. that into something well, that tells a story. Well, even if it's generic, just making it celebratory and glorious, but then having a, a tone underneath it that gives you a sense yeah, of tragedy. Yeah. Just something like yeah. that. I mean, honestly, the only one of... Because I like his music. I like Barry McCreary's music, in particular in God of War. But um, most of the music in Rings of Power is fine. But the only one that I would say is like an earworm is the, um, is the Numenor theme. Probably. Um, Hmm. It's the only Which one I can. I have to pick. I hmm, I'm not sure. I quite like the dwarven one, uh, just in isolation. Uh, the other ones, I li like all yes. of it's acceptable to me in isolation. None of it's like horrible, which is rare yeah. to find, right? Soundtracks make you go, ah, my ears. But uh, none of it does anything to like. None of it's the kind of thing that'll make it into any oh. discussion of what's your favorite tracks from movies or TV shows. How like many that. times is it going to be one where like it'll just sort of come into your mind just when you're doing something else and be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, like if you like the lighting of the beacons, right? When is any? Oh yeah, that's yeah. like a song that was just like, ah, oh, yeah, that just comes into my mind. Now I've got to re-listen to it again. <laughs> Whereas here, what is when are you ever going to be like, oh man, the Numenor theme? I got to go <laughs> check that out again. It's sort of it... superficial grandiosity, in which case it actually is a very good representation of the show it's a part of. Oh, There's nothing else going on. Grandiosity, yeah. It does seem like though that he put in like a lot of effort because I've seen a couple of the behind the scenes uh, things, and there's a there's a troll that shows up in uh, episode three very very briefly. It's just hello troll, and it goes on for like a minute. Um, and for that track, th there's a particular piece of music that he wrote for that track that features like two very high profile heavy metal musicians that he brought into the studio to uh, what a vocalist from Meshuggah and the drummer from uh, Testament amongst, amongst other things to add their, their musical talents to that particular track. And it lasts for like one minute and it's to introduce a troll. Who, yeah, but on Amazon's dime, baby. Maybe, I mean, um, I guess it's true. Yeah, I guess friends. So. He's a friend that he's wanted Maybe to have a vacation mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Something to be said for him being quite busy. He's he does a lot of scores. It's it's True, not yeah. even like it's not like one per year. It'd often be like multiple per year across film, he TV, ain't no and games. Ramen Jawadi well, he, then. Speak. He's also uh, currently or recently finished working on a full on like metal concept album with a whole bunch of ah. other musicians. So that's mm. probably where that connection was made. But yeah, yeah. You want to do a troll song? Oh yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess that it makes sense, right? That the music being kind of like generic is downstream of the show being very empty. Yeah. I yeah. suppose it's not a surprise, but th this particularly struck me. This struck me as an instance of the music really like not being in uh, in harmony with what we ought to be thinking about this uh, scene. Yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, you know. It makes me actually believe that Galadriel was just right, and there was no corruption at all. Well, no, I think it's the thing like, wants uh, us to think, yeah. I made a point of, right, that the mystery will be, are they evil? And then the answer will be no, because, like, It'll a lot of no, yeah. writers have this problem where they need to create... I hate to bring it up, uh, because I don't want to spend too long on it, but Halo... That's, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, that Halo. show Woo. frequently creates oh, um, mysteries that span, like, multiple episodes that are pointless. So, like, instead of Reach just being an event that takes place, instead it's like, well, no, it's a thing that Oni knew about ahead of time, but they, like, kind of, you know, they, they had all of these schemes in play, and they had contingency plans, and they, they had orchestrated this plot to get John Halo killed so that they could then <laughs> create the Spartan 3s and, and use Master Chief John Halo's death to bolster that. And it's like, why couldn't it just be that Reach gets invaded and then you just do that story? It's like this weird notion that you need to create these mysteries to, like, sustain your story where a mystery is not required or even is, like, detrimental to your story. Like, it actively works against the story. And it feels the same, right, in season one, right? Of, like, oh, who's Sauron? Is it Halbrand or is it, uh, Gandalf? <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. Yeah, this is pointless. <laughs> You know, it's actually pointless. It only gets in the way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Gladriel has a ring of fucking power. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. The yeah. only yeah. thing that she's lost is her relationship with Elrond, and that's all it has cost her. She gets to keep mm. her station. She gets to stay close to Gil Galad all the time. She still gets to just like live this really nice, prestigious you know, high authority positioned life and she she doesn't pay anything for it. She gets her, she gets, Gelgalad very mildly wags his finger at her and says, oh, you, oh, but <laughs> that's all it amounts to. That's it. That's the only price yeah. she pays. She, she gets away with it completely and she yep. gets rewarded with a ring of power. Cool. So yeah, uh, pretty, uh, pretty frustrating. But we see a shot of them. We've got the three rings with the three of them. <laughs> you gotta show it. You gotta show how awkward oh, it is. Yeah, you do. You yeah. Might, might be a bit long in there. Look at how awkwardly they have to hold their hands like this for 50, 20 seconds. Look oh, at you, them. You can't, you look at how much she's shaking. It's like, you just want to do that again? <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's is, not, um... it, is it because her hands are so fucking small and she has no muscles in her arm that uh, the weight <laughs> of the ring? It up? Yeah, wow. I think it's the weight of the I ring. Think, I think it's just a really it weighs like two grams. Hand in for a while. I think that's it. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're trying to touch fingers, but also not really. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they're playing Gil Galad with his fucking ring Gilad collection Gilad there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is pretty steady, but yeah, Galadriel, goddamn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. head shaking. Yeah, they uh, so we get this shot of them with the three rings. Oh my goodness, it's the three rings of power. Oh my gosh. Uh we got this new forge being uh built and ready to back at uh, Aragion. Uh, mm. so we can cut right on over to Aragion. New forge, Celebrimbor is here, and uh, a message has arrived from the Southlands cuz Halbrand has arrived here at Aragion and he wants to speak with Celebrimbor. But Galadriel told him that Celebrimbor no, uh. is, is shouldn't treat with Halbrand again because uh, but in Cal Celebrimbor doesn't know the true identity of Halbrand because Galadriel didn't tell him. So, yeah, that's the episode. Yeah. Oh shit! It ends and, there. Uh, yeah. And then it says, yep, and then and it says get based on the Lord of the Rings oh, and the off. fantasy. <laughs> uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, that is probably. I would say, uh, based on the stakes of everything that happens, based off of the res uh, some of the resolutions to the first season, how Galadriel gets away with everything and is even rewarded, um, based off of just just kind of everything that happens, that's that's probably the worst episode of the show. Uh, what's either that or episode mm. six in season one? No, I have a yeah. 
I don't, a soft spot in my heart. I don't know. A hard mm -hmm. spot in my heart. I despise episode three of season one. For me, I mm -hmm. think that takes the cake for the worst. But then at the same time, the uh, what happens in this episode is way more important than what happens in episode three. And yeah. for the well, yeah. with the exception of Elrond, they fumbled it pretty much completely. Yeah, Helrond yeah. was a high point, uh, which is I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's it's actually true. Um, yeah, Galadriel is still absolutely horrific. She is repugnant. She's manipulative, and she gets everything. Uh, just she gets rewarded with a ring of power for no reason. Gil Galad still a moron. I haven't seen anything particularly wise from Kiridan. Um. <laughs> and uh yeah we, we got a so far pretty much a big uh, waste of time with uh not gandalf and nori and poppy yeah Th um, those, those things are just fucking boring to watch but uh i, th I think uh, elrond being a massive shad puts this above a few other episodes in uh, season one. Oh, but i mean it's again it feels like it's worth reiterating the consequences of this uh this this episode on like the entire story is uh, enormous yeah. Oh yeah, of course. You know, the whole Lord of the Rings doesn't happen if like a handful of, of, of events played out differently and easily could have played out differently. Mm, this is true. But we don't have Harfords wanting to eat each other and shit. And that we was lost a huge fucking season one. Well. Is there really anything? <laughs> <to do? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah, does that's... make it the worst episode. That's yeah. Fair. Aldrich is implied to have been eaten by a warg, which I uh, I don't approve of. It wasn't his fault. He was enchanted. He was bewitched. So, uh, he's still a good guy. He's still a good dog. He's good. He's deep in his heart of hearts, but uh, he was taken advantage of by the evil foul Sauron. Boo, we don't like what? him. Boo, fuck Sauron. But not for the Boo. reasons the show wants us to dislike him for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, that was episode one. Truly, it was, and that we got we got with we got done with that pretty quick. But it was the longest episode, I think. Um, very yeah. exciting. A lot of stuff. Yeah, we're happened. gonna speed Thrilling. through episode two. It'll be easy. That's right. Episode sure. two, where the stars are strange. Very strange. Very strange indeed. You know what? I need something uplifting. I am in terrible spirits after episode one and how it ended. So, hey, Kaza Doom. Yay. Oh yeah, mm. we're in Casa Doom, baby. Um, we've uh, we we kind of zoom in from the map. Uh, we'll get to the explosion later, but the the, the mountain the uh, mountain Doom later. But we we kind of zoom into the map to Casa Doom, and we see the front of one of the entrances, and it has these big openings where they have these uh, the, the dwarfs have set up these these big fancy mirrors to bounce the light into the uh, into the cave system that they have. That allows them to get light and to grow crops with. Um, How neat is that? I don't. Th yeah, it's neat. I don't think it would technically work, but I guess in this world it does. So I'm glad they've taken that into account. Mm. So well, yeah, pretty, part uh, of it would be yeah. you'd have to keep moving them, right? Unless they were set with clockwork to match perfectly where it would need to be to best make use of. Oh, my son is available. You would need a mech. They, um, yeah, you'd need a mechanism it, or it people would... there to to point it inside. They do turn up in or all um, of those in the mummy, if you remember. If anyone remembers? Yes, they do. It it fills up the treasure room and everything. Yeah. yeah. You also have to count for like the angle of the sun during different seasons and shit like that. You know, it would yeah, be quite that. complicated. When the dwarves are smart, past, um, I'm sure they know about that. There stuff, looks so. to be some gears and like 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 chains. You know, like like yeah. running um. All kinds of stuff on their mechanisms in order to make it alter, mm -hmm. I assume. A bit insanely complicated, but the dwarves are very, you know, very crafty. But uh, yeah. I don't think they would have something like this, though. Eh. The fun I fantasy think they thing. Would. I can believe it. Yeah. I can believe it. I'll buy it. Um, I honestly didn't even that. think about it. I was just like, I think it's yeah, they can do that, I guess. <laughs> I think the dwarves can manage it. They're smart. Because imp implying this, they would have a bunch of other like high-tech shit. They oh, we'll do. get to that. Like what? It's mirrors and gears. This, <laughs> this is mirrors and gears. This isn't like... No, but they have to set technology. it up like, you know, so. in order for them to reflect properly like throughout the entire that's, year. That's fine. Nah, that's like... No. No, it, no, it is fine. People just do that. That's just a thing you could do. Wait till I tell you about the Egyptians, my dude, and the shit they came up with. Like, did, did yeah, they like... do this. It's just gears and mirrors. Yeah. There is no, there's no incredible technology. It's just, okay, we need to have these mirrors. They can either be 
like glass with a backing or highly polished uh, metal. And then we just should have a mechanism to move it. And boom, if they want to use gears to do it, or if they want to use like a balancing system, there's multiple ways to do it. Dwarves are yeah, smart. But they have They're to like be people. Insane, you have to be insanely precise with it. No. If, you have your, if you're going to time this to... No, like it, 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 yes, you timing, do. <laughs> timing the sun is something that every ancient civilization The, the sun out. is not in the fucking same spot every day, Rex. You have to, you have we to know. Everyone like, knows. Yes. That's why the gears yeah. move them. This is mm. shit that we like humans figured out in ancient times. Sure, they figured it out, but you know, could they make fucking clockwork to it's not, have mirrors it's, no, it's not clockwork. We yeah, don't know if they're, they're is, probably though. moved manually. Yeah, they could have a group. If, of if they are, then movement. that's more fine. I thought it was like if they if they were like automatically done with like yeah, you, know, you can even kind of shit. And by the way, all that uh, that all that that kind of a mechanism would be is just different sized gears hooked up to some sort of a some sort of a system that just moves it. I mean, a a clock. If you went back in time with like a a clock and a set of gears, the only problem you'd have was the scale of how small it is. If you make a large version of it, you can do that. There's nothing technology. Uh, no, you can. I, I'm I'm not sure. You're sorry if these people can. You know, it's a yeah. quote unquote medieval setting. Uh, they are dwarves, so they they should be more handy and shit. But you know, the level of technology would imply them having a bunch of other shit as well. Like what? That's what I'm saying. Um, like, basically, like uh, crossbows and big ballistas and like. Uh, That's fine. Hey, I guess talk, and, you know. If they had crossbows, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Mm. Remember, in the Hobbit, they have twiddly widdlies. So. Oh, oh yeah. That's true. <laughs> what the fuck is a twiddly widdly? <laughs> oh, we'll get there. Don't you worry. One but they do while. seem to have a bunch yeah. of other like semi high tech shit uh, within Castle Doom as well. So I guess it fits there, but mm, I don't know. Also yeah. in um in Casa Doom, the like the, the the way that the city is kind of built inside the mountain with these like insane giant walkways, which I mean you also see all of that in um in the Peter Jackson films as well, but yeah. that would require a lot of you know, it requires a little bit of suspension of disbelief to accept that oh, they could do that. Um, so, I mean, personally, I like the mirrors. I don't think that it presents any kind of logistical problem, and I like the fact that some thought was put into it. Yeah, it's not just it's not oh, yeah. just a hole where there's light. They're actually <laughs> directing the light using mirrors. Okay, are the yeah. twirly whirlies in the fucking regular <laughs> version? They are not. Uh, I was just looking up a picture. I have yeah, never seen the that version. shit before. <laughs> oh, you've never seen the extended No, I need to check. I have not. Have I haven't not watched. The extended... I have not watched the extended Hobbit though. No. Oh my oh, god! I see. You have oh, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, so you haven't seen the fucking goat cavalry either? Then. No, well, I've seen a lot that, of clips good, of it. That, that uh, that I, I was sent highlights <laughs> of it like back in the day, but fucking, I've never seen the yeah. twirly whirlies. They're amazing. <laughs> All they right. they completely negate elven artil elven um, yeah. arrow barrages and they only bring it Holy up. Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thing, happy like, with it because fuck elves, but you know it's dwarves are so much fucking better than elves. <laughs> fuck elves. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. we all know we'd be hanging out with the dwarves all the time. One hundred dwarves are fucking awesome. Oh yeah. Elves are like, ooh, yeah, don't don't put dressing on your salad. That's against the rules of the the boo. And the dwarves <laughs> are like, ah, more mead, wench. <laughs> Shut um, up, Wally Wally. <laughs> all right, so um, Casa Doom, Light Mirrors, look at everyone going. The dwarves are hanging out. So we've got Diza in Durin, and they're shopping in a market here. And it's kind of implied that uh, they need to be saving a bit of money because back in season one, because of his falling out with uh, his father, the king, um, he, he it's kind of implied that he was demoted. He's still technically the prince, but are we to believe that he is no longer a, a, a dwarf lord? He had his little collar. You know, pulled off. What is? I think uh, you still have a decent kind of chunk here? of money, though. Well, yeah, you... I I don't really buy it. She's still like a oh, high-ranking yeah, she, stone, high stone singer thingy. She's the highest, isn't she? Isn't she like the most special? She's one? like the chief stone. Yeah, yeah. She's like person. the super. She's like in, in contact with the king directly. So she's yeah, probably no, gonna make no a good way. amount of dwarven cash. And no he, he's also working together. again, so he's, yeah, he is working, it's not like right. he's sitting on his ass. He's working, she's working, and plus, would King Durin want to remove money from, uh, well, the parents of his grandchildren? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I don't, so, I don't think they would need to, you know, string up their purse strings, whatever the fuck she says, that badly, noticeably, you know? I do think it's funny, however, that they talk about how they need to save money. Uh, for the food, but then they just seem to take the food and not pay for it. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, <laughs> no, no, no. maybe they. It's one of those. Maybe, the, 
Did you really check the yeah. bags at the beginning and end of the market? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> the modern Amazon but... stores where you can walk in and walk out and it automatically charges your card. That's how yeah, it works. Yeah, because the Indians Damn. on the internet are... Yeah, really high tech now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I don't know how that checks out at all. Because he wants to get this big old fucking There's mushroom. There's no checks and out. She's like, out. nah, and she it's... grabs a stem. The reason why, like, I think I'm willing to buy it because it seems to me like that's what the writers are suggesting with the whole the gold collar being removed in season one. He's taking but the reason money? why that he is no, removing, losing his, his, status. removing well, then... his status, which will then affect his ability to make money. But the it it, yeah, it but... asks a whole load of other questions that you're asking because we don't understand what it means to be a dwarf lord. He would yeah. surely have money. She still has oh, money. Yeah. He's still working yeah. now, and she's still working now. There's no way they would be struggling for daily groceries or anything. Oh, absolutely. So, late, well, struggling for groceries, no. But like later in the episode, we do see that he's like slumming away in the mine with the commoners. Yeah. Which, whether we buy that, is a different Which question. Is also stupid. Well, no, but that's my point of like he would have that as another avenue for money, right? Yeah. Not, yeah. He could just sell a bunch that. of fucking jewelry or something. Like he probably has a fucking. Yeah, the... I think that that was an overstep on the part of the writers. They probably thought, oh, they'd be they'd be on hard times now, yeah. And it's like, no, they wouldn't yeah. at all. It's especially funny no, when you see them in their big fucking thrones at the dinner table as well. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, we yeah. don't have any money. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, yeah, the, the the point that they're making, I guess, is that they are worse off financially than they were during season one. But I get the point that yeah. it, they have gone a little bit too far. Yeah. Yeah. We can't afford a mushroom, just the stem. It's just... <laughs> Listen, still look, pay for it. look I, you're both wonderful actors, but you, you guys could shed a few, all right? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, she says to put it back, she grabs a little stem, and uh, he says, uh, Duran says, you married a prince, now you're bound to an outcast. And she says, you know, but I, I, I'm with the, the dwarf that I love. I wouldn't trade your heart for a mind full of fire opals. Deesa like, is oh, the best character in this that show. Is, that is character, and that is in character, and it's relatively nice. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just... Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Look, that, it's like two it characters that have a relationship yep. that I can believe and I'm somewhat invested in. They also have a character yeah. I understand. I know what they're doing. I know what they believe for mm -hmm. the most part. It's really well, nice. Yeah. They don't the acting just constantly is talk in purple prose. They talk like <laughs> normal people. Yeah, exactly. She does have that one slightly odd scene. I can't remember if it's episode seven of season one. It's after he's been um, dethroned, seven. as it were. Uh, yes. Um, Where she and then she evil. sort of goes, com yeah, she goes completely <laughs> evil. It's like, uh, we will rule all the dwarf <laughs> mountains and we will show you off. It's like, yeah, fucking hell, you. calm down. I know you've got the Sarah, Sith eyes, but like, dial it down a bit. Also, but like, yeah. she's acting normal like, in this scene. Fuck your dad and nice. your brothers. We're going to rule this kingdom. <laughs> no, I think that is, uh, I mean, her being ambitious could be a part of her character that we just haven't really seen explored yet because there hasn't been much of an opportunity opportunity because she's always wanted him to go for the mithril yeah like she's always it, been there to tell him yeah we need to get the mithril this will be fucking incredible this will be good for you good for me good for all of us yeah in the context of season one that final scene where it sounds like she wants them to rule the galaxy um i don't think that's necessarily a problem but it might present a problem <laughs> depending on what happens to her in season two um because in yeah. season two so far all she's really done is tried to make uh, Durin reconcile with his father, which yeah, I don't yeah. know why she would necessarily want that unless she's playing some you know larger game. Or in, in, obviously I mean, I she, she has other motives. Episode seven, she doesn't want him to Durin. reconcile. Like in episode seven, she's very quite. She's very aggressively against the father. That's why like, that one scene yeah, just yeah. stands out as being completely out of her character. But I think the show was slightly confused at that point, and I hope it doesn't get confused again as to what the driving motive for dwarven greed and jealousy is going to be. Because it wanted, at that time, the mithril to be the thing which is quite clearly turning the dwarves against each other, and it's the thing that kind of acts as the one ring upon the dwarves. That's the thing they really want. But this season is obviously going to go and give them their own rings, which are going to do the same thing. So I think it was sort of preempting itself by making the mithril more than just a very special awe in their minds, and that's what turned her at that time into this power-hungry, seemingly about to go evil bitch, basically. And now she's back to being quite sane, level-headed, make up with your father, as opposed to your father is an evil bastard. Probably rewrites again, and she might go down that path later on. Her preference um, might we'll be the, the well-being of her husband and her grandchildren over um, political ambitions. I think that's part of it, but also um, th this was not explained very well. But in this episode, she basically says, "Like we can't hear the mountain. I'm afraid." 
um, you know, the mountain needs healing and uh, symbolically, I guess, and literally, you as the prince need to reconcile with your father because that will then heal the mountain um, and it kind of works in both ways. So what they probably should have done is have her acknowledge that maybe she went a little bit too far at the end of season one and that she, in order to do whatever these great grander dreams might be, she needs them to actually get back together and make up. But because yeah. that, that's what happens, it just, it's just that the character doesn't really acknowledge that that's a bit different to how she mm. was before. How do you guys like the, um, the whole dwarves being a bit more spiritual and like connecting to the mountains and like the, the singing of the finding, you know, the paths to dig and all that shit? I'm fine with it. I don't, I think it was, it's, I think it's a pretty natural result of a people who for their civil, their civilization lives in mountains and they, um, and they're just surrounded by it all the time that they, you know, that, that their culture sort of develops such that they have this kind of relationship with it. I think it's fair. I mean, you would expect the same of like elves that lived in the woods all the time, or even Numenorians in the sea analogies. It's like, well, yeah, you're an island kingdom, you know. Yeah, I think it blurs yeah. the distinction a little bit in the sense that because the dwarves have, in this telling, magic, which, as far as I understand, in the source material, they don't, because magic's a very specifically created thing. It's this the reason they keep harking back to the difference between the seen and the unseen world is that magic is not like spells which break the natural order. Magic is simply the real world manifestation of an unseen part of you and not all races have that unseen aspect of their nature. Elves do, which is why elves are seemingly capable of magic in the eyes of other races. Dwarves don't, they can use trinkets which tend, elves tend to imbue with magic but they don't actually use themselves. Hobbits don't, men don't have magic in this sort of way. So Rings of Power has imbued the dwarves with magic, it's connected them in that way, I don't necessarily mind the way it's expressed. I quite like the stone singing as their sort of way of communing with the mountain. It feels vaguely right. It's just that yeah. it's not quite, it's sort of, yeah, in feeling appropriate, it's also inappropriate. It misses the point of the distinction between elves and dwarves. I see, yeah, because yeah. Of, like you say, eventually they are going to get magical rings. Um, and if it had been clear from the start that they are like almost the antithesis of magic, then it would maybe be it would maybe hit a little bit harder the contrast between giving people who probably shouldn't have magical rings insanely powerful magical rings yeah and it's like you also have to build up gradually over time the, the distrust between the elves and the dwarves given the show is junk the backstory that sort of explains where a lot of that distrust comes from uh, in terms of the specific events which haven't happened you also have like the, the distrust that arises between two people who are so fundamentally different in their natures and their contact with magic or the unseen world is one aspect of that. You know, to dwarves, elves seem very, very strange. They think differently. They invoke these weird powers that we don't understand. And to the elves, the dwarves seem overtly mechanistic. They shun the natural world. Their entire way of engaging with their home is mechanical which is very different and so they, they don't understand each other very well and that misunderstanding leads to the kind of conflict and distrust that this show does still rely on because the king has this almost preternatural distrust of the elves i just don't know where it's come from in the context of this show and it might have helped to sell it had they not made the dwarves just as magical in their own way as the elves did if you actually did big up the massive differences in mindset and outlook at least then we'd have something to work with as to why he really doesn't want to work with them. But we don't have that. Yeah, because later, later in the episode, we get uh, there's whispers of a rumor that um, the mountain is cursed because Durin bought El or brought Elrond inside the mountain, which that would only spread if there is some kind of like pre-existing... Well, we can get to that um, later on when it starts to become much more, like more, a bit more prominent in the story. Okay, the yeah, is... I'll hold back on that. That's fine. All right, yeah, because I'm sure we both got that in our notes because it's specifically kind of like talked about. So, yeah. um, I, I just wanted to mention I'm not a big fan of the whole spiritual thing. I think I love it. More I think it's great. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I enjoy because uh, it's hilarious. A payoff for it. In, I think this episode. I'm not sure if it's this one or the yeah. one. Yeah, I was gonna bring up too the um, you know, because she says she has one of the elven lines at one point. She says the the, the bird that's far away sounds big but when it's close up it's a small meal or something yeah the <laughs> song bird one yep yeah i was like what the fuck? oh we'll get there another amazing analogy listen nothing's <laughs> gonna get to strong gravy all right we've already peaked <laughs> the strong gravy all right um so yeah she uh they, so the, they're having like a 
they'll have like relationship stuff. They're actually characters talking. I love you. Oh, thanks so much. Now, uh, we hear a, uh, we uh, Disa feels a tremble kind of before anyone else, which makes sense, I think, because she's used to doing that. She's she's a stone singer. She's used to feeling the mountain, having a connection with the mountain, and she feels that there's this rumble approaching, and she tells everyone to get down because down. you see. Mount Doom has exploded, and the shock waves of Mount Doom exploding have sort of rumbled through the earth, we're led to believe so far. And mm -hmm. um, it collapses one of the, uh, the entrances of Casa Doom up top, where the light gets in, and it wrecks one of the mirror arrays, and it drops this massive boulder on a bridge, and it kills some dwarves. Oh, shit. Um, and while this is happening, uh, Durin jumps on Diza to protect her. So it's like all oh, these little things, oh, you know, um, and so that is kind of where we 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 leave the the dwarves for now. I mean, the, However, the this stuff means... is really good. Like it's, it's my favorite part of of season one is Elrond and Jiren and Jiren and Deza tends to be those because they they actually have things they can draw on, which are personal mm -hmm. backstory, and they have a reason to like each other. It's not just highfalutin talk about the fate of the world. It's how this very specifically is expressed over, for instance, your fear for your friend who might die because evil is rising in the in the east and all that stuff. Like it gives it way more depth. I don't like everything around it as much in in so far of what we got of season two because we had the, the i don't know if it's before this scene or if it's after it there's the map scene when all those tendrils of black evilness are spreading out yeah mm -hmm. so like we assume it's the rumblings from mount doom and the dwarves say or suggest it's the rumblings from mount doom that have caused this but the evil tendrils on the map and the fact that like you get the elven messenger dying separately seem to suggest that it's supposed to be a spreading of evil as opposed to mechanical rumblings from a volcano erupting and things like that i thought the and map thing was to imply it was like it It really was like vibrations yeah. through like the core of they, the earth and they mention we, it later they say they say like a fire mountain exploded in the far south and that it has had ripple effects on yes uh, on our, on which, our which essentially yeah. means it means that what's happening I now i don't believe them though well, <laughs> with i mean you know We'll get there. I don't want to go. It's getting ahead. Yeah, like my my assumption for what actually happened would be based on the results of all of this, because otherwise yeah. it's an enormous coincidence. So um, it's bad either way. The if this is actually the uh, the rumblings of Mount Doom, like timeline wise, that does line up as far as I can tell. But it means that the dwarf scenes that you get in episode seven took place prior to episode six. Yeah, right. because the mm. oh god, <laughs> yeah. Which so we're, like, we're going back yeah. a ways. Yeah. So like, all cause... the dwarf stuff until we get something that links them together and ties the timelines. All of this stuff is happening pretty significantly before everything we saw in episode one. There right. are no rings of power yet, for instance. Oh, yeah. You don't think about it that way, do you? And I don't know that the show <laughs> thinks about it that way, but maybe. Mm. Well. So th this is, I, I don't know if I'm, at, if I'm giving the show credit for something that it shouldn't have credit for, but like this episode, oh, by, by the time not. it ends, they're about to, uh, they're about to get back involved in the story. Let's put it that way. And the suggestion, um, I think, which again, I could be reading it as something that isn't there, is that they have endured like, you know, at least a few months of living in like really, really bad, um, really bad circumstances. It's at the end of next episode, not this one. Sorry, I think. Well, because otherwise, um, which would then allow the timelines to resynchronize. So throughout all of the ending of season one, uh, what we see in this episode is going on in Casa Doom, basically. So we've jumped back in time for now, and then we will catch up with the main timeline later. Yes, we're, that is we're my... constantly jumping. Yeah, it's just that yeah. it's so subtle it's and confusing, confusing, and they never mention yeah. it. I mean, that it's actually you've been doing this the whole time. That the effects of Mount Doom exploding took its time to have its full effect on Casa Doom. I think that, that if we're going to say that, then we're saying it's magic, which... But that's what I was thought, that's what I interpreted the, the evil lines on the map as being, is that it's just like, the dwarves come up with an explanation for it, but the actual explanation is just the gradual emanation of evil from Mordor, even though Sauron isn't in power, which creates a huge problem when the, the elven messenger gets killed, but we'll get there later, I guess. Um, so I, I sort of read it as taking place concurrently, because also, how, how would they have heard about the volcanic eruption they're on the so, almost other side of the world and the other side of several mountain ranges they can't see it no one's been back there how have they yeah. learned that that was what caused this 
So the distance from Mount Doom to Khazad Doom, I don't know exactly what that number is, but on a real life map, it's not that far because Middle Earth is not that big compared with like Planet Earth, for example. Given that it was a massive fuck off explosion that supposedly decimated the Southlands, but also killed like two people, um, I think <laughs> it is entirely possible that such a catastrophic eruption would be felt across the continent. Because again, it's not actually that far. And as for them speculating, where did this come from? It's probably well, reasonable I mean, that it's, the dwarves would know that it's the closest volcano. 700 it miles sent, away and on the debris. other side of two mountains. Yeah, I was, gonna say, it, I was pretty sure it's pretty far away, actually. <laughs> it, it's far, but like on a, I guess, continental scale, if we're looking at the world, like the real world, it's not that far. And if we're talking, like, I, I, don't, I don't know wh how far away from like when Mount Vesuvius erupted, you could feel it. I, I don't know if we have a number on that or anything like that, but um, the thing is, if you dial up the intensity of the eruption and we're not talking about something that's like a billion miles away or something stupid, then I can accept that they would feel it and it might have some kind of consequence in Khazad Doom. But because it, it just relies on was this, it, was this eruption violent enough to cause this effect? And if, it's, if the answer is no, then you dial it up higher. You accept is that... Um... Feeling it, sure. It yeah. Being violent, I don't know about that. Also, I yeah. think, it, unfortunately, the sense that you have to make for this, it, the fact that it strategically almost knocks out the very things that are going to have drastic effects on the dwarven culture and mm -hmm. society. Yeah. The, my assumption the, was that the they're trying to tell us Sauron is orchestrating this. I, I was sorry. see. I was thinking the Balrog is starting to go nutty because they teased him. He's still around <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, that was yeah, that's first, true. Because yeah, that's what I thought. That's no, he's he's well, just pacing I, uh, at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> mentioning that has just made me think of something else. So later in this episode, Sauron reveals that he is aware that the dwarves are currently in deep shit. Like yeah, some, stuff's going wrong in Khazad Doom. Yeah. Which how could he possibly know that unless he's omniscient? And if well, we I say mean, that, like, well. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, I'm not even going to start accepting that. I, I was going to say, I just take that to mean that this is all his plan. He's fucking with the dwarves to make them desperate enough to make the deal for the rings. Could be, um, but then did he? I mean, obviously, like the 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 Waldrick stuff with the with the sword and the dam and all of that. Okay. That was his plan, I but he didn't so. make it happen at that. Well, it, I mean it. He wanted it to happen. I just don't know if he wanted it to happen then. Oh yeah, that's what and I mean. It's like part a, of his plan. He was being killed. He entertains that it could happen in many ways. You know, he's he's a he's a fluid planner. You could you could put it that way. You know, he's letting uh, he lets a bunch of options uh, come to the yeah. table. I the, but the issue I take with it is what the fuck did Sauron do to make it such that Khazadun broke in exactly the way that he needed it to? Like what? And I mean, if he could do that, then goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he is... had to go via, uh, well, he had to go past Moria to get to Eregion. Did he like sneak up the mountain and just break the mirrors? <laughs> <laughs> He's there at night with, with a hammer, just there like. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it straight. In my I don't head know. Because I'm thinking. It's... It works either way, I, or at least I'm willing to accept it either way. And does it being magic actually change anything? Because if, are we willing to accept that a quake inside a mountain would damage the intricate mirror system first? Well, wait, uh, the reason why I dismiss that anyway is because it's way too convenient. Um, it, it, the, what it does mm -hmm. yeah. is precisely what it needs to do to make the dwarves desperate. So I, I yeah. think it makes and, more know, sense it, it, to say the, that the Sauron did this are... on purpose, and then I take different issues with it. Yeah, because they're not I, only... I assume also the dwarves would have built their mountain to, like, or the, their home to withstand some amount of this shit. And, you know, the mirror should be the top priority of securing that. Well, to make sure, like, shit that we could discuss that now, I suppose. I, I, I hate the fact that their whole society is dependent on those fucking mirrors. That makes no sense. Yeah. You'd think they'd have some kind of trade system set up, even First if all, with, like Eregion or something, because yeah. you'd think gross. like they yeah. make you'd, a you'd, lot of mushrooms. Yeah. No matter how isolationist they fucking are, you'd think they could either trade in emergencies with people in the in the area, 
Well, fuck it. Would they not have farms of some kind above? They do and... have farms, but, you know, underground, <laughs> apparently. Well, but that's my point, isn't it? Like, they know how to yeah. farm. So get going, lads. Yeah. You don't want to starve. Yeah. Get, get making the farms outside. It's actually easier to do it outside. <laughs> Crazy, I know. <laughs> nah, <it's not. laughs> yeah. Can't do that with wars. It so... also doesn't only destroy the mirrors. The, the, the whole thing is also like, oh, yeah, we can't repair, like, any of them. Like, we have no single path that is safe. That we yeah, found we can find safe patches, and that's why I don't like the spiritual stuff because they should just like be uh, you know very practical and know this stuff by you know. Well, if you have, nature. if you but have, apparently access to we need a lady to, to scream out the mountain in order to find passages. I get that. Yeah, they should have much more practical solutions to all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just so dig up, dig up, stupid. Dig up, yeah. <laughs> um, also, from what I understand, people can just leave the mountain if they want to. They can, yes. Yeah. So yeah, the probably, there should probably be going to be a bunch of people who's like, well, I'm just going to go and buy something and bring back for bring well, something back to my homies. Uh, well, practical enough that someone should have said at some point, hey, boss, what if like, what if our lights went out? Like, what if that happened? What if they got broke did or something? What do we do? And be like, well, we've got all these amazing things we can do. Look at this big old list because we're smart, practical, and we know what we're doing. And this is what we do in an emergency. Yeah. So, uh, regarding the idea of them leaving the mountain to trade, it's revealed later on that the king has not allowed that for some reason. He's yeah. retired, yes. I mean, yeah, she's retired. Retired. I a lot of problems. <laughs> I, I thought, like, I vaguely knew where it was going in the sense that there's a logical way it should go. Because, it, you know, season one, the offer from the elves is 500 years of supplies mm -hmm. in exchange for Mithril. And the dwarves at the time didn't need supplies, so they said no. Now they need supplies, and they still have access to Mithril, so I assume the conflict would be over, do we accept that deal or not? Because the that seems retarded. more natural. But, but yeah, instead, the king is retarded oh, and stubborn, so hey, he's not going to accept that. Do you that. fancy getting some magic rings? So well, we can't <laughs> fucking eat those, so no. But that's <laughs> what Oh, dude. I mean, we, we are getting ahead, but I just love the idea of, like, the rings will solve your problem. It's like, bro, I need food. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> the rings of conjuring fillets? Or like, he's like, going? look upon this, uh, and he yeah. aims the ring at a plate that a piece of bread spawns. He's <laughs> like, yeah. Fucking the ring of bacon summoning. Like, what? <laughs> But it, but it does mean that they are leaning very, very heavily for the reason everything working being like the line like we can no longer hear the mountain. Like that is what they are leaning on is this yeah. sense of yeah. there is a deeper spiritual rut that is corrupting everything about where they live, much like as happened to the elves. And the elves fixed it with the magic rings. So we need magic rings to fix it here. And that's and probably, probably where they're will. going, even though yeah. they could have fixed it so much more easily. Just accept the deal that was made in the previous season that you've basically forgotten about. Yeah, without so, the fucking magic singing, they're basically fucking hopeless at mining and building and shit. It's, I, I don't like it at all. So does it fix this problem as best as we can if we say that the, the eruption happened and then a whole bunch of time passes and then Sauron walks past Casa Doom, makes there be an earthquake and breaks all their mirrors? Yep. Um, yeah. Why not? Because <laughs> the, the, problem, the problem that remains would be the fact that breaking all their mirrors basically means the dwarves don't have any food, right? Yeah, he uh, knew. Apart, apart, they have some supply, but... The, they have, yeah, I think they, some light gets through. They've just they've lost got one, one left, light. I think. they got one left, yeah, for now. They've <laughs> got one, one left, left, yes. I mean, they probably have probably some stores, fine. like, you know, stored away, but uh, they probably can't grow, grow any more. They have last you know, year's gonna bread. It's going to be a problem in a, in a bit of time. Fucking last um, year's bread. All right, well. Good talk, good discussion. Mm. Boy. Yeah, nailed that on. first scene. Yes, we nailed did. <laughs> we All did. right, <laughs> boy. Um, so, I wonder what Gladriel's up to. No, no, no. That's no, what I've been thinking I'm not. this whole time. No, take well, it back. We'll Something let you know when we're done. <laughs> uh, so, Gladriel is having a uh, kind of like a vision. I, I say, I, I say, a vision, not a dream, for reasons we'll get into. Um, but Gladriel is having a vision. She is planting seeds at Finrod's grave. You know Finrod, remember her brother Finrod, that she yes. really wanted to avenge? Yeah, I remember. Ships um, and rocks and shit. You know, I, I, I can't help but wonder, um, can't help but wonder if she, uh, if she's ever planting seeds at the grave of uh, someone, some other elf of her past that maybe <laughs> she should have been mentioning more or talking about more. And I, of course, am talking about Teleporn. Oh, I mean, Caliborn. <laughs> Uh, Celeborn, um, who she she mentioned a single time to Theo 
I think in episode <laughs> seven. Yeah. Yep. Oh seven, fuck! Yeah. Right. I I it took me ten seconds to figure out who you're talking about. Theo. Yeah, the little <laughs> shit kid. Yeah. No, I mean the 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 elf. Oh, Celeborn. Yeah, Celeborn. No, no, no. Yeah. What? Oh. But what? I think it was in season one, episode seven, where she just like randomly mentions, "Yeah, I had a husband once. He fucking died." Yeah. To, to yeah, this died. kid she met. We never um, find. We never found his body, but yeah, he's probably dead. Never mentioned again. It was implied that he died in the war. Um. So yeah, I just it's just weird to see once again this. Uh, the, I guess remembrance of Finrod makes sense, but how Celeborn was just mentioned once so randomly and has never been mentioned again. Mm-hmm. But just me thinking out loud. Uh, now in this vision, Celebrimbor appears. Oh my gosh, you! I I didn't know He's that like, you arrived. Hello. Galadriel says, and uh, Celebrimbor says to Galadriel that he's had a visitor. <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh my god! Who could that be? Uh, well, we don't have much time to think about it because vines uh-huh. start to vines and roots come up from the oh, seeds no. that she has just planted, and they grab Celebrimbor like a fucking world of warcraft druid spell <clears throat> and then <laughs> Celebrimbor is like are these not the seeds you planted <laughs> which is oh, 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 oh which power, is great therefore i am an imbecile because so, uh because she planted seeds yes Whoa. these yeah. are the seeds she planted i was there i was Damn. there gandalf three seconds ago <laughs> when she did it <laughs> yeah, so I just want to make it very clear. When he said, are these not the seeds you planted? He literally planted the seed. I just think it's really cool oh that they showed God. that she had literally planted seeds that then made <laughs> something that he said, did you not plant the seeds? Yeah. In you case know? you didn't get it. <laughs> it's Next, it's like, this, is setup? It's, this is a setup and a payoff. Dude, when they give you a... that is so surface level, but it's just so, text. They're so good at it. They give you the payoff text. almost immediately after the set. Most things take their fucking time. They, li- they like to do that they're in the lazy, show. They're lazy. They take forever. Like less but this than one, 10 seconds. Yeah, this one was Don't like boom, see? boom, boom. Yeah, she she planted the seeds at Finrod's grave. She was doing this to avenge Finrod, and then it led to all this bad stuff. Oh my goodness gracious! It's very Damn. subtle. Um, so I guess we're basically led to uh, she's led to believe here that this is vision. The vision is saying that essentially Sauron is in Eregion. Yeah, just just an echo of the prior episode that we were discussing. You know, yes, yeah, Satan is with our Smith, who can make weapons of <laughs> destruction. Just FYI. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. chill. And it's again, totally they're still, yeah, they're sort of like, that, that is news. That is news. Oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We sent him a letter. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Has he not given a letter <laughs> back? Uh, oh, that's sad. <laughs> two uh, of our they just average men to get the letter to her. It's, I quite know, uh, it's, so, it's such transparent writing that the writers need a reason for Galadriel to, to need to go to Eregion because that's yep. what is going to happen later in the season. Well, I know. Let's put a vision in her head where the guy from Eregion shows up and talks about evil magical rings. Mm. And, and then they just like, well, yeah, that'll work. But what if you it's didn't out. get it from all of the other shit in the season? You need this vision. you got to see <laughs> cool. it this way. Gosh. <laughs> These oh, are the yeah, seeds the... that she planted. Did you not notice that? <laughs> <laughs> also, the she seeds that the writer she's found. the bird in the cage. Like, so no. during this... <laughs> During this vision, she uh, Celebrimbor recites the uh, seven for the dwarf lords, nine for the mortal men, and three for the elves, and all of that, which is what clues her in on the idea that Celebrimbor is going to make evil rings. She's wearing one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. So this dream is... very strongly implies that the creation of more rings has extremely negative connotations. Mm. Um, yeah. So but, we don't know. Uh, oh yeah, she's fine. She's good. She's yeah, the best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So is this her new ring giving her foresight? Uh, yeah. She must know that this ring that she has is one of those three, uh, and her king is wearing another one of those rings. Um, Galadriel <laughs> should be pretty fucking terrified you know what of what do? this she, uh, vision potentially says. She should walk up to Celebrimbor and be like, uh, sorry, Gilgalad and be like, did you... Do you see Calibrimbo getting tortured in a dream? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. Oh, and she's in like, my dream, oh, why I my dream it was vines. No, oh, she, was no, she just dream? puts her hands up and goes, I didn't either. I was just asking. Like, no, it would be weird if you did. Some, I'm sure he's fine. 
thoughts. I, do, I do like I do like how when she reveals that she was having visions to him, and then he just kind of immediately like is like, oh, thank God, I've been having these really wacky visions as well. Thank God you're having <laughs> it too. Like, I thought it was crazy for a moment. Ooh, boy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he says all that, then she goes, oh, I was joking. He's like, oh, <laughs> I was just yeah, testing me, me you, too. just testing you. Just testing <laughs> I, I like the, the other subtext yeah. in the scene is that she fell asleep while he was talking to her again. Because he's still Gallant. Gallant. I want to fall, fall asleep he, too. He started he off on another fucking simile, and I just I nodded <laughs> off. Yeah, he started talking about furniture and walruses or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Loud oceans. I don't know. But yeah, the uh, the reason I uh, I didn't really call it a dream in a, in a vision is because she just like she she kind of zoned out while standing up like a yeah. cow uh, at this like military strategy meeting. <laughs> uh, she's just kind of looking the other way and she has this weird vision like she hasn't got enough sleep um, mm. so uh, the elves are planning to attack Mordor yay they, okay yeah so this just goes to show how fucking good Waldrig was at his job <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. even the elves Everyone have somehow learned knows. that this is not the Southlands it is the Southlands yay. no more yeah this <laughs> is Mordor we got yeah, this how, how much I, this is, I, I think this is the first time that they that they've said it with all of their rolling R's Mordor, Mordor. yes that's right do you think Waldrig sent like letters to Mordor. all of them with like just it just says Southlands is Mordor now. Signed I'm W. Oh, he says like please Some RSVP dummy. to the Mordor. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, like yes, shit, yes, yes. We're all enemies of but please come on, like start calling it, it what nice. it is. I did make it. Dude. <laughs> I do um, like that. So comment, I'm glad though. that they respect uh, the. Uh, they don't did name the Southlands. I don't know why they would respect uh, calling it what the orcs want to call it. So that's weird. Well, you mm. know, the, the orcs are very nice people. Very misunderstood. Just goes to point. show Waldrig's influence in well, this world. Is still I was gonna felt. say. I would give this uh, episode a much higher rating if the scene had opened with, like, the High Commander, Lord Waldrick, has been defeated in battle. And, <laughs> and, you know, like, this is a signal He's of the weakness of the enemy. A, a bewitched warg. And then, oh, and then no. hard cut to Adar crying, like, because he's lost Waldrick. <laughs> no! No! Okay, so, the military meeting. The elves here, they want to attack Mordor. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, so I guess they know the place is crawling with orcs and stuff. It's been told, uh, and they're thinking about attacking it. And they assume that Sauron is not allied with Adar. I do not know why this is an assumption they make. Is it because Galadriel yeah. would have told them that Adar claims to have killed Sauron? Yeah, I guess they're going like strictly a thousand off that, years ago. I wouldn't trust I mean, that why shit. Would she, yeah, like why? Well, neither, would because you can't trust anything. Well, yeah, also, you what, can't I mean, what I mean, what I mean is, I wouldn't trust to fire. draw. First of all, I wouldn't trust that it's true. But secondly, I wouldn't draw from it that they couldn't possibly be allies. Yeah, mm. that's insane. You just you actually don't know. You have yeah, no we're idea. Great friends with Japan now. So, the um, the 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 two commanders here talking to Gilgalad, they're like, "Yeah, we should attack from the north between this place and this place." And then Galadriel's like, no, we should attack from the west. And Gil Galad says, all right, we're attacking from the west. And no, the military it just... meeting is adjourned. He has to yeah. make preparations. Yeah, he's a, I, yeah. He... I'm, this is such make a preparations. Missed... That's this it. Is such a, that's such a missed opportunity. Because remember, <laughs> it just goes back. Like, I don't even know why they bothered making him a, com a commander in this show at all. Like at this point, this is like the scene where you could have showed us like, oh, what are or qualities as a commander what you do? Like, yeah. oh why are you going to attack from here what do you expect the orcs to do how many elves are you going to send is it yeah, going to be all from the water mm -hmm. the like all these yeah. things but all she says like it's going for the west everyone's like yeah specific right, point of attack it. you know shit like that yeah. you know maybe but she no. thinks of something I, yes. that the nope. other commanders hadn't thought of and then yeah. comes up with some kind of plan and then they respond like oh Galadriel, this is typical you you're just going to like risk like hundreds of elves are going to die like we might win but why do you always have to get so many people killed and yeah. then she could be like no 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 because no, you haven't considered this 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 and this and then they realize that okay maybe she has learned something but that's never going to happen because the or writers maybe, don't understand their character maybe yeah. they do something that's desperately needed for her character and she collaborates with the other two and they share ideas and she works with her her, uh, the people underneath her in the military hierarchy, and that's why she's been such a great commander because she's willing mm -hmm. to actually cooperate with people. God forbid, but no, it's just mm -hmm. no. Here's no, we're, we do this. We attack from the west. Okay, that's what we're doing. You're you're the boss. Have we All mentioned? Right. Have we mentioned why she is still the commander of the Northern Armies yet? 
No. So so she goes to in the beginning of season one, she gets exiled to New uh, to not Numenor, Valinor. Um, Gilgalad spends the entirety of season one believing that she is in Valinor. Turns out she wasn't, and she fucked everything up massively. Which means that not only did he not find a new commander of the Northern Armies during season one, but he mm -hmm. also didn't strip the title from her after knowing what she did at the end of season one. She yep. is still the commander of the Northern Armies. There are no consequences for her actions. Correct. There are no yeah. consequences mm -hmm. for her actions. And, and She's... she was gone a long time and still yeah. didn't get replaced. But the thing is, yep. I think it's pretty normal that people keep their like rank, even if they're, they're not doing rank. the thing. And, but, the thing yeah. is, but the thing is, there should be a new one well, already. Well, she was an exile. Yes, yeah. There should, one way or another, there should be a new one already. Which yeah, is like, exactly. oh, did you? That's how militaries did, work. If did you, the guy did you, in charge leaves, the person underneath him like moves up. It's just a, a general. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what happens in, with militaries. But I guess that doesn't happen in elf world. So who knows? No. They're very slow moving, you know. It takes like a hundred years to replace yeah, a commander. It took like all day for Gil Galad to send a message to Celebrimbor. So <laughs> about yeah. Sauron being back. Yeah. So. Um. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Gilgadra is still commander of the Northern Army. No consequences for that. Um, no discussions of battle plans. All right, Gilgalad says that she looks troubled. She says that she might not be in. Uh, that she says that um, Sauron might not be in Mordor because he sees himself as master of all Middle Earth, not mm. just Mordor. And uh, she says that the vision has kind of, a, or like the vision sort of informs her of this. And she tells Gilgalad that the rings will be the key to his rise to power, which is essentially what Elrond said last episode. Um, he strongly implied that it might be the case that the rings of power would be needed in order to get him back to his full strength because he's still kind of a bit of a weakling. He doesn't have his, uh, his armies and everything ready, but the rings might be his key to doing that. Um, so she tells, uh, so the king of the elves and the commander of the elves they are wearing these rings as she says this. It's just like mm -hmm. she says these are so fun. These these are probably how what he's going to use to get power, and they're both sitting there wearing the things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all right, even hides his up his sleeve yes. as she says it. Yeah, like it's he's just, ashamed. Yeah, of it. yeah. You just mm -hmm. when he does that, you just wanted to say like, are you you hiding that from me or you? Like what, what's, what, what's, yeah. what's going on there? <laughs> I'll what just shit to my hands. I'm just also wearing one, dude. Like, what? <laughs> I was thinking maybe he is sort of subconsciously he feels a little bit uncomfortable and almost like ashamed of the fact that he's wearing it, but you can't really read that into the character because he barely has one. He should, yeah. we, we need to have some, I can't believe I'm saying this. God, I want some exposition scenes because I need to know what the fuck's going on with people. Yeah. <laughs> I need to know what people are, like, I'm desperate. We need an anime style, like, fucking beach scene where they all get together <laughs> and they just explain flatly exactly how they feel. Because right now I'm so <laughs> lost on everybody. I don't know anything. I don't have any grounding for do what you, people's. Do you find what? yourself shouting to the heavens? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> why, for instance, there are ways oh. to. Uh, there, there would be ways to elaborate on why Gil Gallad, even knowing what he knows, can still uh, say, you know what, rings are bad. But they are keeping this light of Valinor in us and the tree alive, and it lets us stay in Middle Earth, so we don't have to abandon it, abandon it to its terrible fate yet. I realize that. I think it's worth it to keep the rings on for now. Let's do this in the meantime. Let's try to figure out how the rings work. Let's try to piece together what's going on here. We need to get up some plans. We need to go as fast as possible, so we have to wear these rings as for, for as short of a time as possible. That could be something that they do. That could be his thought process, right? He could be different to Elrond, who thinks, nah, the worst thing is that we get corrupted by Sauron. If that means that Middle-earth is just left to whatever happens to it, then, I mean, so be it. It, it, it still is it, it's still a second worst. But maybe Gil-galad, he, yeah. maybe he sees himself as a steward of Middle-earth, and he takes that risk. But we never, we never get these conversations. It None of these ever happen. Nope. It reminds me, like, honestly, one of the best written films in the uh, scenes in The Lord of the Rings, which is, I mean, that's a high bar you've got loads to choose from, is the Council of Elrond scene when they're deciding what are they going to do with these rings. Um, I cannot imagine a similar scene existing in something like Rings of Power. Like, can you, can you imagine a, a council no. scene with these fucking elves? Like, what no, do we do with these rings? Just tr they wouldn't just trade information to one another. They wouldn't just exchange information that's important to each other. It would all be metaphors, and then the scene would end before something's about to happen. Yeah. And I, I can't imagine characters just sitting down 
and having a realistic conversation about here's the stakes, here's what's going on, here's the plans that we need to enact, here's what I'm concerned about. That just doesn't happen with basically all of these characters, and it sucks. I have nothing to latch on to for anybody. Yeah, I would say any li interesting line of dialogue that happens in the, let's call it the first half of any good scene in Lord of the Rings that leads into bigger things and better conversations and then big payoffs by the end, a starter line... At best, you'd get one starter line at the end of any given scene of this, where, like, the second someone says something, you're like, oh, oh, that could... No, okay. Like, you know, that could lead somewhere. <laughs> and the, the, this is the, the writers for this are like, no, that was the grand thought. And you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then we, we always just repeatedly cut away and have to fill in the blanks on what happened next, even though there is no intuitive answer for what could have possibly happened next. These conversations, you have to almost like close your eyes in theater of the mind what the conversation actually was because the writers have taken the conversation and squeezed the abstract end point of that conversation into a juice that they've delivered to you. And you have and you're just left with like, oh, this is is this what happened? Oh, oh OK, I guess I guess it's like the attack from the north attack from the west thing. Like that should have been a whole conversation that those are your plans mm -hmm. to invade Mordor. And yeah. it's just. It's done. It's over. Boom. Just like that. No discussion. Nothing. Who are these two? Who are these two other people? I assume they're military minds. They had a plan. So are we going to talk? No, nothing. OK, I, moving on then. So it's in, I don't know if it's actually stated, but it's implied that they are the commanders of the north, south and east. Oh, sorry. East, south and west armies. And she's the commander of the northern armies. So. Yeah. I, I assume so as well, yeah. This yeah, is also I don't, scene where, uh, I don't think that's actually stated, but yeah. Yeah. This is also the scene where he um, mentions that, uh, you know, uh, Oregon is protected by high walls and rivers and shit. Yes. So obviously a, obviously a shapeshifter and master manipulator can't get in because there's walls there. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, they're only addressing the idea of um, oh. Sauron entering Oregon if he had an army, like mili yeah. military defenses, because that's what they're speaking Which to. Is... But again retarded the, well yeah because also Celebrimbor, not Celebrimbor, Gilgalad just said in this scene Sauron doesn't have any allies or armies which mm -hmm. firstly you can't know that but fine <laughs> if he doesn't yep. if he doesn't have any then why are you talking about how thick the fucking walls are yeah the, yeah, the only the only thing that they could I guess know is Galadriel saying yeah when we were fleeing the Southlands there were some orcs still around but that's it yeah. I think that's all she's able to say. Yeah, and he also says that uh, Celebrim uh, circuit, the secrets of his craft is safe. Like, how the fuck would you know that? And yeah. you know yeah, that Sauron was there, so they're obviously not, because he was there b throughout the whole process of making them, basically, until, like, the very last bit. And they said that the fact that she got suspicion of Sauron in the first place is because Celebrimbor repeated one of his lines at her, so she knows already yeah. that his mind is compromised. Gil uh, Gilgalad has just finished yeah. telling, or at least influence, yeah, Gilgalad has just finished telling us that once he gains your trust, he can do this. She knows he gained Celebrimbor's trust. He doesn't need to assail walls with an army to make this, you know, in jeopardy. It already is, because it's Sauron, not some weird sort of yeah, orc commander. Yeah, he manipulates yeah. minds and influences people. He's not a, he doesn't have to attack with militaries. Um, but also, the fact that we had the, uh, the power of a flesh line from Celebrimbor in season one means that, like you said, this conversation should have made Galadriel remember, like, hold on a minute. And then uh, they could have just shown us a flashback to that conversation and had the co the cogs turn. She's like, oh shit, Celebrimbor's in trouble. And then explained all of that, which means we then don't need the bullshit vision from the ring. But yeah, uh, yeah. obviously they, they're relying on, well, she's got to have the ring on that she shouldn't fucking be wearing because he shouldn't let her be wearing it because we need to put visions in her head because we need the story to happen. But they already have the pieces in the show to where they don't need to do that. It's really inept, yeah. So, yeah, great stuff. Um, no. Yeah, Galadriel tells the king she has visions of, you know, glimpses of the unseen world, like waking dreams. But there's no way to tell if any of these uh, dreams are directly Sauron's influences or not. They have no way of telling. They could be complete misdirections. They could be the truth. I don't know how they could know. Like, again, we don't even know what the Rings of Power do as audience members. They're just rings of power. I don't know what that means. No. What kind of power... But it seems to be that they are certainly giving um, Galadriel the ability to sort of have these premonition-like visions. And uh, Gil Galad, who has sort of had them before, 
he can i guess it enhances his ability to see them but he I also gets visions he says yeah I don't know. so i don't know maybe yeah. his are more clear or they're spelled correctly who knows like, um, <laughs> um if elrond uh, were listening well, to their conversation in this scene where they're talking about how it's doing these different things, making them feel and think different things, and the, you know, the corruption <laughs> of the thing. Well, you just, you'd be that emoji. You'd be like, you guys are not fucking serious right now. Seriously. Like, yeah. you just never listen to me. Just take those <laughs> fucking things off, God damn it! Yeah. Also, very mm -hmm. minor thing, at exactly 11.23, the Galadriel has a line and her lips doesn't move. Yes, oh, really? I know the one you're talking about. It's when she yeah. turns around and says, supposing I was not alone. <clears> Which yeah. is really bad uh, Timestamp? Well, no, there's before that. I think eleven twenty-three exactly. It's that. it's the final cliffhanger. No, she for she, this pa team. she passes she passes behind uh, Gilgalad, and then the, she has a line, but her lips doesn't move, and then it cuts to her, like in oh. the exact same spot, and then she speaks. Then we're talking about then there's two because the one I'm thinking of is a different one. Yeah, no! right there. <laughs> <laughs> there. There's there's another Million one with dollars. Durin later that I noticed. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Gilgalad denies sending her to, uh, Aregion, or the, he, he denies a request to send her to Aregion. He thinks that she cannot face Sauron again, because he knows, uh, that she's been affected by his magic, and that kind of makes her, like, extra vulnerable. Oh, great. Um, send, uh, anyone but... else, then? Why no, does she no. have a ring, bro? <laughs> because she just it's uh, I don't I want to find someone who likes this show. And they're they're out there somewhere. They're out there. Oh, I've like, seen why, I've seen defenders online all the time. It's really weird. Oh yeah. I've had arguments with a few. I uh, don't. <laughs> now, she claims to Gil that uh I Gil. know his mind cuz we've been like connected or whatever. That is not reassuring um, at all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, that's, like, oh, that's fucking again, massive red flag. <laughs> yeah, once again, Galadriel says the kind of thing that you would expect Sauron to just basically say. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, we've been connected. It's I know what you were saying it. earlier. It's so you need to say this to Galadriel. It's like, listen, here's here's a piece of paper with all of the boxes to fill for you being Sauron. Here's a paper with all the boxes needed to fill for you being mind controlled by Sauron. And here's a piece of paper with all the boxes I need to fill for you being a die-hard elf who's good-natured and happy and wonderful and trustworthy. Do you know which two papers have been filled and which has not? Yes. <laughs> you have a 96% chance of being Sauron right now. The math checks no. out. Can you reassure you me that so she's like, boxes. well, I'm just having some visions of killing Calibre Boar. <laughs> He's like, oh. <laughs> and then he takes it out oh. and he just scribbles another box. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 98%. Um, yeah, it's it's incredibly frustrating. Both of these characters, I hate them because one is Galadriel and the other one is an incredibly stupid, incompetent moron Gil leader. Galad is, is really annoying. Um, yeah. He's like persistently pisses me off. Yeah, I, I would well, not have voted for him. I hate but, the vibe but, I mean, of this it, whole it, scene. The fact that we, we're establishing the horror of what's happening in Eregion potentially in the future, but they just don't do anything don't, that relates don't to do solving anything, that yeah. problem. This should be this should be the same as that shot where they had all of the uh, Numenorians, you know, riding towards uh, the Southlands, right? Yeah. It's, it's as urgent. If anything, it's more urgent because you know that Sauron's there, whereas before mm -hmm. you didn't actually know that there were orcs there. You didn't know yeah. that. And you want to crush yeah. them before they can build up defenses you know, uh, and infrastructure and grow food and stuff like that. You want to hit them now while they're at their most vulnerable. It reminds um, me it's... of um, in Shaun of the Dead where... Uh... I'm probably forgetting his name. Uh, the, uh, Bill hey, Nye's good. Bill Nye's character oh, gets no. uh, bitten, and when when that's been made clear, and he's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "It's all right. I've run it under a cold tap." And like, <laughs> it, it's the same thing. It's like, "Oh my God, Satan is is at our Smith's house," and then he's like, "It's all right. I've sent a message." <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> I sent two of my most average guys. You know, it's it's a. Worth mentioning at this point as well that timeline wise, if they did just pack up their shit and march an army to Eregion, they would get there before Sauron does. Oh, yeah. That's funny. Oh, well. well we, we already like, know they like can ride there in a single day because they did that. Yes. At the beginning of the episode <laughs> yeah, they can just teleport over <laughs> there. It's, yeah. That's true. What we call yes, cinematic yeah. language, okay? They started the season off with it. So they must be telling us it's <laughs> <Yeah>. relatively simple. <laughs> Why yeah, would they do that be otherwise? Easy peasy. Oh. It also it's also pretty funny that Galadriel says I alone can slay him when he got killed by a bunch of fucking orcs in the first episode. <laughs> well, also the uh, the fact that she says that I'm the own I am the savior of the universe. I'm the only one who knows Sauron's mind. I'm the only one mm -hmm. who can kill him. It's just the same shit that she that started all of this in the first place. 
yeah. uh, because she just hasn't learned anything. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's exactly what she would say if the ring was controlling her. Uh, indeed. Yeah. That's what Gilgalad should be saying. You, know, power, you, just, you have I'm... allowed this Dark Lord to twist your mind, and now you've become the very thing you swore to destroy. That's exactly what he should be saying. Has wow. Gilgalad actually made a single wise decision yet? A single one? From the beginning of season one onwards? Not really, no. So. At all. And no. um, honestly, just the speed with which he's interested in these rigs. If I were an outside observer, I'd be like, I think he might be fucked. I think he's, he's, he's yeah. gone. <laughs> We told they're like corrupting and potentially Satan's little wing wings, and he's like, "Oh yes, give me." You're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Daddy. Please, uh, more. <laughs> you know, Satan wasn't all that bad. <laughs> like, he's, he's, he wrote some poems. It's a, it's a point of view. <laughs> From my point of view, the elves are evil. <laughs> I'm not imagining that's the old lost. Jumps down a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, it was Wait, the high no, ground. Did he jump down the waterfall, or did he, or is it that they're actually having a duel by the waterfall as the thing is falling off the waterfall, and then Elrond launches himself on it and then does like a massive jump? He can jump. He would jump high, up the waterfall because he, he would like then a healthy guy. Yeah. The high ground. <laughs> jump yeah. off he the looks waterfall. like he's healthy, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he swims up the waterfall. Oh yeah, uh, he's got that. He's got the thing from uh from Breath of the Wild, the suit that yeah, lets yeah. you. There's one that lets you swim up waterfalls, right? In Breath of the Wild, I'm not yes. misremembering, am I? Maybe. No, yeah. No, no you're correct. You can... I'm stupid. Yeah. I got that one. Are you guys <laughs> looking forward to the live action <laughs> the Legend no. of Zelda movie? Yeah. Nah, um, man, I'm saving all my excitement for Minecraft. So. Oh, oh yeah. Really yeah. The yes. fuck was that? A really good idea is what yes. it was. Yeah, a really <laughs> good on. idea. Um, so let's see here. Um, da, 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 she said, okay, so uh, she claims that she knows oh. Sauron's mind, and uh, she says that only... Huh? She does not know Sauron's mind. Yeah, she that is... This, this she is one of those crazy all. things that she just says. <laughs> um... Uh, but because in the visions that Sauron gave her, he was in complete and total control. He appeared as he wanted. He sifted through all of her memories, even going all the way back to her childhood in Valinor. Yeah, he, even to the point he where she knew control. it was happening and then got dragged into it forcibly. Like, she was like, no, no, yeah. no, no, and then, like, became a part of it almost. You're going to yeah, tell everyone that part? It's not an understatement to say that she knows nothing about Sauron. Because every single thing that he has done... well. Is her is him playing into or could be could, him playing into? Could you it's not? He deliberately said to her. Could you not? Yeah. Unfortunately, argue and be pretty on point to say it isn't that at all. It's that she kind of likes him, if not has a has pretty strong feelings toward him. Yeah, like mm -hmm. she to the point where she might be interested in trying to save him, so to speak. Like that's gonna be. Uh, like, and gonna I don't think. Him. I think that Sauron deliberately. Well, what I figured is because in in episode one, sorry, in season one, we know that Galadriel that that Sauron already knew who Galadriel was at the point when he turned into Halbrand, which was episode one that we just went through, which to me indicated that maybe he chose that form knowing that he could then fuck around with Galadriel later down the line. Because if he came out looking like I don't know, uh, fucking uh, what what's his name, the the guy who faked cancer. <laughs> boogie? Boogie? Yeah, boogie. Yeah, boogie. That's it. Yeah, yeah. If, he if takes he the form of that boogie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be if a ten took, out of ten show. I, I am at a tar to his plan doesn't work. <laughs> 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 that that's the why the four of the Lord of the Lord of the Do. Oh no! So like it, it relies entirely upon her kind of having a thing for him, and also him being you know somewhat charismatic and playing into you know that, and I guess seducing her. Ultimately, at the end, he does try to seduce her. The, whole I will make you a queen thing. Like, it's not just, mm -hmm. oh, you are you're, you are the commander of the Northern Armies, you're really skilled and I could actually use you. It is that he wants her at his side. So I think that that's absolutely something that we're supposed to take from the show. Whether she thinks she can fix him, I I don't know. It's that flash to the there's scene a bun, There's a bunch of looks and like, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, is making me think that. Especially with the, they like, didn't they put it in one of the promos or trailers or whatever, the acknowledgement of 
Galadrion, Galadrissar, Ron, yes. whatever the fuck. Uh, about, about, oh. A bunch of the cast have talked about it as well. Oh, so it's so wild. great. Right. You are joking. Yes. You are joking. Uh, nope. Nope. The, 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 there's oh. interviews when they actually talk about this shit. God. She says, uh, she says, I can fix him. And I'm like, bitch, you're more broken than he is. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine they did a Star Wars prequel Actually and they started true. doing Luke Pultine. <laughs> like, let's what? get them together. <laughs> what? Luke Pultine actually sounds like it could be a Star Wars character. <laughs> Luke Pultine. I am Luke, Luke Pultine. Pultine. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, uh. So she says that um, only she can slay Sauron. No, that's no, not true. true. So no, I, that's something she just made up. Uh, not sure what she thinks that she's learned about him to make her believe that she's his only weakness because he has only completely and thoroughly dominated her. Um, and the only reason that we have to believe Sauron kept her alive in season one is that maybe he wants to use her in future plots. But he did leave her in the river and it was only Elrond who just kind of came across her and... Yeah, kind of like saved her. So if Sauron really did want to kill her, he was being clumsy about it. But mm. I think I don't know if we're led to believe that she he wants her to be alive because he's going to manipulate her. And if that's he, the plan, yeah, fucking working like a charm, my dude. No, but yeah, it's on. almost like it would be a good idea to take yourself completely out of play. It's just like you yeah. know what, I can't participate anymore. I should jump um, in that trench. <laughs> 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 and then the sea would make the bubble because it's like, ugh, get out of me. So, like, the idea that maybe uh, Sauron wanted Galadriel to be alive makes a bit of sense because if he wanted her dead, he could have easily killed her. Well, yes. um, is it within his power to just kill her in that scene and take her form? And then. You would think, yeah. I would assume. Might take some spaghetti time. And it'd have yeah, to be Galadriel. It's just, it's Maybe just interesting to think twist. about as like a strategic oh, move. Oh, yo, that would be great. <laughs> I actually remember thinking that in the final episode of season one, because like after that, when she goes back into the forge and she says, proceed with making the rings, basically. And for like five yeah. minutes, I was thinking, that must be him. Exactly, no that's what I'm saying. She say yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's checking off because... all the boxes of actually being Sauron. Yeah, you can't tell. What is the difference? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, Galadriel, tell me one thing that would that that you have done that Sauron would definitely not do. She's like, I got you that Just birthday one. card. Like Sauron well, would give me a birthday to... card. Sauron's a nice guy. He'd give me a birthday card. As soon as she gets pulled out of the vision or pulled out of the river, literally, um, she pulls her knife on Elrond and immediately says, like, you know, tell me, prove that you're you, because she thinks he might be Sauron. And he does. Right. But then he doesn't flip it on her and go, So how about you? Are you uh how are you feeling today? <laughs> Also, that doesn't even make sense because Sauron can go back to her childhood and, that, yep. and assume the form of her brother. Yeah. Shouldn't he just do that with Elrond? But like yeah. the idea that um, maybe he wanted her alive so that he could manipulate her, I still don't think that even works because uh, as far as Sauron was aware and is currently aware, there are two rings, not three. Because the reason there are three is because Galadriel said, now we've got to make three so that there aren't two. <laughs> So his plan was that there would be two rings, and he can't have thought that Galadriel would get one of them, right? Because you, you would have assumed obvious... that it would have been Gilgalad and Kiridan. I mean, Kiridan because he's really old and really wise. Apart from that, we got I no thought, one else. I mean, right? there's other. I mean, there's other elves. Well, I thought Celebrimbor yeah, might end up getting one. one. Yeah. yeah, potentially Celebrimbor. Yeah, the, the, the Lord of Regan yeah. and the Lord of Linden. Yeah, yeah, that would that make the most sense. sense. <clears throat> Gandalf has one in the events of the Lord of the Rings as well. Doesn't That's Gandalf Kyrdan's get ring? I was going to say, yeah, he gets Kirdan's ring off screen. Well, I say off screen prior to the events. <laughs> well, it's before, <laughs> yeah, before the event. So I guess it ends up Gandalf, in the Don't worry, they'll make a show Moria, just right? for that. Well, it'll happen in this show, right? If if this follows, if this goes oh. all the way to the end, right? Please, uh, no, don't don't even well, don't even well, say that. I don't even. I guess the problem is I don't even know what the story is going to look like in terms of them trying to. I presume that the end in this case being like Isildur getting killed by orcs and then the ring getting dropped into the into the river, right? Like that that would be. The, I don't know if they'd want that to be the ending necessarily. It's yeah, I don't think I don't think they do that. I, but I think they're definitely they're gonna have like Isildur and Elendil and Gilgalad are gonna fight. Uh, you and know, the battle of Sauron. Yeah, 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 exactly. How far and they then... keep going after that is anyone's guess. Well, surely no further than that, right? <laughs> like, well, yeah, but like, it, but is that literally going to be the final episode? Is the question? Well, or who knows the last if that's alliance? Season five far. probably was the plan. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 
if, if they not, even uh, finish uh, the series, like they might yeah, end. Up I think I think they're gonna see it through to the end. I think uh, I yeah. think that this uh. is one where to admit it to to cancel it would be to admit the whole yeah. thing was a failure, and they don't yeah. want to do that. To be, it's sure. it's almost like a sunk cost fallacy would be my assumption. Yeah. On this one, they got to see sunk through, pride fallacy, the and that's going to be yeah. rough because the viewership mm. for this is like we'll keep what, going less down than down half down for the first it. season. It's pretty yeah. fucking dire. So. Just waste more money. And theoretically, by season five, we could be the only ones left. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be wouldn't be our first rodeo. Yeah, we're, oh, we're, yeah. still, uh, we're, we're still going through Bat Woman, right? Days. Still Bat Woman. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Keeping it alive. Season 5 is going to be like fucking 2032 or something. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 well, yeah, I guess it'll be like 2030 or something like that. Remember when oh, Gary figured out him? how old he would be if a Season 5 finally came around and he like stared oh. into the darkness? Oh, <laughs> like 10 years of your life to this the, show. Yeah, the, you know? like, this is going to be the rest of my life covering Rings of Power. Like, oh, fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> Oh. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Um, uh, let's see here. Sauron, um, back in Eregion. Sauron, Yay. who is, I guess, in the city. He's been allowed entry into mm -hmm. the city because what are guards? I don't know. Um, well, yeah, they, uh, yeah, they, they treated this as this here. is the absolute oh. stop when it should be way before this. Uh, you don't get to come <laughs> yeah. inside. He, yeah, he has like two guards watching him at all times, you know. It's... But this is yeah. this is in the city. That's the thing. It's, it's yeah, in the there city. is it's just outside of Kellabrimbor's like. Well, he's within shop. shouting distance yeah. of Kellabrimbor. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. hey just let me next in. To him. <clears throat> let me in more, yeah. I guess. <laughs> let me in uh, more. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Sauron, who's in the city now, I guess he's denied entry by Kellabrimbor, who's the Lord of Eregion. He's in charge. Mm -hmm. He's the mayor, the big cheese. Uh, mm -hmm. There are guards here. Who just let him stand here and wait? Yep. I can only assume that uh, we don't think about him having to eat or poo or sleep, uh, nope. or the horse <laughs> or the guards. Um, I don't know. Thing... If you're not in the scene, you're paused, I guess. Good thing Galadriel uh, didn't so make a standing like... order to execute on sight, uh, Halbrand. You know, hmm. would have complicated things. I guess she has that authority, mm -hmm. probably as commander but... of the all the stuff and scourge of the whatevers. Yeah. But Halbrand he... just knows that's not going to happen. He knows it's going to be fine. Yeah, he what doesn't mean? know at this point. F for all he knows, he could turn up and they'd be like, ah, Sauron. And he'd be like, oh, shit. Okay, I'll be back. I'll, <laughs> oh, I'll change. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, guess I'll leave. <laughs> and he's like, oh, who? Where? 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 Where is he? Where is yeah. he? Fucking run. You mean the horse? Uh, oh, my yes. God. I'll get off the horse. Oh, he just, oh read the fucking, God. he just read the fucking script and he knows it's going to be fine when he gets here. Like, Shack, stupid, oh, fucking no. stupid. And oh. his amazing plan is to just be like, I'll just, I'm just going to stand here, though. That's cool, yeah. right? And they're like, yeah. Fucking nuts, yeah. dude. You're allowed to stand there, but you're not allowed to come in. It's like, yep, all right, Man. that's fine with me. Yeah. There is the, the, the spies dude. who watched him go into Mordor thought, well, that's our job done. Off we go. And then just left him. So no one has spotted him. No one has spotted him coming all the way from Mordor to Eregion when they mm -hmm. explicitly said they spotted him going in. They just went home and stopped. And then he's out <laughs> here for however long it is. And again, no one thinks it's at all suspicious. No one like thinks, nope. oh, hang on. I recognize this guy. I'm pretty sure we've been told he's Sauron. We should probably mention this to somebody. No? Okay. No. I just wish the show... So for how long... Would he... He, he has to be here at least a few days, right? Well, for, for how long he's standing there for, at a minimum, it's a day, which is still insane. Yeah. I yeah. think mm -hmm. it's more reasonable that it's at least a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, um, also, I think they, they, the, the writers forgot they did a setup here that they didn't use. No, they did. Because... Yeah. Uh, they do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The, the, this is the thing. I was going to say, there's something that happens in episode four that would make for a decent bit of conversation right now, but since oh, too many people have not four seen yet. episode four, <clears throat> and it's not it's not the easiest thing to explain, it's not quick, and, and it leads to a couple of conversations, not just one. But there's yeah, uh, yeah. Sauron has put something in order that we know is currently active to help him with this plan. It's kind of silly, uh, but we can't talk about it yet, mm -hmm. I guess. We'll find you get oh, told it explicitly in episode four. But I was thinking about something else. I don't think that, I don't think that's going to be com coming up again in four, because when the assistant lady comes around, he he does like the things like, oh, I guess I'm going to wait here, as we already said. And then he like turns around, like to show the wounds, like, look, ow, ouchy, I need treatment. And she, the the lady, like, wants him says, he's wounded, and then it's like, yeah, I don't care. And then that never. Well, that's does technically anything. that is set up a payoff. <laughs> that, that, that was an attempt yeah, it, to get that to bring him in. That, 
Yeah. Well, the, the just... thing, I was thinking this would be like the the beginning of how he get makes his way into the thing, where it's like, that, okay, okay, guess I'll it's supposed and to then be. He, Technically, and it then is. he like the best reading of that is the he's trying to make himself seem more and more sympathetic to Calibrimbo, and yeah, Calibrimbo exactly. technically does break after enough time, right? Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's that's mm -hmm. how he ultimately gets inside. In like two seconds. <laughs> it's dumb as but fuck. Would... I'm just saying that's what yeah, the show's yeah. for. <laughs> Yeah, because, but, and but again, the only reason why any of that can happen is because the guards allow him to just stand there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the and the only reason why that can happen is because the letter didn't arrive. And well, the only reason why that can happen is because he didn't uh, fucking Galadriel didn't tell Calibrimbo that he's Sauron. All Sauron so all needs of now that is, is required a, for this to happen. There's a boombox with the fucking Lord of the Rings theme playing, and then Calibrimbo pokes his head <laughs> out of his towel, and goes, "Go away! <laughs> I don't want <laughs> to be friends with you." <laughs> because this this would have been like oh. a thing where maybe I don't know. No one wants to treat him and then the lady comes out because she's like easily deceptive de decept dece deceived that's the word and then he she like has to come out and wants to treat him but he kills her takes her form goes inside and then again as i mentioned earlier just trying to go through the ranks get closer to killer brimbor convince him of the thing do it, all this deception thing all this evil magic stuff instead of just being there and it's like Oh yeah, I guess uh, they didn't tell you. Anyway, I'm gonna leave now. No way, tell me. And then he gets in. It's like, oh wow, that was very lame. Because again, they just don't do anything with the whole. He can transform into basically oh, anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, so nothing at all. From what you've suggested, Mola, because I, I I have only seen the first like ten minutes of episode four. Is it worth mentioning anything about the missing message or not? Because well, so. What it is, is if we get an explanation for what's happening to the people who are trying to get messages to uh, uh, Eregion. And Sauron yeah. is behind it? Yes. That's insane. So that means That's... that he knew that there was oh, a letter like... that was going to come, and he pr he got in the way so that that way Dude, it's... would never be told. Honestly, you, 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 you'll, you'll love it. <laughs> okay. oh, I can't wait to see this. Sure, sure it will, well, yes. I was totally because... expecting when, when I did my video for episode two that we were just not going to hear from them again. And it was just like, oh, the bandits, that's good enough. Something anyway, got moving on. Ooh. Yeah, because yeah. they that's yeah. exactly what they did in season one with the mystery spy who had all the answers. Um, and they do a very similar thing again in episode three. All so this is... Spies, right? Well, I mean, and, I guess uh, so, yeah. Are there like, well, James Bond, everyone knows him, so he's well, not a very good mystery they spy. Are, Archer, um, he's the best spy in the world. Archer, Archer. Yeah. yeah. They are dragged away with chains, and that is the signature move of the creatures that uh, have killed them. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. Yeah. We'll also, talk about it next uh, week. Uh, Kratos? Yes. Hooray! Kratos? <laughs> Kratos is like, I have, just, I have to destroy this world. It's God. Elves, the pantheons of this God. Against me? All the gods of this world are clearly evil. They have to be destroyed. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, oh, also, Rex, this, this is the armor I was talking about, like, way earlier uh, in the... I, I like this more than the gold. I think it looks like shit. I don't like it much, but... I like the fact that they actually have something resembling a, a, a steel plate on their chest, uh, the gauntlet and the green with the like the, the gold work on. I don't like the helmets, but I think it's, it's made, better it's than made the gold. It's made of the green paint on the armor for me. It just looks like someone like oh. exploded random green paint oh, on the armor. It looks wait, unfinished. You and I... You and I are thinking differently. I thought it was green, oh. like a greenish metal that had been like gilded, oh. not the other way around. Oh, yeah. now I see what you're... Oh. I was thinking the same as you, Rags. Yeah, if that's if now that's that green he's paint... mentioned it, if oh shit, now that he's now that Gogur's yeah. mentioned that, and I kind of look at it like like a, like a reverse zebra. Um... <laughs> is it like is the word oxidized? Is that what we were thinking? Like, if, if it's metal and it. Yeah, if I, it's, to it's me, bronze, it's to be right? Like... Bronze turns it to green, that kind of green. But uh, so it would be if... like random. I thought it was stylistic. Then. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was just a style, like a, in particular, a stylistic that, choice. The one on the right, the, the dude on the right, it looks like they've taken a sort of bronze helmet and just like blasted it with a spray jade. can. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think it's a random child who like, painted the armor green because he was bored. I still like the look better. If I was playing a, a, an elf guard RPG and I had to choose my character, this is the skin I'd buy from the from the the ring the store, rings of power store. Oh, but yeah. yeah the rings of power <laughs> store uh, over the the flat gold see that's what you would I mean, differ. Yeah, i'd I choose like the, the color, goofiest clown outfit or i'd choose the waldrick skin <laughs> the waldrick skin of course he has got <laughs> yeah waldrick's got armor is you know what we saw waldrick for all that time none of us said a goddamn thing about his armor because it worked 
Yes. We didn't, we didn't make fun of his armor <laughs> at all. He looked good. He he looked, looked, a... Actually, his armor looked, looked so suitable that I thought it, for sure we'd be getting more of him. I thought it just, it, he just looks dignified. He looked ready. He, he just earned a that crown. armor. That's all he needed was a crown. He is the king. He is a king. Aldrich crown. Aldrich, our king. I have a question. Like, what can this armor actually be made of? It can't be steel and it can't be bronze because both of those are alloys and they didn't know how to make those into a fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they oh, made no. alloys. They true, just yeah. Once he cracked it, they rolled it out, buddy. He was, yeah. like, he was, he was blown Lost away. Lost it out on a production line. Yo, you guys, it's this. like light bulbs up in here. Yeah, the mm. question is, do we see this armor in season one? Yeah. And if we don't, then it may well be that he was like, guys, I've just had this incredible idea. <laughs> Dude. We can use this for anything, like all of their yeah, cavalry is green and bronze. Just, look, Maybe and that's why it looks a bit shit. Maybe that's why. That would yeah, be funny if we got one. a scene where yeah, you talk to Durin, any of them, and just was like, do you guys know about alloys? And they're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just alloys, like, like two metals being like mixed together. Yeah. Good, good, because we oh. do too. We were just making sure that you knew. Yeah. yeah, if it we is two thought, different yeah. metals like mixed together in that way, that would be a retarded way to make it. That's just armor. like just break yeah. instantly. But uh, you're yeah. gonna have to chew that more because it's it's all chunky. You're gonna have to do it more. <laughs> um, it, like, it, it would it would break instantly from just one hit if you like mix the metals that yeah, way. Yeah, I I <laughs> thought it was just like a greenish metal, um, like a green some greenish elf metal, and then it was given the God, I don't know. I don't think about uh, it much. I, um, I think it looks like a fucking unfinished design. It's uh, yeah. Uh, like let's it. see here. Um, that's the uh, Calibrower says no news from Linden. There says news from Linden should arrive any day. What he's wait is he? I guess he's waiting oh. for a letter. He doesn't know is arriving. I need to mention that. Sorry, I, that line is just one of the worst examples of ADR. I just think it's fucking hilarious because he's having a conversation with oh, yeah. uh, his his <laughs> assistant, and they're like, "Hey, what should we do with, with not Sauron? What should we do with Halbrand?" And she's like, "Well, I mean, he's a bit injured. Should we let him in?" And he's like. Nah, we can just let him stay here. He'll he'll leave eventually. He's and not then he walks off, or anything. And then, and then he walks off screen and says, "News should arrive any day now." It's like, what? What does <laughs> that have to do with anything? I don't have and any idea. Know this. <laughs> what message is he expecting from Lyndon? Well, he he says, I don't know if it's News? this episode or the next one. He wants to know if the rings have worked. And but I think it, the the well, answer to that should be obvious. Do you still feel like you're dying? Because, mm -hmm. like, if obviously not, well, so I'm watching they the were, show, right? so yes, <laughs> true, yeah. I just yeah, he, feel he, like I'm dying. <laughs> if what they say is accurate about the the magic of the elves leaving or whatever, then they should absolutely feel it instantly. When, well, uh, that would be something through. they could have shown when they put on the rings. Maybe it cuts yeah. to some elves all around Middle Earth, and they just feel yeah. like like they feel something. They feel yeah. like like you know something. They get that you that see it in make, their eyes, and that would make sense, though. I mean, the reason why they didn't do that. Is because the the way that Sauron begins to takes his little baby steps towards corrupting Celebrimbor is he says, "I know that the rings. I, you, haven't, you haven't heard about the rings." He's like, "Oh my god, did they work?" And then he says, "Yeah, they worked. <laughs> they worked amazingly well." So if he already knew that they worked, then the writers would have to come mm. up with a different way for him to get inside. Oh, they didn't talk to you. Oh, how sad. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't receive any letters. <laughs> it's so horrible, man. <laughs> Oh. So yeah, um, the Elvis messengers are dead. Elvis, what messengers? El Elvis's dead? messengers David. are dead. <laughs> they all, no. Elvis, Elvis the messenger. <laughs> now listen here, Gail Gallad. Where'd my where'd my messengers go? <laughs> <laughs> they had an important message to deliver to Celebrimbor. Born. I need to know if they're okay. <laughs> I guess I do an Elvis impression this stream. Um, Hal Brand. Uh, is shown right after the scene of the messengers being dragged away, which kind of, like, through the language of visual filmmaking, implies that he could be responsible. But here I am, thinking, that's not fucking possible, so I won't entertain it. But, yeah. okay, I guess we'll yeah. get to that when we get to that. Because... Well, my, spe my speculation is, well, which apparently is wrong from what I've learned today, it was like, but oh, I... Sense. So, so, somehow he found he noticed that these orcs are following him so he does like dark magic speech and make made them kill the people that might follow him if he finds one or which would be more in line with the rings of power these the squad just stumbled upon these people that followed sauron and then they killed them that that was so, my speculation uh Part, yeah. I was thinking it was just random bandits, but like if we're saying that Sauron did this, then that's just completely insane. Because 
again, going back to any semblance of, if we're trying to make any semblance of a timeline out of this, by the time the letter is, is has left Linden, uh, Sauron um, will probably be arriving in Mordor for the first time. It is yeah. this simple, okay? For now. We don't need to go any further than this. There are three ways from Linden to Eregion, and one's real good and real fast, one's pretty okay, one's super long. Now, when they need Which to go is there... bullshit, but... Yes, yeah, very bullshit. <laughs> now, when they need to go there, they discover <laughs> the super good fast way is completely out. There's no way they can do that one. The long way is open, but the shorter way is also open, but shorter way there's 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 creatures that are there now that haven't ever really been there and it's because sauron put them there because he knew that that's the path mm -hmm. people would take it's Except the only way there. they've been there for thousands of years that doesn't Wait. take a fucking age <laughs> so he didn't so he didn't specifically get them to intercept the letter he just hoped that they would yes he just yes this is what i mean yeah. about it. it's so we, oh. we, we probably can't get into it now <laughs> okay. it's, it's oh. so dumb that's that you is know, awful. Th there's there's no other possible way they could have gone except you know for fucking endless miles oh, to the, the north or whatever. <laughs> three ways, <laughs> sure, baby. three sure. ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how it works. Yeah. This is breaking my brain because I know that they wouldn't know this at the time, but had they gone the long way, they would have still got there before Sauron. <laughs> oh well. Uh... <laughs> anyway, over in Dune. Uh... Yay. <laughs> No. <laughs> and the and the, you're out in the desert, there's a horseman. Oh, one thing I noticed is that if you look at the horseman, you see the silhouette and they got the flag. And then in this scene here, they don't have the flag. And then the flag reappears right here. <laughs> so that's <laughs> fun. We're having that's happening. Mm. That's fun. Um maybe it was getting annoying and they took it off or something. I'm not sure. It's just, you know, we're just doing what we can. Uh, oh my god, it's Skeletor. Oh my goodness. He goes into this big stone temple. And I guess this is where all the all the mystics hang out. From season one, you remember the the, the three white-clad mystic ladies? Yeah. Who are trying to find the Istar who they thought was Sauron? Yeah. Well, this is their this is a place that some of that's, them are. I don't know if it's that's their, their goon cave. Or, yeah, this Ooh. is their goon cave. <laughs> <laughs> this is the goon oh. cave. Yeah. Um where now the king beyond the wall lives, apparently. There is a there's a bearded guy here who seems to be the leader. We're gonna call him mm. Rasputin. I like that. I like Rasputin. Oh, that's good. That's that good. random <laughs> set. I like it. Um, so uh, there's they do this ritual where they bring in these jars of moths, <laughs> and one of them gets sure. cut because they need some blood. And of course, you gotta cut if you, if if ever there's a ritual, a blood ritual, and you need blood, you Don't have to get there. cut in the palms of your hands. Right. Yep. That's just where you have to get cut. Or I assume any old blood will do. If it's, it's all coming from if the it's same place. A rule from the ritual, then fair enough. But whenever they yeah. make it explicit, they just need blood, and they do that. It pisses me off. The, yeah, I there's don't. A there's a really funny. Ugh. There's a really funny part. Of it. I assume like it's a blood sacrifice, and you need a certain amount of it. But when she walks away, a, a huge part of it gets like cut up with a with a robe, and it just you know gets removed from the from the from the area. Well, uh, so yeah, we got way. we got blood, mm. we got moths, we got crazy witches, we got Rasputin, we got Dune. It's we looking got pretty M &M. good. Looking pretty good. Plus, no Harfoots in sight. However, uh, we, we see all of the moths kind of convulse and form into a shape, and the shape <gasps> takes the form of um, what I, I can only call her, uh, based on Random's videos, Feminem. Um, <laughs> Feminem is good too. Oh my goodness, she's back, <clears throat> back again. Guess who's back. back? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, he asks, "What news from the White Wings?" Um, and Feminim says that Sauron's shadow is deepening and that he has taken a new form to deceive his enemies. Uh, so I guess she has she, learned she, about Sauron somehow. She okay. she does know all these things apparently. Yeah, Why? I thought she I got know. vaporized, but well, yeah. okay, wait, 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 not wait, that wait. before. So, I thought he brought it back to life in this very scene, or is he? No, he brought it back to life, a, and then a, she ran off. To here. So she yes, ran off I, to do some spying as a moth. 
Yeah, so when when they get vaporized, all three of them in the end of season one, it, they all kind of turn into moths. It's right. a little bit weird. So does same with the staff that he uses to vaporize them, which is why he doesn't have it in season two. Um, but then if he if Rasputin has just resurrected her and immediately said, "Hey, what have you learned?" That wouldn't make any sense. Right. So he must have previously resurrected her, and mm -hmm. this ritual that he just did, as far as I can tell, is maybe like a summoning spell, or he's teleported her, or something. So right. yes, he did resurrect her, but I don't think that's what this was. <laughs> what if she was pooping? And then... I had the same exact thought just now. The exact. I always thought. ask these. It's like, what if they were pooping? People do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, do you mind? Come on, man. <laughs> he also says, he also says, I hear whispers from salt scavengers and Mooma kill thieves. Just what? stealing um, a little Moomakil over there. Oh, he's that. stealing Moomakil. What, what right. the fuck? Rasputin. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> well, you wouldn't steal a car. Uh, so Rasputin <laughs> asks about the Istar, and uh, he mentions he's heard uh, yeah rumors from salt scavengers and Mumakil thieves, which, as I believe, I've been told that in the lore, um, Mumakil are from uh, Haradrim. They're not yes. from Rune, but yeah. you know what? Well, you they get around. Okay. They get around. I mean, horses wandering Mumakil. It's everywhere. America, it's, it's but we more got like them. That they're not fucking really. huge, and so I don't know how you would steal one. <laughs> yeah, how the fuck oh, do you steal come one? On. <laughs> you got. It's a heist. You got. It's like a. It's a big heist. You yeah. got to get is it actually, God and... What is it actually like? Mumakil going around, going around robbing people. You know, like. <laughs> See, oh, I, I didn't even yeah. consider that it was people like carjacking Mumakil. I figured that it was a group of raiders on a Mumakil that went around robbing other people. Nah, they stealing them things. A really secretive escape vehicle for Mumakil. No, like it's, the, it's the actual Moomakill stealing things from people. Um, oh, that's amazing. Like, there was a pretty cool <laughs> that Rags got referenced in here as well. He said uh, whispers of an oh, old, yeah. old man in Rags. I don't know what that means exactly. <laughs> it was in you? Listen, there was... You listen. to explain yourself, Rags? I don't... First off, I ain't gotta explain shit. Whoa. Also, okay, no need to that be didn't hostile. happen. Jesus. Especially not, not Gandalf. <laughs> All right? You've had no old men in you? I've had no man, old men in Rags. Around me. Right. No old men in rags around me. Okay. I'm glad we cleared that up. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we did too. There's no misunderstanding here. <laughs> uh, on the subject of things not cleared up, so I, I'm very confused still by the 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 real slim lady. Like, it, it, does she spend all of her time? <laughs> the real slim lady. Yeah. <laughs> does she spend all of her time living as moths? And I that's how she got these rumors. You know that's the impression like a... I got. Don't you? Well, yeah. So, so don't you but... live as moths? Because he says, uh, Rasputin says, what news from the White Wings, which either refers to Feminem and the other two that didn't come back for some reason, because I guess they weren't good enough. Or it refers to that. the sort of, uh, what is it, like Legion-like entity that forms Feminem, which is comprised of multiple moths that went out spying. <laughs> we are Legion! We but are then if that is what they do, then how did they ever friends. make the mistake in season one of thinking that Steve, not Gandalf, was Gandalf? Because they didn't, they, they went and found him and they assumed he was Sauron, but if they lived well, all their time as moths well, gathering rumors, they wouldn't have made that mistake. So, whatever they thought, I guess they've been looking for Sauron to return for a while, and there is something about, I, I guess it was within the realm of possibility that after Sauron dies and explodes or whatever, one of the methods of his return is via Meteor. Because that's specifically <laughs> where they go to. The meteor yeah. hits, and they go to the meteor, thinking that, oh, this is probably where Sauron is, because obviously there's no <laughs> one in the meteor yet, they've long gone, but they go and pursue whoever this person is, because they're thinking, yeah, this, don't they say, this could have been the space kinder egg with our boy in it. When they realize, don't they say, oh, he is the other, or something like that? Yeah, so in episode yeah. 8 of season 1, they say, oh no, he is the other, he is the Istar, and Rasputin in this episode episode two uh he is aware of both sauron and the istar so they all the whole organization collectively knows about both entities but they were looking for sauron not gandalf and they just didn't consider that maybe they were wrong until the very end but they still really want to find the istar mm -hmm. so they would want him they'd want him either way i think they want to find him now um and my guess for where they're going me? with that well, yeah, so my guess for where they're going with that is that originally, had they been right and had they found Sauron, then they don't give two shits about not Gandalf, because his mind is veiled and he's going to be a simpleton for the rest of his days. Yeah. Uh, but what, what they did by being wrong is they started to lift the veil on the wrong guy, who's now going to become like a fully-fledged wizard, 
and they have to now deal with that problem and I guess find Sauron. I, it's not clear at all what they want to do with Sauron, uh, but they're clearly looking for it. That makes them much stupider in retrospect, then, because yeah. <laughs> yes, if yeah, the, absolutely. It does, yeah. If the risk what? was we could accidentally create a fucking good guy that would be really powerful, or we could awaken oh, our it. master, let's just flip a coin. It's like, well, no, <laughs> we should probably find the other one first, see what our options look like. This fucker is like, we who knows? Uh, whatever. It's, yeah, we we don't know at all. Like specifics because we don't it, it this is so vague at the moment it's one giant fucking mystery box so oh, it's yeah. all speculation at this point but when if if we get any kind of payoff that's anything like what i just said then yeah they are they are morons and he specifies in this scene that those three mystics were the best of the best they were his best acolytes yeah that's most kind of embarrassing most, yeah he they says got, they were like my most skilled acolytes yeah. they got they got beat up by a couple of harfoots and they a barely, did and a, yeah. and a, and a and weird guy that can't talk they make a point of that in in the episode remember when one of them gets hit in the head with like a, a stone like like the point of the episode being oh. like you guys are getting fucked up by little midgets like <laughs> you, need, you know you're not that intimidating <laughs> Yeah. Uh, they're even incompetent in this scene because like the, the leprosy knights come in and like the, their whole claim to being <laughs> more competent knights. is that they just well that's that's the reason they're here they have a skin condition yep. that they want yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. this is the, this is an age before vaseline all right they might just look grim they might be <laughs> yeah, fine like, so they show up and skeletal says they're just really ugly skeletal says yeah i'll capture him for you my evil plan is that i'm going to like threaten to kill the harfoots and then yeah. he'll have to surrender, which like, okay, yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. But not only did the mystics not try that in season one, but <laughs> Skeletor, Skeletor is also confident that the mystics didn't try that in season one. Because yep. he presents this as like I... some new idea that they haven't Maybe... tried before. But, but they, they, uh... already, that their claim to being more competent is that you like, well, what did you do that my most powerful acolytes didn't? I don't know, basic tracking. That's a start. <laughs> I mean, you know, great. Not, not nobody wrong. thought to track them before. Well, they're not really good at that either. So. But their plan <laughs> to attack, so to speak, is so crap. Like, yeah. like mm -hmm. beyond Very so dumb. crap. I'm gonna it's threaten the, him. Um... It's not anything. It's like, have you tried arrows? You're like, yeah, I guess yeah. you could try that. <laughs> Wait, did, did, did you guys say the 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 acolyte people didn't try that? Because I feel like they did. They turned well, into the guy even, and then. Also, like a, a large part of why they failed, I know it was complete bullshit and that the oh, yeah, mystics yeah. are terrible, but a large part of why they failed was because uh, the, the Harfords right? had some advantages. And, well, so the... Oh, I'm trying to remember, where did the staff come from? Did he take it from one of them? It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's during one lady. Yeah. Yeah, it's he during fucking it with them, one of them goes reason. and grabs it, and then he gets it. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It is that so, simple. They should have just said, like, yeah, we. it was embarrassing, kind of. We lost the staff, he got it, yeah. and he it, fucked yeah. us up. Yeah, well, we'll take like, the L. We'll take a big L on that. Yeah, this know? time we're it, gonna get him because, yeah. well, it, it, truly, it's a we can only kill him if the plot lets us. We can't actually like, <laughs> do it otherwise. Can you just send yeah. us over and over again until we allow yeah. to win? You, well, no, like, send us in that. the finale of every season. That's the only time we might be able to beat him. <laughs> exactly. He'll never be in the but middle like of the they, season. If, <laughs> clearly, they, they can't up, die. Might as well just send them every time. If they showed up here, like right now, and they they came out into the desert to track, um, not Gandalf and the two Harfords, they win. Period. They can't hide. They don't have yeah. like what two other people with them. Yeah. And he doesn't have a fucking stick. And that, yeah, we'll get to <laughs> well, that later. Unless, I guess you know <laughs> things mm. happen. <laughs> That's yeah, really so bad. I know. <laughs> that that is yeah. the worst scene in Rings of Power in my mind. Oh, we will. Oh get my there. God. I'm good. Um, uh, Dark Wizard, Evil Man. Woohoo. Okay. <laughs> People are speculating I, I on guess... whether or not he's Saruman, by the way. What do you reckon, folks? Probably. I... Fuck it, why not? Why um, not? <laughs> I'm guessing no, actually. I think he's I don't just think so, but... Dark Wizard. I don't think anything surprises me at this point, but I wouldn't count on it. I would not bet that he is. But if he turns I out think to he be, might just I'm be like, for the season, and that's it. Oh yeah. Oh, maybe. they're gonna kill him at the end or something. Yeah, it could, it could be yeah, a, a, like a, a, a rite of passage almost for Gandalf to overcome the dark yeah. wizard of the land or whatever. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was suggested, and I was like, eh, it could be that like they have a battle. The there's, thing... an, there's an attempt to do something with Gandalf's mind, and he like reverses it back on this guy, and this guy. Gets veiled of his evil, and then the, so the almost like the show 
wants to write its own profile for why Saruman is a good guy and turned bad guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I was like, ooh, One that thing sounds just like... like the kind of thing Rings of Power would do. Yeah, mm. exactly. I can absolutely see them having that fucking mindset. Because the one scary. thing that makes me want to believe that he uh, that he is the Saruman, they in the subtitles they just call him Dark Wizard. Normally, yeah. it's like just a normal character. They just give them a, the name immediately, even though they haven't said it yet. Well, so like, maybe so on the, from the meta knowledge, I could believe they. Well, would not go further for on that. from what I just said, is like, could you totally see like in season fucking three or four if they push it that far, and then then Gandalf is like, I believe you and I will be. Old good friends, and they'd be like, "No, yeah, oh my god!" Oh. They... And like the the spell whitens the whole beard instead of it having black in it. It's just like, "Oh, right. it's fully white now." Uh -huh. Yes, Saruman. I hate it. I kind of want to see yeah. it. And then uh, he's like, "You know, we have to change your. You can't be calling you Dark Wizard. What is your name?" And then he's like, "Oh, well, I used to be known by a different name." And then the camera zooms right in on him. And he says, oh. "He looks Lee. into the camera." Christopher <laughs> Lee. <laughs> I used to be Dracula. Oh, and that's have you so seen a, it's not... another alternative is like blue wizards. Those are the only other one of the other people it could yeah. be is a blue wizard. The blue wizards they, they, they haven't really been very like, well established. Chop his legs. Off. Could, yeah. I mean, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Does Am Amazon has the rights to? Because the blue wizards have names. Yes, in in the law. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because I know that the <laughs> the Warner Brothers properties, the Peter Jackson stuff, they were contractually not allowed to name them. Which is why they're only referenced in passing in the Hobbit movies. They just say, "Oh, there's a couple of blue ones." Um, does that mean? Because theoretically, that would mean that Amazon does have the rights to use those characters. Because one of the uh, stipulations was that there can be no overlap, pretty much. So anything that uh, was created, I guess, for the Peter Jackson films can't exist in Rings of Power, including the music. So, I guess, would that mean that theoretically he could be one of the blue wizards taken directly from the lore? I'm, if I'm not sure. If they were sure. in the appendices to the Lord of the Rings, because they have the full rights to use that, I think yes, and I, I think they're mentioned in there. Um, but, and it would be an, an earlier version, because the, the idea of the blue wizards kind of evolved over time, but the, the strictly speaking yeah. canonical form, which is the only one that's actually committed to extended fiction and appendices, is the idea that they went east and were corrupted in various different ways and ended up aiding Sauron, much as Saruman did later. And they did arrive earlier, they did arrive in the Second Age, and he's already in place, which would add up. Tolkien tried to change his mind a little bit later and have them actually be good guys who were very important, but just completely off screen. But that never made it into any of the stories, as far as I'm aware. So I think they could use them, but it would be a very anticlimactic if, if the scene was Oh, and my name is dude you've never fucking heard of before, as opposed to I think my even, name is actually Saruman. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I don't even think they'd be that interested in being like I'm. You know, I've always loved the color blue. I'm kind of I have a brother who's blue as well. We're the blue wizards. <laughs> like, you'd be like, yeah. Yeah. but compared I have a blue house compared to him being window. able to say like well, I will go by my ancient name Saruma. He'd be like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, you say that where, like, as if you're going to have like a conversation where they're like, hmm, what color should we wear? Should we wear blue? I like blue. As if that exact fucking thing doesn't happen in episode three. Oh. No, but like, I'm not saying that's something they wouldn't do in terms of the actual dialogue. I'm saying that they they probably, they're more cynical, right? They're like, do people even know the blue wizards? They're like, we've got to do True, Saruman, because yeah. everyone knows Saruman. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. Like, at the, at the point of using the blue wizard, you may as well just make up another one. Yeah, like... like we know the Blue Wizards as a reference, but I'm not even sure the general public really know it, remember any the references Blue to the Blue Wizards. Wizards. Yeah. yeah, but then again, I, I mean, this show is do. doing, like, its attempt to get closer to lore is just name-dropping stuff with no <laughs> yeah. setup in-universe. <laughs> so I wouldn't put it beyond it. Like, the, the, at some point in a later episode, uh, Adar calls Galadriel by the like, uh, uh, other name, which is only referencing I mean, like a, a very old part of the Silmarillion. It's like, only people who will think... Oh my goodness, they're, they're referencing Tolkien. This is such Tolkien. Look, they have well, Entwives yeah. now. Isn't that brilliant? Eat fire, bro. Oh yeah, it's not that they wouldn't have Tolkien. zero references, but I just think that this opportunity, because I even think it's more likely the more we go on, too. Like, maybe they've left it as a 50-50 or what they're going to make the Dark Wizard, but the, the show's ratings are going to plummet, and so eventually they're like, yeah. I could just they see someone have. saying, they already make, have, yeah. <laughs> make the Dark Wizard Saruman. People will talk about that. Make him Saruman. Just do they it. They like mm -hmm. Saruman more. Yeah, yeah. We need a game spent on Twitter. Make him Saruman. Ugh. God, my... The amount of code <laughs> I've seen on Twitter is insane. Mm. Anyway, move on. <laughs> I'm many people uh, so I haven't seen much. Okay. Uh, back in the wilderness, Nori and Poppy are trying to decide on a name for not Gandalf. Uh, 
Um, we, can, we can blast by this pretty quick. It's fucking weird that they're just now having a discussion on what Torture. should we call you, or should or should I just call you Hey You until forever? Um, he tells them nobody can give you a name. It is yours already. Uh, I so can any name wrong. I want. Fuck you, Steve. <laughs> wrong. I'm pretty Which sure people just name people. Yeah, I guess he born. assumes everyone falls from meteors from the gods like him. Yeah. But he does know that mm -hmm. Nori has parents and a family. Um, yeah. So he should know that this isn't how it works. People get their names from others, and also there's yes. just the practical element of okay, but like, what do we call you if I want to get your attention? Mm -hmm. I think the better vision of this is what is done in other stories. The whole like you don't name yourself. People who love you end up naming you in this world, and I'd like that myself. And then yeah, you can have Nori be yeah. like, "Why? Well, I, I don't know what to name you. That's a big responsibility." Like, and then she could talk about how her parents named her, and then she can mention a couple of suggestions, and he can be like, "Oh," and then she can be like, "No, those don't work." You can make it much more meaningful and interesting. Yeah, but they did what they did because they rings yeah, of power, and that's what they do. Especially if he's. Especially he, if he ends up adopting the name that they give to him and he likes it and yeah. maybe he doesn't, like, he's not warm to it at first and he, he really wants to go by his, I guess, in, in, internal name or whatever, um, but then he ends up going by it. Or maybe he, maybe later we get a scene where someone asks him what his name is and he says, I'm the name that she called me. So, well, so just, is just to be clear, in... you can name yourself and Gandalf has a bazillion names, but what, generally speaking, you don't name yourself. Yes. Yeah, my parents. Also, I, I, th I think he, he he probably realized also it's like oh pr I probably have a name I just can't remember it yet because he, he seems to realize he's starting to remember other things so he yeah. yeah probably gonna be like gone, oh I do have a name that, I just don't that know would have it made, yet made sense yeah but yeah. he seemed the way he phrases it seems to suggest that he thinks it's normal that you just get your name when you find it <laughs> just... when you fall from the sky in your meteor. <laughs> But yeah, also, well, it would be great if you had a if you had a reveal down the road where she asks, "Hey, have you remembered your name yet?" And he said, "Oh yeah, I remembered it a long time ago." But I didn't even <laughs> mention it, and he's just chosen mm -hmm. to go by the name that they gave him as like a little mm -hmm. sweet reveal. But uh, I'm probably not going to do that. It doesn't I... Gandalf has like loads and loads and loads of names in the law? So it's particularly weird for him to say that no one can give you a name. There is actually a passage, I can't remember if it's in The Hobbit, I've got a vague memory it's in The Hobbit near the beginning, when he introduces himself and he's asked what he's called, and he actually says, in the west they call me this, in the north they call me this, in the south they call me this, you can call me Gandalf, something along those lines. Um, so yeah, he's, he's quite used by that point to people giving him names. <laughs> well, no. Yep. He chose well, all no. those names Fuck in all you. those places. Yeah. But those names <laughs> suck. <laughs> I also saw some agree. other people pointing this out, but uh, Nori mentions he's looking for a Gand. Oh, God damn it! yeah. Uh, yes, we will, we, yeah, so we've got, um, uh. Poppy says they can take a shortcut through the, the like, the desert desert, um, which they want to take, but they decide they can't because, as many of you probably know, in a desert, there's uh, not a lot of food or water, so they say, well, we can't do that, mm, so they go back and set up camp. Good to know. I hope we can use this desert for a payoff uh, in another episode. That would be great. Probably not. That would be, that would be, I don't think so. Though. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> um, now back at camp, Poppy asks if not Gandalf can conjure water with his magic. Uh, but Valid question. But without a Gand, yeah. while like a staff, mm -hmm. he's afraid of losing control. Um, however, every time he's tried to do it in the past, it has worked out. Uh, and also, dying of dehydration will absolutely kill you. But uh, <laughs> yeah, magic side effects seem to be harmless to minor inconveniences. Yeah, you fall over, maybe a tree explodes, but you know, otherwise, yeah. pretty fun. Worst case, yeah. you get some more bugs to eat. But you have to drink water or you will die. So, yeah. Um, yeah anyway. The retarded child might get hit by a branch, so we can't do it. So, um,. Gand. Do right, yeah. you think they're setting up that this is Gandalf by saying he nah. needs a he needs a staff which is called a Gand? I don't was know. It? <laughs> we, you know didn't, didn't we look up what Alf means? And it was Alf. Alf in... means you you, it, you looked uh, up like the old. It was Nordic old Norse. Or, yeah, yeah, the old Norse uh, version of uh, uh, translation of uh, the word Alf is uh, elf or fairy, which means that he's stick yes. elf, stick fairy, or stick fairy, stick fairy. <laughs> 
Stick Fairy. Yes, he, um... will be, he will be called Stick Fairy very soon. <laughs> there's if there's I a feel bit like more it. in, I think it's episode three or four, I can't remember, that would uh, push us further to the potential of naming him. I think that's actually going to be a season payoff, which is so sad. It Probably. Is. It'll be at the end of season two. My, I am Gandalf. And I am good. I'm yeah. Gandalf the good. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up, he, grow, yeah. he grows a hat. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, they hear horses coming. Yeah. And then, and oh my goodness, the trackers, they're upon us. They're, they're coming. I can hear the horses. Uh, and so the two Harfoots hide with 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 a somewhat amusing edit. Uh, I won't lie. Yeah, he turns around and they're just like gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! They're they're so used to hiding as Harfoots and everything. Uh, funny, I guess, but it's kind of fucked up that they don't say anything to him and they're just like, That's yeah, true, this guy's yeah. left to his own. Um, it would be funny if they had uh, constructed the scene in such a way where maybe Poppy or whatever sticks out her head and says, "Go go go there over behind that rock" or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Or even they could do something where he turns around, they're nowhere to be seen, and we just get his face as we hear their voice tell him to go behind the rock. And he's still like clearly looking for where the sound is coming from, like he can't even tell, but then he skitters off. But oh well, but it kind of makes it look like they left him to his own devices, which is, you know, in character for Harfoots, I guess. <laughs> Nobody so, gets um, behind, huh? All the spooky trackers show up. They get off their horses and they look around and they cannot yeah. find uh, yeah, the hard tracking for the guy. And they they yeah. throw or Gandalf or Gandalf. Yeah, they they yeah. throw a they throw a <laughs> knife I and like a, a snake. I like it's the shot where the bush, guys, it's totally invisible. <laughs> I, I like the shot where the one guy looks directly at their weird tarp that looks very obviously mm. not like a rock, and there's like yes. no, it's nothing there. Yeah, I'm but we don't him. see it from his perspective like they did in the Lord of the Rings, which makes it kind of neat. No, mm. uh, this is just like oh. this is. <laughs> <laughs> saying, this was neat. I was like, the fuck no, are you talking no. about? <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't about to, was about to get angry. <laughs> no, no, no. No, the war gets beautiful, though. Uh, but yeah, we, we're just sort of led to assume that I guess they did a really good job of hiding. Trust us. And I guess it works out because even though all of these trackers had a reason to come to this location, get off their horses and look around and no doubt there's footprints and stuff. They mm. just can't find him, so they say, oh, I guess we're leaving. Let's go, guys. Yeah. I think they do it, foolishly it, do show us what it looks like. Yeah, there's, there's one frame where you see the, the tarp. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Which is so yeah, obviously not, not natural. <laughs> I didn't even see that one. I, I, so, okay. yeah, if we can be clear, this is a very bad ripoff of a very much better scene yeah. <laughs> like it's very it, much better scene yeah. it, it bugs me to no end it's like they've comboed as well some of the bits and bobs of uh obviously in fellowship and in two towers they're, they're grabbing up the big old tension of because they're right he's right above and then uh to to look directly at them and you're like oh god and it's like oh they didn't fucking mm -hmm. did they forget they have elven magic is protecting them in two towers this is just <laughs> two idiots with fucking this is a, a portable magic. bush not only that, you're against you're possibly against the worst person ever to try and trick. These people like know how to track in this area particularly. You're just fucking oh, Harfoots. Yeah. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. They also this they is also so know exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, and this is this is one of the most sus things. It wouldn't require a particularly smart experienced tracker. If we were here, we'd be like, you know, that doesn't match anything here. <laughs> whatever that is i mean i think i think even the bigger problem is how the how the fuck did it not spot gandalf he's just like behind some bush somewhere well, and, yeah, and, well they didn't really and, look that hard that's the point that's and then if you part. push they to their actual like, look expert like, tracking no, well. shit they should be able to track that they must be here yeah, because oh, yeah. they put the, the well, they had a reason to get off their horses yeah, and come here. This would be the end. This is the yeah, end. Yeah, if you can't trial, see them, it's because they're actually hiding here, fuckers. And I thought that was the whole exactly. fucking point. That's why they're looking around. It's like, well, then keep looking. You haven't found them yet. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. You're only here for like a minute. Don't you think it might be worthwhile to be a little bit more exhaustive? Oh, shit. Nah. Nope. Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not um, hard to make this work, but they didn't. So once the yeah. trackers leave, they pop out and start talking, the uh, the, the Harfits and the the, the trio. Yeah, so much I, I would have waited a while. Yeah, but I <laughs> nah. guess they they're in a big hurry. Nah, it's safe now. It's fine. Oh, uh, they keep forgetting about all the tracking that's happening to them. So don't, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Now, not Gandalf says that they have to leave this trail. 
Just <gasps> quit. Because what? I guess they think that the trackers are tracking the trail and not the people who tracking are using you. the trail. <laughs> the yeah. Tracking you. <laughs> so leaving the trail <laughs> might make things harder or easier it, 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 i don't i don't even, to even me it exactly looks like know, it'll make it makes things easier because they're going into open fields of sand yeah. leaving yeah, footprints they're going to the desert when they can see us for miles and more easily track us yes this is it's gonna yeah be they yeah. decided to go out into the desert i love the idea of just let's let's go and stand in the desert where all they need to do is just turn around and be like hey wait a minute there they are like yeah. and they're on well, horses I mean, it's not even like they can hide should we even yeah. address the fact that it's like oh that the, we'll die it's like eh. That too, yeah. Uh, yeah, but fine. the trackers will have a harder time tracking us. They'll have a harder time yeah, tracking our we'll bleached too. bones. We'll be fine. <laughs> oh, that show sucks in the it best does. way. But, <laughs> but, luckily, we're back at Casa Doom. Yay! So, Yay. we see a couple. Uh, we see a couple dwarves. Talking about rumors of bad omens across all the dwarven realms. <gasps> and it's mentioned that maybe the mountain has become cursed because Durin let in an elf. Yeah, so true. We system. get the idea I that letting elves. an elf into your home <laughs> is just bad. It's a bad omen. It's bad juju. Mm -hmm. It it does something to the it's a curse. It's bad magic. It's something. Which is um nothing that was ever mentioned in season one. Uh yeah, it also mm -hmm. means that. Durin's friendship with Elrond in whatever form it took was some kind of transgression of a cultural norm, which was never even hinted at as being the case. No. And yeah, also this uh, this the fact that this rumor has spread and has any kind of weight behind it suggests that it is kind of normal for the dwarves to not like and not trust the elves, which like that that fits in with the behavior of the king in season one. It doesn't at all fit in with the behavior of Durin and Deesa in season one. They like mm. Elrond, yeah. Yeah. When he first arrived, though, they're not that friendly. Or uh, Elrond is, and this guy is very friendly, but... Uh... Sure, but that's because of a specific reason. It's because Elrond yes. forgot what year it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh. We've all been there. <laughs> yeah. And the, dwarves, um, as the other dwarves aren't really, like, hostile to him, but uh, they're antagonistic, yeah. I guess. Like, no they don't one really mentions... Like him in the... What? Well, you'd think that if it's going to curse the mountain, people would be like, yo, yes. don't bring him in here. He can't come in mm -hmm. here. No, no, no. Be friends with him outside. <laughs> but I guess that just was never something worthy of mentioning in season one. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and also, uh, he got in by invoking the right of Segan Tarag. So, yeah. he, so, like, he just is like, yeah, no, I, so that's kind of weird that an elf can get to come in because he invokes that one of their own traditions. And they're just like, well, I mean, we got to eat up the curse, yeah. I guess. He, he knew the, the words, I, I guess. He said the words, <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, they're like, don't tell any other fucking elves about this, okay? And he's like, I won't. <laughs> and, um... Well, no, hold on, Keller Brimble knows about it. Maybe that's going to pop up later. <laughs> he's going to break some fucking stones as Dude, well. That's one of well, my favorite gonna... things. He, he pulls out a little tiny hammer, a little tiny craftsman hammer, and <laughs> dinks on the boulder, and it just snaps in half. Yeah. One of my favorite things in Rings of Power Season 1, I think it's Episode 2, where they go to uh, Azadum, and it looks like they teleported instantly from yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Eregion. <laughs> and then when they try to go in, and it, you know they're, they're repelled, it's like, um, I'll figure this out. And the Kelbribble's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll just go. Yeah. Bye. I'll, I'll just go back then. Yeah. <laughs> he just wanders off in the exact same outfit and demeanor and mm -hmm. preference in every way, shape, and form you can imagine. Exactly the same as he was, and then he just teleports back, knowing how yeah. long it takes to get to these places. God, the show is like it's so bold of yeah. you to just tr tell me that that's the case. The joy yeah, of like, Region and Casadum aren't that far apart, but it would probably take like a full day to get there at least. I figure it takes about a day, and and yeah, they yeah. also they also went one step further, and they had Durin, sorry, Elrond, talk about salted pork and like, oh, of course they get, he, I oh, might yeah. get him to let you into his workshop kind of thing. He was really like, oh, Kellebrimbo is gonna have a really good time. It's like, no, bye, mm -hmm. no. I hate the show. Yo, you were supposed to set me up with the dwarves, dude. <laughs> you were really fun, man. We're gonna play um, Burnout Out Revenge. On the PS2. We're gonna play um, Rock Band. 
I oh, uh, well, you missed yeah. you missed the metaphor, the songbird metaphor. Oh, I haven't. It's 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 right here. It's up next. We're not done. Oh, we're not oh. done. Oh, I was I was done. looking on the screen. Oh. I thought you'd missed it. Um, <laughs> so uh, these two chicks are chatting their little rumory rumors, you know, as they do, and they stumble into Deza, and she's like, "How oh, rumors are like songbirds may sound filling from afar, but up close, it's an empty feast." I mean, um, it's not even discuss. true, really. It's it's bullshit because why does the a songbird is going to sound exactly the same when it's far away as when it's up close? Not and, true, but carry on. Well, okay, it's going to sound it's not going to sound worse. It's not going to sound like a sickly little pigeon or something. If it's um, in your ear, it's probably not going to. It'll sound be louder, louder, but you're saying it won't be it won't be anything different in terms of like what you're getting from it. <laughs> yeah, it won't be like bad. Yeah, it's not like it's a meaningfully different. Well, and, like, and neither will a rumor. Like, is is her point that a rumor is only interesting and stuff when it's distant from you? When you get into it and figure it out, it's not interesting anymore. It's like that's not true. It's like oh, the sound of the songbird sounds good from afar, but it's a you can't eat much. Uh, it, it, there's hardly any meat on those bones, which is funny coming from Diza. But she, I, I guess we're trying to, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's one a of those weird metaphor rings of power. That hurts to yeah. listen to. The quality of the songbird's song has nothing to do with how edible it is. <laughs> <laughs> True. That's a better analogy right there. The quality of a songbird's song has nothing to do with how edible it is. <laughs> Confucius of Someone should uh, do like a stream where they rank <laughs> all of these fucking things from Rings of Power. Once the series oh, over. that's such a good idea. Let's that do such it. A good yeah. idea. Um, so you've got, I, I wrote down all the ones movie. from season one, and you've, you've, you've easily got ten from season one. You're probably going to get ten more from season two. Once the yeah, five we gotta, seasons we are out, we got fifty list. to rank. Yeah. We gotta have we have gravy tier at the top. There's <laughs> <laughs> table oh, salt like tier. Yeah, table salt. <laughs> Um, let's see. So, okay, so Diza and these two gals, they go to King Durin, and there's a dwarf there named Narvi, who's explaining that a new fire mountain far to the south has awoke, and it shook the bones of the earth, and it made oh. this earthquake. And it's implied that the old paths cannot be remained open because it's, uh, it's just too dangerous. They can't find a safe way through. So, Diza asks the king for permission. He says, we'll find the light. And that doesn't, ex doesn't mention anything about what that will entail, but the king instantly gives her approval for this. Which, uh... I don't understand how this works mechanically. Yeah, no idea. I don't know, yeah, I don't know what it means when she says, we'll, we'll find Which the light. I am somewhat willing to buy that through, like, resonance in stone, she can kind of detect where certain ores might end up being, so they have different, you know feelings and stuff to him it's like eh, somewhat but we will sing to find the light well no we just need to puncture a hole in the fucking wall yeah. that's that's mm -hmm. how we did it last I, time that, oh I, I figured that's the what way she to the light rather than the light that's itself. What, you know? yeah she knows where the light is she's going to use her voice which i mean what we see it's flat out magic like there's no debate about that anymore yeah. i don't think but she's going to use her magical voice power to punch a hole in the wall and what? quote unquote find the light. That that it's, is what that sounds, I think that means. It just sounds way more dangerous than finding. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and, I and, of, and of course, you, you understand. Safe, everyone here understands why I'm even saying be. that. Is the show proves that that is way more dangerous as a as a way. Yes. Of, yeah. And King yep. Durin in season one is characterized very much as being overly cautious. He doesn't want to help the elves because he's not willing to risk dwarven lives. And he immediately says, "Yeah, okay, go poke a hole in our ceiling." That's crazy. And, yeah, but, and given but what's happening, like. They also mentioned they want to find a safe, like a safe place to dig for, you know, getting to the light. Like yeah, okay. I, I so, thought that was the the thing they were looking for. Like, so if they, I were the king, find... and I was feeling particularly crazy, I might be like, "Hey guys, <laughs> maybe start moving the rubble out from our main power source, the light source." No, no, no. And uh, no. You know, be careful. Take the small ones first from the top, and just get some stuff out <laughs> of the way. And then if anything sounds or feels out, you know, get back up. Have some people there to test integrity and strength but what we're mainly looking for here is to just open up the holes where the light was coming in that's all we want to do just try and do that fucking madness i yeah, know no, they said that's not possible so <laughs> shut up i disagree <laughs> no the show said right there in the script it's just mm -hmm. dangerous just just well, on an emergency basis open your front door and then have a mirror yep. going from the front door that will give you at least a base level of light you can work with for your farm yeah, for since have you found safe ways to go up as long as they can get out still, which they, they can. can. But they can. So, yeah. Yeah. They which can. means that there is a way out, which means they we, can just put we know they can, yeah. in there. 
Which would also imply that the integrity of that front door where we see seeing all the magic and uh, magic, all the mirrors uh, go into, that should just that integrity is still there, so we should probably open that up at least and then make no, it. No, no, that there. that door is fucked. We used another door. Oh. Yeah. I just yeah, this I don't know. This yeah, doesn't this make a lot suck. of sense to me at all. It, it, it's really stupid, yeah. And also the the tremors just conveniently destroyed like basically all of them, well, and also like they're all not repairable anymore. This felt like, like a Simpsons oh. joke. Like we've got one light left, <laughs> we need to find some more light. Then she's like, "I'll do it." Sings and then breaks the remaining light. Break like, everything. Like, real yeah, seriously. The, uh, <laughs> so the uh, the trio here, they go to the, I guess just the, the a nearby balcony. Originally, I thought my read on the season one stone singing bit was that. She was in a special particular chamber for that. Right. Um, but I guess here mm -hmm. you can just go to the balcony and let loose. Um, yeah, you'll so scream. The three of them start singing and calling out. And as they do, we, we, feel, we, we feel shaking and there's crumbling rocks and the fires blow out. And it ends up collapsing one of the remaining light shafts. So obviously, as you said, we, this, is the, this is magic. We're straight up doing magic now. Um, and uh, yeah, this is what King Durin, the cautious one, approved instantly. Uh, kind of mm. weird. It's just, uh, it's just so awful. Yeah. That's such a bad result. <laughs> well, yeah, that's screaming fun. in that's a massive really cave usually not a good idea. Uh, Durin says that, uh, or King Durin says that in nine centuries they haven't uh, that the stone singers haven't ceased to provide for them, but for mm. whatever reason now they just can't. Uh, the mountain may be cursed, or a bond with the mountain has been cut off. And it is there that I need to blow my nose. So I'll be right back. Okay. I suppose with like nine centuries of success, you can kind of forgive them for going for this so. approach, even though it does turn out to yeah. be the worst one they could have chosen. I mean, what they could have done, what I was expecting them to do, and I don't know if it, this is because they just filmed it all on the same set, but have the, have the dwarf ladies, the stone singers, go as close as they can, get a ladder, go up to the little cave-in where the one remaining mirror is, and then start blowing holes in the wall with their voices. Whereas yeah. what they do is they stand on the other side of Khazad Doom and mm -hmm. they project their voices across the whole fucking city, it seems like. And then it given the visual of like Disa stretch, you know, she's kind of looking around to find where it is. And then she kind of stretches out her arm almost as if she's using the force. It very much mm -hmm. seems like she is like projecting her voice to focus on that particular part of the cave, which yeah. I mean, one, it, it means that you just have to say, well, this is just magic. And two, it's so much more dangerous than it needed to be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Like I mentioned before, the dwarves, like the, it, it takes away from their actual, like being good at. Well, mining it certainly and takes away from it in this scene, bullets, but... considering mm -hmm. there are practical options humans would do here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the dwarves aren't able to do fucking anything without the, their stone singing, singing. There's all this I don't I'm all this piling up always in the show. It's like, oh, this just made its way here and destroyed all the sun shafts. Oh, we failed for the first time in nine centuries. Oh, we also can't repair any of them. Oh well, there's our drama. It's like, uh Yeah, it does feel like just add more cool. to sort of drama, like Mordor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Add Mordor. I think it's Rax already says like the, the I don't know if Rax it doesn't matter. One of you guys said it before. It's like all the the black tendrils on that map we see in the beginning, which uh, it's just like kind of applies magic the way they show it as well, which is kind of weird because we've seen the yeah I don't know seen the mount we've seen the mountain being made by she, um... water and lava, so <laughs> there's no magic involved as she far as I'm out. concerned. It's magic water. She knocks out all the lights too, gradually, like they showed to show the power of yeah. his singing. So, so it's like, can you imagine living in this world, hearing the start of that singing? You'd be like, oh God, oh no, like they're going to destroy everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, because you don't see any, you don't see any other dwarves during that sequence just kind of walking around. There's no one there that can get hit by the rockfall. There's no one on the bridge. There's no nothing. But just if, if someone in there is just trying to sleep, you're not sleeping. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. Your house might fucking crumble. Yeah. Well, and that. <laughs> yeah. It does set up potential power level related problems Ooh. as well, because obviously much later in the timeline you're going to have goblins attack and you've got the Balrog coming up from underneath. Mm -hmm. Until magic gets involved, you can kind of explain why the dwarves were limited in what they could do to counter that. But if it turns out you can just sting and collapse entire sections of mountain on your enemies, 
then <laughs> that invasion becomes way less believable. Yeah, yeah. Did, did she ever try to sing in the Balrog? Well. What would happen? Well, Disa would need to sing at the resonant frequency of the Balrog's face, and then she's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Just blows up the right out. Yeah. Oh. She's a smart lass. Uh, oh. anyway. uh, I will say I wish that there were uh, that it wasn't three chicks, not because uh, diversity is cringe, but because I think it would have been interesting if we had... Uh, like, you know how you have, like, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, oh, that kind yeah. of thing? Having a wider range mm -hmm. of voices where that only, like, you know, men and women working together, like a choir, to where you can hit all the frequencies and all the pitches. I think it would have been neat to see that, but, yeah, it's, it's whatever. It's, it's like Disa's team or something, right? Because there's several yeah. teams. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Seems like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, I believe it's the same three, or the, the, I mean, Deese is the same, obviously, but I think the other two are the same two we see in season one. Honestly, I can't remember, though. I have no but idea. <laughs> Deesa says in this scene that, like, all of the other stone singers have failed, so it suggests that she's maybe in charge of them and she had the others give it a go first. I don't know why, but I think that's what we're supposed to draw from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get, don't yeah, show this we yet. can't show that Don't yet. show this yet. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get there. <laughs> scroll up, scroll up. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Oh. Okay. It's like fucking Indiana Jones here. Sorry, right. chat. You'll get so, that payoff. The mountain. <laughs> oh goodness, the dwarves. They're in some pretty bad trouble now. Um, it's uh so yeah, everyone's like, oh, this sucks, and they start to leave. Um, all right, so let's talk about the best thing in Rings of Power. So Absolutely. Uh, now everyone's starting to leave this little area where they are this little throne room the place everyone's gathered and uh before Deza can walk away king Doran says hey Deza, come on back here come on come on i want to talk to you and he asks uh are you really gonna are you really gonna make me ask <laughs> and because there's been a lot of tension there's been a lot of uh we where we as a reminder for everybody at the end of season one uh Durin and king Durin. They're on really bad, uh, re really bad, you know, they don't, they don't see eye to eye. Things are not good between them on account of uh, Durin wanted to open up the mines to get the mithril. And he was really, really upset that King Durin didn't want to help the elves to kind of save them and do the deal. And he's particularly angry about um, King Durin's treatment of Elrond and kicking him out. And that's full of its own issues because the season one plot line, as far as the the Elrond mithril stuff goes is a fucking nightmare mess. Elrond in season one was a horrifically poorly written character. Well, it's just a liar. He's, he's just yeah. a fucking he's liar a all the time. He's a liar. <laughs> Pretending that he's friends with Durin when he was only there to get yep. shit from him. Yeah, and then yeah. he's like, no, 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 I'm your friend. I'm your friend. My friend. I'm not going to tell anyone about this mithril. And we're killing Brimbor, you see? I got some mithril yeah, over here. Brimbor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll uh, just kind of give a, I suppose, a bit of an overview here, and we can uh, go into it in detail um, as much as y'all want. Uh, but essentially, the king is, uh, he tells her, yo, you know, what's up? And the king uses this opportunity <laughs> with being with Disa being here in the stone singing um to you know ask about Durin and uh when he does Deza says oh yeah yeah your uh yeah your your grandchildren really miss tugging on your beard yeah but uh, you know your grandchildren they're really uh, they really kind of miss you and he's like no Durin you fucker I'm talking about Durin um and essentially Deza appeals to his sense of uh she calls him stubborn but he says some dwarves would call it strength and so she appeals to that sense of you know, strength that he should be the stronger one of the two and should summon Durin to help because Durin's just as stubborn as the king is. And it seems that Deza really does want this relationship uh, mended because she does mention her grandchildren first, missing their grandfather. And um, I think she really cares a lot about her husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, she invites him to man up, to be the strong one, and ask about Durin and summon him. And, um, she does imply at the end that maybe the the king's bad relationship with his son uh, is potentially one of the reasons why, um, like maybe the, the like everything's kind of off with the mountain, uh, and why the fate of the dwarves could be hurt by the fact that the king is not uh, the king is not in you know in, in a good uh, like place with his son. So yeah, really good scene. Uh, mm -hmm. I, Forgot to write down all the specific lines of dialogue and stuff, but unironically, 
I was like quiet all the way through when I watched this. It was really good. I like the acting from both of them. They talk like normal people. Um, yep. And I, I just think that if it's like a little glimpse into it's a little glimpse into what the show could be if this yeah. was a really good show and each relationship was full of people who really did care about one another and wanted things and spoke in ways that were reasonable and tried to appeal to the things that people um, found important. Um, and then, and then just had really good acting, which the show often is just like the acting's fine and everything, but a lot of the, you know, especially the stuff from King Duran when he opens up and, you know, says to Disa, you know, are you really going to make me ask? And um, yeah, yeah, there, there's, I find it, <clears throat> I find it fascinating in this show specifically, like how many times they just scoot across something. It's like, oh, wait, you got something here that you can do. Like, especially with this scene where he goes like, oh, some call it strength. You could have had this whole, like this whole story between like this, these three where you have like the, the viewpoint uh, of the king where he has to not, has to up, uphold the grudge because otherwise his peers are not going to respect him as much, but he really wants to see his son. So he's struck. He's going to struggle with this. This is all like, it's all that's implied here. And then later we, we see like the small scene a little bit later with uh, Durin and we can get it like, when we get there. Uh, but yeah, it's like this whole multi-tier thing you can do where they have like the, their, I don't know, their big get together at the end. It's like, oh man, we've been not talking for so long and now we're going to work together and figure this all out. To get, uh, this could be like a full season of just the dwarves and all yeah. what's happening down there. Mm -hmm. Which I just um, want to see because I think this would be really fucking awesome. The dwarf stuff is interesting be in how much better it is than any of the other plot lines, at least yeah. that I've seen so far. Because mm -hmm. we really only have three characters. Um, we just have Durin, Diza, and King Durin. There's there's not really anyone else. It's just the three of them. Other dwarves are essentially background characters. Uh, we don't know anything about really any of the other dwarves. It's really just them. We, in fact, I, I kind of, I'm glad we're starting to see more dwarves because we kind of saw them a little bit, but it really was like, for instance, we've never seen. And this is weird once you think about it, but I don't think we've ever seen Durin's kids. No, we uh, haven't. Um, we saw them we with that. Kind of oh no, really shortly yeah, they walked past. Uh, in season they one, they walked, right. walked around with those giant stone helmets on, so you never yeah. actually see what yeah. they look like. But oh, they physically okay. they existed on screen. Yeah, but they actually but, okay. they have an outsized influence depending on like. Even though we very rarely see them, or only see them that once, there is quite an important scene in season one where Durin the Younger is debating a course of action and says, you know, what kind of father would I be to my kids yeah. if I uh, broke a promise to a friend, I think is the example he yes. uses. Um, he, uh... and it's, like, it's because this entire storyline is a family drama and it's actually rooted in something that everybody vaguely understands. And there's a there's a kind of feeling quality to it, whereas in every other storyline, either none of the characters know each other or they only know each other in a political sense. And the only thing they have to talk about is the grand scope of the plot. And it's just it loses itself in its own sense of epicness, whereas the dwarves really neatly combine like an important story thread. But it's all being manifested through a personal story, a personal interaction, which is a father's uh, caution on behalf of his son and his son straining against the caution of his father. Yeah, and like the kids in particular, I'm not going to say what happens because we're only, we're not doing episode three yet. But they they affect Durin's actions directly, um, which would probably have been more effective had we actually you know seen them. So in in it's in weird this to episode, not have them around. Like they're yeah, barely like to the point where I can't even remember seeing them. Yeah, they're men they're, they're literally on screen for about five seconds. It's it's blink and you miss it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's when Elrond when Elrond shows up the first time, and then the kids kind of run down the stairs, and Durin's like, "Oi, piss off, go take those off." I've told you not to play with those, and that's it. They're not at the table when the when everyone else is. Um, in a minute, we get a scene with Durin and Deesa. Yeah, they're never at the dinner, dinner table. They're not there either. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's weird. Like, it's like I I guess it's just what I don't know if they didn't know how to like properly portray dwarf kids or guessing that's the case I, yeah I don't know Did, because they be. should be there but I don't I don't know didn't want to have the child actors on set while the adults do their thing because then you got to do more reshoots you know if they if they're looking at the camera there, or something um, I don't know the problem of my how thing. you portray dwarf children I <sighs> There's we that find, could be also be a problem kids. with the uh, the prosthetics that they use possibly yeah, just, yeah but... that might be it but that would be yeah. that would be like cute in a way where you see the little the little dwarf kids and they got beards and stuff they're really thin but they grow yeah. facial hair like really quick 
You know, that'd be like, okay, that's, that's you know, okay, it's a dwarf thing. You could you, you um, could do things like that. You can frame them from behind so that that way you don't, they don't have to wear the, you know, face, you know, the nose prosthetics and the eyebrow prosthetics and all the rest of it. Um, you can do things where you can get uh, essentially what they did in the Peter Jackson films and you can get um, like little people and, and dress them up as children, essentially, rather than dressing them up as hobbits. Uh, so that way you you don't you're not actually dealing with kids on a on a film set. There are so many things that you can do, and they're just not there. And if they weren't relevant to Durin's actions, then it would be like fine. He has kids. Who gives a shit? But they are. So you're constantly like, where are they, and what are they doing? He does talk about them, and he references them, and it's it's. I believe one hundred one hundred percent he does care about them. Um, I can believe that his care for them influences why they want to like get the mithril and everything and make the, you know, Casa doom better and bring in this new wonderful age for the dwarves. Cause that's their kids and think about that sort of thing. And the fact that she, like the first thing she says is, you know, to Durin is, you know, she mentions the grandchildren, but she's being cheeky. She wants him to actually, you know, sack oh. up and ask about Durin himself, but that's so what she uses as a way to be like, yeah, your, your grandkids miss you, you know? Someone in chat has just pointed out, how could I forget this? Uh, so in season one, the kids in the background are singing the password to the Mithril Mine, and had they not been doing that, then Elrond yeah. would not have found the Mithril Mine. <laughs> Which means that the elves I mean, would have gotten, probably wouldn't have gotten Mithril, and uh, who yes. knows? Yeah, and that the kids saved the world. And also do Yep, it. pretty much. <laughs> Gosh, this reminds me of in season one, when, when Elrond and Durin have the whole conversation where Durin tells him, I haven't seen you for 20 years, it's like a whole lifetime for me. It's like, I, found, I found that was like a really cool thing that I should have explored more because I think that's really interesting. Yeah. In but isolation, just... that first scene where they kind of talk on the elevator is, is yeah. really good. But a lot of the stuff, right. it's, you know, this... the, the surrounding materials that kind of mess it up. Yeah. I feel that way with the... all of it. I even feel that way with this scene. I don't, um, I'm not as fond of this as apparently you guys are because my impression of Durin the third is the king, right? I during the yeah, I think it is. Third is the king. Because they fucked it up the in the sun, right? They screwed it up in the credits because I believe in the credits for season really? one he's credited as Durin the second, which doesn't make sense because Durin the fourth is definitely Durin the fourth. Right, but yeah, <laughs> Durin the third. Um, I enjoyed him more in season one because I got the impression from him that what we were going to discover is he was absolutely right. And it was because of a lot of mm. experience and knowledge that uh, Durin the Fourth lacks significantly, and so not necessarily in that you should never make friends with an elf or any anything like that, but more so the mining of Mithril, right? Which in season one he kind of was proven correct, and then that this is all happening, mm -hmm. you could easily connect to these weaknesses in the mind because of delving too greedily and too deep, that sort of shit, and that um, mm -hmm. what he's doing with his son throughout season one feels to me like he's never gonna like disown him but he's going to discipline him. And then when he makes the connection that Elrond is like a brother to him, much like his own, like, like or it says fired in his mother's womb, that was like a step over the line. And he does, yeah. you know, almost demote him or derank him or defamily him. But I always took that, not just as actual anger, but it felt to me like he was going to be teaching him a lesson. Like, that is a fucking line you don't cross for so many different reasons. Like, you need to understand just how much we need to take care of each other we've got to protect each other the world out there is not going to like like there's a reason dwarves are the way that they are and that you you've just not lived a long enough life to understand it and to be honest with you like i was never convinced because it's the you know like the 20 year fucking gap is you could just use that on on his son being like yeah what a fucking friend you, you can you consider mm -hmm. him as close as a brother in the womb when the guy has lied to you again and again and again and barely even yeah. talks to you for decades unless he's got something to get from you. You know what I mean? Like, there's so much for yeah. his son to learn about the world. He's so naive. And yeah. it's part of what I enjoy about Durin the Fourth. I, I feel like he's one of the most human characters that the Rings of Power can get, which is a huge compliment to them because they're, they're not familiar with humans. And so this scene annoys <laughs> me a bit because uh, this scene is confirmation that he really did act out of anger and he's a tad petty and he doesn't really know how to solve this problem when... I think he's of the age that you should know exactly what he's doing and all of it is very deliberate and that this is like a path he's putting his son on to learn something. And so getting confirmation when he's like, why should it be me who apologizes? He was the one who was offensive. It's like, oh. That's just, that, I that was a slightly different read of the earlier scene though because the, the, the scene you reference in, in season one when he chastises his son for invoking his mother comes, I think, about two sentences after the king himself 
use the mother as an example in the argument he's making. He begins by saying to to his son, like, when you were born, uh, you were weak, but your mother yeah, yeah. told me or something like, in fact, your mother told me you'd grow up to be healthy and strong, blah, blah, blah. And so, like, he's, he's, hi hi words. he's hypocritical in that moment. And so my read of that scene was always that he is actually quite an, an irrationally proud, angry person. He probably is correct about the Mithril, but the show wasn't trying to portray him uncomplicatedly as the voice of wisdom, because the family story is very much one of mutual recriminations leading people to ruin, even though their best intentions would lead them somewhere else. So I, I don't necessarily see this as much of a character break with that scene. It seems like an extension of it. For me, I it felt like a, a break because it, it felt like he was in so much more control other than when the mother is mentioned. And to be honest mm -hmm. with you, I, I, I can't speak to the show's opinion of whether or not he is a source for wisdom necessarily because the show is complicated when it comes to figuring out who the fuck they think is right and wrong, especially when it's someone like Galadriel because <laughs> everything she does is wrong. But with, uh, with his dad, I always thought that we had more to do in terms of his son learning from him um because a lot of people have said they're not even supposed to be in the same timeline necessarily as in like if during the fourth is alive and well and doing shit then his dad shouldn't even be alive according to law um oh, and okay. people talked about that so i figure well they've got them here for the family dynamic and uh it's just especially with how old his dad is i would hope for more wise commentary instead of petty commentary not like none yeah. just um i just don't like it being the one, like, he's saying to Disa in front of all of his, like, in front of his guards, like, uh, he's the one who was the f offensive one. It's like, mm, I, I, I want better dialogue than that for him. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the vibe that they were going for there is that he, obviously he still cares about Durin, but he, but he is unwilling to actually say that, so he doesn't ever actually apologize, and he says, surely Durin knows that I spoke in anger, which, I mean, we can feel how we want about that, but then as soon as Disa uh, says, if that's an apology I hear, then try saying it to Durin. And then at that point, he immediately closes that door and he says, ah, I, you know, he becomes emotional and he says, I shouldn't apologize, it should be him. And like, yeah, that is a little bit petty, but I think that, I mean, we definitely have the one scene in season one where that comes through, his emotions get the better of him. And I swear that happens a, a, an earlier time. I just can't think when. Because we've got the we've got the scene about midway through the season that's really quite good in season one where Durin and the king are speaking with each other and Durin the younger apologizes to the older, um, mm -hmm. and, and then he basically forgives him straight away. But I I swear there's another scene in there where he becomes emotional. I just can't think what. I'm gonna have to have a look. I don't think I don't have a problem with emotional. It's more the the pettiness of it. I um I'd rather it be I see what you mean. Higher. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think it's I think it's that the writers potentially had a poor choice of words rather than the point that they were making. Well, because like they almost get to back to where I want when she she says something pretty um, oversteppy and he says stay your axe or something like that. Because part of it was um, this just felt really inappropriate on a level of king to subject. Like you you better be careful. Like you you shouting at him about how pathetic he is with his own family in front of his yeah. kingdom. Like, to me, that felt... He basically blames him for the entirety of, like... Yeah, like, if this scene began apart. with him dismiss, Or rather, them walking away, and then he says, Disa, come with me, and they go to, like, his chamber, big old stone door closes, I would buy the dialogue completely as her dressing him down and mm. him being able to take it. But there's so many guards here, and it's, it's an open space. I just, like, it just feels inappropriate as fuck that that's your king that you're saying this to. Yeah. You don't really talk this way to a king, especially at Warrior King, when they're very proud and stubborn right. and all that. Well, and yeah. especially when the kingdom's shaking faith in him as well. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can believe that she might because she isn't just one of his subjects. She, she's also his daughter-in-law, well, so I can maybe. That's where I was going. I started with that, as in, like, she's not just that; she is also his subject. He is her king. Like, sure. I recognize their family. Yeah. But, you know, it's got it's got to count. That's that's one of those things that happens in a lot of stories that I quite like. It's like remember. Like, I am your king, not just your father-in-law or whatever. Yeah, so at that point, he probably should have pulled her aside and, you know, said, like, you know, I, I get it, but you need to remember that I am your king kind of thing. Something like that. I mean, what we're going we're gonna to get something that... Uh, this is probably what colors it for me, is there's some other surrounding scenes that make me believe the writers are fucking inept. And uh, the one after mm -hmm. this is one of my least favorite... Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. scenes. Yeah, <laughs> and it like it, it it genuinely makes me question just how much the writers even remember of their own work. The the next scene, yeah, 
Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you <laughs> yeah, mean. Very much so. Yeah. So stupid. Is it right after this, or do we yep. get something else? I forgot. I think it's already. right out of this. Out oh, of okay. This, yeah. Um. <clears throat> Alrighty. So, Durin is uh, mining he's on the grind. He's on the grind set. The mine set. He's playing he's Minecraft. Mine oh, he's nice. working in a mine shaft, playing Minecraft. He's looking for those diamonds, uh, and uh, he's uh, he's uh, ching 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 going, you know, doing dwarf uh, diggy diggy hole, and then he gets blisters on his hands, and then he gets mocked by all the other dwarves for having soft hands, which makes no sense uh, because yeah. in all of season one, <laughs> Durin has been showed to be a hardworking dwarf who puts himself yeah. in danger to save other dwarves. Yep. He was in the, first the time... extra dangerous mithril mines. Like yep. the first time we saw him, he was breaking boulders for the yes. Sigan Tarag yep. thing. There is a whole scene oh, yeah. with him and Elrond just alone and the two of them mining the mithril to try and yes. find the major cavern. And I, I remember that scene because it leads to another nice bit of dwarf dialogue. It's when Elrond sort of takes the piss out of him for being named after his father, who's named after his father. And Jiren says yeah. it's you know one of the highest honors for a dwarf is to earn the name of your father, which is a really nice little scene. But it's mm -hmm. earned on the back of the two of them fucking working hard trying to mine through to the mithril vein. And this mm -hmm. this scene has forgotten basically all of that. I was gonna say all yeah. of those references. That might be one of the worst examples of forgetting your own history. You wrote him to be kind of a man of the people, getting his hands dirty absolutely in Hero. every way yeah. you could imagine. Yeah, he puts his life on the line to save all of the dwarves uh, that are in the cave-in, and then you have, he personally mines in secret with someone to try and get this material that's going to potentially lead your kingdom to glory. Like, all of these mm. references put together, it makes no fucking sense. And this disrespect, it's like, you need to start giving me a yeah. timeline, because there's no way I buy at all yeah. that any of these dwarves would be this disrespectful to the royal family after the prosperous you know, era they've had for so long. Well, the the, no, the sun she, the sun me. mirrors go down, and like a week later, you're treating the the royal family like this, really. Yeah, especially after after seeing him doing like the scene with Elrond you just mentioned, where they hammer the stones, and all the people are like, "Yeah, Durin, let's go. Yeah. We love you." I just like, think it's a like it's a complete. Was... Sorry, go on, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, the, the, he was like very well liked by his peers, from what we we saw. And I think I think the writers were like, "Oh, we told you about the rumors that might have gone around, so we did our work." So here now he gets mm. bullied. It's like, what? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, we got to put him in a really low point for reasons that make no sense. It's cringe. And um, why does he have yeah, blisters? Yeah, he mines regularly. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like on the one hand, I feel like this is just. I mean, one, it's incompetent, but two, it's also manipulative because uh, Durin is obviously in a bad place emotionally and he needs to go even further, you know, in the bad direction so that way we can get some catharsis later on. That's the purpose of the scene, like narratively speaking. But they didn't even do that right because the uh, the workers believe that it is Durin and his father's fault that they're in this mess because of, I guess, the rumor that he, he cursed the mountain when he let Elrond in. But that's not mentioned in this scene. We just have to infer that from the previous mention of a rumor. Wasn't wasn't mentioned um, in season one. It didn't seem like any of the dwarves yeah, well, had an issue with the elf coming in for yeah. Tulachar and, and if, whatever the fuck. Yeah, and if these dwarves are pissed off with Durin specifically for letting in the elf that has cursed the mountain, then surely they would say something like uh, Durin's just as weak as his elf friends or something. Yeah. Because that would then specifically target their frustration at Elrond. Which would then give Durin even more of a reason, uh, reason, even more of a reason to be really, really pissed off with them, <laughs> rather than just inventing the idea that he has soft little baby hands, which doesn't make any fucking sense. No. Anyway, <laughs> that's that yeah, scene. It's terrible. Scene. Yeah. It's not very long. Um, it's just bad. Yeah, I don't like it. They they basically they blame Durin and his father for being in this mess, and some of them feel that he cursed the mountain by bringing in an elf. They don't yeah. say why here, though. It's kind of implied from the thing earlier. Uh, they just kind of make fun of him for being upper class. Uh, they push him and bully him a bit. And then it card cuts to him at the supper table. Yeah. Um, again, but, but you, again, you could have done something with this whole thing. If you, you know, gave it time, told us how much time has passed, how they came to think about him being the sole cause for this all happening. And then maybe have... And even then, you probably have like a... Like a split. Like there's some people who's like, "Hey, Duran, you're cool. Like, what are you doing down here? Have a conversation." And the other ones like, "Fuck that guy. He has like soft palace hands." <laughs> and then maybe he has to like I don't know, reintroduce his worth to them and maybe save them from something or do something meaningful for them to realize the 
that he's uh, actually not that bad of a guy. You know, simple yeah. fucking things that basically write themselves, but the writers just can't do it. Because, like, timeline-wise, it's maybe, what, a couple of weeks, three weeks, four weeks, yeah. something like that ago that he went into a collapsing mine yeah. shaft to rescue four dwarves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It may have been those four dwarves that he rescued. Like, we don't, we don't, we don't know. <laughs> so, it's, it's as though it's written by someone who hasn't seen season one. They, they, they have no yes. idea. Yeah. It's really it's annoying. Everything. I don't like this rewriting of history. <laughs> Plus, the dwarf, like, Narvik, or Narvil, I already said, Narvi, he was like, yeah, the the earthquake happened because a fire mountain blew up. So, like, that's the spread reason. the word. I think that would, you think that would get out. I just but, like the idea that would that news. spreads around the local newspaper, this was like, nah, it was the elf. It was the fucking elf. <laughs> yeah, it was the elf. <laughs> Obvious it's propaganda, propaganda yeah. yeah. A mountain blows up, <laughs> nah, it was the elf. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, that night we assume at the uh, back at the 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 Durin residence, uh, he's at the dinner table and uh, he asks where his kids are, uh, and uh, why Diza is using last year's bread, and Diza says that the king doesn't allow them to trade with the surface, which I find is really weird. It doesn't make sense to me that he would rather have them like pinch and starve instead of just like trading and doing commerce with other people. <laughs> I mean, it's a major, when they have major so much to trade. Yeah. Well, and, and like this is like where's the scene where where we have him address the fact that his people are suffering, not just in the sense that some of them might even you know die, but like, like everything will be grinding to a halt. Everything. There's all of industry. Like you know, the light and vegetation being down is is catastrophic. Yeah. So just where is that scene where we say, like, what the fuck? The obvious solutions are not being accepted. What's wrong with you? Obviously... Well, again, give us a Council of Elrond-style scene, but with the dwarves, where it's the king addressing the other dwarf lords yeah. and nobles and all of that. But the problem is, these writers have no idea how to write that kind of scene. But like, we desperately I... need it. Yeah, I think that they, Green Council they have shown... They have shown that yeah. when, when they're dealing with characters like Durin, Durin, or Disa, they can handle a conversation with two people. But put ten people in a room... No way. No way is that going to work out. Way too and, and these are just like nameless weirdos who don't have to show up ever again. These are just, these are the perspectives that all the dwarves have, and they give their reasons why, even though it should be pretty clear, like, yo, we gotta eat. We gotta, like, trade with people. We got, we got everything except food. We got all the money and the mining and the ores and stuff like that. Let's go and trade. We, last season, we worked out something really big with the elves to do this big, you know, tower and everything. And yeah, and you, uh, like you're, you have that forge moment at the beginning where, you, where where the king is like, "I will not have us be seen as weak," and then his son or whoever else is like, "We are weak right now, without blah we'll blah." We'll be seen blah, as we... dead. Yeah, would you rather us be dead than weak? Would you rather see your son's bones? And then he goes, mm. "Oh, I guess I will," and then they do it. But it's just I, like, yeah, we we. We need a huge reason it's why so funny. he would yeah. not want to trade. And the I don't green, know if one exists. Um, green council meetings in Hot D are like precisely the solution to these sorts of problems because you can throw in throwaway lines for every character there yeah. that answers so many little questions. Like if someone said, yeah. you know, our supplies from the, the, the you know encampments we have on, on the surface are, are running low. They can't supply for the whole mine forever. And then someone else is like... We've we've got it's some. It's at a time, you know. Like, yeah, we got two weeks of food or something exactly. like that, or a month of food. It's... Just any. And then he says, a bunch right, of we'll lines in a row. Or... Everyone shouting at each other, and then you have the big old emotional mm -hmm. moment where he says, "Fine, I will. I will I've, I've, I've. There's not been a problem I've not solved, and this will not be the 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 legacy of my really rule." There, the there? only thing I hate more than a living elf is a dead dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just says that in the middle of the meeting, and yeah. they all look at him like, "Yes, I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Aye, aye. Um, but we don't get that scene, so that we we'll just have to pretend that was fun. That would, that that would have more character that we didn't have. <laughs> yeah, more character than the rest of the episode. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like we'd mm. want to lean super hard into like dwarves being kind of be noisy and. Yeah, they, they they drink and they got their jewels and their big beards and everything and they're having these big loud meetings yeah, and then they're pointing and yelling and they go and they got all the dwarf clans and they each have their turn to talk and then you have the whole oh, quiet quiet and one of them hits a gavel on something hard exactly and, and you have a guy taking minutes and the leader of the singers if it's Deezer, whatever 
she's like you know we 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 can find other places to sing and then some other guys like you want to blow up more of the mine are you insane <laughs> and then yeah you know she'd be like oh what have you done fucker <laughs> like, i what? didn't blow up the mine <laughs> Oh, uh, those oh. scenes. They. This is why we we have so much trouble with the Black Council scenes in Hot D. It was like, what's going on? You guys know how to make these scenes. With what? Make them more interesting because the Green Council ones were top tier. Yeah, they were very good. Some of the best stuff. Almost as good as Aaron Hall. Oh. <laughs> no, that was boring, Rags. <gasps> oh right. Oh right. right. Yeah. Did you Sorry. did yeah. you realize that the Damon he he didn't he didn't grow he didn't change. He was just hanging out, one, and then he, he was ran. healing, and at the end of season two, he knelt. So, you see? <laughs> nothing was accomplished. He can I mean, are there actually people who think he didn't change at all? Yes. Yeah, there are yeah, lots there of people who think that Aaron Hall was a viral tweet of him Damon. kneeling at the end of season one and kneeling at the end of season yeah. two, and they're like, he didn't do anything. Like, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. There's Very nothing in between popular. there, huh? I mean, it's, I, I'm pretty sure that some people have started comparing Rings. <laughs> Dude, you know, you were like the beginning of Lord of the Rings. Sauron is killed at the end. He's killed. There's nothing happens. Yeah, there's, there's nothing <laughs> happened in between. Just some fucking shit about a ring or yeah, whatever. So, yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Where is my little spot on my, my notes? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Deza says that uh, like um, yeah, she she really wants Durin to um, to to kind of make peace with uh, his father, and he's like, oh, he's the obstinate one. It was him who did the problem, and that da, 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 it's all these issues because of him. And uh, Deza uh, kind of almost like out of desperation tells him that we can't hear the mountains anymore, and uh, she's uh, afraid because of that, and. Then they, then he reassures her, and he says they are dwarves. And they will find a way. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a little scene there. Uh, it's got its issues. I mean, their relationship is still good, but all the stuff I'm learning about, like apparently what Durin said, and I don't know that much about the state of what all the other dwarves think. Kind of like yeah. the elves, actually. I don't know what the perspective of any of like the general elves kind of are. No clue. So, see, yeah, I just want to know scenes. why they have bread from last year. I don't know. I want to know why they have that. It's, it's still, you know, it's old. You keep it around. You never mm -hmm. know. I'd save it for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if be moldy or anything. Yeah. Nah, you just gotta store it right. Yeah. Maybe it's really salty. I don't know. Uh, but. <laughs> Back at Linden, Galadriel goes to visit Elrond in uh, Círdan's workshop. Oh no! Because um, Elrond's Elrond. working there. He's uh, of course. He, Why wouldn't yeah, he be? He's working there. He probably wants to kind of get keep his distance between Gil Galad and him, and he wants to get away from. He wants to probably stay away from Linden or that part of Linden at least, and away from Galadriel. And so he's just making a boat. Uh, but I'm not sure why nope. he specifically is working for the guy who didn't destroy the rings like he wanted to. <laughs> Sorry, what, I would be fucking bitter. Was that not I'd a joke? Because I, I, I consider this like he was—he was my front runner for assassination until Calabrimbo. Uh None of this makes any fucking sense. Elrond should not be here. Yeah, no, Elrond, Elrond not should not be chilling out. He should be panicking. He should be sweating. Yeah, Elrond. He should be getting Elrond. every last elf who's willing to listen to him to join him, and they need yeah. to go yeah. to uh, Region immediately. He needs to tell yeah. the world about He needs to not Sauron be fucking carving there. a boat, this retard. Yeah, he, he should just leave for Reagan immediately, like, by himself, you know, if no one wants to join him. This was driving me nuts. This whole scene was, was killing me. He's, he's also fucking it. sandpapering a massive fucking log. That, I that's thought, gonna take fucking years. I thought he was gonna end up in, like, a little cell, um, which would annoy me as yeah. well, obviously, but still it would make more sense, because of what he did. He, that... he needs to face charges, surely. Yeah. yeah. But nope, think. we're not doing that either. Nope. They, they've done fine. something potentially really interesting with him in that they have written him into a corner where he has no allies left. He has alienated everyone around him and the only person he thought he could trust has betrayed him. He can't yeah. actually stick around here, but the show doesn't seem to realize that that's not a problem. It's also a really interesting thing you can do with his character. That if you've established that there's nowhere left in Linden where he feels like people are sane, have him go off on his own to try and warn Celebrimbor or something. Say, like send yeah, him away at the very least, he would yeah. go alone. He would just be like, fuck all of you, I'm going to go save Celebrimbor. Because apparently no one else is doing anything about Celebrimbor. Well, to be honest with you, yeah. he wouldn't want Galadriel going with him anyway. You're a corrupt little I goblin. Can... 
You're yeah, Sauron's puppet. Uh, how can he? How can he trust anything that she says? How so, can he even know that she is who she presents herself as? So I just want to mention at this prior to the point where Galadriel walks in, Elrond has no reason to believe that Celebrimbor's in trouble, right? He has every reason to believe it. They have all agreed. Remember, they've sent messages to warn him about Sauron being on the yeah. way potentially. Mm -hmm. Sure. For all they know, he's there. That's why. That's why. The this is yeah. this is a Batman situation. If there's even one percent chance, <laughs> treat it as an absolute certainty. Uh -huh. <laughs> you should be like fucking the, off. Uh, I gotta go save my friend. So if he, the if guy he gets there about for centuries. If he gets there and he's like, "Oh my god, is Halbrand here?" quote unquote, and then Calibrin Ball's like, "No, no, he's not. It's fine." And then he'd be like, "Whew, that was close." But if he is there, he'd be uh, like, "No, Calibrin Ball, that's evil Satan man." And then he's like, "No, yeah, don't worry, it's fine." Man. I'll stick around a bit if he shows up, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you mean, because in this scene, this scene is where he learns that the letters, that they haven't had a response from the letters, and it's also where he learns that uh, Galadriel's had a dream about Celebrimbor and Sauron or whatever. Yeah, this all just makes uh, it worse. Yeah, without mm -hmm. that knowledge, he still knows that, um, he would still want to tell Celebrimbor that Halbrand is Sauron. It is, how long, how many days? Mm -hmm, yeah. Like three, at most? Or whatever? Since, day? since when? To get to, uh, no, just to get to uh, Eregion. Uh, wow. If you're riding on horseback, it's one. So just if fuck it, he would go. He, that is a, that is not <laughs> yeah, long enough. Yeah. To, you know, you'd be like, you know what? After all this craziness, I just want to chat with him anyway. I'm just gonna go chat with him. See you guys. I mean, in in this show, yeah, it's probably one. Um, you know, I'm curious reality, if that message got to him. Like <laughs> yeah. Again, like based on Depending what we've seen in the show, it is, it's, it is, it's one if you ride non-stop. But obviously, that's not how it works in reality. It is the yeah, only yeah. concern they should have because. Honestly, as long as that's secure, they need to make it's it's pretty obvious, right? Celebrimbor is very important because he knows how to make rings of power, and we know rings of power can very likely, if not have definitely, been corrupted by a certain Satan man that we now know is Sauron, got inside Galadriel's head, blah blah blah. He could come back and he could manipulate Celebrimbor because Celebrimbor doesn't know that he's Sauron, he only knows what you idiots told him before you ran off, yep. which is, oh yeah, don't treat with him. Why didn't Elrond mm -hmm. say, by the way, he's Sauron, bye, and grab the rings? Mm -hmm. why, why, did, why did he just grab the I, rings? Because at the time, he didn't, didn't know. Yeah, he didn't know at that point. That's what I said earlier. That's what... He, he knew... I thought he oh, you're right, yeah, he, he, yeah, he found... He knew something was up. Gladriel knew... told him he's yeah. not who he should be, don't this ever is talk why... to him again, ever, Celebrimbor. Mm -hmm. But then, the, like, like uh, the conversation they should have had on that entire trip when she was a meter <laughs> away from him, you know? It's like, where are you going? I'm gonna tell on you. Why? You, that guy was not Halbrand. It's like, yeah, okay, but, 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 but he's like, who was he? Galadriel, tell me. <laughs> like, <that's>, like, nobody. <laughs> I will not. Yeah, uh... so... Uh, excluding that, he's still got every fucking reason in the world to just go see him. But yes, you're right. After this scene, it's it's like several nails in the coffin in terms of that. And Elrond is Dunzo, is, but yeah. he's still one, not the most yeah. Dunzo. It's, no, it's not episode one anymore. Um, <laughs> no, the Chad no. energy has left. It's I mean, yeah, no, he's, yeah. he's, he's, got, he's got some hyper soy energy in this scene. He's just like, no, let, like, let me yeah. carve. Yeah. Let Fuck me build my boat. <laughs> Leave me alone. I don't want to be in a war me. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. um, let's see. Uh, Galadriel wants to, uh, wants Elrond to join her in a small party to go to Aregion, since she thinks Sauron is there. And she says she thinks that since, uh, since Elrond is a politician, the High King trusts him. Which is, uh, he, Even though he just... Tried to yeah. destroy the ring. Yeah, he just, yeah. He's, he's like the most hated elf in always. <laughs> he should be, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Gil yeah. Gilgalad should hate Elrond. I don't understand it at uh, all. I don't understand. Why? I, why? I got no. Well, so, I, so he, she, he's television. lying. Sorry, she is lying to him at this point. We're about to get right. to what, yes. what he, she actually wants to say. But the, the lies don't work if the person you're speaking to couldn't possibly believe it, and there is no yeah. reason why he would believe this. Wait, why would she use the fact that he's a politician to convince him when politicians have no like special powers over oh. Sauron anyway? I don't know why, from his perspective. What are you she... saying? Who lies? So she she walks into the room and says, um, "Gilgalad has um, given me permission to go, and I want to bring you with me um, because you have the High King's cr King's trust." What she, she meant to steadfastness. Yeah, what what she meant to say is that uh, 
I would need you to come with me because the High King will not let me go right, unless right, you come right. with me. Well, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. which, which, which is basically. A, yeah, which is <laughs> it's it's a complete retread of what we had at the end of season one because she has just completely uh, concealed information from him, lied, tried to misdirect him in order to get what she wants and hide the fact that she's fucked up. Well, she at least, has learned at least, nothing. At least she's consistent. Yeah, she's right. consistent, but the show seems to think that she's going through an arc, which uh, she's not. No, no she's I don't know what it means. She, she hasn't learned anything. She isn't changing the way that she behaves. No, she's just because you know, she's being rewarded. She learned. She's getting rewarded. Yeah, why change? Exactly. This is working I mean, out great. Yeah, I'm what, a, what's, I'm what a manipulative the nature of her going on, on an arc when she's been given a ring? Mm -hmm. She just had one now. Yeah. And she, again, um, she, she again does the thing like everyone's like here are all these points uh, that make sense because i understand uh, sauron's power and how he operates and then she just blackmails them it's like well you but you said you gotta do the thing yep. in season one you asshole oh, once again that. she yep. she relies on you know being deceptive uh to elrond so you know does she must even be a day and ends in y. Him at this point like he he knows that halbrand is sauron he's very concerned that Sauron influenced the creation of the rings, and by extension, he's very concerned about Celebrimbor's safety. Lying so he should already her. want to go. Yeah. And then she comes and says, even though I am the one who, up until basically this scene, was totally fine with wearing the, the rings, I also want to lie to you to persuade you to go <laughs> and do the thing you already want to do, and that I now want to do, even yeah. though I didn't want to do like it. Like I said, it's instinct. She just lies. She's just too, she opens she's, her mouth and yeah, lies come yeah. out. She's too proud because if she were to just come out of the gate and say, I can't go unless you come with me because the king thinks that I'm susceptible to deception, this is, then she she would try and hide that, which is what she tries weaker, to do. Yeah. It's all she, yeah. she ever given a shit yeah, she's too proud. She would just do it herself anyway. That's what she always she's, does. I mean, she jumped off a boat having been told to go back to Valinor. She abandons well, like every mission she's ever been sent on to go and do her own thing. So that, uh, he does suggest that in this scene. Elrond says you've, you've uh, disobeyed the High King before, why not do so again? Um, and then she says, because he is right, which means that what she yep. meant to say, in, instead of saying the High King believes I might be susceptible to deception, what she meant to say is I am susceptible to deception. Yeah, she tries to, to dress it up as if it was the king's opinion. This yeah. scene, yeah. Right. Uh, it is indistinguishable from if you were told before watching it that she is currently working for Sauron and that Elrond has had a lobotomy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much true. However, yeah. we, cannot, we cannot miss an incredible ring of powerism. Yes. Uh, uh, but she, uh, she does admit to Elrond uh, regarding how she was manipulated by Sauron that she... Uh, she says, I was played like a harp to a melody not of my choosing. They played us like a damn fiddle! <laughs> Fucked us like a damn harp. <laughs> um, yeah, like, it's, she's gotta stop. <laughs> but Elrond says that it was of her choosing. Sauron plucked the song from her soul, note by note, and made himself what she wanted to see and use. Um... So it makes sense for Sauron to have that opinion because he thinks that she's been totally Elrond. bought into the whole bullshit. Yeah, uh, but there is there is no way that Sauron could have planned all of this out mm -hmm. um, for reasons we <laughs> talked earlier about his impromptu yeah. grabbing of the symbol and bumping into her randomly and all that stuff. It's just well, no, and everything that she chose to do when she was like uh, when she was on um when, hey, uh, Numenor. Remember, uh, yeah. Sauron just wanted to chill out making some swords and do it all. That's right, he did. <laughs> He's the one who urged him to go back to Middle-earth. Yep. It depends it on whether it's a problem, it depends on where they go with it, because like Reg said, I think it does make perfect sense for Elrond to suspect that this is what that Sauron planned all of this out, to play, to strum Galadriel like a harp or however it goes. Yeah, because we don't know um, what she told him about all the Numenor stuff yeah. and all of the Southland if, stuff. But if the writers come out and sort of almost try and suggest that, yeah, Elrond's right, that is what happened in season one, then that means that they don't understand the story that they told. Okay. I mean, we, yeah. we just had a scene that in never fucking happens. Casa Doom that illustrated that pretty yeah. well, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It is sort of peak Rings of Power, though, that like your first season, your principal antagonist doesn't have a motive until the last episode, and up until that point, your protagonist is actually the villain, and they didn't <laughs> yeah. see it. <laughs> We did it, guys. 
I like, uh, I like, uh, you know, swapping up the formula. I can appreciate that. Big respect, mad respect for, uh, mm -hmm. you know, doing your own thing here. Good job, Amazon. Of course. Uh, so, uh, Galadriel says, um, oh, sorry, Galadriel pleads to him that she cannot let Sauron in again. Yet, uh, she just keeps wearing the ring, I guess, so yeah. kind of And they weird. send her closer um, to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She has oh visions about him, but all right, whatever. They, she needs uh, to be locked away in a box yeah. and sent to Valinor or some shit. Like, uh, get her out of here, it's man. So fucking, he, just, he doesn't deserve these, it. These people are so fucking retarded. Like, Jesus Christ. They, <laughs> they put the rings on, go like, oh, we have the rings now. It's like, I, did you test anything? Did you test how, do you need all three rings still? Does the tree still need the rings? Do you all need to be in close vicinity of the tree to be effective? I guess not. Do, do, can other people wear the ring? Did you do anything? Is Probably, it stuck to your I finger? don't think so. Uh, it's fixed, just... metal. Let's, let's move um, on. So, <laughs> okay. uh, Mine. Uh, da, da, da. so, um, uh, Elrond, when she offers her hand, Elrond spurns it because he says that he'll have no part in their plot because when they chose to wear the rings, they became Sauron's collaborators. So Good boy. At, least, at least in this regard, he is sticking to his uh, sticking to his guns on on the rings yeah. as far as his relationship with her goes. Uh, so at least for now, um, it's fall, yeah, it does fall apart quite. I can't remember if it's the next episode or the one after. There's a moment when. She basically says, oh, the ring told me to do something. And he says, we will not take any guidance from that ring, but okay, I'll do it. And it's just... Yeah, that's, like, <laughs> yeah, that's episode four. Um, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> uh, Galadriel says that Elrond promised her that he would not... Oh, this part. Oh, no, he promised no, 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 no. her that... All right, Fuck so this is, this is a rewriting of history. So Galadriel mm -hmm. says to, that Elrond promised her that he would not rest until things were put right. But this is a recontextualization of that particular promise, which was made back in season one, episode one, and the before times, the long, long ago. <laughs> um, the promise that was actually made was that if uh, she is supposed to, if she is sent to Valinor, that Elrond will ensure that things will be made right if Sauron is still alive. Yes. But she's not here in Middle Earth. That's what that promise was. She was worried that if she gets sent to Valinor, but Sauron really is alive here in Middle Earth, she's worried that he'll be able to do whatever because no one else thinks that he's around except for her. So he promised, I'll see to it that Sauron's taken care of and everything um, mm -hmm. after, you know, if you have to go. That's the promise. She's recontextualizing this promise to suit her desires here when Elrond is still being true to that promise and he didn't break it. So yes. we have like two, three times in this conversation alone where Galadriel has tried to manipulate or just flat out lie to Elrond about things they've done. Um, and and her a little uh, revenge spree uh, in all of season uh, one and did all the things when you, uh, he wasn't even aware she's doing the thing. It's just insane. It feels a little subtextually maybe that she's practically saying to him, like, if I get into the same room with Halbrand again, I think I'm going to jump him. Like, I've got serious issues here. I, I, I need you to help <laughs> me out, friendo. I need you to keep me away from him because I'm he's kind of super hot. And then it flashes to that seed they had together, and, I could, and she's like tearing Ooh, up, and yeah. it's like, yeah, she's she's, she's 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 hot for the Sauron <laughs> D. That's what they're doing, and it's she's actually she's begging fun. Elrond to act as like a cock blocker, which is insane. <laughs> yep. Why Elrond, is, I need you to cock me. Uh, when you watch <laughs> when you watch Lord of the Rings, you just don't really expect this to be the mm -hmm. the thing that they want to do in the prequel TV show, you know? It's fucking insane. It's. Uh... Uh, uh, yeah. Well, also, everything that everything that Elrond is doing in this scene is him essentially keeping his promise that he made to Galadriel in season one, because he thinks that they need to take the rings off and they need to leave Middle Earth, and he's trying to urge her to do that essentially. Uh, yeah. So uh, he says to her, "If our friendship meant anything to you, then fuck off." So she does, and it's yeah, very so he, sad. Oh my he's goodness, gonna... it's so sad. He's just gonna stand here and uh, build boats and oh, see. Oh no, what he isn't. He's gonna go talk to Kierden, who's shaving with an oyster. Yeah, um, we can't we... have Kierden shave a fucking sacrilege. Uh, anyway, uh, Kierden <laughs> says that basic. Okay, so how do you even kind of tackle this? Um, <laughs> Kierden says that essentially just because a, a drunk guy makes verses of poetry, that doesn't make the words less beautiful. 
as mm-hmm. a way to try and say, yeah, even though Satan made these rings of power to take over the world, <laughs> that doesn't mean it takes away from well, the, of course, the justifying same thing. good it's of what they are. It's the trail of, uh, of Elrond as well. Mm-hmm. It's also, I mean, mm-hmm. Kieran, I, I kind of oh, wish I was in the scene with him. I'd be like, did you just say that you're okay with having the corrupting, powerful things if they're pretty? Yeah, yeah like... <laughs> I don't, like yeah, it. like they, they've done a terrible job in terms of a, a first impression of this guy. Yeah, well, like, they, they, told us, like, they told us he's it's, wise. It's basically, twice. he yeah. sold Elrond out because he really liked the ring and he wanted it for himself. That's all yeah. I've got. Yep. And now he's retroactively justifying that decision yeah, because it's actually, it's like, literally just because he thought it looked nice and because it probably corrupted him. Yeah, and he's and yeah. he's saying it like Elrond should have figured this out himself, but he doesn't address Elrond's argument ever. He keeps moving around it, but I don't think the writers understand that's what's happening because they would no. probably make this <laughs> argument legitimately. They'd be like, "He's right, you know. If Satan wrote a poem, it wouldn't be any less meaningful if you found meaning in it." And it's like that's not what happened. We're talking about yeah. rings that he's actually influence your ring. mind, yeah, which yeah, you you can no longer first of all. Applies. You can yeah. no longer even comment on it because you're fucking wearing one, you moron. And secondly, mm-hmm. like the, you didn't want to do anything with it until you looked at it. Don't you think that sounds like something's corrupted you? Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that not exactly awesome. what an evil ring would do? <laughs> and he's like, well, no, but look, who made... I can fucking manipulate the fish. <laughs> well, let's talk about the fish. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Let's well, talk about the that. fish for a moment. I don't right? think I like that. It doesn't even. Okay, doesn't so. He... It doesn't even matter who made the rings, though, because he could ju- he could just corrupt whatever the fuck, right? From what I understand, so, he he basically is saying that yeah, the the master Satan magical manipulator guy who's going to use the rings to take over the world. Yeah, it's like the the but they they're really pretty and nice and think of a, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. So he sticks his hand in the water because they're sitting by the water's edge, and the fish seem mesmerized by the ring. They go right up to it. These fish like they want it. Um. And he says that we do not yet fully understand these rings. As he is trying to convince Elrond that the rings are A-OK to wear and use. He's allowed to wear it, yeah. <laughs> it's all back. The, the argument didn't... he makes is the direct opposite of the one that Gandalf makes in the right at the beginning of Fellowship. <laughs> yeah, we like, don't like, understand Gandalf refuses it. to take the ring. The actual <laughs> quote, specific quote, is we, I might use this ring with the desire to do good, but through me, I would wield a power. It would wield a power too great and terrible to imagine. Kierden here is saying... It's fine because the power is being worn by your friends and they want to do good with it. And I'm kind of wondering whether they are aware that that's what they're doing and they want to play off it, or whether they are so ignorant that they don't see the irony of that You'd position. You think uh-huh. the wisest fucker in the universe would be able to have a comment or two about the nature of power that was more interesting than this. Mm-hmm. But also, here, he like he pulls his hand out of the, out of the little... Uh, pool, and then the fish like leap to their death because they are so drawn to the power of the ring. How is that not yeah. symbolic for the fact that these rings uh, draw beings to their power? Yeah, look at what it does to these little lesser creatures in the water who don't eat, like, what, they, it's not food or anything. They don't need it. They just they just want it so much to the point where they'll leap out of the water onto the rocks in order to get closer to it. And I'm like, man, that's just got bad omen all, o- well, written if, all over it, man. What do you think it'll yeah. do to us? As if everything we've just said isn't worrying enough, he then says you are wise to fear this power. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, wise man. He's the wise character. Yeah, they told yeah. us so. Yeah, very, yeah. very wise. Uh, the the ring can do too. evil things in Sauron's hand, so only elves should have uh, yeah. them to o- use. Only wizards. Uh-huh. 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 should wield it. We are the good uh-huh. guys. Yes. The characterization of Kirdan is just entirely manipulative because they they straight away say, "Oh, he's wise. He's wise. Yeah, he's wise." Mm-hmm. And his wisdom is what causes the elves to put the rings on, and yep. it is what convinces Elrond to be on board with it. Because this scene is what gets yes. Elrond on board with it. Yep. Yeah. Ugh. It's, also, it's very hard to see any way the show plays out that doesn't, in the end, do the most boring thing possible, which is prove kid and correct. Because yes. we know the elves have to still be wearing those rings uh, by the time of Fellowship. So they, they must yeah. come to a conclusion where they can use the, the rings and use their powers, but not be corrupted by them. In which case, everything he's saying here is right, and the yeah. show can only pretend that it isn't for so long before it has to acknowledge it, which is tedious. And then they're all going to point at Elrond. It's like, ha, ah, look, you were a dumb goober. You were wrong all along, even though you had very good evidence and points that supported your claims, and you should be right, actually. But, you know, fuck you. Unless I mean, they you do never... something... Yeah? 
Yeah, you never know with the show, though. They might do some fucking mm -hmm. weird magic testament at the end to remove the evil from the rings or something like that, or, yeah. Well, that or should make... be something that's discussed or talked about. Gilgalad should yeah. be like, hey, well, we gotta send a message to Kelly Grimbor. Can we remove his influence? Can we melt him down and try again? Is there Ranks. a spell mm -hmm. we can do? Or can you we drop him in a vat of Gilgalad, he would point to the tree and be like, the tree, dude, look, it's clean. See? Yo, <laughs> tree clean! You really I think these things are evil? Would an evil thing clean a tree? I don't think so. It's obviously good, yeah. Mm. Evil things don't make light. And then you'd say, just, well, uh, and then you'd say, the wise guy said it over there. He's wise and he said it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously correct. So, um... Uh, it's just so lame it, that uh, Elrond does all these, all this big thing and is like, yo, I got all these points. And everyone's like, no, no, you're wrong. It makes him, it makes him a fool boats. because he's convinced yeah. by this crap. Yeah. Um, so he gets shit on constantly like, while, they, you know, Galadriel just blackmails people, antagonizes manipulates them, manipulates people, manipulates yeah. people. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes against that. orders of the king, and what does she get? The fucking ring falls in front of her feet, and she gets to keep it. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. And everyone, it's like, no, oh, you're wrong. Go build boats. So like, oh. this this was the scene that kind of cemented further my hatred of Kyrdan as a character. And <laughs> yes. unless something radically shifts in the coming episodes. We need to keep Kyrdan in our pocket uh, to reference as a, a great example <laughs> of dumb people trying to write wise characters. <laughs> um, the advice he gives is bad. It's just, uh, for all the reasons that we've discussed, it's ridiculous to think that this is wise, from particularly from Elrond's perspective, but certainly from ours as the audience. Um, the advice he gives is terrible, and Elrond is damaged too by taking it and thinking it's actually good. Uh, Galadriel has only been manipulative to Elrond, and Círdan wants him to go with her. Um, Elrond simply, you just, at this point, if you have any ounce of intelligence, Elrond simply must assume that Círdan is completely under Sauron's influence. Yeah, Elrond mm -hmm. needs I mean. the friend with the brain that says, you thought they were all, you called them collaborators with Sauron as a result of getting those rings, right? And you'd be like, yeah. Like, like it corrupts them, yeah. And then you spoke to Círdan and what he told you and you being in his presence convinced you not of those perspectives. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> you, the guy just looks at him like, Elrond, <laughs> Ellie boy. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> but that's the thing is that there are no other elves. I mean, the only other elf that he could speak to is Celebrimbor and his nuts are currently in a vice. So like he doesn't, <laughs> the, the, the setting is not, fleshed out enough to, to where he has other elf that is relatively unimportant that he can just go and have a chat with every single elf is like is currently wearing a ring or is elrond get a mirror at this point <laughs> <laughs> we elrond, I, don't know, really. I don't know about you all this elf and ring talk boy it's it's a bit too much for me i need to change a pace i need to change oh. the scenery oh. because we're going back to the desert baby oh yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not oh, Gandalf. Really, and really the quick, two... really quick. Yeah. I, I find it really pathetic that Elrond needs the alleged oldest and wisest man to tell him to stop being a bitch and help the elven race to not die. Oh, <laughs> well, we stop I, building yeah. boats. As much as Elrond is, is consistent in his distrust of the rings or whatever, as like a point of plus or praise of his character, I still think it's absolutely retarded. He's not taking more action and cares more about Caleb. Yeah. That was insane. Yes, he needs yeah. to go up there. Uh, especially because there's probably a whole bunch of elves constantly kind of going back and forth between these two areas. Absolutely. So wouldn't be hard to just go. Um, all right, back to the desert. Uh, not Gandalf is crossing with uh, the two the two Harfoots. They're tired. They're thirsty. There's no water. He oh, collapses. Uh, but that's okay because but Poppy sees a mirage of a well. Uh, no, how it's the... not a mirage. It's an actual well. It's an actual well. God, how the so fuck does she see awful. that over I... the ridge? This scene is. Well, no she sense. goes and I don't know. I she's taller than she looks. Uh, yeah, she... We... Yeah. All yeah. right, when so she was here's... lying down on a fucking blanket or whatever. <laughs> here's the way this general sequence works. Oh, it's so. Uh, oh, they're, it they're crossing it. They're crossing a desert. Not Gandalf collapses from dehydration. Damn, don't worry, we found a well. Hooray! All right, we use the well. Oh no, the well has a noise, and the noise the brought the, the the noise <laughs> brought the the trackers here. Don't worry, a random stick appeared. That's good. I can cast a spell. Oh no, mm -hmm. the spell is making us fly away like Team Rocket. 
And that's the scene. <laughs> that's yeah. That's, yeah, that's there pretty are much so it. many funny moments in this scene. Is I like the idea that Gandalf almost dies because he was lugging a fat hobbit around. <laughs> and he's yeah. going to go on to like them later. Like, the entire fate of Middle Earth was at stake in that scene, but he just about survives. The well has a bell on it oh. for no reason other than to attract bad guys. And then he, like, fucking Gandalf gets up and thinks, well, that stick looks vaguely like the one that I want. But I don't know that it is the one that I want. I'm going to test it by summoning a hurricane, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh shit! No, we've lost the hobbits. Oh, that's going to be oh, another episode. Shit. I was so happy when Freaking they team out. rocketed. I was like, yes, they got yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They got I was like, I don't hate them, but like, uh, yeah, I just them. go away. Oh, yeah, they're not the worst. Hogwarts, but you know, they're they're pretty. Like, oh yeah, I don't think they deserve death. I just don't want to be around them. It's just mm. how much the show clearly loves them as like oh yeah. wholesome, cute, and fun, and aren't they great? And I'm like, no, no, no. they're annoying and fucking. Ugh. I think this scene probably pissed me off more than nearly any other scene. It's so inconsequential, so it almost seems like it shouldn't. But like you've basically yeah, you're through. a hater. It, it is it repeatedly. It's problem solution, problem solution, problem solution. Cliffhanger done. Like a machine gun. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to let you know, I don't know if you know, but yeah. it is consequential in the, you know, these guys, they split their plot lines now. It does split the plot lines, but I have seen mm -hmm. how they explain how the hobbits aren't dead, and they god damn it. Explained? <laughs> they didn't well, explain yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, yeah, that's a choice of words. They, so, uh, do we want to reveal hey, that now? Some of I... Hey, some of us want to watch it and experience it, just like the writers okay. intended. Yeah. I, spec I, I, I speculated that they were just going to have a giant trampoline, but they <laughs> oh, yeah. like in prison at Groove. Yeah. I, for the last time, I did not order <laughs> a giant trampoline. Well, you know what? You could have told me before that, pal, before I set it all up. Oh, oh like fucking Gandalf line movie. as well. We were just having a drink of water. Yeah, I'm. I'm just like I. I guess my. I don't have really anything. Anything else to say? Really, it's fucking weird that there's a random bell at the end of the rope for the. Well, it's a trap because it's their well, so they get to be alerted whenever someone uses no, their well. No, they don't. They don't because it only happens when he drops the water bucket down the well. When they it bring is, it up, it doesn't make any noise. It, they just well, you could also just cut off the bell. You could just cut off the bell too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you, I don't know. It's just know, a random it, bell that goes ding, ding, ding. And I have no clue why. They could be less stupid and at least try to stop it because you know the whole point. They went this way so they don't get found and they just yeah, go like, oh, ding, 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 she, ding, yeah, ding, ding. She notices it and lets it ring. It's like you should probably yeah, stop that, you dumb fuck. Yeah, and then they splash the water at each other's like, faces. Oh, that's that's weird. Hmm. The oh. fact that Skeletor and his like buddies they show up within like what. 30 seconds, seconds if that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that means and... that they were already in this giant flat open stretch of desert and they hadn't yeah. found them, and the implication is that they wouldn't have found them if not for the bell. Even though mm -hmm. they're just easily spotable and almost dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they they would have found them within them. minutes. And then, they what's even they, funnier they though? They didn't have to hide that they were following Remember them. their yeah, perspective. We are trying to hunt and kill these fuckers for the Dark Wizard to get the restorative spells or whatever the fuck. And uh, all they know is these guys, this group, they destroyed three dark wizard acolytes that were the most powerful he had. So, you know, what's the plan, fellas? And it's like, well, we're going to come at them with swords and arrows. Okay, that that's a plan. I think that the, the wizard people probably had more powerful stuff than that. But you know what? Go ahead and mm -hmm. try. See what happens. Also, I'm trying to remember exactly how the sequence goes, but when the Skeletor and his friends, when they show up, not Gandalf, is lying on the ground, like, nearly dead, and he's just been fed some water, and they stand there and just wait on the horizon to be mm -hmm. noticed, and then they slowly pull out their sword. If they had just bum-rushed them, they could have probably stabbed not Gandalf before he found the stick. Yeah. Because yeah. if, if he didn't have wanna... the stick, if he didn't have the stick, they lose. We're busy staring. Well, remember, they said the plan I mean, was the, to the use plan was the... Supposed to... Use the Harfoots as like hostages or to yeah. manipulate. They didn't do that. They just attack them all. Mm -hmm. So why all is right. there flag and eye when because... Sauron has not yet been one? Um, because no. other people can use eyes, little platoon. Sauron doesn't <laughs> own eyeballs. But this guy clearly doesn't even have them. I mean, they're the, under the, the mask. I don't. I mean, the leprosy's had them by now. I mean, I don't no, believe they that can he's see. <laughs> the leprosy's had it. It's over for them. It's a leprosy eye. That's what all the, By the way, weird crease. He starts are. with oh. a breeze, and that stops all of them. <laughs> oh no, it's breezy. We better kill him before he finishes the spell. Well, no, but you see, 
That's true. He starts with a breeze that really shouldn't affect you that much. You should fucking rush him now. Yeah, like throw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throw your little. If he's, if he's at making him. a breeze, he's a wizard, and he's got a stick. We better get going because he's about if to he's make a fucking. He's making a breeze. <laughs> he's a wizard. No, if he's making <laughs> yeah, a breeze and he's a wizard, they know he's a oh, wizard. Okay. Oh, I was about to say, which is like fair enough. Because this is, this is what I'm saying is like he's building his spells because they wait so long he's got him in a tornado. So he's he like, oh well. Gets him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's split up, gang, so we don't all oh, get fuck. sucked up the same cyclone. Yeah, and if you know if Gandalf could actually do this, the Witch King wouldn't fucking stand a chance against him in uh, <laughs> Return of the King. This is so... low-powered Gandalf not understanding his powers yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Also, uh, uh, as the hobbits, uh, or halfwits, sorry, no, yeah, as they're about to get like blown away and sucked up by the tornado, they, they make sure that they tell the audience, oh, why isn't he stopping this? Oh, I don't think he can. Oh, no. Just to make <laughs> no. sure that we understand. Like, they're about to die, <laughs> and they're still dumping exposition on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, helpful. we've seen him not having control several times, but apparently we need to be told again. Yeah. I wish we'd give that exposition to some of the elf bullshit so I know what people are thinking. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so yeah, so that happens. Uh, the well, tornado right? sucks up Nori and Poppy and blasts them like away like Team Rocket, and then it's great. That's that. So yeah, whatever. Uh, back at Aregion. Uh it looks like. Oh well, boy, mm. you guys will be excited. You guys have been mm. probably wondering uh, how this all got started. But uh, back in Aregion, we have a Celebrimbor who has crafted something with his new forge with the last slivers of the mithril. He has crafted. <laughs> Ithildin, the runes on the doors of Moria in the lore, as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah. I think this is uh, this is the invention of moon runes. Ooh. Wow, that's so cool. Anyway, moving on. They're right. also made of mithril. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, all right. So it's not, I, I don't know what to say. It's like, they were just like, yeah, he, he oh. just... Um, well, it, is it well, not yeah. like super like, wait, what? When he says the remaining mithril, it's like, what do you mean remaining mithril? Yeah. There was a little bit left. I thought you, you were, left. were we not using like as much as we could. Yeah. I yeah they they, they the used the entire thing nugget. Right? They yeah. they used a centrifuge and oh. different. They separated it out. It's they yeah. he, they had a little bit left. A little little bit. Little, no, I, f I figured that they had like molten mithril, and then when they made the three rings, and they were like, oh, we got a bit of like extra material. Like I can see that that might happen, but I yeah, would have I thought they would the pour is, maximum they, they, to get the maximum yeah. effect, not fucking yeah, let exactly. some of it leak well, out. Well, Brimbor, he stuck they, a little they on showed the him, to make his moon Sure, rings. but you, but you would end up then with a ring that's like the size of a. a who uh, cares? Who However big the yeah. rings get, they get <laughs> fuck it. They, they show <laughs> they show in season one uh, him fucking dropping the entire nugget into the. Yeah, that's what I mean. He, he definitely did, and I oh. figured, yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you make? A there was a little crust on the inside. You know how, like, when... He, he you nibbled know, like, a quarter you, off he, before he listen, dropped it this in. Makes, this makes nibbled. total sense. This, show some goddamn respect, no. okay? Here's <laughs> what happened. It's like, if you have a milk... Never. If you have milk, okay? If you have milk in a cup, and mm. you're like, oh, I'm gonna pour myself some milk and drink this delicious milk. Um, yum, this is so good. Oh, I got distracted. And you leave the milk... Uh, on the counter or whatever, and then like maybe ten minutes later, you come back. Does like, your oh, yeah, drinking right. the milk finish, save the universe, Rags? That you're gonna drink Listen, the whole fucking thing? I'm not done. I'm not done with my milk story. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then you're like, okay, I want to finish the milk, and then you lift the milk up, and then you could see the little circle, the little white circle on the top where the top of the milk was. That's what the mithril did. They had the big pot of the metal goo, and then they tipped it over, and they made their little rings of power or what the fuck ever. And so then they were, and then there's a little bit left on the inside, little crust, little crusty bits, and those little bitty bits, just like the milk. No, nope. that's what he's using to make the moon runes that they <laughs> use on Moria and for the fucking for Durin's fucking map and the Hobbit movies. Grandma right? Grimbor is much more talented than to let crusty milk happen. He had the enough for milk. the rings of power; they were perfect. But there there is really a little bit question that comes in. So let's say there is some weird, whatever the fucking analogy is, milk bits left over from the <laughs> mithril. Okay, you now have a choice. Yeah. You have the most valuable mithril. material in the world. What are you going to use that for? You know you've just built items that save the entire future of your race Moon and runes. save the entire world. Yeah, why, why would not? that they're be the cool. thing you build? They're cool. I'm they're going cool. to build cool. a pretty door. Like, well, okay, where no, are you going no, to put the, the door? I don't fucking know. He's very proud of himself, yeah. too. Listen, be, I'm going to make, make a door that you can't cool. see. 
Oh. It's like well, if if I get, we have a bunch purpose. of philistines in this chat right now who can't what? appreciate the invention of moon roof. Stop you know, saying slurs, we'll get banned. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. I, I can make another ring to save the world, but have you considered ever needing a door that you can't see sometime? <laughs> what if I put a fucking spear tip out of that or something, you know, something useful? Could use that to keep Sauron out, maybe. You can, here's... Throw the mirror at him. Yeah, yeah, the moon lands on it and it glows. It's really fucking cool. It's like something from Minecraft. It's really, it's really fucking great. You know, that right, keeps so he that girl me... around just to be like, "Wow, that's really cool and awesome." And you're so cool. Yeah, look at this oh, awesome shit cool. they can do. He wants to fuck her. He does. He's hot. You just uh, imagine yeah. that if the elven army turns up and they, he's replaced the door to the tower with the moon rune door, and they can't see it, so they don't know how to get in. <laughs> he's like, like you gotta say the And then Killer Brimble dies just... and doesn't leave an explanation behind. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like, just how do we get what we do with this? They just they get have to, to the bottom of the tower the from the hinges and carry it away and like leave it somewhere because they don't know what the well, fuck no. it is. <laughs> no, they wouldn't know that the door was there. It'd be completely invisible. They just show up and be like, "I have no memory of this." Oh place yeah, that's right. All. It's just a ten foot stone wall, and they're like, "What the fuck did he do?" You make him Lord of Eregion for ten minutes. Is that part of his plan now? Because he's being subtly influenced by Sauron. He's going to close off uh, Eregion to the outside world oh, by using moon so runes. Um, yes, I can believe they would do it. I mean, it just <laughs> sounds like exactly what they would do. Well, because because a, a year to... later they can read the door randomly, and they're like, wait, 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 holy fucking shit, what is this? Because <laughs> like, to, just to be clear for anyone who hasn't seen the show or any of the future episodes, is the um the moon rune door Ithildin thing is not mentioned again in episode two or episode three. I don't know if it appears in episode four, no. which means that it seems like they've just whipped it out to be like, hey, remember this? Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it That's doesn't... Yeah, it, it really is just remember moon runes. Yeah. And then she's like, no, you just invented them. It's just funny. Because I think <laughs> Paul like, and I oh, agree. You don't see Lord of the Rings. <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> Lord of the Rings? Who could that be? And then he oh, says, stay tuned, no. bitch. <laughs> no. I think it's also yeah. worth mentioning here <clears throat> that uh, <throat> however long it took him to make the moon runes is how long Halbrand or Sauron has been standing next to the guards. Oh because, yeah, because <laughs> because Halbrand showed up when they were just putting this forge together, and the uh, yeah. the the woman there was like, "Oh, this new forge seems cool," which means <laughs> it. So either he create he created these in a day, or has it been a week? How, how long has he been standing there? We don't oh, know. Brings I don't power know. time. We have no clue. Think... It could be yesterday. I, I, yeah, it could be an age. Yeah, I, I feel sorry. I feel sorry for the guard having to stand there all fucking day because this fucker won't leave. Well, all right. It, I love <laughs> it when we cut back up. to Halbrand and he's just standing there staring at the yeah. tower, just yeah. standing, <laughs> standing <laughs> menacingly. <laughs> yeah, <All right. laughs> three feet from the guards. The important thing is that moon runes have been invented. That's yes. basically that's what's important. That's good to know. That's very good. Uh, they, give, they give him anyway. evil face though. Uh, Halbrand, yeah. he gets evil face. Yeah, they're outside. It's night. The moon runes are glowing because they're really fucking cool. And um, <laughs> they they look down at Hal Brand and he's just staring at the balcony like a creepy psycho. No. And apparently he make he can control the weather and he makes it rain. Obviously, um, and he puts on evil face. <laughs> look at him. Yeah, he does. So Ooh, the reason that he okay. makes it rain is because he wants to make him seem pitiable uh, to Celebrimbor, <laughs> so he'll come and talk to yeah. him. Sure. Look at poor little Sauron in the rain. This is what Sauron is doing. That's yeah, it. And, yeah, and I'm just not remember that people. he can influence. Like he can influence people's minds and sculpt reality. He could just like touch one of the guards, mind control him to let him in. Nah, yep. that's boring. It, I was just thinking about this evil phase. Like, if someone saw that, they'd be like, "What the hell is wrong with your face?" Then he like it goes back to normal. He's like, "What? Nothing? What? Who?" <laughs> What were you talking mm -hmm. about? Oh yeah, you, you had sorry. Satan eyes there for a minute. Uh, sorry, I've been standing here for two weeks. I've been feeling a bit exhausted. I really need a move. <laughs> I think people are starting to realize I'm not human. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, he's been standing oh. there, uh, not shitting or peeing or sleeping. For several it's years. Same for the horse. For years. Several years. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, and then, anyway, and then can I uh, can I introduce this? This is my favorite payoff in uh, essentially the entire show. I'm not sure if this one's going to be beaten for me for a while. When I was watching this, of course, there's been several moments where I've been laughing my ass off, but this is one I even tweeted about because I was just like, "There's no fucking way this <laughs> happened." So the second I saw this elven umbrella design, I started laughing, <laughs> and that was before I had realized that. Kellebrimbor, who's just walked from inside to here, 
<laughs> like it would take a minute. He is soaking wet when he gets to uh, Halbrand. He's meeting, nervous. That's all sweat. Meeting this fucking dumbass <laughs> elven umbrella doesn't even work. <laughs> like, yeah. he, uh, he's just Two there people. for show. It's just a dumb shit. No but to it's tell it's me, hilarious because the guard carrying it is just soaked. He just doesn't yeah. get any of the umbrella. Yep, space. they didn't design it, it such that it would cover him. For the person in front, it's useless. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like as if Killer Brimble wasn't made more embarrassing in this show. He can't invent a working umbrella. Like he doesn't know how they work. He yeah, only we'll he's it. seen them. He no, this makes sense. He used up the last of his mithril for the rune runes. He, <laughs> he needs me for for the umbrella. He, needs, he can't make an umbrella that works. He's out of myth. No, no, no. He got the girl and he was like, "Do you like this?" She's like, "What is like, mithril umbrella? I used the last of my mithril. <laughs> I used the last of my mithril again. Oh my god! I it doesn't protect you from the rain. It just looks cool. Does it, and she's <laughs> like, "Well, does it glow in the moon?" And he's like, "Nah, it no. just keeps you wet. No, no, no. It keeps the holder dry. <laughs> That's the." <laughs> the only thing that it does, it doesn't dry the person it's meant to it. That's the power of Mithril. But yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. This he whole says scene. That all the guard is soaking wet. He's talking to it's him and he's just, it looks, Keller Brimble looks so fucking wet. And I was just like, how did that happen? Oh, That's yeah. an umbrella, <laughs> you fucking idiot. Why bother having the guy hold the stupid umbrella? They've even got like, like the, little, a ton. the little pegs that umbrellas have at the, at the end of, I just, I don't, what were you trying to tell me? That he, like, Keller Brimble's already just terrible in this show, but he's too retired hearted to protect oh. himself from water <laughs> <sighs> oh okay that I'm was sure he's, he's wetter than sauron who's been standing yes. outside for yes. well, sauron doesn't have an umbrella it makes sense <laughs> umbrellas <laughs> encourage rain you, you must wait it's actually the rain focus. Focus. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a reverse umbrella <laughs> it's like a, it's like wearing a funnel yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought when I first saw the design. I was like, wait, did they design this and then make it? And then this was the first test they actually had of it. And it just doesn't work. And the actor's mm -hmm. just getting soaked and he's like, just fucking power through, bro. <laughs> just power through, it doesn't matter. Dude, they're paying you they're paying you some amount of money for this. Oh, like, oh I thought I thought you meant like Keller Brimble was doing that, not the actor. So like he's just come up with this insane umbrella design. He's also like, that, Guys, it's raining, we need to go test this. That's the way I take it at first, but then I start to think about like set design shit, right? And they're just doing this. And can you see the way this works? Like I can see if the water is actually just coming down and hitting the actor and he's like, This is not working. They're like, just make it just Fucking do it! Like, follow, like, tell him walk. to follow me closer! Don't, 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 don't tell him to follow me fucking closer! And Steve, maybe this was here. like the third take that they actually went with, and so they're like, you are soaking. And it's like, no one's gonna give a fuck! No one likes our show anyway! <laughs> no one's, wa no <laughs> one's <laughs> watching! <laughs> the EFAP guys will make fun of me, but... It's <laughs> we have lunch in 20 minutes, just get through it, you fuck. Killer Brimbor, if you want to come on EFAP and talk about the umbrella, we would love to yeah. chat with you about it because it's brought us so much joy. You can, really you fun. know what? They don't make them anymore, but you know that if they did have candid sort of behind the scenes interviews where they got to say things that were not 100% oh, yeah. sucking the cock of the thing they're a part of, uh, you know, any time from like 10 years back plus, you'd probably have him going like, oh, yes, the, the umbrella on set, it just wouldn't work. You know, water was splashing all over everyone, and we just had to, yeah. we didn't have the time to redo it. It was part of the scene. And so, yes, yeah, so you just sort of have to pretend these things, you know, as an actor. You, you could totally match that. These days, they would just never acknowledge it. They'd be like, everything was fine. Yeah, exactly. It was great. We loved everyone it. loved the umbrella. Oh, yeah, everyone, everyone loved the umbrella. Fine. Everybody had fun. Nobody had any reservations or concerns about what we were making. Mm. Nope, it no, was all good. It went smoothly. Nothing. There were no arguments. Nobody fought. Everybody was all on the same page. It's great. You should buy it's it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Please you. buy it. Yeah. Rings of Power on Amazon Prime. Streaming now. Genuinely, I know it's, it's not something we really talk about, but uh, the transition from people who make behind the scenes stuff because they love the art and want to share more about the people who make the thing beyond what we're more familiar with, like the director or the actors, that's completely converted into it's just advertisements. That's all it's meant for. I, I feel yeah. like it's advertising just, for the thing economy. you've already bought. The clearest <laughs> example would be the Marvel assembled stuff. It's like this shit is just sad. Like, they're, they're very, very rarely genuine insight. And there's very rarely anything negative said. Any problem that's encountered, it's always met with a better solution. That's that's about the most that you'll get. If there was a problem, mm. they figured it out, and it's way better. <laughs> Which is not very interesting. Well, they had, like, because mm. uh, but... I was watching the Alien uh, anthology behind the scenes, and there's this, like, 30-minute section they have devoted just to the guys who did set dressing. 
talking about how they they went to loads of different places where garbage was just burned slash thrown away, and they just looked for stuff to litter around uh, Hadley's Hope, and they were like, it ended up perfect. It just looked like it was so worn, so rusted, so uh, you know, distant from anything you'd call like pristine, clean, and everything new. And then they were talking about how they need to make the doors to the front entrance look really rusty. And James Cameron, because they were shooting in a they were shooting in a particular place that hadn't had its let's just say front doors. Uh, fixed in a really, really long time, and apparently they were asking him what kind of rust does he want, and he just walked them out to the doors, pointed to it, and said that. <laughs> like, whatever that is. That's, that's perfect, we'll have that. And just showing all of this, is just like, oh, that's so cool, all these problem-solving things. And then obviously talking about the things that went wrong, how he could be an asshole. Just, oh, it's so... it's it's It just enhances all of it, makes you feel like it was made by people, lots of artists working yeah. hard, the unsung heroes, that sort of thing. Yeah. Modern stuff is so slop and slimy. And, yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. When they made the the Iron Man suit for uh, first Iron Man, oh, where remember like, when they made fucking helmets? Oh. oh yeah, yeah. Because they were basically told, yeah, just make us a model, and they were like, hmm, this kind of feels like a thing where we should have have a person in there so we can move around. And then they made like a whole fucking thing where a stunt do- a stunt man can go into, and they made like the physical uh, version one of the Iron Man suit, and then. When they, they uh, did the presentation for the first time, like Favreau and stuff, they didn't even know there was a thing. And they was like, yeah, roll it out. And then fucking the stuntman just walks out of it. And, other, and everyone's like, yo, what? <laughs> we can film with this? This thing looks real because it is. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Fucking imagine, yeah. We should uh, tell people who aren't familiar with this show that Keller Brimbo designed a hat. And that's what you can see in this scene. <laughs> 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 Do you like my hat? Do you like my hat? <laughs> Do you like my head? Oh, Wait God. till you see my moon rune. <laughs> my moon runes. Someday I will combine I, them. I'm glad the torches haven't gone out behind me. Um, uh, uh. Okay, so okay. Everyone, God, this pay, conversation pay between the two is so fucking stupid. All Fuck right, we're so close. We're so close. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, we kind of are. Final stretch. Yeah. Final stretch. Close, All right. Close to collapse. So. Yeah. Celebrimbor goes to confront Halbrand with his fucking umbrella, and <laughs> Halbrand manipulates Celebrimbor and tells him that there's uh, news of the rings and that Gilgalad has taken the credit for their creation. He's saying that basically we're getting shat on because we're just the little guys who made it, but the big guy, oh, he's taking all the stuff and blah blah blah. They're really they're not doing us justice. Appealing to Celebrimbor's yeah. five year old sensibilities. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. This man should not be succumbing to shit like this. He should instead be like, it's, you know, elf. it's really he fucking strange, Lord, actually, that I haven't heard he's... from them. Well beyond the point of them disrespecting me as a smith. That this is this is weird. Like they're not sending yeah. me any information, and you turn and also, up I've been told when that you're untrustworthy. Yeah, like so I'm not supposed to me. speak to you, and then you're telling me shit that's just mean about them. So, yeah. mm-hmm. and I don't and know you. Just said, Archers. To uh, to make this sorry, uh, yeah. To make this clear at this point, this is a good month or so after the rings were forged. Yeah, so Kellerimbo should be like right something away. weird is going on. And that's, People that's just haven't like come from Linden that are just like, yeah, they put the rings on and mm-hmm. everything's great. Did you make those? <laughs> Did you <laughs> fucking great? You know, you know, Galadriel got one. Wasn't that weird? Also, telling the Lord of. Eregion, you know, the thing he basically owns, like, oh, the the, the big guys don't ever give you anything. They just take all the profits. Like, <laughs> this bitch, city. I own a st- I have a city. That's like I'm mine. like the most respected thing of the thing we're talking about in the world. Yeah, exactly. Like on the other side of it's the a... world, call me the master smith of the elves. You literally, they give remember, me when they met, he was like, God, is this Keller Brimble's workshop? I'd love to meet him. He's incredible. I've heard all the stories. He's like, yes, I am him. Woo. It's like, hey, hello. But no, no, no appreciation. Appreciation, of course. Uh, None at all. Yeah. I, I mean, will say, like... It works so first... well on him, he feels like a kid. Oh yeah, absolutely. He, he succumbs in like fucking two seconds from this fucking retardation. Yeah, in uh, this first Oh, they, they uh, don't section... want to talk to you anymore? Oh, oh. About, yeah, that's sad. So, yeah. um... Well. Yeah, Celebrimbor invites him in. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> w- w- one thing I just oh, would want to mention before, because yes, he does, but I also love the fact that they actually had El, uh, 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 Halbrand slash Sauron actually do the uh, playing hard to get. He's like, you know mm-hmm. what? I'm just going to go. And then Kelber was like, no, yeah. no, 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 don't go. Yeah. No. Oh, I know um, if uh, I'm, where I'm not wanted. I've just stood out here for like five years, you know. But... <laughs> 
I'm oh, very yeah. I'm, I'm fond of the I'm fond of the part where he uh is like, "Oh, Gal Galadriel will tell you uh, it's not my place." And he's about to leave. He's like, "Oh, she isn't here. You are." I think uh, this right. Is... But, 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 hang on, hang on. And then uh, he's like, "Oh, but what about the king? He probably told you like right after he asked him what what about the rings." It's like he just told you he doesn't know. Why the fuck did you ask him about the fucking king if he told you anything? He clearly doesn't know. He just told you he doesn't know. Like the dialogue doesn't fucking make any sense. This uh, this like dialogue exchange is leaning extremely hard on the relationship that Halbrand has with Calibrin, or the other way around, the relationship Calibrin has with Halbrand because they worked together for months. Uh, yeah. The problem is we didn't see any we of that. It, yeah. We have one we have yeah. one scene with them, and then we had a line from Halbrand later where he says, "Wow, what if we stopped working so hard? Maybe that will." work for some reason <laughs> um, because if if you kind of view this scene as they are genuinely good friends they've known each other for a very long time and this guy shows up in um, yes in the pissing rain which is comical but let's just say that that's what happens um and he's injured because at this point Calibrimble believes that he's injured and he shows up and says well th have they really not told you about the rings and Calibrimble has was characterized from the get-go in season one he wanted to create things that are beautiful and powerful. He wanted to bring beauty to Middle Earth in the same way that Feanor did. Um, mm -hmm. If you take what I think they're trying to do, if you pretend that it's what you wanted, I guess, then it kind of works a little bit. I think. I think the first step of him getting Halbrand inside, put you know, getting him uh, in out of the rain and giving him a hot bowl of soup, I don't mind that. I think as much as you guys do. I but it relies this... heavily on the on the, an off-screen relationship. What you're I'm, describing uh, is where we would try and go as if all of us were asked to solve this scene, right? So I mm -hmm, think yeah. him being wounded, yes, good choice. Him being super friendly and maybe in danger, it's like, oh yeah, that could work. Him talk. What what does he say about uh, the nature of the rings? He's like, Calibrimbo, I have news about the rings. I have to speak to you. It's super important. Then he comes down. He's like, whoa, okay, yeah. What is it? Like that would have worked as well. Uh, everything you need to do to manipulate and get yourself in as fast as possible, but also use Sauron's magic somewhat that the, he's supposed to have. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, all so he does is the rain. If there was a ranking on this scene of how well they did this, I don't know, man, I'm giving it like a fucking two. It was pathetic. Um, yeah. It's not an impossible to achieve scene, as you just described. There are things to use, things to make use of, and to better represent Celebrimbor. He should be better than this. He should be. It should be harder to take full advantage of him. And we can rely on his curiosity, right? Separated from how dumb everything is outside of the scene, we can use the fact that Celebrimbor has not yeah. been contacted whatsoever, and that's really fucking weird. And Halbrand can come in with way more wounds and be like, "Do you know what's happening? All the messengers are getting fucking killed, dude." I've got special information that, uh, you know, uh, Galadriel yep. and blah, 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 you know, anyone, whoever wanted me to give you. And then he's like, but they told me I couldn't trust you. And he's like, that's before they found out the truth. And he'd be like, the <laughs> truth? He's like, I can't say it out loud. You have to take me inside. Like, we've got to be, got to be private on this. Yeah, give it a sense of urgency, basically. Because yeah. uh, if, he had, if he had come through the gates and said um, to the, the woman who comes to speak to him, like, I, I, have, I, fucking, I have news about the rings. I need to speak to Celebrimbor now. And she's like, no, he's not allowed to. Just fucking tell him that I have news about the rings. And if he was, again, but worse, worse injured and he was like covered in blood and whatever else, then she goes back and says, uh, you probably want to go speak to this guy because he has news about the rings. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah. There's another no. way to skin it as well, which is that, you know, one of the few things we know about Celebrimbor is, you know, as you say, he wants to bring this, this profound beauty back to Middle Earth. And he has been shown how to work with a material he's never encountered before. If we went back to, say, the moon door scene, I would probably have showed him trying to work it and just not being able to do it because he couldn't do it alone. And he really wants to do it. He's already made three of the most beautiful things that could ever be imagined. And that's the only thing he wants to do. He thinks he can keep bettering his work, which is something that Sauron can exploit. If you have him trying and failing to recreate the tricks that built the rings, and Sauron turns up and says, hey, how about we rejoin the old team and we can do the great ring stuff again? I think you wouldn't even need necessarily a sense of urgency to make Celebrimbor say, you know what? Yeah, no, absolutely, I'm bringing yeah, you in because I've been trying team, for guys. months to try and do this and I'm desperate because I've been basically seduced, not necessarily by Sauron, but by the allure of beauty, which is a kind of greed in its own right, which is kind of the thematic message that this is trying to build up with all of the rings anyway. So like, there are a number of ways you can do it which play off of all of these people's established characters that don't rely on some 
twat who can't invent an umbrella standing out in the rain inviting a guy in for no reason. <laughs> Correct. He was out of mithril. There's something else that I'd want to <laughs> highlight about this that is in slight defense of this scene. It diverts responsibility for what happens away from Celebrimbor and to Galadriel. Is Celebrimbor has no reason at this point to suspect that this guy is Sauron or anything close to Sauron. That's been a problem forever. Like, like there's so much more we could go into for why there's a, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant about in isolation. Because considering everything, everyone is yeah. kind of assassinated right now in the, in relation to Eregion. Like nobody's treating this situation correctly. So you know, like yes, but also, ugh. <laughs> that's that's how I feel. <laughs> Well, next, um, so they go inside and they chat, and Celebrimbor asks if the rings worked, and Halbrand says that they worked wonders, and the elves were saved, and Linden is A-OK, -okay. and Celebrimbor is quite emotional at the news that he's been able to create something uh, of, the, of this kind of power, and that it had the effects that they were hoping for, um, and um, <clears throat> that this is, this is the route that Halbrand's essentially using to manipulate him here going forwards um sauron appeals to them being friends but he has to tell celebrimbor more um he wants to plead celebrimbor to make rings for men oh my goodness um those and fuckers you those fuckers <laughs> uh, celebrimbor says but men are covetous the risks of corruption are too great and then how I find this funny considering yeah. that Galadriel is the protagonist. Of the <laughs> He's like the yeah. most easily corrupted. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Self-admitted um, too. And plus, and plus, mm -hmm. when he says, "Besides, we're out of mithril," I just use the last crust for the moon runes. Take a look at these; aren't they fucking cool? And Talbrand <laughs> agrees. He says, "Wow, these really are." He's like juggling cool. the moon runes. By the way, I can do this really too. Good. By wow, the way, these these are really good. Just say, um, wow, you can't see them when it's not moony. He's like, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, but trust me, when the moon's <laughs> out this time next year, oh boy. Oh, oh dude, boy. He, he's, he's like, these are my moon runes, and that's how he can tell he's faking it, because he's like, oh, those are so awesome. He's like, I haven't put them in the moon yet. Hmm. Like, uh -oh, <laughs> he's oh. like, I think you're manipulating me. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, in, in, uh, in response to uh, Celebrimbor saying that they're out of Mithril, uh, Halbrand says that the dwarves have had uh, problems of their own to deal with mm. uh so they're probably not going to get more mithril anyway so mm. i guess uh this is sauron knows what's going on in kaza doom he knows all he has read the script um halbrand says that when galadriel discovered who he really was she cast him out <gasps> but halbrand says he is not a king not a southlander not a mortal he is an envoy from above to guide those in middle earth because bad shit's going down, and the Rings of Power are the last chance to restore the light, and they have work to do. Um, Halbrand then opens up the doors. Oh my goodness, he uses magic, and he, um, he, he makes the lights go out, and he blazes the forge's fire, and his voice fills shit. the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, it turns uh, all the lights off and then he, like, he makes all the fire a spooky explode. voice it's, like, it's really dark it's raining and thundering and the lights go out. And the, the <laughs> lightning is blaring outside it's like, and I am actually Jesus and look, I, this, I, this is proof how evil I am is proof that I'm really good I'm Darth Jesus you know he practiced all of this and he was like that's what good people do right they turn out the lights they have the big spooky voice lightning thunder I mean I guess I guess he's going for like full on shock and awe. Like, you know, if you imagine like an angel appearing to you, you would barely be able to comprehend it. Well, you would. He's trying to just overwhelm him, right? That, I, I don't see why it would be helpful to make it dark, scary, rainy, lightning, and an ominous voice. You do all the opposites of those things, but in an equally awe filled way. Like, light. Like, imagine all of the rain stops slowly and then light starts to appear. Even like the moon has a big old shine into the room. He has a more ethereal and softer voice. All the the everything's flowing calmly. The lights are smooth and strong. And then he's like, uh, "It's time we bring back, you know, stability to this world." And that's what I'm trying to offer. Instead of, <laughs> yeah, I welcome see what you mean. It's a little bit like, yeah. what about a what about a pile of skulls? Yes, skull Ooh, piles. Yes. <laughs> These are the skulls of bad people, I guess. I don't know. Um. 
But yeah, he uh, he claims to have looked all over the world for a great craftsman. Though I would imagine he would have started with Celebrimbor. He's like the big, famous, great he is elven well known, craftsman. Man. So if you're looking all over the world for one, I just I you probably would have just started here and then you worked your way down. But uh, okay, um, and plus, uh, Celebrimbor knows how he got here. How Halbrand got to Aregion. He was fighting orcs in the Southlands and he got like stabbed by a sword or something. So mm -hmm. it's weird that an envoy of the Valar is an angel would be doing that and nearly dying from yeah, a stab wound exactly. and having to get brought here about that. <laughs> and then like almost die if it wasn't for elvish medicine. So kind of weird. You know but, what? Um, well, yeah, it's like he's trying to start a new grift, forgetting what his prior <laughs> grift was and that everybody remembers what it was. Uh, you know what those doors. Uh, it, First blast open, by the way, just real quick. The um, it looks to me from the shot that Calibre Bull's like, oh dear, the doors blasted open again. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> while uh, <laughs> while Sauron was like, no, that was me. <sighs> there was <laughs> like God, you, he closes God, them, and then Sauron goes, show. yes, it would be unfortunate <laughs> to encounter a being of such power. The doors open again, <laughs> oh, and then Calibre Bull's like, oh Jesus, there they go again. Oh God, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, it's me, you fuck. I'm doing it. Oh, well, <laughs> allow me to open open the doors on the truth. Quish. And they open up again. He said, oh, no, oh, there they go oh, again. Sorry, I gotta the get doors, a lock on the these doors things. keep interrupting you. I'm so sorry. I should just bolt these things. If only I had more mithril to find <laughs> these together. <laughs> if only I had more mithril. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, also, um, I why would he reveal his true nature to Galadriel if he was looking for a great craftsman all over the world. I, I don't know why, because oh, he said it, that it, Galadriel, uh, that she cast him out whenever she uh, discovered who he really was, which surely... I just think it's hilarious, I just think it's hilarious that, that, that he told her, it's like, oh, I'm an, an, a, a Valerian... I'm a fucking angel. I'm a Valerian envoy, and she's like, get the fuck out of here. Fuck also, you. don't speak to my friends ever again. <laughs> don't speak I, got, to I half got imp impression because of how bullshit all of this was, and how obviously, like, he's not considering anything, that he's just he's just been corrupted at this point or something. That, like, Sauron's in his brain, and there's nothing he can do about it, because, yeah, mm -hmm. this is super sus. All of this fucking, like, when he started blowing out the candles, doing the ominous voice, and then he said that <laughs> Galadriel, like, rejected this, and stuff, it's like, yeah. <laughs> You're a... Uh... Now... I, there'd be well, so many questions uh, to ask, and uh, I don't know. Just I thought maybe that I he can, was just fully taken over. Yeah, like given what happens in episode three in particular, you basically have to say that Sauron is just controlling him like a puppet. Uh, mm. Whether he was at this point, we don't really know. And I am willing to give this scene a little bit of leeway because he is very obviously overwhelmed by what he's seeing. But all of these questions are things that he is aware of, and he should at some point when things calm down. He should be asking these questions, but he obviously does not. By Ooh. the time this episode ends, it's we're, we're done. We've solved that problem. He's now been he's now accepted this new iteration of Sauron, and he's not going to ask any any questions at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Halbrand says that he can bring him the knowledge none other possesses, like alloys, Ooh. that he won't <laughs> just be seen as second to Thanor, and that Celebrimbor will be revered as the Lord of the oh. Rings. Dun, dun, so your umbrella will oh work. Oh my god. The Lord yeah. of the Rings. Uh, so the cringe. Lord of the Rings. It doesn't help that it's said at the backdrop of like this just absurdly fake looking shit. Like, look at me. Yeah. I'm totally doing this mm -hmm. in a way that's convincing. Look, <laughs> <laughs> Brimbo is so corrupt that he sees fucking Sauron Jesus in the cloudy hills. Like, what is even fucking happening? <laughs> so, uh. Emer emerges yeah. from the fire. Lord of the Rings. God. So cringe. Oh. So, um, Celebrimbor hasn't wanted power, though. You're trying to, uh, you're trying to use him being a powerful Lord of the Rings, um, as, like, a way to, to tempt him. This is sort of the peak of his argument. This is what he ends it all with. Um, nice. some of it works in terms of being, like, known as a great craftsman and being able to be, be given knowledge that will allow him to make incredible things. But to say, yeah, you're going to be the Lord of the Rings is, like, I don't don't think that's what you should hinge most of your stuff on. The rags, that's the here. name of the thing. 
Oh my god, I like the Lord of the Rings. So he said Lord hmm. of the Rings. I like this show. What was he gonna say? You'll yeah. be John of the Rings? Like, this is way better. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but he should appeal to his... Um, I think he should appeal to the idea of if you make these rings, they'll be used to save all the races of Middle-earth. Your creations will be spread across the land far and wide. And your beauty won't just be among the elves, but everyone and all over the, the all over the Middle Earth, people will know your beauty and the power of the things that you can create. Which yeah, should, the, um, the which should be the thing that you try to in. Is important there because like, it, it's you know you will be the recognized best creator of all things ever. So it's not just that you can save everybody; it's that you will be recognized for doing that. Um, I can kind of see, yeah. <laughs> Ladies that part, being like is, an incredible craftsman, yeah. But. This is Bugata, Lord of the Dew, gift taker. <laughs> 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 Fucking gift taker. The breasts are quite on point. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, would be they're, convinced, they're you know, accurate. of something here. Yeah. Something's going on. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, he, the, much like Bugatar, it's Bugatar. <laughs> Oh, did once again. Um, Beautiful work. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel that Sauron could have done a much better job with trying to convince him. He does okay in some parts, but a lot of the rest is just doesn't make sense, like how he gets in and stuff like that. Uh, he could be using better stuff. But um, the, I, I, I don't know if he even technically needs to convince him. If you could, uh, I don't know exactly what the extent of how his powers work are. But uh, yeah, he did better here than he did with Galadriel at the end of season one. Yeah, that was... absolutely. But but here, uh, yeah, he, 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 some parts work, uh, uh, some parts don't. It's uh, I expect better of Sauron, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, especially saying stuff like, "Oh, when Galadriel found out, she cast me aside, and I've been looking all over the world for a craftsman." Like stuff like that doesn't quite add up. And yeah. I imagine if Kella Brimbor wasn't being sort of awestruck with all these miraculous visions and Fireworks. things that he was doing, it would be very quick for him to point out these issues and. If Calibrimbor doesn't point these issues out once the shock has worn off, hmm. then uh, yeah, then he'll be uh, an idiot. His because some of the story idiot. doesn't check out. Like yeah, he's, uh, he's, al he's already an idiot, I would say. Oh, <laughs> soup! He, uh, he's the most assassinated, as far as I'm concerned. He doesn't. He, he doesn't get to be a human in this episode. He's, <laughs> he's not a human. He's an elf. He gets. He gets <laughs> talk <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> fucking retard. Uh, <laughs> no, I fucking forgot what I wanted to say. God damn it. You're gonna oh, say no. he's not even acting human, is it like not even acting real? Or yeah, yeah. 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 he just becomes a stumbling, bumbling idiot. Like he t takes everything he says at face value, and it's like, oh yeah, come in. Like he has like these. He has a few things he he shouldn't do, and he does all of them. <laughs> Someone said that they really say the Lord of the Rings. Yes, that's why I've had it on screen like this. Yes, this yes. is really a that's thing. That's what they say. You'll be he no, should have said the Lord of Ring Gollum, but he didn't. He's a coward. <laughs> oh, Lord he of Ring Waldrick. Yeah, Lord of Ring uh, it, it also, of course, has the accompanying like swelling music and you know fucking uh, yes. echoey tones. Yeah. And, yeah. Halbrand it's, says it's we have so to make cringe. rings for all the races, and if you do that, you'll be known as the Lord of the Rings. Whoa. I really like in, in universe. It doesn't make sense because he's appealing like you. You can be really powerful instead of you can make things that are powerful. Um, but at the same time, the bit that I really just don't like on a purely subjective level is they are using the phrase the Lord of the Rings and relying heavily on the emotional ties that most of the audience are going to have with that phrase yeah. so that they will more readily accept that that phrase, they'll, they'll be distracted and they will just accept that Sauron is, has now convinced <laughs> Celebrimbor to do his bidding. Someone said the locker of balls. <laughs> locker of balls. <laughs> we will make we will we will make a chastity cages for all of the races. Run one the we will be the locker of balls. <laughs> all right. Anyway, Halbrand claims that he is Anatar, um, envoy from the gods or whatever the Valar, the whoever. Lord um, of gifts. He's an angel. All right. He's from yeah. heaven. Uh. And this so yeah. Funny. All right. Back in Linden. Galadriel thanks Gil Galad. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, she thanks him for being able to go to Eregion. Uh, Elrond is the one leading the company. So, <gasps> yeah, he's going to be oh the one God. in charge, and she doesn't like that. But this yes. also means that Boo, Elrond has, 
uh, it, he has taken, he sort of changed his, <laughs> changed his mind, and um, oh, he is going to go with him. Uh, but Elrond has apparently only agreed if he mm. got to lead the company, so something, I guess. Man, Galadriel um, looks pissed. Even yeah, she's she like, I want to be in charge. Man, because she's, she's such a mm. fucking cunt. I mean, God she's already it. admitted she's corrupted, bro. Maybe she yeah, shouldn't like go Elrond... at all. You Elrond agreeing to this, no. it, it should have been contingent upon Galadriel. At the very least, it should have been contingent upon Galadriel taking the ring off and giving it to someone else. Mm -hmm. Elrond should never have been offered this to begin with. No. Like, it, like, Gil Galad is an absolute clusterfuck. Yeah. Like, he's taken one no. person who is known to be corrupted, so he can't trust her, and in charge of her, he's put the one person who just tried to throw the rings into order. the sea. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Maybe, have maybe you considered? He he's a politician. Can't... He has the, he has his trust because he's a politician. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, fuck. Just... Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe he thinks they'll cancel out and be like a normal person. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one, one normal competent person. Well, it's just like, it's like send someone else. And he's like, there is no one else. There's no characters here. It's just us. Maybe. Send one of your armies. They're all gone. They don't exist. Armies? Yeah, they're all off-screen. They're all off-screen, yeah. They're, they're all physics simulations on a hard drive somewhere. They could have just done what they did with Kierden and just slapped some new elf in and said, you are the strong soldier, and that's all we need to know. He can lead the army at that point. Ruthless. The strongest and wisest elf of us all. Uh, so, let's get our cliffhanger. Um, a message arrives from Celebrimbor uh, to Durin in Kaza Doom, who has invited them to a Region. Hooray. Woohoo. Yeah. Oh, well, we're hope fucking dead. Some, or I hope they bring some food back when he gets back home. That would be nice. Yeah, 58, 11, there's an ADR line where he slips, doesn't move. Whatsoever. <sighs> but, uh, minor thing. Boy, season two, episodes one and two of Yay. the ring, Amazon's The Rings of Power. Um, We are so back. Oh yeah, Disastrous. I will say it's like that we never left. Fire though, this it's episode really has gone down in my estimation after having this discussion. But I <laughs> still would probably say that it is the strongest episode of the entire series. I don't Which know about is, the strongest like that. episode, but it's stronger than episode one of this season. I'll give you that. It was short. Oh yeah, it's definitely stronger than episode one. But I mean, what is it competing it with for short. the best episode of the series? I wouldn't even make a claim for the best episode <laughs> of the Rings of Power. <laughs> Uh, it is funny. I guess this yeah. is a shorter one in that it was like not an hour and 15, 16 minutes. Wait, was it? Or was it actually shorter? No, so the, I mean... the first one is about an hour 10. The others are pretty much all around about an hour once you remove the prologue and the credits. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, right. Yeah. Well, that's merciful. I guess this I'm one stands hour. out because they have some characters that talk to each other like uh, people. I guess that's why this one stands I mean, there's out. There's not a lot of that, I, I wouldn't say. I, 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 I didn't world. say it was a lot, I just say yeah. it has it. <laughs> you know, the, the previous episode had Shad Elrond for a little bit, at least, you know. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if this is so much better than the first one. Well, the first one set in motion almost all of the major issues this season has. <laughs> it's almost yes, like it takes exactly. more of the brunt of the responsibility for all of the bad shit to do with the rings uh, and yeah, Linden and the yeah, 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 work is rude. But if you but, look um, at the first episode, like, in isolation as its own thing. Uh... It's difficult to do that, though, because so much of what happens yeah. in episode one is a massive problem because it deals with the fallout of uh, episode eight of season one. And it, mm, again, yeah. with the exception of Elrond, it fudges it completely. <laughs> yeah. But it but does have Yeah, she gets <laughs> off <laughs> with everything that she's done and she gets a ring of power, which is, mm -hmm. it, which, which it can't be understated how insane that is. Yeah. Or overstated how insane that is. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. She is um, the ultimate, like, she, she got everything she wanted and more. She's super powerful now in whatever way the rings, a ring of power itself will, you know, make her be. Um, and she, no punishment. She, she got away with everything that she did. She just gets to get away with it because she's the protagonist. And Amazon <laughs> loves Galadriel. I don't know why. I don't know either. <laughs> she's a, such a terrible character. I hate her. She's there's nothing likable about her. She's prideful mm -hmm. and she's manipulative and she's Arrogant. stupid. Oh, I hate her. 
Yeah. Yeah, one of the worst characters in fiction, really. Certainly one of the worst pro for being a protagonist, especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forming a protagonist of a show, could you find a worse show protagonist? I don't know. Hmm. Well, does that know. wrap us on today's EFAB being yes. only eight and a half hours long to get through two episodes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god. It was funny. I'm just getting up at this. I was fucking up. I was listening to FNT talk about that, you know, the attempted coordinated cancellation, and um, uh, they were they were talking about some of the comments oh, yeah. they saw, and one of the ones they they said that they just read out was like, "These people will take an episode of TV, three episodes, sorry, three episodes of TV, and talk about them for uh, two hours." And they're they're all like no, laughing, no. And, then, and then Drinker was like, like two hours. Efab <laughs> it was like fucking five hours for one episode. What the fuck? And I was like, yeah, sure, man. What the hell? Oh Jesus, two hours. Rookie yeah, numbers, nothing. I'm glad we're all alive. <laughs> that's, uh, that, yeah, that means something. Barely, but... Surviving, fighting. Um, you <laughs> um, know, fighting. I don't want to spoil, but three and four have plenty of fun things for us to talk about next Woo! week, and oh by the God. time yeah. we reach the week after that, another two will be ready to go. Right. Oh. Isn't that brilliant? What a wonderful, wonderful world. And, I mean, you know, you fuckers in chat, you can, you can complain all you want, you apparently enjoy listening to us uh, break down yeah, every do. last yeah. sentence in, don't, in don't the show. Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, That's what it is fun. Doing. To talk about like the other dimension that we don't get to be in, where this isn't shit. Um, not even mm. necessarily good or great, just better. You, there's so many ways. Uh, that's within reason, like uh, within reason of these writers, even. Just trying here and there right. to be like, oh, why didn't you just do this way? Obviously, slightly better thing yeah. that doesn't it's ruin very everything. Basic writing thing. Couldn't you have done it's that? Really, like, it's really nice. easy to improve on this show. <laughs> Um, granted, oh. this is EFAP 302, but in a way, well, I say in a way, in the most meaningful way, this is the return uh, of EFAP for year 7. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. we didn't even get a week off necessarily because we've been making more stuff. We've got to record more catch-ups for everybody, but we've also just got to keep doing Rings of Power, and then, uh, we got, we got other things on the way. I was about to say what they are, and I was like, no way, that's not, just in case they don't happen. But, um... I'm just saying, the, the train never ends. And we're about to run into October, which is our busiest month of the year every mm -hmm. time. Yeah, it's going to be especially busy this month. Ho ho! We got a surprise for you guys. Mm -hmm. You're going to love it. Oh boy. And I'm not mm -hmm. just talking about the Halloween arc, which is almost good to go. So yeah, get excited. Nice. Keep guessing oh which, uh, which franchise we're going for. It's on the way. Um, but hey, eventually. before we do any kind of heading out, why don't we uh, why don't we chat a little bit more with our wonderful guests for staying with us, obviously for eight and a half hours. We appreciate it, and I'm going to start with uh, with little platoon because this feels almost ritualistic now. This was uh, your first mm -hmm. EFAP on, was it not? It was Rings of Power season one, episode one, or am I? It was in the yeah. deep mist oh. of two years ago, and uh, that one was, I think. I want to say it was a bit longer because this one didn't have a two-hour discussion about rocks. So that... <laughs> yeah, the, the oh, yes. magic conversation in this one was mercifully short compared to that one. But, uh, <laughs> but no, always, always great to be on. Appreciate it. Even so. if it is Rings of Power. 100%. What are you up to? Where can people find you? And why should uh, they subscribe? I, um, yeah, they should subscribe for more talk about Rings of Power at the moment since that video is... I've still got to finish Season 1, uh, so the last three weeks have been going over the five, I think it was, episodes I hadn't quite got around to doing, which inevitably meant lots of little mini essay videos in the middle, and so like the last three weeks have been about 100,000 words worth of script. Good God, um, that's going to be a nightmare for you, because you yes, not only is. got to it's catch really up with all them, but you can't, even, you can't even say, like, oh, I'll work on the first episode of season two. By the time you get that done, they'll be done with the whole fucking season, because they've launched all of them out. Which was rude, by the Pretty way, much. to all long men in the, in the world mm -hmm. that they did that. Oh, it screwed yeah, up my so... planning completely. I was hoping they would do like two at the beginning and then one a week, but no, three at the beginning. It's Why half a season, they... so yeah. Why are they all doing this? <laughs> Is it not desperate? Work? Does it work? Why are they make it harder for people to make videos <laughs> on it? Does it actually so work? I, I thought that this was just categorically not a thing that works. I think I, it seems that the only reason to do it is if you think that the first episode is not going to be enough uh, in terms of a hook. 
I guess an interesting one, right? Andor. That's very much three makes sense because it's a it's like an arc. It's done and it's completely arcane. Good same arc. thing, arcane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas a lot of the other time, it, it feels like do you, yeah, you don't feel like one episode is enough. Because think about like what was the, the the ending hook for the acolyte was look, kill Naka. <laughs> like you know, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good comparison because uh, I actually do, in retrospect, think releasing the three arcane episodes is probably a good idea just because those I think oh, that yeah. was a really good yeah. idea yeah but we, and we'll see if they can do that again this time around which we're very hyped for by the way chat we're, we're yes. two months Fox away season right? two trailer very yeah. exciting very much very exciting looking forward to that one um, and yeah. hopefully you know what it'll be exactly the same as this just a complete flip you know it's like mirroring we should have very long episodes breaking down all kinds of episodes but that should have a different vibe I hope anyway yes no, fingers crossed fingers all the fingers crossed in every crossable way, but yes, um, it's a link in description. Check out the little platoon. Next, I would, of course, I suggest Rand random. Thank you so much for being in the eight and a half hours. Nice to have you. I can't remember again which we had you on first, but this still feels monumental, and hopefully we'll have you for the full set because this is going to be quite an adventure yes. through the lot. Yes, thank you for having me on again. The first one I was on was almost exactly a year ago. It was. Uh, yeah, it was the first episode of last year, whatever number that was, 251, oh, yes. I think. The art one that we did, right? Modern art. Modern art <laughs> makes you, if you don't like modern art, you're all right, I think it was the, <laughs> something like that. Generally. Basically. Sure. Basically. Um, I'll put that on the list. Where can people find you and what are you up to? Um, well, yeah, YouTube channel, which uh, should be linked in the description. Right now, I'm kind of no lifing um, Rings of Power, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much every waking moment that I'm, uh, you know, wake wake for, I have woken for, is being spent on doing Rings of Power videos. So first two episodes are out, episode three is done, and that's going to come out tomorrow evening. Um, Jealous. And I'm chugging away at episode four, and I'll also throw this in, because why not? I've finished my part three Arcane video, and that is going to be released before e season two. Definitely. Nice. Uh, dare I poke at like what's uh, what's your overall conclusion on season one after having such a deep dive? Um, there are the main problem that I have with season one. I think is pretty similar to what you guys concluded is plot armor, um, because there are three, four, five moments where plot armor does actually become a problem because of what it leads to. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of times where it doesn't matter, so it's like, oh well, they you know they hyped it up to make it look more interesting or whatever. Um, for the most part, though, I think it is fantastic. Um, it's one of my favorite seasons of TV ever, uh, which isn't to say that it's perfect, of course. But uh, yeah, in terms of what it actually tried to do and what it succeeded at, it's, it basically succeeded at doing everything that it was attempting to do. Um, and looking at it in this amount of detail has made me appreciate it even more because there were so many times where I was like, hold on a minute, does that actually make sense? And I, uh, you know, a couple of thousand words later, I'd be like, yeah, that actually does make sense. How the hell did that happen? Because <laughs> if you do that to something like Rings of Power, um, you just end up in an infinite cycle of, no, this doesn't work because of this, because of this, because of this. <laughs> and it's the, it's the opposite for Arcane. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's basically convinced me that if you take something that is really fucking good, that it gets better the more you look at it. I am... Um... Desperately trying to get Gary through the season before two comes out, and he's four episodes in. Nice. He's already, I think, used the word love. I'm not sure. I, I think I remember nice. him saying love. So, you know, like if you're first... only halfway through, <laughs> that's probably a good sign, especially because uh, he wants to rewatch it already as well. So it's like, a... <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the first three episodes are really fucking strong. It's just, um, um... I will also mention just very quickly, I am going to do a comparison video for extended Return of the King. But that's not going to come until after. It probably we're talking early next year. Yeah, no, I mean, there's so much going on in the next few months. It's insane. And yeah. uh, hey, you know what? We'll try and cover as much of it as we can because we got Joker Two is on the way. The fucking cavalcade of oh, video nice. games are just poured out. Oh um, god, yeah. We had because I mean, just so that because we haven't been live with the EFAP chat for a while, but. Uh, Dustborn looks like a cringe disaster that that's oh, yeah. the most you'll get from us like none, <laughs> none of us are going to play it none of us are going to give a shit nope. about it it just looks like a complete disaster like I said. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws you guys have been seeing me stream it Metal's been streaming it Fringy's been streaming mm -hmm. it it is mm -hmm. 
horrifically bad. Don't trust anyone who tells you that game is good. It is not. It's, crap. it's fucking it awful. Crap. It's, really it's not bad. even mediocre. Don't accept mediocre either. No. That's giving it too much credit. It's uh, crap. I'll, uh, I, I might be making some kind of like a highlight video so that, uh, you know, you guys can see it in a bit much more consumable way if you don't watch the streams, but holy shit. I would say it as, it's not quite Lord of Ring Gollum, and I know it's like, what the fuck do you mean it's not quite Lord <laughs> what of, it's, be? what do you, <laughs> no, no, just <laughs> in the sense be? of, how are you even comparing it to that game? And I was like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Gollum was <laughs> once a century, right? That's, that's, only uh, once in an age do we get a game like that. Not, We're not it getting is not another Star Gollum. Wars Assassin's Creed, it is not Star, uh, Star Wars Far Cry, that is very unfair to both of those games. <laughs> It's, I'm tired of these comparisons. It's worse than these things. Um, and me, Mel, and Fringy, from even what I've, the little of what I've seen, we've all encountered different fuck ups in the same vein, right? Like we've all come to similar yeah. conclusions about the absolutely hollow and pathetic mechanics and the horrific ride in the story. It's just, just a lot of people are posting about how you know what? It's actually pretty. It's like no. No, 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 just no. No, the, the reputation system is really no. interesting. <laughs> it's not it's at all. No, it's not. Um, oh, there's so many things to do in the open world. And then uh, Space Marine 2 I've been hearing good things about. Um, looks like a lot of fun. Yep. I saw a few clips of mm -hmm. people playing it, and I was like, I wonder if that would be something uh, I'd like to do. It looked like a fun Horde game. The, um, the yeah, game I, I can actually soon tell like you more play. about it. Right now, which is Astrobot, which is, looks really, really, really fun. I intend to stream that once I do my last Outlaws stream, hopefully tomorrow or today for me right now, anyway. Because mm. I was hoping the last mm. one would be yesterday, but I, I couldn't make it <laughs> to the credits. <laughs> so we're going to try again. <laughs> um, but yes, I, oh. I don't know if uh, anyone else here is planning on streaming it, but I want to do at least one for, for Astrobot just to run around with him. It looks like fun. Uh, for, I'm really excited to play that game. It yeah, from what I've cool. heard, you've got like the standard sort of platforming type levels, but then there's like a fun element of trying to rescue each of the mascots in Astrobot form in each level, and the you can collect them all and stuff. I was like, oh, that sounds like it'll be a something I've already seen is um the you know like the the little intro like oh look it's PlayStation like they've got a whole bunch of custom ones for Astrobot that have a whole bunch of like Sony characters. Hmm. You know, showing up, but Astrobot affized. I suppose they look like him, but yeah, those characters and little animations and stuff. And there's looks a super duper fun. Black Myth Wukong, a lot of fun from the four hours I've played it, and it's got a popularity level that means that a lot of people oh. are playing it. <laughs> Oh yeah, the the other one as well. Before you, Concord is no more. Well, I was I was I was building up to Concord. That's the biggest one, right? In terms of just, ah, we, we, see, we're not going to yes. have coverage of it. But I assume, like, yeah, <laughs> what can we add to this conversation other than lol? <laughs> what is what is that? I've not I've not heard of that. Thirteen days. Concord was a live service hero shooter multiplayer game that was uh, uh. published by Sony. That only lasted for two weeks before the server yeah. got shut down because not enough people were playing it. Oh my god! Yeah, it, it was in development for years. It probably cost a lot of money, and it, I don't think it even got over a thousand on uh, Steam when it launched. Was it free to play, or yeah. did you have to buy no, it? No, it was no. It, no, forty it bucks. Was, it was like forty bucks. <laughs> It, so it's it just got a few hundred people, yeah. Yes, you can't oh, wow. play it. It's uh, the servers have been taken down after two weeks of it being online, which uh, people have pointed out that you know a, a housefly lives for longer <laughs> than that on average. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite the shame. Oh, uh, also got not a great investment. Um, hmm. Ragnarok is coming to PC, which I'm looking forward oh, to yeah. because I've not played that mm -hmm. yet. Nice. Same. I'm have getting you, that when it comes out. Have you played 2018? I have, and I love it, but uh, I, I played it through Yay. again quite recently to prepare for um, Ragnarok. Oh, nice. But yeah, I'm I'm really, really looking forward to doing Ragnarok, but I obviously have to wait until it's going to be November at this point, because I've got a Man. bunch of stuff to get through. Yeah. The, the fact that you held off for this long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't own impressive. a PlayStation, and I, I, I yes, have, I that, that is, that I have heard many things about your EFAP with, uh, no. with on Synthetic Man. <laughs> yeah. and I, oh, I have it, I have oh, it bookmarked to, for when I have oh. uh, actually played through Ragnarok. Oh, you're not ready. Oh, you're, you are right, yeah. you're not ready what for that, no. But you, yeah, better to play Ragnarok <laughs> first, for sure. You'll be blown away by it, yeah. how pathetic yeah, his review you. was. <laughs> but like, Hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. Have fun. Or at least I hope you have fun. Um, all right. Well, uh, Metal, what are uh, you up to, my lad, that people can find? Well, I'm currently regretting my life choices. That's mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Yeah. 
Because I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I, I want to do videos on every episode. Uh, it worked very well for the first one. That's out. You can find that on my channel. Uh, uh, while this event was running, I was constantly uh, editing and re-rendering episode two. I'm currently at render 23. That's going up right now. And uh, hopefully the copyright is going to let me through uh, this time. I doubt it though. It keeps finding things and I don't even, I don't even understand what's happening. It just seems more random every time. But uh, on the yeah, bright the, 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 side, Metal's releasing are, videos. <laughs> I'm Metal. releasing videos, exactly. Go <laughs> check it out. There's definitely yeah. going to be eight videos coming. Well, seven now. Uh, uh, I'm going to be behind two episodes pretty much the whole time because there's no way for me to catch up with, you know, having a normal day job still doing things. And I just do what I can with the time I have for me, but I'm going as fast as I can. And uh, yeah, hope you like him. Uh, other than that, Forge coming tomorrow. We wanted to do Beetlejuice too, but I could not get a screening uh, for me, so I couldn't watch it. So we uh, instead we're going to do a gaming Forge tomorrow. Uh, Mark and me, uh, we're actually going to play Space Marine too co-op. So we're going to start that tomorrow. That's going to be fun. Sweet. So we're going to do a little gaming there, so that should be. Fun in the bun. And you got it all that. over in Metal's corner of the internet. You have the great, awesome fun of a gaming stream, the breakdowns of Rings of Power, and then a shitty game like Outlaws, which you're continuing to stream, yeah. I hear. Yes or no? Yes, that's going to be. I'm going to be switching between Space Marine and Outlaws. <laughs> uh, oh, man. <laughs> it depends then on how uh, Mark is available, I guess. But mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make my way through the Space, Mar the Space Marine game. The Star Wars game because people like watching that me memeing around on that because that game is just a big old meme. Well, uh, thank you yeah. very much for joining us. Um, uh, I'm uh, see, oh, I always said I was saying eight and a half. So the other lads now we're into saying nine hours. <laughs> so yeah, like, thank Woo! you for being the nine hours. Um, oh, third man. of my day, Mr. Goga. How about you, sir? What are yeah. you up to? Nah, fuck all. Uh, sub to Moolah and <laughs> watch the uh, war arc. <laughs> of which we've almost Yay. got complete getting there we just got some tooling Yay. around to do so yes there you mm -hmm. go hope you guys enjoyed the cool. war arc i'm sure we'll have something like it one day in a few decades <laughs> <laughs> prep the next day yeah. i mean the funny thing is brave heart is the next one yes and uh, pretty damn good i would say yes brave heart ironclad gladiator no spoilers or anything yes. that was in the trailer a lot Ooh. of people seem to treat it as though it's still a mystery <laughs> what could yeah, be some, some people just don't know you know they haven't seen the trailer but uh of course ah. it'll take a break for the month of october where a very special oh, yeah. different arc is coming out which will also make me think like fuck what bring how are we getting these where are we putting these halos <laughs> gotta come out uh, at some point. Yeah. <laughs> i guess we'll have to figure that out at some point we can't release them this month if it was once per week because they'd have to uh, stop for like a whole this month. is lord of the, this yeah. is rings of power month they're yeah, all maybe, done maybe they're maybe all I, they're yeah, all wonderfully edited while, they're all point. ready to go it's just that i'm trying to figure out where to put them because i don't want to spam <laughs> Especially, what we hate yeah. to do is like work really hard, reach a point of having all these different avenues of different things to release, and then just shove them all out, and then have like nothing else that we can release for another mm. few months. It's like, well, <laughs> that was fucked. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, yeah. we're well past. I was about to say Halo hype. So you know, we know <laughs> you guys brief, will enjoy brief. it. It was just trying to figure out a good place to put them out. In the same yeah. vein, we've got plenty of things like that. Um, Halloween's already fucking stuffed October, and yeah. we haven't even organized our next recording sessions for all the different things we're doing. And mm. we got to get on uh, Super Chat Catch-Ups, which we are uh, tackling, so don't you worry about that whatsoever. So with that, uh, Rags, Fringy, is there anything you guys wanted to mention before we say goodbye? Sure, hopefully I'll have something out quite soonish. Um, I'm being delayed because, as you could probably tell, I'm a... Uh... A little bit sick, a little under the weather. I caught a little bug on, uh, I, was, I, I was away uh, last weekend uh, doing this and that. And I got back and I uh, was a little bit sick and then I had to do Rings of Power stuff and notes and watching. And so here we are, but hopefully I'll be uh, feeling a lot better soon. And uh, I should have uh, hopefully something out quite soon as well. So mm. stick around for that. You'll, you'll know Ooh. it when, you, when it's out. You'll know it. I'm, I'm just walking. <laughs> boring, boring answer, but yeah. Yeah, I try. Working. I'm trying to find a way to say more than that, but also not say yeah. anything at all. Because <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> listen, okay, we got September's a weird month. 
because it's like it's like a build up to October for us in terms of month, isn't it? yeah because right? like August is the end of the year and then October is a big month. So we yeah you, well I mean you're gonna be getting your rings of power which apparently it means nine hour stream per week plus the uh you know yeah. whatever else ends up coming out here and there. Uh, we'd like to carry on. Chained together at some point. We'll have to figure that out. Yeah, because that was very fun. Yeah. Got, <laughs> got three other sections to do. As and his Woo! team actually completed it, so you know we we can't Whoa, be having an out gamer us. It can be done. It can be done. And they they decided and um, their next thing will be that they all run it at the same time, but separately and race it. So you get to the top first. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's uh, kind of fun. Kinda fun. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Yeah, me and Fringy are working on the stuff. I'm working on some stuff. Stuff is being worked on and stuff and is got yeah. with stuff on it that's work, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's really hard to be more specific than that. Like I said, tomorrow we got Outlaws. After that, I'll probably do um, Astrobot. And then Black Myth Wukong, I think. I don't know how I'm fixing all of this up, but it's I'll try and do something. Call. And then we got... Um, Shit's coming. October's on the way. Uh, what's the, like... What's the horror game release this year? Does anyone know it or, or several of them? Silent Hill uh, Remake. Well, yeah. Silent Hill Remake, well, right? Silent Hill Two. Right. Isn't that Bloober Team? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm I mean, not saying I'll... you have to play it. I'm just saying it's coming I'll out. I'll probably be playing it because I played Silent Hill last Halloween, so that actually kind of... Uh, is there a... Oh, I think the remake of Until Dawn is uh, coming I'll have to... out. I don't care about that. On... Is uh, that going on sorry. PC? Yeah. I should have expected uh, that. Yes, that's it is on PC. Mel, that's perfect yeah. for us. Because okay. Until Dawn is like the least cringe of all of those games. Oh, okay, okay. Well, oh, I guess we have one game we're definitely going to play. Well, we can do a challenge run of um, try and keep everyone alive. Because we usually do the try and kill everyone. <laughs> Let's see if we can keep everyone alive. <laughs> Let's see what the <laughs> really unlogical choice we can do so they stay alive. <laughs> well, it does end up working that way. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, what else? What else could it, could be said? Yeah, well, you know, because we'll have to do some plans for that. Because uh, the sixth, I'll have to do some kind of Halloweeny birthday streamy. But mm -hmm. I think I've now wiped through all of. I did Machine for Pigs, Doctor Sans, Soma, and uh, Bunker. Well, time to do them all again. Well, I just—I was gonna say—I guess I should move on to something. I just don't know what it would be. We'll mm -hmm. figure it out, chat. Maybe make some suggestions. I'll—I'll I'll figure it out. But the other thing as well this year, I'm hoping. Fringy and Rag. Fringy stream one of the amnesias, preferably the Doctor Scent, I think. Doctor Scent, yeah. Yes. And then Rags go play Bunker, okay? Yeah, I'll check out Bunker. I've heard good things. Ooh. So, yeah. we'll have a look on October. Do be Just do Bloodborne again. I could do. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> classic. Sony will have. Sony has an extra reason after Concord to finally release Bloodborne <laughs> on, on something else. So, they got to recuperate the massive loss. Well. On that note, I suppose we shall we say it. goodbye and good night. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we shall see you next week in terms yeah. of recap stuff for episodes three and four of the Rings of Power, where Yay. five and six <laughs> will be out by then. Woo! Oh, oh wait, yeah. five will be out by then, not five and six. But whatever. Bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah, goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Oh, I found another copyright thing. Fuck. <laughs>